and welcome to Johnson Valley, California. I am Miles Hasquist, and we are kicking off the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batters. Today is the Four Wheel Parts Every Man Challenge, presented by Progressive Insurance. 8 a.m. Pacific time here in just a few minutes. We'll be kicking it off a two lap race identical to yesterday, right around 140 uh, miles. It's going to end right around 6 o'clock tonight. It's going to be a great race, so be sure to tune in all day long. I'm going to send it back to the booth. Ricky Johnson, Jim Marses, take it away. All righty, thank you so much, Miles. You are watching the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries, and today is the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge presented by Progressive. I am Ricky Johnson with Jim Marsden. We have so much to talk about. Let's talk about how many different trucks are. There's over 100 4,800 trucks and over almost 50 46 on the Curry Enterprise trucks. Uh, yeah, no, we've got 153 races out there and try on the uh, starting today in three different classes. So we've got the three classes are the uh, 4500 Yukon gear and axle modified class. We've got the 4600 um, Curry Enterprises stock class. Yes. And then, of course, we've got the ones that we have the most of, which are the 4800s Yukon <laughs> Brannock Motorsports <laughs> Legends class. Ricky, there's so much going on here today. Well, and you can tell by both of our voices. We've been, hand <laughs> I mean, pun intended, we've been hammering it all week long. We've seen the motos, we've seen the UTVs. Kyle Chaney came out yesterday and blistered the field. Phil Blurton and uh, Bo Judge said they had a great run, but they had nothing for Kyle Chaney. No, they didn't. Carl Cheney was an absolute class apart yesterday. And just seeing how the can -Ams have dominated this race, have other manufacturers got what it takes to step up next year? We'll find out. We, we also saw Robbie Gordon come out with the speed units, had a couple little glitches along the way, but when it was running, looked very, very impressive in the rough, but we got to get some of those things going out. But that's why they're here. Everything. You know, I've, seen it, I've seen it happen with Can-Am, Polaris, Yamaha, Kawasaki, uh, Can-Am. All of them, they come out and there's nothing like racing because you can go test, but you kind of get used to the ground. But when you race, you find out what happens when you make a mistake. And right now, switching gears to this Everyman Challenge, unbelievable how many cars we have it is indeed and looking out across in front of us and you're seeing everybody lining up here this is going to be a serious race but let's talk about dan fresh last year's winner he's on the second row of the grid some would argue he is the man to beat here today well we have seen in the past that they weren't qualifying but this year they have qualified the field as i said dan's in the second row but this guy is so impressive every year I mean, he's so fresh and so clean. <laughs> I hate to say it, a stupid little pun there, but he, he comes out and he knows this desert very, very well, and he knows that vehicle like like it's a very, you know, like an like old set of shoes. Exactly. But on the front row of the grid, and the man to be, or the man on pole position, is Craig Allen. Craig threw down an absolutely stunning time. Now, the qualifying course was very difficult this year. Set out a chocolate thunder. We watched it. It was absolutely incredible. But Craig Allen is the man to beat, and lining up alongside him, is the car of 75, which is Scott Foley. Well, and we saw a lot of crashes. I mean, including including one of the legends, Shannon Campbell's. He came over, hit, hit a rock, went sideways, rolled twice, and luckily it didn't keep going because if it would have kept going, it probably would have been a, a 10 to 15 flip down that hill. So this this everybody is picking it up. This used to be rock crawling and crawl through, go slow through the rocks and fast in the desert. Not anymore. No, absolutely. Now, these cars, this is the Legends class that we're watching lining up right now on our screens. Uh, so what is the Legends class? I was going to say, explain to everybody the okay. difference between tomorrow and 48 <laughs> with the multiple shocks versus today. Go ahead. Yeah, so basically what we got with our Legends class, they are allowed a single shock in each corner. They're allowed hydraulic steering, most importantly, but they have to run a 37-inch DOT tire. So no sticky tires out there to give them an advantage pulling them up those rocks. Okay, they can have a front engine and a rear mounted engine configuration that's new for this year wow. and so we might see some older rear engine mounted uh, rear engine 4400 class cars that are now in the legend so class. they would convert them take off the bypass and the, and, the, and the coil carrier and so what now you think what would be the difference between one or two shocks a lot of times when we we have the two shocks one as we see is a coil carry has some dampening and then you have a bypass shock that sits by itself that you can adjust that and get your shock tuning much much better but now with this you have to try to do everything 
in one shock. Also, that shock gets a lot hotter, and it, it starts to wear out at the end of the day. Now, here's an interesting fact. One of our top-running 4,800 cars always used to be Casey Gilbert. Casey Gilbert has actually made the move from 4,800 up into 4,400 this year, and this is interesting. He's changed from a single-shot configuration to a twin-shot configuration, and he's absolutely convinced his single-shot configuration <laughs> was better. So get your head around that. Well, well, what happens is it takes a while to adjust. Now, just because it's newer and better and bigger and stronger, when you run a truck like Casey has that long, you know every little bit, you've done all the ch to testing, you've done all the tuning, and so you're more comfortable with it. But once you make that step up, sometimes it's gonna take a little adjustment, it might take a year. Okay. Okay, while we're waiting here for the race to start, we're around about 10 minutes away, but Miles has been catching up with some of our drivers earlier this week. So I'm here with Alex Fleming with Sherpa Motorsports, part of the 4600 Curry Enterprise stock class. Yes. I love that class. You guys are all buddies. A, You're out there. Slow. I mean, you can drive this thing to the grocery store and then go wheel of hammers. How cool is that? It's pretty badass. Yeah, it's fun. You know, this thing's basically a, a trail rig without windows and a roll cage. So it's a, it's a good class. And you've got a, a V8, IFS. I mean... <laughs> this thing's cool. It's fun. I remember, what was it, the Stampede this year, you were launching some of those jumps, and the bulkhead was just slamming. I mean, you're always yeah. on the gas getting it done. Yeah, we're trying, and we put a lot more work into shock tuning this year. We're running a new shock package, and we're really stoked with how it's performing so far, uh, just with the testing we've been doing out here. So hopefully no more slamming the front end <laughs> into the ground. But you got to do it to, to learn, you know? Oh, and that's part of it. I mean, yeah. you don't know what these cars can do until you do it. And yep. and like I said, you know, you're know, you running with uh, you know, the new Broncos is cool. Mm -hmm. uh, Albert Contreras has been running this thing for as long as I can remember. Okay. And to see all, all you guys out there having fun, making laughs, you're here in Yukon Road, with all your buddies yep. uh, I mean after hours is some of the funnest part out here for me oh yeah we we love coming back to camp you know going to the big bonfire hanging out with everybody I mean the community out here is really what makes it for us I mean racing's fun and all but the people that are racing that's the best part for us yeah I mean the, the lifestyle here is what what brought me here and that's how yeah. I just keep going with it and it's just you know I've only met you just a couple years ago and yeah. and now just driving by it's just like hey let's, let's have a chat you know and, and you're here having fun heck yeah absolutely that's what it's all about so what's what's game plan on race day you've been out there pre-running you said you're gonna go out there and do a little bit more but uh, when that when the green flags drops what, what, what's gonna happen I mean we're gonna try and not let everything get to our head and try and find a good comfortable pace for the car for ourselves and kind of see where we stack up and our big goal this year is to make it to the rocks and just start checking off trails so uh, we made it to the rocks our first year and got stuck in traffic so hopefully we can be a little bit further ahead and uh, just tick them off the list and see if we make it back I like it. Alex, always a pleasure. Good luck and have fun, buddy. Thank you, Miles. I appreciate it. Watch it. We're here, Jim, and we got everybody lined up. And let me just tell you, the Everyman Challenge knows nothing about order. It's complete chaos. As I was trying to drive in, there are trucks everywhere. They're all here early. And the variety of vehicles that you're seeing, some Toyota pickup trucks, some, some Jeep Cherokees, some unbelievable, you know, 4,600 and 4,800 trucks. But it's, it is exactly what it's called, the Everyman Challenge. It is. It opens up our racing to everybody who wants to come out here to the lake bed and be part of King of the Hammers. It's, I don't want to use the word budget, but it allows people to come in at an easier price point than going straight into 4400 Well, and we've talked about that. And one of the, one of the standout stars is, is Bailey Cole. He, when I first met him, obviously he's the son of Dave Cole, who, who's the founder of this, of this unbelievable race. And he didn't come in with a silver spoon in his hand. He had that Toyota pickup truck. He would put, he would scab and put it together. And that's how you learn. You start off maybe with 35-inch tires, and we're going to try a little rock crawl here. But a lot of the technique is the same. And I wish, and I love it that people, that there's so many enthusiasts out here on the lake bed. Everybody out here, you have to love this sport to put up with this much dirt and dust <laughs> and all the different stuff because they're not just fans. Absolutely. I think I've already eaten my body weight in dust this week. <laughs> but uh, let's have a quick look at the front row of the grid all now. In fact, I've got a countdown from the top 10. So in 10th position, we have got Cody Young, who's racing in the 4800 class. In 9th, it's Buddy Carlton, also in 4800. In 8th, it's John Holtzman in 4800. Then in 7th, in 4500, it's Logan Goodall. In 6th, it's Jeremy Jones in 4800. And in 5th, it's, Jeremy, uh, it's Jesse Oliver, also in 4500. Then in 4th position, it's Michael Kelly in 48. And then in 3rd position, it's Dan Fresh, last year's winner. 
but the front row of the grid for the starting today is going to be in second, Scott Foley, and first, honours go to Craig Allen. So, Jim, are you surprised no 4600, the Casey uh, uh, Curry Enterprises 4600? We have 42 of those on the entry. Are you surprised that they're not in the top 10? Um, I'm not surprised at all, actually. They have a 35-inch tyre. They have to run a standard length shock absorber. And when they're out of Chocolate Thunder, that was incredibly tough for those vehicles to make their way up through the field. So I'm not shocked at all. We saw every single one of them reaching for the winch line. And you're going to see a lot more of that out on this course today. Well, and it, let's be clear that this is the exact same course that they had yesterday for the UTVs, which I, I thought it worked out perfectly. I think Dave Cole and the whole Hammer, uh, Hammer Productions crew did a great job. Start off with the desert get some separation. Unfortunately, some, a lot of guys are going to fall out because whatever, loose oil line, uh, crash, or whatever the, the case may be. But it gives a little bit of separation before they jump into the rocks because even though they did that yesterday, we saw a lot of traffic jams once we got to Sledgehammer and all the, 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 the different courses. Absolutely. Now we want to talk about that. Let's talk about the desert loop. I mean, that's where you're at home. I'm looking out there today. The sun is shining, but the one thing that is really obvious is this dust cloud that's yeah. hanging over the town. There isn't a breath of air at the moment, and that is going to be an issue on this desert lap. It is a lot of times when you have a when you have a little bit of think uh, what you know dust one way or the other wind. You you got it. Uh, you can go to the left or the right. Right now we want to bring in not the third the third person. But we have more more people out there, but we're going to show it, throw it down to Emmy. What do you have for us down at the starting line, Emmy? Take it away. Thank you. It's our proud. Now, as you guys know, it is really cold out here. I saw a couple of guys out there jacking up their vehicles with their Pro Eagle jacks and spinning those rear wheels so they can get their diff oil uh, warmed up, get those that transmission transfer case oil warmed up. It is like 32 degrees out here. Now, I did talk to uh, the number eight, Dan Fresh. He is the man to beat. Now, he has done the UTV class as a pre-run but they didn't get very far so he hasn't actually seen a lot of the rocks and he was planning on having a new vehicle this year however the car did not get finished so he's in the same car that he drove last year but he did tell me that he thinks that that number eight truck still has one more win left in her back to you guys at the booth all righty thank you i mean very good job a lot to go we are just seconds away we're going to give you that countdown as we are watching uh craig allen and scott foley as they're lined up now are they going to be starting every every 30 or one minute a 30 i believe second it is 30 increase. seconds that they're going to be going off the line two at a time that means we're going to have a whole load of action right. nine, nine eight, eight seven six, six five, five four three two one. one roll it yeah <laughs> and it's go time here in hammertown this is the 2023 progressive insurance king of the hammers and this is the four wheel parts every man challenge and we are off first two cars are heading out into the desert right now and that is craig allen and scott foley well, as you can see, there's no win right here. Now we're watching the next two competitors, and that's Michael Kelly in the 707, and that is our that, and Jesse Oliver. And, and showing, no, it's not. That I'm is sorry. Dan Fresh. That is showing Dan Fresh. I <laughs> apologize. That is Dan Fresh, last year's winner, and look at him taking the whole shot there as he works his way out of Hammertown. Now, next up, it was going to be our first of the 4500s. This is Jesse Oliver lining up next to Jeremy Jones. Jeremy Jones will be in that Trent Fab machine. Look at that, Jeremy Jones there on the inside with the big star on the side of his vehicle. And on the outside of him is Jesse Oliver, who is the first of our 4500 Yukon gear and axle modified class drivers and heading out of Hammertown right now. All right, he's starting in seventh, is 1950 Logan Goodall, and in eighth, 4863 John Holtzman. Yeah, Logan Goodall was going to be the second of our Yukon gear and axle modified class leaving, leaving Hammertown today. So good to see those 4500s sneaking up amongst the 48s. And we'll be going into more class detail a little bit later, but let's get these guys off the line. All right, 9 and 10th, we got 48-96 Buddy Carlton, as well as in 10th, 4862 Cody Young. Yeah, they're also racing in the Brannock Motorsports Legends class. And there's so much action here today. 
Well, Jim, and what I love about this is so many different designs. We got straight axe, we got uh, independent front suspension. There's a lot going on. Yeah, absolutely. No, we won't see. Uh, oh, no, you're right. No, you won't see any independence there. Just want to pull this back because that looks like that there is Cody Young leaving the line alongside Andrew Gorman. Or Buddy Carlton, should I say. And next off the line will be Andrew Gorman and Jacob Paccio. Also racing in the 4800 Brannock Motorsports. Legends class. Now, this is such a stacked field out here. As we see that Miller frame there heading off out into the desert. And there's the 4853 of Andrew Gorman. Should be lining up against the 48 1 and 2 of Jacob Paccio. Next off the line, it will be Dwayne Garretson, the man with the beard. And he's also racing in the 4500 Yukon gear and axle modified class. And he'll be running out alongside another well known face here, Justin Barth, who's racing in 4800. Let's not forget that we have got 153 runners and riders out there today amongst three different classes. And you can stay up with the action if you disappear down to kingofthehammers.com forward slash live. You'll be able to find live scoring. You'll be able to find live tracking and be able to stay with the action. Very tight, but looks like Dwayne gets the whole shot. Next on the line in 15th and 16th is number 44, Joshua Baxi, as well as in 16th, 4861, Anthony Areola. Anthony, obviously, been here for many, many years racing. It'd be great to see what he can do on that track today. Now, Joshua Baxi with the whole shot. Next up on the line is uh, 224, Brett Dixon, as well as 4580, John Matthews. Yeah, John Matthews, one of our um, seasoned competitors here in the 4500 Yukon Gear and Axle Modified class. And John Matthews actually won the 4500 last year, so I wonder what he's got for us today. Has he got what it takes to go back to back? All right, 19th and 20th, we have 1006 Derek Summers and number 91 Matt Bradley. Uh, if you want to watch the action live, head on over to YouTube, find the King of the Hammers YouTube channel. And if you subscribe to the premium, it'll cost you $25. You'll see all the extra action, all the background shots, and none of the adverts. It's well worth the money. So check it out and join us and stay with myself and Ricky and our other live hosts throughout the day. Number in starting 21st and 22nd is 56. Brent Harrell is far and also number 747, Chad Jesse. Yeah, Brent Harrell is the son of Brett Harrell, uh, who will be racing in 4400 later this week. And Brent Harrell, we'll see him shortly, is in the obstacle car. There it is, built by Paul Herschel, an absolutely amazing machine. Keep an eye on this young man. I'm expecting great things from him today. Next on the line is 4869, Chuck Crossland and 489 is Christian ba Bass, or Bass. Yeah, Chuck Gorslin's been racing with us for many years as well, season competitor here in Hammertown. Looks like Chuck got the whole shot. Next on the line is 4881, Jay Schwab, and 1949, Nicholson, uh, Nicholas Alargri. Hello, great. Yep. And now all our racers are starting. Our first of our racers are making their way out into the desert. You can track them live on the trackers. Starting 27th and 28th is 312 Eric Brinker. And starting 28th is 421 Russell Raven Jr. And still they're leaving the line here from Hammertown. 153 racers will be taking the line as we watch Eric Brinker there making his way out of Hammertown. Starting 29th and 30th is 4865, 
Don Bentke in 37, Dustin Sexton. Yeah, Dustin Sexton, also a seasoned competitor here. Next one on the line is 57-59 of Craig Johnson and 130 of Austin Thompson. These cars also in the 4800 Brannock Motorsports Legends class. It's a very strong class, the Legends class has the most entries of all three classes today. Just look at these machines, Ricky. They're absolutely beautiful. We have that is Dustin Sexton running out there. 110 of these vehicles. Unbelievable, the it's showing amazing. that we have. Starting 33rd and 34th is 4802 Russ uh, Glaive and 889 Rob Inglis. Sun is shining here in Hammertown, but there's not a breath of air. And just look how this dust is just hanging over the short course. They'll be hoping the wind picks up once they break out into the desert sections. It's a 70 mile, 72 mile loop. There's the 889 there of Ross Clave. Takes the whole shot off the line from Rob Inglis. 35th and 36th is 4813 of Rory Rob. Romero, as well as 4531, Sean Rance. Sean Rance and the OG Bronco will be seeing him lining up very shortly. Hugely popular. We love to see Sean racing out here. It's a car that took a big tumble last year, had to be fully rebuilt. And there she is, look at that. The OG Bronco of Hammertown, Sean Rance there. Looks like he gets the whole shot over Rory Romero. At 37th of 38th is 4777 Jeffy Bradford and starting at 38th, 406 Eric Wickle. Eric is also a seasoned competitor here. <clears throat> Adam Montana, he's running a Jimmy Chassis LS3 TH400 Atlas. Eric Wickle with a whole shot. And now starting 40th and 41st is 4506 Dustin Brat Bratton as well as 4850 of Daniel Gutenberg. So many runners and riders here as we watch Eric Wickle making oh, his right. way out. That was a best print you can on always, my... You can always tell Eric's vehicle is the 406 with those flames down the side. I apologize, my bad. Starting 39th and 40th, 804 is Matthew uh, Torney and also Dustin Brad. Yeah, they're just heading off the line right now. And just look at the way the dust is enveloping its hammer town. The leaders are approaching race mile 10. They're, they're just starting to get everything ironed out. Once again, this is more the desert loop. It's going to give, give us some great separation as they take off out into the out into the desert. But that's going to help them before they get to the rocks because with this many competitors, it's going to be very, very tight. That is Trent Roberts and Brandon Goodwin as they're off the line. 41st and 42nd. Next on the line is uh, Brandon Goodwin and Matthew Jones. And if you go to kingofthehammers.com forward slash live you will be able to find the tracker info and you'll be able to, stay, able to stay up with the race there and I can tell you at the moment our current race leader is still Craig Allen punching his way out into the desert just beyond race mile 10 right at this moment and looking here it looks like second place might be Dan Fresh so it looks like Dan Fresh might have already started making his moves Dan Fresher was our overall winner last year and of course the winner of the 4800 class. Has he got what it takes to win here again? As we watch Matt Trevino going off the line. Matt Trevino has been racing with us many years as well. A firm favourite in this 4800 class. Next on the line, Next on the line is Rick Lavezzo and also Peter Dewan. Yeah, now Rick Lavezzo, he's going to be racing multiple duties this weekend. He's not only racing in the 4500 class, he's also racing in the 4400 class tomorrow in an IFS car. Now, Rick Lavezzo's car's got one of the largest engines in this field, producing well over 700 horsepower. Let's see what he can do with it. 
Well, it's one thing to have the horsepower, but it's to get it to the ground. And also, a lot of these guys adjust more for the rocks than they do the desert, so it, it is quite a handful in that open desert. Yeah, he, was, he has a very interesting machine, but it's worth keeping an eye on as well. As we watch Jeremy Brown and, Jer and Kenneth Goodall heading off the line. Next up is Luke Kempman and Ned Lant Lemming. Yeah, Kenneth Goodall, season racer here. We've already seen his son, Logan Goodall, head out into the desert. Can Kenneth catch his son? That's Jeremy Brown there in the Trent Fab car. Lots of Trent Fab cars racing out here this year. As we watch heading off the line now, it is Ned Lamming. I believe that is going to be Luke Campman. Alrighty, next up we have Cody St. Clair and Kimberly Sparrow. Yeah, both of these guys, both, or should I say, this guy and girl. Cody Sinclair is a seasoned uh, veteran here in the 4500 class, 4500 Yukon Gear and Axle Modified class, and Kimberly Sparrow is going to be racing, I believe, alongside her husband, Hunter Sparrow. We saw her qualifying earlier in the week. She laid down a fantastic time. So great to see Kimberly Sparrow here on the start line. Starting, fi starting 56 and 55th and 56 is Garrett Hunston and Dawson Arlington. Arlington. Yeah, Dawson is racing a car that has actually won this class before, but with a previous driver. So what can Dawson do? Now, Dawson wrecked last, this, last year, crossing the line. So he had a massive role. So let's hope that Dawson has a better race today. Oh, looks like he's slow off the line. Maybe having to clear some cylinders out. Yeah, that happens a lot of times when they sit and idle for so long and they go to take off. It takes a little while to, to burn the, the carpet off the plugs and get it rolling. Next up is Troy Digby and Don Steen. And I'm just, uh, just talking about Dawson Abington and the previous owner of the car walked straight in front of me. How are we doing, sir? Right, onwards and upwards. So I believe we're Troy Digby and Don Stein next on the line. Yes. And they are heading out of town right now. Fantastic shots here from our drones and static cameras in Hammertown. And the crowds are building here in front of the booth. This is going to be a great day of racing, Ricky. The sun is starting to get some warmth. It was an absolutely Baltic three degrees here this morning. <laughs> Baltic. All right, next up, 59 the 60th is Eddie Oliver and Victor Beal. And still the cars keep leaving Hammertown. Say so over 150 entries today. So we are not even halfway through the starting field. Not yet. There's going to be so much action out there. Absolutely unbelievable. Over 140 miles of race course. Racing the same course that we saw the UTVs on yesterday. And they laid down an incredible one. Now, Ricky, here's a question for you. Are um, four wheel parts every man challenge competitors? able to beat that incredible time laid down by Kyle Cheney. If I had to bet all my money on it, I would say absolutely not. Kyle Cheney was absolutely spot on yesterday. Just was clean, made no mistakes, wished right when he needed to, didn't take any chances. When that car came across the finish line, it was ready for another race. It was indeed. As we watch Ryan Taylor and Paul Taylor. Ryan Taylor in another Trent Fab car. So many Trent Fab vehicles in this 4800 lineup. It's a classic shape, a classic style, a classic Hammers race car. We're down in, we're down into qualifying order of 55 and I'm sorry, 65 and 66 is Randall Holmes and Victor Bunes. And still they're making their way out. Let's not forget we can go at live to our trackers. Alrighty, Jim. So let's 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 educate the people a little bit on the tracker. What do we see out there? Okay. So now, if we're looking at the tracker, I believe we're going to have bring in the tracker right now. Let's have a quick look. See, there it is. Okay. You'll see all those yellow dots out there. Now, these are the cars, or all the cars that are on course. If we look at the top of our screen here, we'll see that we've got three numbers at the top there. We've got the eight of Dan Fresh. We click on it, and if we look down there, we can see it last updated. He's doing 34 mile an hour at the moment. 
and it last updated at 8.15. That's important, watch that ping. If we now drop down to car 75, which is the one behind him, you'll see this also pinged at 8.15, which means that we can say safely that Dan Fresh is our current race leader and has passed Scott Foley and Craig Allen for the lead. Well, and, and ladies and gentlemen, you do not need to wait for us. You can go to the website, you can click around, go, to, go watch your favorite driver. But remember, don't just look at the dots on there. Click on there, check the time, check where the stamp is. And also, if you see over here on the far left, we see one of those drivers with a red mark on the bottom. That means he's sitting still. Yeah, I just noticed there that uh, Scott Foley's tracker has now just pinged again. And you'll see he's bounced up in front of Dan Fresh. But this is the whole point. Is it's all about just watching those trackers. They only ping every few minutes. And if they uh, have a moment where they lose reception, it might be they miss a ping. Yep. So pay careful attention. It's like tracker, tracker chess. <laughs> tracker chess. There we go. Kind of like tracker frogger. They jump, <laughs> they leap, they go back and forth. But no, it, it's awesome to, to all the different stuff that we see. And with the Hammer Productions, we have drones, we have helicopters. So we, I think we have a couple of helicopters. It's going to be pretty unreal. Yeah, that's. All right, as we're watching the, the drivers take off, we got another report from Emmy down in the pit. Emmy, take it away. Thanks, you guys. So earlier today in the lineup, I was talking to Brad Lovell in the 4621 Ford Bronco. And man, this guy, he is gunning for the win in this stock class. He says he knows the pace out here. They are ready to execute on the plan. That Bronco is looking awesome. So I'm stoked to see those guys cross the starting line. But you know, another very interesting vehicle that I did not see in the lineup, and I hope they make it, is the 2412 Test 10. That is a rock crawler that has been outfitted with a Tesla electric motor and battery. They've got 85 kilowatt hours of battery. They're not 100% sure though how long that is gonna last them because they haven't had a chance to do much testing. They will have a chance to uh, charge with the Optima Level 2 portable charger. So keep an eye out for number 2412. It is the only electric vehicle competing out here in the Everyman Challenge. One of the favorite races out here at the 2023 King of the Hammers. Back to you guys in the booth. Awesome job, Emmy. And so we're talking, it says so many kilowatt hours, but we don't know how long that's going to desert hour so that's a math equation that we are not quite sure of when it comes to kilowatt versus desert driving because here's the thing if you're driving on consistent uh, surface like you're driving down the road and you're light on the throttle versus hard on the throttle here there's a lot of big bursts to get you up and down these rocks and through sand washes and stuff but it's awesome to see some of the electric vehicles on there i've seen some of the revving rev 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 vehicles driving around very very cool it is indeed, <clears throat> and it's only a matter of time until we see some serious 4,400 electric vehicles lining up here in Hammertown. But still the vehicles keep leaving the line, still they keep powering out into the desert in this, the four-wheel parts, every man challenge. Another seasoned competitor there, Brian Moore making his way out into the desert, leaving Hammertown. Well, you might, you might be wondering why is some uh, season adventure starting back there? Because these guys know that they have to save their vehicle through qualifying to get to the race. And also they don't have to qualify. That's a really worthwhile point noting. That qualifying course was really tough this year. And there's a lot of guys out there who say, do you know what? I'm going to save my car. I'm going to sit in the back of the field. I'm going to play the game of risk. I'm going to take the chance. I'm going to watch those guys falling out in the desert in front of me, and I'm going to be better for it when I get to the rocks. Because how many times have we seen somebody go out so hard? We saw this a lot in the Desert Challenge. Run really, really hard, and the next thing you know, they're on the sidelines 30 miles in because you stressed your vehicle. In fact, we've got a, just such an, um, uh, an example of that coming up in a minute. One of our top running vehicles, Justin Hall from the 4500 Yukon Gear and Axel Motherfuck class, he went to qualify, had a mare. In fact, this is Justin Hall going off the line right now in the stripy green and uh, blue car. At, uh, now, Justin had an absolute nightmare of qualifying, was expecting to be right at the sharp end of this event, and he wasn't after it all went horribly wrong in the rocks for him. So he's had to repair his car, he's had to sort it all out, and he finds himself right back in 86th position, which is about roughly where he would have been if he hadn't qualified. Exactly. Well, Billy McAllister and Paul Smith are on the line next. Uh, we've seen a lot of these, a lot of, a lot of Jimmy's vehicles. You know, that Jimmy's chassis yep. is what they had in the spec. 
We see a lot of that out there. Now, Billy McAllister is another one who had an absolute shocker during qualifying. Ended up, I believe, uh, doing all kinds of different things out there. But, uh, my mind escapes me. I, I want to say he rolled, but I don't want to say it just in case <laughs> I got it wrong. We don't want to jinx him. Exactly. He, if he did, we got that out of the way. So we <laughs> pulled it, we pulled that mojo away from McAllister. Exactly. But he's another guy. He started in the back of his class, even though he attempted to qualify. And that shows how hard the qualifying was here in Hammertown this year. But it did, they did, the people here did give them a couple days to work on their cars if they choose to do so. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, well, they do. You know, <laughs> there is no easy way onto this race course. Everybody piles in the hours. The amount of motors I've heard being replaced this weekend, the amount of trannies or transmissions, as I would like to call them, that have been destroyed and replaced. Um, suspension components, tires, wheels, the list goes on and on. And all of these crews would have been working hard into the night to make sure they're there. Now, this is interesting. We've seen Steve Crawford there, and alongside him is a guy called Michael Henn. Michael Henn there is proudly flying the Israeli flag, and he is our sole entry from Israel. So great to see Michael Henn racing. He had also had a shocker on qualifying, barely made it to the rocks before something failed in the transmission of the vehicle. So great to see that Michael did make it to the start line. All right, next is Coral Hornock and uh, Johnny Valdez. All right, we have some more information from Emmy down on the starting line. Emmy, take it away. Thank you so much, Ricky. So, you know, we've all been following the saga of Amber Turner as she's competing here in the EMC Challenge uh, with her um, Suzuki Samurai. But I talked to her friend, Megan Miller, at number 3105, and she said that she was surprised because she's really excited. She's not too nervous. Now, we'll see if that changes once she gets in her helmet and out here waiting for that green flag. But uh, her plan here is to JFF, just effing finish. But she's been out here pre-running for a week. She knows these trails. She is ready and set to go. We've got a lot of females out here at this EMC oh. race. I saw a lot of ladies in the co-driver seat. We've got Amber and Megan in the driver's seat. So it's that's great to see a lot of women coming into this sport that's, that's, as well, that's, that's, because that's as you all know, to drive one of these vehicles doesn't take a lot of strength. All it takes is a lot of intelligence and a lot of guts. Back to you guys in the booth. Thank you very much, Emmy. Uh, I'm just watching my tracker right now, and we have got a race in our hands out there in the desert. It looks like Dan Fresh is having it given back to him by Craig Allen. Looks like Craig Allen might have even passed Dan Fresh again, but it's always hard to tell with these trackers. But I'm looking at the ping rates, and I'm looking roughly where it is, and it looks like we've got a battle royale going on out there. And Dan Fresh being the defending champion, he knows what it takes to get that vehicle to the finish line. And and that's the thing that I love about this racing, and it actually taught me a lot about my own desert racing, is that you have to know when to go slow and when to go fast and not try to mix the two up. Absolutely. And while we're just chatting to Emmy there, we did see the car of 866, Sean Radsky, another firm crowd favorite, working his way into the desert. But at the moment, Shad Kennedy and Levi Rhodes as we're heading off the line now. It is the 628 of Corey Allenson and Nesta Camacho. We are driver number 100 at this point, and we have 153 entries here in the Everman Challenge. It is gonna be complete mayhem once we get to the rocks. It is indeed, and very soon we are gonna be seeing the first of our Curry Enterprises 4600 stock class cars leaving the line, and the first of those will be, of course, Off-Road Hall of Famer himself, Brad Lovell. Brad definitely knows his way around here, and also short course as well as desert. So Brad is com the complete package. He's been with Amswell for so many years. He's out. He's working with Ford very closely. Him and his brother they have a very, very tight, uh, a very, very tight uh, partnership between them, and they also know these rocks. They do indeed. We're just hearing the confirmation that our leaders are approximately 10 miles out of Remote Pit One. So they are smoking hot as they make their way around this desert loop as we watch the number 740 heading off the line. So you, you pose the question to me, do you think the king of the Everyman Challenge is going to beat the UTV time? Now we were chatting about this round the fire pit last night, and that's the wonderful thing about Hammers. You can come down here and everybody has an opinion. Yes. <laughs> so stood by the fire pit, and the general consensus is that our fastest car today is probably going to be something in the region about 20 to 25 minutes slower than Kyle Cheney yesterday. Yeah, because 
through the desert, we saw speeds of 95 miles an hour. I mean, it, that that KNM was absolutely on point, so it's going to be very, very tough. Yeah, it's Jacob Peak there and Holly Fowler heading out into the desert. Holly Fowler, a 4500 Yukon gear and axle modified class, and Jacob Peak in 4800 Brannock Motorsports. And even though, even though that that they are a much a much smaller tire. There was a lot of wear and tear of guys getting stuck and then pulling the dirt out in between the rocks yesterday. So that's another problem for this Everman Challenge. Well, that's very interesting because what we saw during qualifying, we saw that the UTVs did incredibly well up at Chocolate Thunder. They were running very equally sized tires, so they only dug a certain amount. Once we actually had the uh, once we actually had the uh, uh, the bigger class get yeah. in there with the bigger wheels and tires, they started to dig out that sand and it made it even more difficult for the cars coming after them. So, when, so when, uh, to finish the thought about the UTVs yesterday, there were a lot of vehicles stuck in there, a lot of a lot of crashes, a lot of people losing all-wheel drive. And when they're doing that, they have to use much more throttle, they're much harder on the course, and then throwing the dirt up on the rocks, which makes it difficult. Because a lot of times today, you're going to see a guy come up, get to a rock, and then you're like, why is he doing that? What he's doing is he's getting the tires hot, looking for more traction before he runs up. Ah, uh, look at this great action here from the desert. That's heading out Baldwin's jump that's just outside of town. They would have made their ways past Means Butte. Gets on the bumper of the car in front of him. Now he's looking for that spot where he can cut left, cut right. When you're that close, you're getting all that dirt coming through into your visor. You need to get as close as you can to avoid that. Well, and they also have to push to pass, but a lot of times that's the push to let them know that it's time for them to, to speed up. Jackrabbit. Jackrabbit. But you have a winch on the front of your vehicle, so you don't want to be hitting people too hard. Even though they, they decided to keep that protected, if you come in and get them too hard, that could ruin your day. Absolutely. It's the old, it's the old adage, two taps, oh, sorry, two toots, two taps, two tum. <laughs> But as you just said, these cars aren't desert cars. They're not set up for hit punching people. So they haven't got the back bumpers. They haven't got the front bumpers. And here we go. He's making his move now. And he'll be looking for that extra horsepower as he just pops back in again. And the frustration level will be around about 10 right now. Well, if you look at the vehicle, I would be, if I was in the second car, I got that bumper up there that looks like it's protecting my winch, and he's got the tire. So yep. you could come up and give him a little bump to let him know, but he's going to look, he's going to shoot off to the side, and here we go. He's made the pass. Yeah, now I always like to drop in as quickly as I can and give him a big face full of dust to say <laughs> thank you. That, I would like to say that, that, uh, that that's not the way we do it here, but that's exactly how we do it here. <laughs> <laughs> you would be a fibber if you told me different. Okay, so we're just being told that we're going to have a five minute break before we send the uh, 4600 Curry Enterprises stock class into the desert. And the first of those vehicles will be Brad Lovell. Let's talk about that because we don't want to penalize. They've worked so hard to be the first uh, Curry Enterprises 4600. And now if you put them right on the bumper, that's really going to get, make the havoc for them. So you're penalized for qualifying first. Absolutely. The 4600s do not, whereas the 48 and the 45 are mixed together uh, as they're at equal class speeds, uh, what the 4600s, they actually start behind the other two classes as they are usually slower. Yeah. However, the Broncos of Brad Lovell, Lauren Healy, um, Alba Contreras, oh, sorry, um, Bailey Cole, um, they are very, very quick indeed. So let's see if they can get clear air. Now, the interesting story in this is that Bailey Cole chose not to qualify. Well, he's been he's been running that he's been he ran that car in the desert challenge as well. So we got to be sure when we come back from this commercial break, we are going to be starting the Curry Enterprises 4600. We'll, we'll be right back, with King and Hammers. We'll see you in a minute. Sometimes adventure is a road, a ribbon of dirt winding through the woods, or a strip of pavement disappearing over the horizon. More often than not, how we travel these roads is the adventure. Move confidently. Journey often and stand strong when the pavement ends. Over 25 years of off-road racing dominance. Proprietary patented race technology. Proudly made in the USA. Unparalleled customer service and support. The choice of champions. King Shocks, the leader in off-road shock technology. 
Okay, and welcome back to the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers. We are here today for the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. And we have got the 4500s and the 4600s already running out into the desert. Very shortly is going to be the turn of the 4600 Curry Enterprise stock class to enter this race. And leading off the line first will be Lauren Healy. Joined alongside him will be Abba Contreras. Behind them will be Mick Henson and Mike Lopez. Followed by Brian McNamara and James Garbage. So there's so many great vehicles in this lineup. But it's going to be interesting to see where these Broncos end up this afternoon. Now, last year we saw a complete Bronco lockout with Vaughan Gitty Jr., Brad Lovell and Bailey Cole dominating this field. So what can they do today? Or can Albert Contreras or one of the other amazing drivers in this class upset them? But right now it's all about our leaders as they're heading out into the desert and very soon they're going to be passing their way through. They're going to be passing their way through into remote pit one as we watch our 4600 Curry's Enterprise stock class heading out into the desert. So much racing here today. 153 vehicles will be leaving the line here in Hammertown. Over 140 miles of racing ahead. Racing the same course as we saw the 4900 UTVs racing yesterday where Carl Cheney was so dominant. And that is the 4605 there of Abba Contreras. Yeah, Craig Allen and Dan Fresh are still battling hard and they'll be working their way into remote pit one. Now, this is strategy. What's going to happen? Is, are they going to stop? Are they going to be taking on fuel early? Are they going to be changing tires? It looks like, judging by the trackers, that none of them have got any flats. So I'm guessing they're going to blow straight through remote pit one and make their way back towards Hammertown. There is so much action here. It is absolutely unbelievable. And do not forget, tomorrow will be the Nitto Race of Kings, powered by Optima Batteries, starting at 8 a.m. sharp. Be sure to join us. It is going to be an incredible race. As we watch the 46.02 of Brad Barnett heading out into the desert. I do love this 4600 Curry Enterprises stock class. The vehicles are so easily identifiable. Looks so good as they're making their way around the short course and heading out into that first 72 kilometer desert loop. Now I'm just looking at my tracker and the lead three cars are Scott Foley, Craig Allen and Dan Fresh. And there is literally a hair breadth between them. So once we get visual on them as they come through remote pit one, we'll be able to work out who is currently leading this race. So still the cars are leaving the line, and that is Bailey Cole. Now Bailey Cole is the son of Dave Cole. Fantastic driver, and he will be giving no quarter, but look at this, the car alongside him, giving him absolutely everything to hold him off, but Bailey Cole goes around the outside. Now Bailey chose not to qualify. So, so exp explain to me, Jim, how he has a, a starting spot so high. Did, was it a draw for the people that didn't qualify? Absolutely. So if you don't choose not to qualify, his name's in the hat and you're drawn out. And Bailey actually has a pretty good starting position without okay. actually, with actually not damaging his car. Well, and so, so if we look, majority of these vehicles decided not to qualify. Absolutely. Yep. And that is Bailey Cole there making his way into the desert. These Broncos have completely changed the, uh, the face and the shape of the 4600 Curry Enterprise stock class. And this is the exact vehicle that he was running in the Desert Challenge just a week ago. So he's very, very comfortable with this vehicle because that's one thing, as we talked about before, you said some of the guys jumped up to the, the dual shocks, the pat bypasses. If you know your vehicle, I think that's some, it's sometimes more important, knowing when it's going to buck and kick, all the different stuff. Because, like I said, newer, bigger, and better isn't always faster. Sometimes it's what you know. 
Absolutely. Yeah, now Bailey Cole is such a talented driver. It's going to be interesting to see what he can do. Can Let's not forget, he's starting on adjusted time against his other classmates. So Brad Lavell, yes, he left the line first, but Bailey still has the clock starting yes. at the same time. So is that going to work better for him? Well, it's, it's some of the classes in the Desert Challenge last week, we had the prologue, which you took your time and you went. Now, this is not the case. You qualify for your starting position, but everybody starts at zero. Yes. So we might, if so, in theory, Brad Level could cross the line first, but if Bailey Cole finishes 20 seconds behind him, he will be the champion. Exactly that. Now, I'm really intrigued by this. I think it's a really good move by Bailey. I'm going to be watching very, very closely. I'm expecting him to be charging through those early back markers. Also, they're not back markers, but charging past those other classmates of his as he works his way through the desert. I would not be at all surprised if he has a time advantage on Brad Lovell by the time he reaches Remote Pit 1. Well, and it's gonna, it, it's how much pre-running have they done? Have they found different routes to winch up? Because with these smaller tires, a lot of a lot of times, they are, they're not gonna be able to drive up, they're gonna have to do a lot of winching. So their co-driver could make the difference. How, how fit that that, that co-driver is, how quick he can get, get in and out and set those winch lines. Yeah, absolutely. And still the cars keep leaving Hammertown. As we watch there, I believe that's the, just trying to pick a number there, the 46-23. That is John Williams making his way over the top of Baldwin's jump and down into the desert. Oh, look at this. Cars everywhere trying to find different lines, picking their way through the desert. And this gives you an idea. The difference in pace between these classes is absolutely remarkable. Well, and also, oh, and we also have some we have some people that are on the sidelines. If you are a desert racer, as we're watching Bailey Cole as he works his way over Baldwin's jump, if you are new to this and you come out here, if you have a problem, get as far as you can off to the side because, like that, drivers are going to be spread out, looking for a way around, and you do not want to be uh, caught by another vehicle. Exactly. The dust is heavy here today. We've got hardly a breath of air, and so that dust will be hanging in great big sheets across the desert. So I, I think what you're going to see is I'm going to I'm going to concur with what you said, Jim. Is that Bailey Cole is starting quite a ways behind um, Brad Level and Lauren Healy, but he he can make a lot of ground in desert without 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 the rock challenge. All right, so the leaders are through remote pit one, and that actually, they're already 10 minutes behind the pace uh, of what we had in the UTVs. So those those KMs, those uh, uh, Polaris R, um, Pro Rs, they were running an unbelievable pace through the desert as well. Yeah, we are hoping to get some eyeball on these guys coming through remote pit one. But we are in the Mojave Desert, and right now it says no. So look at this fantastic <laughs> look at these fantastic images here, Ricky. Well, we had the the Baja uh, Baja Vida Beef Jerky Class 11 Challenge, and that's where you're seeing a lot more of these lines. You see the main line is very deep ruts, and sometimes for these for these Everman Challenge guys, it's better to break off to go a little bit longer, a little bit further out of the way, even though you are on legal track to, to get around some of those uh, deep ruts. Yeah, and it's worth noting that legal distance out in the desert is 150 foot from line of center of the course. Once they get to the rocks, that changes, and it's 50 foot from line of center either side of that, either side of the center, of course. Well, and we're going to see some creative lines because we're going to see some people getting getting stuck. Um, some of these rocks are so big you cannot move rocks to restack them and do this, do that, like you can if you're out wheeling with your buddy. Let's stack a couple rocks, get some traction under that tire. But they are going to be doing some unbelievable stuff. You know, we do some of that training in American Off-Road with the military guys, but not at this level. It is amazing how fast and how creative these guys get and, and also keep themselves safe as they're winching up these hills. It's also amazing the amount of stupidity we will see out on these tracks, but that's another easy, thing entirely. Easy, easy. <laughs> we resemble that remark. <laughs> <laughs> we do resemble that, Mark. You're quite right. I like that. All right, as you can see the split screen. We still have them coming off of, off of Hammertown. We are about three quarters of the way through. Um, if you're just tuning in, you're watching the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers powered by Optima Batteries, and you're watching live the four-wheel parts Everyman Challenge presented by Progressive Insurance. 
This is a two-lap race with a total mileage of 142 miles. At this point, the, the current leaders have made their way through remote pit one. If you're, if you're geeking out on numbers, they are approximately 10 minutes uh, slower than, than the, UT, the can -M UTV challenge yesterday. So um, the UTVs were definitely running hard. It'll be interesting once they get to the rocks because this, they have a little bit more wheelbase, a little bit more, uh, a little more horsepower to get up there, but they were going fast yesterday. Absolutely. I can tell you now that the first lead cars are in Turkey Claw, so they are making their way back towards Hammertown. We see Justin Andrews from Factor 55 out in front of the booth. Good morning, Justin. So it is a race between Dan Fresh, Scott Foley, and Craig Allen at the moment. And they are working their way back towards Hammertown. Well, you, in a lot of cases, you, you're thinking, why is the guy just following? You know, why doesn't he just get around and move around him? Well, the one thing that you know, if he's not hitting big rocks and big holes, you're not. But you can see he's going to go up, use a little bit of the bumper, going to try to get up there. It's like, ah, oh, it's a little bit high. Hey, I'm here. I'm here. That's so he, say, yeah, well, that's, <laughs> that's your two taps. So and the next one is two ton. Well, the problem is with that high spare tire and also the, the, the frame, the chest that's underneath, that could come over the top and blow his hood apart. Been there, done that as well. So you have to be careful on that. And once you lose that gap and you lose that light, because if you, if you get close enough, you can just drive blindly, but you have that red light to let you know you're on track. I think this is either our final two or there might be one vehicle left to cross the line. Just gives you an idea of the pace that we still have vehicles leaving the line here as our cars work their way back into Hammertown. And that is the 431 there of John Rance. Yes, you can tell by how quiet it is. The, am the ambient noise behind us is very quiet. And that is our final starter. That is Amber Turner making her way into the desert in her little samurai. Great to see Amber taking the line today. I believe she has two co-drivers. I believe she has uh, Tom Liu uh, in for the desert lap and then a Stuart Hanna in for the rocks. Well, that, it's not a wrap, but that's a wrap for the start. You get very it's quiet here in Hammertown. Start. But if you're just tuning in, this is the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers powered by Optima Batteries. And we have just seen all the drivers off the line for the four-wheel parts, every man challenge presented by Progressive. We also want to thank the people from Can-Am, Ford, Bronco, Monster Energy, Optima Batteries, Nitto Tires, Progressive Insurance, Toyo Tires, Four-wheel parts and Griffin radiators. Amsoil, Tribe 16, CA Technologies, Spider Tracks, KMC Wheels, Laser Nut, PCI Race Radios, and the SDQ Rookie Program. As well as Curry Inter Enterprises, Brannock Motorsports, Yukon Gear and Axle, Holly EFI, King Shocks, VP Racing Fuels, and Warren Factor 55. The Terra Crew, Onyx Off-Road, Recaro Seats, EMPI, Pro Eagle, Baja Vida, <laughs> Baja Vida. Baja Vida. You got it. Baja Vida, Beef Jerky, and Buggy Whip. As well as ARB, SRT Off-Road, which was a big uh, title sponsor of the uh, King of the Motos, as well as Share My Coach, Dana Spicer Electrified, as well as Axial RC Cars, Action Sports Canopies, and Nacho Lights. To say what Miles would say, support the people who support the sport. Absolutely, um, it's been it's been a great uh, event so far, and we still have just started the Everman Challenge as well as the Battle of the Kings tomorrow. We have indeed. It is the Nitto Race of Kings tomorrow, but right now it is the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge, and the lead vehicles are making their way into Hammertown. Now, who's it going to be? Who's going to be at the pointy end of this race? We know that there's a battle royale between Scott Foley, Craig Allen, and last year's winner, Dan Fresh. All right, that was a, a shot from Roy. And here we see, I think that is Bailey Cole, or no, that no, is that's Brad, Brad Lovell. Lovell. You can see Lovell already starting to make his move on the other vehicle. So he, he, he bridged that gap of the five minutes, and now he's starting to work his way through. And, and as you said, get in front, throw a little dust in their face. He's trying to create some space between him and Lauren Healy. Absolutely. And Brad, he's been there, seen it, done it. He has won multiple classes in the Everyman Challenge in the past. Well, and what I love is when you see a, a driver like Brad Level, who's been with Amsoil through all of his racing, through Pro, two, pro Light, Pro 2, uh, Desert uh, 6100, also all of his championships out here at King of the Hammer. So it's great when you see... Uh, a driver sponsor marriage in a, a commitment like that. It's awesome to see the support from Amsoil out here. You see Scott Douglas out supporting it, supporting the racers, but I love how they've stuck with him so many years. And I love the fact that Ford have approached him and put him onto this Bronco program. That's an awesome thing 
The Lovells, they're not a big budget race team. They just work so well and they're so committed. It's a full family effort. As we watch more action here on the track. That's a two for one. That that is money right there. When you can when you can bag two guys and you get that clean air. Whoa! You can see how that that vehicle's working hard, bouncing. You got to be careful on, on this because these bumps were created by the trophy trucks. And it suddenly started snowing in the booth. You know what that means? That's ash from the fire, which means we've got wind, ladies and gentlemen. That's fantastic. This is not something you want to see this early in the race. Guys are in the remote pit one, uh, 48-53. They're getting out, the, guy, the driver's out, the, the co-driver's out, helmets off. So not the way you want to start this Everyman Challenge. No, that's not the way you want to start that challenge at all. Yeah, that was Andrew Gorman there that we saw in the pits. And very shortly, we'll be seeing our lead cars making their way into Hammertown. But who's it going to be, Ricky? Dan Fresh, Scott Foley, Craig Allen. I'm going to go with the champion, Dan Fresh, not just because I think he's the obvious pick, but he's definitely somebody that knows his way around this, this course. So there is the Bronco of Vaughan Gittin Jr. we saw there, but I think it might be Lauren Healy driving, but we're just trying to find out and get confirmation of that. Well, I mean, we are going to see some of the drivers do part of the loop and then swap back and forth. You're going to see, uh, I think, in the Race of Kings tomorrow, a lot of people are going to stay in a vehicle. There might be a few that make the change, but a lot of guys are going to stay in there and run the whole race out. Jim? Yeah, that's very, very true. Um, to, there's also, we've got some 4,400 class drivers that are going to be racing out there today or doing sections of this course. Oh, no, no one likes to see this. This is heading out towards Baldwin's Jump. That is one of our Curry Enterprises stock class vehicles. That is car 37. And it looks like he's finding this sand very difficult. And that is Andrew Gorman there. We can see them working away. And look at the size of the team he's got there. It's a multi-team effort, and it looks like there's either the driver or the co-driver that is actually out helping manning the jack. So that is uh, Josh Pat there. And it looks like he's struggling to find any kind of traction and any kind of power to make his way up to Baldwin's jump. And look, it seems to be affecting a whole bunch of our stock class vehicles here. Well, it, because you need to get momentum. When it comes to sand, you can't just power your way through. As we just watched that driver, as he was just slowly trudging. As we're back, I think we're watching... That's Brad. Uh, yeah, Brad Level, as he's passed another. So he's already about uh, 15 cars deep into the vehicles in front of him. So and he's got a great pace going. Exactly. And let's not forget, he is actually... A, he's five minutes behind them, so he's actually eating into the 4500s and the 4800s that are ahead. And that's exactly what he wants to do to his competitors. Put that in there. What they what they call is, uh, push, you know, a moving chicane, so to speak. Put people in between you to, to create some time, because if they get in there, one of those vehicles gets in a log jam in, in the hills. Brad Level could make pull some big, some big, uh, some massive time on these other drivers here we're seeing bailey cole as he's chasing him down he's another driver that chose not to qualify so we don't know exactly where they're at as far as time separation but if he can make those passes in the desert as well it's going to be it's going to be very tight at the end of the race yeah it's going to be very interesting to see if bailey cole can use this desert lap to close time on brad lovell well, and that's going to be that's going to be tough to do because Brad Level also races uh, 6100 or, or Trophy Truck Spec. Um, he's a short course champion, but that's not saying anything away. This young driver has done so much, has picked, upped his game in short course, and definitely has done the same thing when it comes to off uh, desert. As indeed. And it's not going to be long now, ladies and gentlemen, until we see those lead vehicles making their way into town. Here we see a bunch of trucks struggling to get up uh, Baldwin's jump. You can see how steep that is. And the problem is they're trying to get a run halfway up the hill. I'm surprised some of the drivers haven't gone back to the bottom, try to get a good run and go. You also see them off to the side trying to grab any kind of rock for traction. Yep. Whenever you get stuck in the sand, as we see this other driver make it up and over the top. Exactly. Now, if I was those other drivers there and I'd just seen this car go over the top, I would be spinning back around, going to the bottom and taking their line. Yeah, obviously you do not want to run down the race line. You want to get off to the side so you're not going backwards on the course. As we're watching the drivers now, what's good, the good news is is that the drivers are back in the truck and they're buckled in. So once they make that change, but that is not good when he's looking up, shaking his head side to side. Yeah, no, nobody wants to see that. And that's Andrew Gorman. 
It's one of our favourites for this race. So that's tragic for him as we switch back. And that looks like the car number 13 of Bailey, Bailey Cole. And Bailey's picking off another one. So it'll be interesting, once they finish that first lap, we can start getting some stopwatches, figure the time frame, and then also let you guys know who is leading under corrected time versus who's leading on physical time. Because there's so many times you just go, oh, he's winning. But then you see somebody like Bailey who started back a little ways and work his way up. Now, the interesting thing is I'm just watching the tracker here, Ricky, and the three lead cars, they really did burst out in front and took a quite a commanding lead over the rest of the field. But what's happened now is the rest of the field has seemingly started to catch up. So I'm seeing a, a whole host of around about 10 vehicles that are really within shouting distance. So it looks like the pits are going to be busy here in Hammertown. Absolutely. Now, it's all about pit strategy. A lot of our 4400 class cars now have bigger fuel cells so they can burst through pit one, uh, through main pit, get back out into the desert and try to make it a remote pit two to get track position before they refuel. But these are older generation cars. So most of these cars will have slightly smaller cells and it's almost certainty that they are gonna have to pit here in Hammertown before they head out onto their second lap. Well, and I also think that's a, a, it, it helps them because you wanna take a peek at everything, check the oil levels, see if you got any leaks or anything like that. So I think it's good to make sure that you come in, check your vehicle, take a few extra seconds or minutes to check your car. When we come back, we will be, we will continue with the four wheel parts, every man challenge presented by Progressive. We'll be right back. Chase, number 23, it's 2023, this championship's yours. Let's show these guys what's up. Easy, boys, it's not over yet. Big dog still gotta eat. <laughs> Whatever you say, big dog. <laughs> Seriously? These fools think I'm fried? They know the deal. So it's decided. We'll park even deeper into parking spaces so people think they're open. Surprise! <laughs> Can't hear you, Jerry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, can we get a system where when someone's bike is in the shop, then we could borrow someone else's? No. no. Or you can get a quote with America's number one motorcycle insurer and maybe save some money while you're at it. All in favor of that. There's a lot of buttons and knobs in here. Welcome back to the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers powered by Optimal Batteries. You are watching the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge presented by Progressive Insurance. I'm Ricky Johnson along with Jim Marsden. We've got a lot of great stories going on, but one of the ones that I want to focus on is between Brad Lovell, who started, who qualified first, along, along right alongside him is uh, Lauren Healy, but Bradley Cole, uh, Bailey Cole decided to start in the back, and, and he's approximately six minutes, so when we see them back into Hammertown, we could do a little calculation and see if that is working to Bailey's advantage or Brad Lovells. Yeah, absolutely, Ricky. And our leaders are making their way around the desert loop, still working out. They still haven't reached Turkey Claw yet. They will do probably in around about 10 minutes time or so. And it is absolutely, the battle is on. I'm just looking at our tracker right now. I can see that Scott Foley is showing us the current leader and then followed by Dan Fresh, then Craig Allen. 
And then it looks like Jeremy Jones is on a flyer and has made his way up with those top three. Then just behind him, it looks like it's Brent Harrell. That was the young man I told you to look out for. And then just behind him is Chuck Crossland. It's all changed at the front of this race already at this early stage. But we'll get confirmation as these guys pass through Hammertown and we start to see what the pit strategy is. And we saw Woody Rose come in and uh, go for a tire remote pit one. So uh, he obviously having a couple issues. Now, and for the people that don't know, you used to be able to run tire balls and stuff in some of the open classes, but here there is definitely not that. You got to make sure you, you run just your standard DOT tire. Exactly. You're not allowed to have any inflation aids whatsoever in this class. In the 4400s, they can still run a, a liner, but it has to be a certain size and a certain uh, height. But uh, Woody Rose is one of the favorites for this race. So it'd be interesting to see if this is going to punish him losing a tire this early or whether he can get it back in there. And actually, sometimes, you know, pushing you back a bit on this desert lake before you get to the rocks can be an advantage. But will it be today? If you had to choose, would you take it or no? I would absolutely. <laughs> I want to get... The goal I think every driver has is get to the finish line with the same tire on the rack and all four tires Absolutely. on. And we are going to see that here today. As we see the, them uh, put the, the, put the lugs on, obviously got a right front flat, so they had to change that on the trail. And a lot of these vehicles only carrying one spare. Yeah, it's not like desert racing. We're going to see multiple uh, tires on the rack. Well, and you might think, well, what about the disadvantage? Think about the disadvantage of running two versus one, the weight and all that. You, you want to make sure that you have that. In desert racing, if we get a flat, you can still run aggressive until you get two flats, and then you have to really slow down. We saw that in the Baja 1000, in the Baja Vita truck of Larry Rossler, got two flats, and then he lost a whole lot of time because he had to make sure zero mistakes. You basically t drop your speed to less than half. Okay, yeah, now I'm just getting confirmation that Scott Foley is our current race leader, followed by Craig Allen. Wow. Just goes to show you never can tell as we just watched the car 37 there. Still trying to fight his way up Baldwin's jump. And is this Woody Rose? I think it is. This is a Trent Fab car. This young man did so well at Nationals last year. And look at this vehicle here. Slab-sided pickup. 46.09. And that is Thomas Cornelius. Great looking truck, Ricky. You can, take, you can take that for a cruise. Absolutely. He probably drove it out here. <laughs> took, took the dog out. Uh, oh, oh, my word. Now, this isn't a... Now, this isn't something you see every day, is it? Just dial up your friend with your Black Hawk. Could you just spin out here and pick me trunk up, please? The, the crazy part is both driver and co-driver in there. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine I, the, the, the fear I, that you have? In my mind, they're just going to drop the car. They're going to unhook. They're going to drive to a lovely young lady and give her a box of chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is Woody Rose here. And it looks like he might be get, about to get back out on track. Talented young man in that Trem Fab car. Well, that is going to be de a de definite deficit for him because having all those people pass him, he's been in the pit for probably about four or five minutes, so definitely not what you want to do at the beginning of this race. Indeed. But he's a, got a, an old head on young shoulders, so it'll be interesting what he can do there. So we did just see that, that, that quick little snippet was the actual live shot of our first and second. And we, want to, we want to be clear that Craig Allen and Scott Foley, the two uh, one and two qualifiers, are still up in front. So it is anybody's race at this point. It is indeed, Ricky. And there is a stack of vehicles behind these lead cars right now. But it's all about number 37. I've got a feeling we might be seeing him most of the day in this same place, bless him. It is going to be a victory if he can get over the top because as soon as he gets right there, that becomes a seat part. Now he's, he's jockeying side to side, not quite like uh, uh, um, signs over in, at the Dakar rally where he had that electric Audi going across the dunes <laughs> at about 100 miles an hour. But this is going to be a victory in itself if he can get up over that hill. Well, this is just Pat here. Then when he gets across, up this hill, and I'm sure he will, I want to give him the biggest cheer ever. Come on, Josh. Now, if this was me at this time, Ricky, I think I'll be pulling valve cores. 
exactly. Do do everything you can, but he's he's really not putting the power down. It's not breaking loose. It just gets to a point and he stops pulling up the hill. Uh, can you actually notice that the car, the, what we call you get bounce? This is where literally where the axles are jumping backwards and forwards. That's actually caused by the uh, the. Uh, the, the spring over conversion that he's put on there that allows it just to axle tramp as it's trying to grab traction. And yeah, that in itself breaks traction. All right, in remote pit one, we have Matt Holt, uh, the fourth man on the, t on the seat. So Matt, what do you have for us from remote pit one? Travis, you guys had some breakage. What, what seemed to be going on? Uh, car number 4853 broke a heim on the rear sway bar. So we uh, extracted it out of the sway bar link and threaded it back all the way down in there and got it tightened back up and got him back on the road. I see you guys had a pretty quick pit, only a few minutes. So hopefully that'll keep your day going. Again, you've got a long race today, so uh, hopefully it'll get him knocked back down. Okay, thank you very much, Matt. It's always good to be in touch. And now I'm looking at that there. Who is that? I believe that is Scott Foley. That is our current race leader making his way back towards Hammertown. He's, he's got that Randy Slauson chassis, which we've seen that vehicle so, so strong, so many years, including Randy in the 4400, 4400 class. But a lot of guys have talked to that about, about that, Jim. Why do they choose that chassis here in the Everman Challenge? The bomber chassis, Randy Slauson. Randy came out here, he was one of the OG 13 who ran the very first race. He came out here and designed a frame and this frame has been evolving over the years. It has already run with Randy three times. We've seen it win multiple 4800 class victories as well. It's arguably the most successful chassis here in Hammertown and that's why people choose it. Well, and I've watched it and I'm you know, Randy being a driver, designer, racer, everything that he shares that with his customers. And so any, if they're talking about weight distribution, shock setup, motor tune, whatever, they, whatever they're looking for, when you have somebody that does so well, and then you, you go to him and say, hey, we're going to go out and pre-run together. You, you go with it, Randy, and I'm pretty sure Randy would take care of his customers all the way to the finish line. Yeah, absolutely. He's very passionate about the car. The bomber chassis is also one of the lightest chassis out here, also one of the narrowest. So once they get to the rocks, they really come alive. They always say, if you can punch well in the desert with a bomber, you've got a great chance of winning because these things are exceptional in the rocks. And Scott Foley right now is doing everything right. He's leading the desert loop as he comes heading towards town. And let's not forget, last year's winner, Dan Fresh, is also in a bomber fab chassis. Yep, so that's definitely something if, if you're looking to get in this, you want to be up up towards the front as we're watching Scott Foley as you navigate to the desert. Pay attention to the balance of the, of the vehicle. He's got that tire off the back. Some people might think, oh, that's too far back for rock crawl and stuff like that. But that's what Randy has done. He's designed this chassis so it's not just strong on the rocks. It's unbelievably strong on the rock, but very fast for a straight axle car. The only other one I would say close to it, or better than that, is Eric Miller. Yeah, absolutely. The solid axle mafia, as we like to call all of these guys. Now, what we're going to do is let's just, just talk about these vehicles. Now, the shock technology on these. Years ago, what happened is we started, we the rock donkeys, as we get called, wanted to go fast in the desert. The biggest problem the shock absorber manufacturers actually had is that the unsprung weight was less than the sprung weight. Right. Okay, or sorry, the other way around. Yes. And so what happens is there's nothing for the shocks to work against as, it, uh, as the vehicle, as the axles are traveling up. And they've had to work incredibly hard to work out the valving technology and also the bypass technology to make these vehicles work in the desert. As we're watching Scott Foley go through that dip, that thing bit a whole bunch of uh, of, uh, T1 trucks in the Desert Challenge, but also let's talk about you have dual springs. You have the you have the you have the ride sh uh, spring, the the primary spring, and then you got the top spring, which is more your comfort spring. Absolutely. So yeah, what we're doing there is, and it depends. And they actually throw it the other way around on the rear of the vehicles quite often, which I find very interesting. But let's keep it simple. Yeah. So that top spring is usually the softer spring. That's the spring that takes up all the nuisance bumps and everything. So once we go past that zone, it then hits a, a lot out and then the harder spring comes into play and that makes sure that you don't bottom out well, well, as we're watching Scott Foley he, he, he doesn't have a dominating lead he has to stay on top of it but it looks like uh, Craig Allen is right in his dust I'm gonna say about 30 seconds back okay I've got some big news here I'm looking at the tracker right now and I can see that if you look on your trackers you'll see that there's a, a, a little orange circle and if you see a red triangle at the bottom that means they're stationary and I'm seeing a stationary note next to the number eight. Number eight is last year's winner, Dan Fresh. He is currently stationary on course. Well, keep that, keep that. 
keep that number, Jim, and then let's uh, keep an eye on that. See how long that he stays uh, stationary. So that is could be huge for these two drivers up front. Um, Craig Allen, and, uh, Craig Allen and Scott Foley. This is first and second as we're watching them. In the upper left is <clears throat> Scott Foley. In the bottom is Craig Allen. So those are your one and two uh, qualifiers. But right now, and both in bomber chassis. Uh, no, though Craig Allen is actually running oh. a Liberty Mountain Fab chassis. Uh, got an LS3, a TH400, an Atlas transfer case, Spider Tracks axles, Rad Flow suspension, Yokohama tires, and PRP seats. So different vehicles, very similar styles. Yes, that, and, they, and they look at that, and then a lot of times you'll see that happen. They'll mimic a vehicle, but it, the secrets in the, in the stuff you can't see. Look at that, yeah, and you can also see the helicopter in the background there who's filming the second vehicle. I love this race. <laughs> this is perfect. This is what we're looking for. And that it was it's your that's Craig Allen in second in the lower, and you can see him in the back of the dust. As long as he keeps uh, Scott Foley in his sight, that when we get to the rocks, it's gonna be a whole different program because he's only about five seconds behind him. He is indeed, it's a mere hair's breadth. Now, when you're racing like this, Ricky, you can see how the dust is pushing to one side there, and we can see Craig Allen. It looks like he's actually making time, and I know what that's like. You just absolutely bury the throttle, you stand on it, you know you've got clear air at this moment, and you could get dusted out at any moment, so you're gonna make the biggest move you can right now, and that's what Craig Allen's doing. Yeah, but it's actually perfect. We're getting that little bit of breeze that we're looking at. We can see that, that, that Craig Allen was catching him up pretty quick because that dust is now blowing to the side. Can you see that second helicopter? That's amazing. I love these shots. Absolutely remarkable stuff here from our production crew live in Hammertown. But back to back to finish my thought on that. It's the wind that's making the difference right now because the wind is blowing to the side and right there. That is our race for first and second place. We can see Greg Allen as he's starting to reel in uh, Scott Foley. And it, now what he can also do is look for different lines to try to make up some ground. Exactly. There are multiple different lines out there. And let's not forget, you can be 150 feet from dead center of the course. So your course at this moment in time is 300 feet wide. You take your line, you take your poison. Well, as, from this helicopter shop, it looks like, oh, that's flat desert. Why aren't the guys off to the side? But in between those bushes are rocks that are over, you know, they're massively the size of a wheelbarrow. You got to be careful. Also, all around those bushes, the sand builds up around the root balls. It creates these huge root balls, and you want to be staying away from those. But it was interesting, that helicopter shot we saw, it looked like Craig Allen was catching Scott Foley. And yet we look here and they're running a very equal pace. They're probably at this moment in time running somewhere between 80 and 100 miles an hour. Yeah, I would definitely say that. This is not one of the rougher sections. We saw them go through the cross grain. And typically what that means, to how to know that's coming, look up, and look up towards the mountains and see if the mountain is coming towards you. If that's the case, if there's rain, that's where we get these cross grain ruts that can really take out a driver very, very quick. Yeah, I'm just looking at my tracker right now, and I can see that Dan Fresh is still stopped and showing stationary. So I'll be bringing you more news on that story as it develops. Well, and some people might think, you know, it's shorter to go to the inside, but look at the way that wind is blowing. So Craig Allen definitely doing the right thing, staying out of the dust because you can definitely pick up your speed from the other side. And this is Jeremy Jones in the Trent Fab car making his way through the desert. Jeremy is an exceptional racer. It'll be interesting to see if he's got what it takes to get on the podium today. I certainly wouldn't bet against him. He is that fast. Well, and, and, and we're speculating this right now, but the race is just starting. This is like, you know, the, the first uh, 50 miles of a 100 mile race because miles multiply when it comes to rocks. There, everything slows down. It takes more time to get through there. Right now, I want to welcome to the, to the booth with us is Ben Napier. Ben, You've been seeing a lot going on in the background. Give us a little scuttlebutt of what's going on that we can't see. Well, Ricky, thank you. Uh, we've had 155 cars take the start line today. Great field. Uh, we had uh, a couple of cars drop out and come back in later. They're, ch they're working their way back up the field. If you miss your start, your time starts when it was meant to, and then you've got to chase back. So it is a disadvantage. It, the clear air helps a little bit, but you've got to work back through it. And we're seeing a great race unfold here. Well, I think that in this race, we're in like most races, you're going to see maybe 1% of the competitors, maybe a couple more that are looking for the win. Everybody else is looking for the challenge, looking for the experience, looking for the camaraderie with their friends, their fathers, their sons, you know, their wives, their girlfriends, all that. So a lot of it is they just want to be out there and finish this race. 
Yeah, it's a great event. You know, it's the Everyman Challenge and that family uh, involvement, friends, mates, you know, three of them racing the same car. I talked to some guys in the pits last night. They're just out here to have fun. But once that flag drops, <laughs> that whole idea of fun, well, that evaporates. And you're racing for the win no, no matter what your intentions were originally. Well, and we saw this this yesterday in the UTV race, the can UTV uh, uh, King of the Hammers Challenge, is that some of these people know pre-running. They haven't seen the course. They looked at a map and said, okay, let's give it a shot. So if you had to guess, what would you say, about 10% of the people have never seen these trails? Yeah, well, as, as I was walking the, uh, the lineup this morning, there were some, some vehicles being finished uh, in the lineup, so they haven't had any time to pre-run. They don't have extra pre-runners like some of the other bigger teams that are racing tomorrow have. They don't have the big resources. They might just be a couple of mates here with a Jeep, and they're out here finding their way around for the first time. And you know what the last thing they're putting on? Those contingency stickers, because if they win, they're going to get that discount coupon, or whatever the case may be. So you got to think about it. Jim, what do we got on the tracker? Uh, yeah, just looking at the tracker now and seeing who's where right at this moment, and I'll give you an update as I've got that. But Ben, you've won the 4800 Yukon uh, 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 Gear and Axle, um, no, not the Yukon Gear and Axle, the Brannock Motorsports Legends class. You know what it takes to win this class. What are these guys going through right now? Mate, they're, uh, they're fighting this desert. It's high speed. These cars aren't as capable in the desert as a lot of the other ones. Single shocks, uh, 37 inch tires, they don't bounce through the deep stuff just as well. And, uh, but they've got big engines, a lot of these guys, the guys out front, they've, they've got just as bigger engines as some of the ones we'll see tomorrow. Uh, unlimited horsepower class. So they're fast, but they're so limited by the suspension that it's just brutal in this desert stuff. You've got to keep that front axle alive, not bend the front axle. There are a lot of cars disintegrate front axles in this, this class. All righty, thank you, Ben. As we're watching, uh, as you're watching them down Best for Mine Road, you, let's take a uh, jump out to Ben Holt, or, I'm sorry, Matt Holt as, at Remote Pit 1. Matt, take it away. All right, we're here in Remote Pit 1 again. You can see about a third of the teams have come through. We see a lot of teams starting to stream in now of different classes. Again, the EMC comprises of three different classes. We see a lot of teams coming in, some getting fuel. We've seen some broken parts, a lot of more simple fixes, able to get them fixed within a few minutes. But we've seen a couple flat tires. Again, this is a first stretch of about 35 miles of desert, so not too many rocks. We haven't seen a ton of flat tires, but a few. Uh, again, a lot of guys taking fuel. Uh, some you taking just five gallons, just top off, make sure they make it back to their main pit. Uh, and we'll see how that plays out later today. Uh, again, we're going to see some more cars streaming in here later on this afternoon. Again, so some of the stock guys taking a little bit longer in the desert. They have a lot less suspension travel, so we'll see how that goes today. Okay, and welcome back to the 2023 Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. I'm Jim Marsdow. I'm joined in the booth by Ricky Johnson and Ben Napier. It's a beautiful day here in Hammertown. The sun is shining. We have a nice breeze. It's a perfect day for racing. Well, as we're watching the uh, shots from Living the Dream Hilo, that's Stevie Wright, multi-time uh, three-wheeler and quad champion, now helicopter extraordinaire, as we're watching these guys navigate their way through the desert. And once again, I think it's great how they designed the course to start out with the de desert loop to create some separation between all the drivers before they jump into the rocks. Yeah, I think that's John Holtzman there, if I'm not mistaken. I'll get confirmation of that in a moment. Always hard thing. And if you are racing out here, always put a big number on your car. It makes our job so much easier. <laughs> and and that they're absolutely going to do that for us. Now, now, is this a Miller chassis or is this a Jimmy it chassis? Does, no, that is a Miller chassis. So that's the Miller Pro chassis. So successful out here. And tomorrow we will be seeing one-time king Josh Byler and his dad Rusty Byler and Casey Gilbert in the top 15 racing their Miller Pro chassis trying to take that win against a stacked field of IFS cars. So Ben, watching watching the, the, the vehicles out here versus the UTVs, we're about 20 minutes down on what the UTVs were what the UTVs were doing yesterday. They finished, the UTVs finished at 11.30. So what is going to be your guesstimation when they're going to come in? Uh, I think these guys are going to lose a bit of time in the desert. But I think the top Legends guys will probably make up a little bit of time in the rocks. The UTVs are nice and nimble in the rocks, but these guys just have a bit bigger gear and they can lean on it a bit harder with bigger axle shafts, bigger differentials. Uh, so I think uh, these guys might be a bit slower, but probably about 10 minutes slower. Yeah, I just want to correct myself. That is actually Cody Young there. Um, and that is in a Miller Pro chassis running an LSX 454. So just give you confirmation there, that is Cody Young. 
Now we're just talking about the difference between the UTVs and these Everyman Challenge class cars. And the biggest single difference is that these vehicles are having to run a limited suspension package, whereas the UTVs can run the best of the best, and it shows in the desert. Well, yes, and, and also the weight and the power to weight ratio, and obviously both vehicles are all wheel drive, very, very fast, but the UTVs have developed so much, and with that turbo, it really gets them off the corners from point to point. The, the side by sides, the UTVs are unbelievable. Yeah, we're watching Cody Young there as we switch back. And still the race is continuing here. We are here for the four wheel parts, every man challenge live from Johnson Valley, California. It is the 2023 progressive king of the hammers. And what a week it's been, Ricky. We had the desert racing at the start of the week. The weekend before that, it was the motos. We've had great American short course racing and everything in between. It has been an incredible couple of weeks. Well, when this started, when it originally started, it was uh, Dave Cole and a bunch of his buddies that would come out here wheeling and they're naming the different trails and stuff. Then they had the great idea, let's run all the trails and see who can do it quicker. Then it turned into a race. And then next thing you know, we've created a whole new uh, level of vehicle and has actually pushed the all-wheel drives now we're seeing a lot more all-wheel drives in the t1 or trophy trucks or the trick trucks whatever series you're racing in but that has elevated the sport quite a bit but dave cole didn't just go, want to go to the top he's brought something back for everything so we've got motos we got utvs we have sportsman utvs we have turbo we have unlimited we have all that as well as the the the, the king the king of the hammers every man challenge so as you're watching the guys roll through once again, you are watching the four-wheel parts, Everyman Challenge presented by Progressive Insurance. We'll be right back as you're watching these shots from Remote Pit 1. to go to do your rig right and that's at four wheel parts now is the time for bigger tires and larger wheels now is the time to lift your truck at 4wp off-road technology and we bring to you the next step in user-controlled lighting.
Welcome back to the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by off of Batteries. You are watching live. We are 20 minutes into the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge presented by Progressive Insurance. If you want to stay live with all the action, go to kingofthehammers.com forward slash live. You can avoid all of the commercials and everything and stay tuned and you get to watch everything. It will be a split screen, so you'll get to enjoy those commercials in little bits as well. But if you want to stay with the action, go to kingofthehammers.com forward slash live. Jim? Absolutely. You can also find scoring and tracking information there. And I'm looking on the tracker right now, and it's all about Scott Foley, our current race leaguer, followed by Craig Allen. Now we saw our last year's winner, Dan Fresh, locking horns with them earlier on, but he dropped back. He was stationary. But I have some good news for Dan Fresh's fans. He is back up and running again. And in currently in third position at the moment and fourth position, we have Jeremy Jones and the young man himself, Brent Harrell. It looks like we're going to have our leaders coming into Turkey Claw very, very soon. I estimate they're less than five minutes away from that. Oh, look at this. This is coming in, here. Coming in hot. <laughs> now, is this our race leaders? I've got a feeling that... Ooh, I think this might be, you know, just trying to get a visual here. That's Jeremy Jones in front for sure. And I think that's Brent Harrell. Look at this young man go in the Herschel car. I told you to watch him at the start of this race. He does not know when to say never. Look at this. Fantastic racing here. Jeremy Jones on the right-hand side of your screen. And on the left-hand side of your screen, chasing hard. It's Brent Harrell going for the pass. He's definitely, he's definitely looking for everywhere he's gone. He's, he's running left, he's running right. Now he got caught in the dust. He's going to lose a little time because he had that chance at the turn. But you also have to understand here, there's a, a little bit of immaturity there as well to be racing that hard right now at this point of the race. So he just got to back down, Brent, just a little bit. But you can see what he was doing. He was trying to get out of his dust and trying to make that move on Jeremy Jones. Well, now he has a spot with a good, long, clean line. As we talked about, the Class 11s were able to open up this desert a little bit because they didn't care. They want to get out to the side. Oh, you saw that there. He got completely dusted out. Now, Brent Harrell, is he still running? I think he's just stopped to the left-hand side of our screen. And that's the frustration. You catch up to somebody, you make all that time as we watch him off to the left. Yeah, he's punched out hard to the left-hand side there, trying to find a cleaner line to try and catch Jeremy Jones. If I was Brent, I'd actually be holding back a little bit, waiting for my moment when I get to Turkey Claw. Well, once again, we're talking about a race, and what you do is you work so hard to get there, but when you get up behind them, you got to try to find your way around as quick as you can because in your mind, you're thinking that the leaders are taking off and they're having their, a perfect day. Absolutely. So that was the battle for third and fourth here at the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. Now, this is the same dice, but the, we saw the, the helicopter up there following the front vehicle, so we sh could see some passing back and forth right now. Yeah, I think that might be Dwayne Garrison. I'm just getting, on, waiting to get confirmation on that. It's definitely a Jimmy chassis. So, Ian and G uh, Jim, it's interesting. We've just seen Dwayne. He's the first of our modified competitors, and he's about 10th on course. He's just come out of remote pit one, and um, he's back just behind Dan Fresh on course as far as I can see. Okay, and that is our current race leader. That is Scott Foley. He worked, started on the front row of the grid this morning, right next to the guy that's next to, uh, coming up behind him, which is the 595 of Craig Allen. And this is Turkey Claw. So Turkey Claw is the first set of rocks that we get to see. You can see with these bigger tires, with the 37s, they are pushing these things around. We saw the side-by-sides. They weren't able to do that yesterday. But right now, it's pretty rare to see after the desert loop, one and two this close together. Absolutely, and still one and two to be literally side by side that never usually happens and just shows the quality of this field of vehicles so now when it comes to pit if they, they look in there a lot of times if they see something leaky something loose that could hold them so here we got the race going back and forth at second place with a front right flat tire actually perfect place to get a flat well, if you're going to get a flat just outside of Hammertown, it's probably as good as it gets. But Craig Allen has got to work his way back. There's still some evil trails between here and Hammers. The thing is, though, they're at the bottom of Turkey Claw, and there's about four miles of nasty, nasty cross grain. Yes. And if you've got a flat tyre, you've got to limp that car through that cross grain off all those little drop-offs. and You've got to be very careful not to shatter a wheel because then you might not make it that four miles. Right, because then you then you, break, then you tear up your brakes, you have trouble. Also, if it gets too loose and that tire starts to come apart, could get woven up, rip your brake line apart. So it's a big decision right now. Do we go slow, get to the pit, or do we get out and change it? 
And this section between Turkey Claw and, and Hammertown is one of the roughest high-speed areas on the course. I remember several years ago I was racing Randy Slauson here, and I actually passed him in this cross grain. But straight away I got two left left uh, flat tyres, and he got me back in the pits because I had to stop and change them. So the guys have to conserve the cars. As we wait for our leaders to come into the pits, I think we were mentioning the modified guys before, Ricky. They really should be right up there in this race. They are an unlimited shock package car. But the legends seem to be dominating so far through the desert section, which, you know, puts it a bit out of sense. Okay, and we're looking our physical third place car right now. This is Jeremy Jones working his way down through Turkey Claw. Jeremy started on the third road of the grid this morning in sixth position, so he's made up some places and looking really strong right now. Well, now, let's not forget, we saw Brent Harrell battling him in the desert, but where is Brent? Well, there we go. We, there's your answer right there. He was stuck in the dust, was taking a lot of chances. Maybe his co-driver said, Brent, Let's calm down a little bit. Let, let's take our time. We've got the rocks coming up. That's where you're a little bit more experienced. Don't take too many chances. Absolutely. But he's running a really nice, clean race here, Jeremy Jones. Now, Jeremy is our 2022 Legends of the Fall champion. Run a very solid race there. And that was a very tough race indeed. So he knows how to look after his car in atrocious conditions. And they don't get any tougher than here in Johnson Valley. All righty, Jim, as we're watching the guys come into Turkey Claw, I'm going to bring in my brother from another mother, not related, but another Johnson. I know a bunch of them that I'm not related to. Ian Johnson, the guy with the great hair. I'm the guy with lacking it. But uh, Ian, so much has happened. We'll get you up to pace. I know you've been watching and stuff like that. But welcome to the Everman Challenge. Take it away, brother. And looking here, this is Brent Harrell coming through, and he has got a right front flat as he picks his way down through. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much, Ricky. It is great to be here in the booth with Jim Marsden and Ben Napier. I had to come in, you know, to keep the accents on this side of the country. So catch me up here, guys. We're watching the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. I've been watching the live stream over in the VIP tent. Where are we at? What's going on? Uh, we've had an, an epic day of action so far. And the most amazing thing that the front two cars off the grid this morning were Craig Allen and Scott Foley. Scott Foley is our current race leader. Craig Allen is nursing a flat tire as they make their way back towards Hammertown and they have just exited uh, Turkey Claw. We also saw it coming through Turkey Claw, our third place car, who was Jeremy Jones. And just behind him was the young man himself, Brent Harrell in that Horschel car. But he's also nursing a flat tire. Now, Ben, you and I watched uh, qualifying together for this class, and we speculated about who's going to be faster. Is it going to be a, a modified car? Is it going to be a Legends car? We know the stock guys are going to be near the back. That's just how that works. But what are we seeing out here on the race course so far? We're definitely seeing the Legends cars dominate lap one. I think the first ten, nine or ten are all Legends cars. And uh, the start order was mixed, so we mixed them in based on their qualifying order. And Dwayne Garrettson is our lead in the modified class at the moment. Yeah, I think Dwayne Garrison actually could well be up into that top f into the top five already. We're just watching that. Now, a moment ago, we saw a helicopter shot, and it looked like somebody changing a spare wheel tire. I've got a feeling that was damn fresh. I was just looking at the race suits and the shape of the vehicle. It looked like a bomber, and it looked like a very flash race suit. So my guess is that was Mike Kim. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right there, Jim. I think that is uh, – actually, I think uh, this might be uh, – No, that looks no. like Craig Allen. Yeah, it looks like Craig Allen. So I think you're right, Jim. I think that was a uh, – was uh, Dan out fixing a flat out in the middle of the desert? And that will be, that, that's heartbreaking for him. He's, no, he's normally, we never, he's normally the guy we look at just to win this. Thing. Okay, let me throw that the other way. What if it isn't Dan Fresh? What if that was Scott Foley? What if he picked up a flat tire at the bottom of Turkey Claw and that this shot on screen now is Craig Allen and potentially our current race leader? Yeah, it'll be hard to tell for sure, but I think what we're looking at right now... That I, I believe, think that is Scott Foley. Yeah, that's Scott Foley right there. So the question will be, is he? Uh, did he put pressure on Dan? Did he get around Dan? No, I don't think that is Scott. I think I've made a bump. I think I've made a mistake there. We'll just pull that back in a moment. Jim, I can tell you, I'm keeping an eye on this tracker. And if you're watching at home, Scott Foley's coming into Hammertown. He's doing 20 mile an hour in our uh, bumpy section. Yeah, I'm picking that up on the tracker as well. 19.3 mile an hour, but it does, I am showing at the moment. Yeah, it's still neck and neck between Craig Allen and Scott Foley, but let's not forget 
this is the saddle, and that is that's Scott that Foley Scott on Foley. screen right now as we're watching him as as Ben said making his way through this bumpy single track section coming back into Hammertown here. And we saw how brutal it was for the T1s crossing here. Never mind these limited class vehicles. Always amazes me how well they can get these vehicles to work across this incredibly tough terrain. You know, Ben, we watched on uh, qualifying. How's uh, how's your old car doing out there? How's bomber number one doing? I'll have to uh, search up Anthony. He looks solid off the line. I haven't seen him up the front recently, but uh, I hope he's having a good day out there. But I'll find out, Ian. All right, as we watch this car make its way through this, this is a very, very slow moving section as he comes back into Hammertown. We watch it sort of every year, this little single track section. It's uh, it's just slow and go. You don't want to push it too far. You've got Hammertown in your sights. You're going to come back in before you head out into the rocks after this big, long desert loop. Just watching the tracker now, and there is our lead two vehicles. They're going to be making their way round the bottom of King Hill. What heading. a chase we've got going on here. Oh, this, this is fantastic, is, isn't this it? This is awesome. Right when they come around King Hill, headed back into Hammertown right now. 72 miles of racing already, and there is literally seconds between them. And it's so unusual that the pole sitters are still one and two. Normally attrition, issues. We've got a great battle going here. We have. Now, it's all going to be about pit crews, pit strategy. Most of these cars have the smaller fuel cells associated to racing here from days gone by. So it's almost certain that they're going to have to take on fuel here, maybe even take on a tyre change. Let's see how this plays out. You know, that's a very good point, Jim. The question would be, you know, you mentioned some of these cars are old, old Hammers cars. But Ben and I talked about that when we were watching qualifying. We see a left front flag yep. coming in there. Yep. But Ben and I were talking about this during qualifying. You see so many guys building legend-specific cars. So yes, those older cars may have those smaller fuel cells. I, and look at that, that's coming apart. Okay, look, I think Scott Foley's got two, two flat tires. Flats, yeah. Two front flats. Now, we know Craig Allen also had that's a flat Craig tire. Allen. Is that Craig Allen? That is Craig Allen. That is Craig Allen. You now, if I was Scott right. Foley, Scott Foley's car looks like it's going okay. He can probably make it out to pit two. So if I was him and my pit crew were giving me the heads up that Craig had a flat, I'd be trying to get out and get up out of limits and get out to that remote pit too and get some miles in the rocks and get ahead because that's going to be a great strategy if he can do it with that fuel cell. But yeah, it, it would definitely be a good move for sure. But will he have the pit crew out there? Will, most of these guys run on a different budget to the 4400 class guys. Have they got fuel out at remote pit too? Have they got tyres out there? And this is Jeremy Jones, our third place car, making his way into the infield. Now, this is interesting. I think Jeremy Jones potentially could almost be ahead of these guys on adjusted time. He started on the third row. Of the, he caught it on the third. He started on the third row of the grid. He's looking really solid here, and he's definitely coming in inside of a one minute. So I'm going to guess that Jeremy Jones is our current race leader on adjusted time. Well, and like Ben said, it'll definitely depend on what he does. Pit strategy. Car looks good. No flat tires coming in here, working really well. This might be somebody else who could really use that pit strategy to their favor to get out into the rocks and get out there early. But uh, yeah, you, we talked about this, uh, Jamie. You talked adjusted time once these cars come through get this finished lap they'll be able to get through and get down guys we've got Jeremy Jones' score and he's 20 seconds behind Scott Foley so it's a real race here okay let's throw it down to Miles who's in the pits Miles what have you got for us so I'm I'm down here with Jeremy Jones in third physical position Big thumbs up from Jeremy Jones. This Trent Fab car looks like it's in great shop. Obviously, we saw Scott Foley and Craig Allen come through earlier. Craig Allen had a right front flat. They're a little bit too far down the road. I don't have service all the way down there, but uh, they're in the pits. This is going to be a. Uh, this is going to be good. This is just a quick uh, gas and go. It looks like they're checking everything. It does look they're wheeling a tire over. They're going to swap it over. They just checking. Yeah. Okay. It looks like they are going to change a tire. So they're waiting, obviously for safety reasons, nobody can touch the car except for the fueler unless you have full fuel gear. Uh, but they're wiggling the front end. Everything still looks like it's a pretty tight in here. Uh, he made a great run through the desert. So the top three are out front with a little bit of a lead. I do see Scott Foley, I believe. It looks like he is in and out of the pit. So he did a quick fuel. I assume Craig Allen, yep, I, I got visual on Craig Allen. He is still in the pits, changing that tire and doing what he needs to do. But it looks like Scott Foley is out of the pits on running on down. So it looks like uh, 
Yep, they're going to change the right front tire for Jeremy Jones, and I'm not sure why they're doing it. I'm right here on it, and I don't see what's going on. Um, but they must have felt a, a tire going down. So Jeremy Jones is getting this left front tire change, a quick fuel and go on it. Everybody's running strong. And like I said, the car looks like it's in great, great shape. So I got Jeremy Jones down there. How's it going, buddy? It's going good. It's a little rough out there. We uh, it took a real hard hit on the front left, and so we uh, think that maybe we compromised the wheel. So we are changing it just to be safe. All right, buddy. Well, you got your rock lap coming up. Good luck, and it looks like you're having fun. Appreciate it. Thank you, Miles. All right, I'm going to back up. I don't want to cost these guys any time. But yeah, so he, you heard it there. He felt the wheel. He hit something hard in the desert, so they're playing safe and sorry. That's why I didn't physically see it, but obviously, Going in the rock lap, you do not want to jeopardize having a flat tire. And we got uh, Brett, Brent Harrell coming in, so I'm going to send it back to the booth and run down to Brent's pit. I'll be down there in just a minute, so I'll check back in. Ricky, Jim, in, take it away. Okay, thank you very much, Miles. Always great to get the inside view there from down in the pit lane as we watch Brent Harrell crossing the line. But Ben, you've got some timing information for us. Yeah, Jim, we've had three across our, our timing line. We're going to get a bunch more very shortly because I'm seeing Brent Harrell crossing it just now, so we'll wait for timing to come in. But Scott Foley, one hour, 33 minutes and 18 seconds. It's about 18 minutes slower than we saw the UTVs do it yesterday, so I think we're on point. Okay, and we've actually just had a change right now. Brent Harrell has crossed the line in is our physical race leader and one hour, 32 and 39 seconds. Amazing stuff from the young man. And I All right, so while we uh, process that information up here in the booth, we're gonna throw it back down to Miles, who's down there with the patented wrench mic. So the action is hot here in the hot pit. Brent Harrell pulling in with a right front flat tire. And I think I just heard you guys say he is on adjusted time winning this race. And they had a full pit strategy. Uh, Brent Harrell, the dad that's racing tomorrow, was given a, a great briefing before they came in and said, nobody touch the car until they're ready. So now it's fuel only, nobody touch the car. And they had a really cool thing in here. Right in the middle underneath the car, they had a spike with an antenna hanging off to ground the vehicle. Again, safety first out here. So they're putting up quick uh, fuel, checking the steering. Big thumbs up from Brent Harrell. Justin with two worst riding shotguns. So they are physically fourth, but first on adjusted time. This is a Paul Horschel built machine. They debuted last year and it is an absolute work of art. So I know Brent Harrell is gonna be pushing strong. It's, it's right now you're in the pits. There's so much chaos going on, but it's kind of like you got to be in a zen and just let it come to you. But uh, again, just a right front flat is the only thing I physically see wrong with this car. And yeah, there's a big puncture on the side, so we must have caught a rock. Done with fueling, so now they can switch the right front. We got Jeff McKinley this race with us quite a bit on the right front, changing that tire. And again, it's so great to see so many people from so many different teams jump in and give them get it going. Again, physical fourth, but first on adjusted time, heading out for their second and final rock lap. But yeah, these Nitto tires are really taking a beating. Everything's looking good on it. A little bit of fluid on the left front, actually a lot of fluid. Can't quite tell if it's a shock or steering, but he'll still make it on through. But the rest of the car looks like it's in great shape. They should have this tire changed out very soon. But what some great racing we got going for lap number one. It's roughly 140 miles in total. Looks like they got that tire on, so I'm gonna get out of the way and let them get out. Looks like, yes, Brent Harrell is off and going. And that was a pretty clean run by the entire team. So great. Oh, we got another one coming in. All right, I got Cody Young coming in. Looks like all four tires are looking good on this one. Another Miller Motorsports chassis. Looks like they're getting ready to fuel this car. So lots of action. Brent Harrell is out on course and Cody Young in. And this car, I don't see hardly anything going on. But yeah, this car looks like it's doing a great job. They're giving a good fuel. Big thumbs up from Cody Young. They're taking steer left, right. Everything looks like it's in pretty good shape. 
What a great race we have so far. We got another one coming in. So Cody Young and right behind him. Oh, that's Michael, I believe, the number 707. And he was uh, did really well in qualifying. So Team Indiana is over here making sure everything's going smooth. So doing a quick fuel. I don't see anything else wrong with this car. So, so far, everybody's uh, saving their car pretty good in that first desert lap. So lots of action going on right now. So Michael Kelly down here, the number 707 in a Jimmy's car. So we've had all sorts of manufacturers out here. And Cody Young with a quick fuel and go. The rest of the car looks good. And they are sending him back out. So Michael Kelly in here, they actually shut the engine off. Not quite sure why they did that. They're crawling under the back of the car, making sure everything's getting fueled up all right. So lots of action down here. Looks like they're inspecting the rear a little bit. Oh, look at the rear end. The rear end is puking pretty good. So that's that's gonna be tough to, to overcome there going in the rocks. So we'll see what uh, what their game plan is on that right now. But everybody else, like I said, has had a pretty much just a fuel and go, a couple flat tires. But the top, what is that, six or seven or in here and out? Lots of action, but they do have the car off, so I think they are going to take a little bit of time and inspect this. So, yeah, okay, they're just going to try tightening it first. And that bolt is extremely loose. So hopefully they can just tighten this thing and, and get it going. Michael Kelly, how was that first desert lap out there, buddy? Yeah, it's pretty fast, and uh, there's some rough spots. We're very fortunate we're a place where we did. We had a lot of clean air, so good time. Yeah, and obviously they're, they're working on the rear end a little bit, but you seem like you're extremely just calm and cool collected. I'm pretty impressed by that. Yeah, you know, all is well. You know, we're just keeping an eye on the transmission temperature. It's creeping up on us, so just trying to take it easy on that and keep a good pace, keep clipping. All right, now you're getting ready to head to the rocks, and that's kind of where these Jimmy's cars shine, so you're probably excited to get, uh, get through the desert and into the rocks. Yeah, man, we got past a couple times in the desert, and that doesn't feel real good, so we're planning on taking that back right up here. All right, well, yeah, like you said, you're still in the top ten, so uh, we'll let you get to your thing, but uh, good job, and I uh, hope, hope you can uh, do your best out there on course. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. All right, well, yeah, Michael Kelly, looks like they're going to take their time. Like I said, deep breath, take your time. You don't want to send them out in a hurry with a hurt car. And the car's not hurt yet, so they're going to just try to save the car, make it happen. Woo, that was a good little run there. Lots of action down here. So I'm going to send it back up to the booth. Ricky, Jim, Ian, take it away. Thank you so much, Miles. So much action here. Can you believe this? It's the Four Wheel Parts Every Man Challenge 2023 here at the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers. There's a mouthful. And just look at how many cars are coming across the line after this 72 mile loop on top of each other. It's like boom, boom, boom. Incredible. I think Jim, what's more impressive, Jim, is the amount of leader changes we saw just in the first five cars that came through. Absolutely. And Ben, can you confirm for us who are our current top six? Yeah, Jim, we've had six through the start finish and they're all running within about eight minutes of each other, which is really close. We've got Brent Harrell running first, Scott Foley, Craig Allen, second and third. They're battling out the front there in clear air. Jeremy Jones, Cody Young, Michael Kelly is our sixth place. He's just come across. He's uh, one hour and 40 minutes, so he's eight minutes, seven and a half minutes behind Brent Harrell. Interesting stuff, but the big story right now is Dan Fresh. He left the line in third position this morning, and he has not yet crossed the line. We believe we've seen him out there um, fixing at least one flat tire, but I think he's had at least two flat tires out there on track. Yeah, he's definitely off pace, and it may be something more serious if we haven't seen him back in town yet, considering how much time has been burned there. Now, remember, we are racing three different classes today, so everyone who's crossed the line so far is in the 4800 Brannock Motorsports Legends class. We're waiting to see someone come across in the 4500 Yukon Gear and Axle uh, Modified class. Absolutely, and I think that we're looking at our race leaders here. And Jim, something that's popping out to me in this race as the Legends race unfolds in, in front of us is we've got a couple of very different types of cars and races that are leading this race right now. Uh, Brent Harrell, new young kid, up and comer in the sport in a brand new Horschel car built specifically for Legends. You know, an amazing piece of technology there. And then the guys we've got out the front, Craig Allen and, and Scott Foley, well, they're in 
some really historical style Legends cars. Scott Foley's bomber, it was one of the first 10. It's probably about 10 years old. Scott bought that car brand new from Randy, and he's had it for a very long time. He used to race it in 4400. Now he's racing Legends, and it's great to see that contrast, the new up-and-comers and, -comers and the, the guys who have been in Legends for a long time and the Legends of our sport. And, and I think Brent's going to make it, bank his name in this class too. Absolutely. Brent Harrell, he is a remarkable young driver. He had a nightmare during qualifying, so this will be making him very happy indeed. Yeah, well, now, Brent got to start five minutes behind the leaders, so he doesn't actually have to pass the leaders to win this race. He just needs to pace himself, stay in touch with them, finish within five five minutes of our leader, and he could be our new winner. Absolutely. And actually, it's quite nice to have the leaders in front of you because, you, as you just said, you can pace against them, set yourself up for them, and be able to drive your own race. But this race is unfolding as we watch. I believe that's Dwayne Garretson making his way into the infield. And I think he is going to be the first of our 4500 Yukon Gear and Axle Modified Class vehicles. Yeah, we've been waiting to see a Modified Class car make it back here in the town. We talked about the difference in the classes. Just for those of you at home that don't understand, the Legends class, as Ben had mentioned, a lot of those are old 4400 cars, and that is a single shock per corner. The Modified guys get to run two shocks per corner, uh, but they do have to have a mechanical steering. So that can really come into play in the rocks. Yes, it can, and we see all kinds of modifications, but this is our race leader on adjusted time. This is Brent Harrell in the Horschel car, working his way out of the desert and heading towards the rocks. So guys, we've had Dwayne Garretson cross the start-finish line for his second lap. He was one hour and 43 minutes and 16 seconds, but just ahead of him, we had another Legends car come through, Chad Jesse. He's our uh, seventh overall and seventh in class. He was one hour and 40 minutes and 50 seconds. Yeah, some very fast times here. Here's a little bit of a uh, little bit of info for you, Ben, just for fun. If I'm one person who's going to definitely be hoping to see a bomber car on the podium today is going to be Randy, because every time Randy has won, a bomber car has won the Legends class. Yes, he was telling me that last night, actually. And so he's, uh, fingers crossed, for one of these several bombers that are in the field today to win because he thinks that's a good omen for tomorrow's race. Now, this is a car working its way down across the saddle. Now, Ben, you spoke about this earlier. This is a really rough section of the course. And we saw a car there, the front tyre just flailing apart. And it's so easy just to crack a rim there. But the desperation is you're so close to Hammertown, you want to push forward. And that looks like Cody Young there in the Miller chassis heading out towards the rock trails. Yeah, Jim, it's really rough through there. There's a couple of washes that cut across it. Really deep drop-offs, G-outs with this single shock front, front, uh, front end on these cars. It's going to be really, really rough on those drivers. They've got to keep those cars together through this and get back into Hammertown. Yeah, we're back into Turkey Claw here, and that is the 48-12. That's Jacob Pacheco. As you can see the helicopter there chasing our... Is that a stock? Is that one of I the think Broncos? that's a Bronco. Yeah, I was about to say, that looks like it has a silhouette of a Bronco out there. And that is Cody Young in the Miller Pro Chassis. Cody Young currently sitting in fifth position on adjusted time. And looking really good. Now, normally, the leading pro chassis in 4800 would normally be Casey Gilbert on normal years, but he's removed the sandbags, as he likes to say, moved himself up into 4400, and we will see him on the race course tomorrow. Yeah, a number of people have made that jump from 4800 to 4400. As we're watching it... This is big news. Yeah. This, this is, is damn, damn fresh. Okay, as we watch Dan Fresh, our last year's winner, trying to work his way back into Hammertown, we've got Miles down in the pits. Miles, what do you got for us? So two quick gas and goes. We had Chad Jesse. Now we have Nick Allegri in, in screen. They're d mainly just doing a check and go. And now last second, they're under the hood. But the last two have been really smooth, really fast. Like I said, the professionalism has stepped up so much in the pits out here. Everybody's playing by the rules. Remember, safety first here. I got a big thumbs up from Chad Jesse and Nick Allegri. Looks like they're both in and out in under about two or three minutes. So great job. And they're excited heading out for their second and final lap for the four-wheel parts every man challenge so i'm going to try to find out where uh De dan fresh is out but yeah quick and go lots of action down here we'll send it back up to the booth 
Thank you very much, Miles. Oh, look at this. Someone just handed me a coffee crisp, one of the greatest Canadian chocolate bars on the planet. Thank you very much. All right, so thank you very much, Miles. But the big news, as Jim was saying before, what we're seeing in our picture in picture, that is Dan Fresh coming back into Hammertown. We have been waiting to see him here, and we've been speculating what is wrong with that. But it looks like he has a right front flat. All right, so we're watching right now Dan Fresh working his way through Hammertown with that right f right front flat. I can only speculate that the one on the the one on the rack on the back must be flat as well to drive that far. Well, this is what I was saying earlier. I said to you, I think he's had two flats, and this is showing out on course. Unlike desert cars, 4400s, 48s, 45s, and 46s do not have two tires. Miles, what do you got? So I'm down here with Dan Fresh. Obviously, a right front tire. That's not what he wants to see. You're, you're a little bit off pace with the flat tire, but you're going in the rocks, and that's where you shine. Uh, how are you feeling right now, Dan? I'm feeling great. Uh, the car feels good. Just uh, had a few flats out there, but uh, we'll get back after it and try our best. All right, yeah. Well, thank you, Dan Fresh. Looks like he wants a little drink. He's got a flat tire on the back, a flat tire on the right front. He's doing his best, but, man, this guy knows what it takes to make this happen. So it's so far so good. Again, this bomber chassis looks like it's in great shape. This is a purpose-built 4800 Brandic Motorsports Legends class car. They just finished very recently. So they're gonna do a, a fuel and go, a couple flat tires. But hey, this this race can be lost in the desert, but won in the rock. So he's still he still has a great shot at this thing. And like I said, he's a he's a professional out there on course. But again, outside of a couple flat tires of quick fuel and go, he's in great spirits. He's out here having fun, getting a quick drink, and just getting himself. Like I said, a lot of these drivers are really calm and collected right now. I kind of see both sides, and that's how I gauge if I can go and talk to them. I give them a thumbs up, if I get it, and a smile. I hold up the wrench, they give me a, a nod. I go in and have a quick chat with them, and it's just really great to see what they're doing during the middle of the race. They are right at the halfway mark and they're still able to just kind of keep it all together and keep it rolling. So I see Tony Howard coming into town. Michael Kelly's still down there with the rear end issue, so tough break there. He had a great run going, but he's got a team that can make it happen. So still putting some of that fuel in for Dan Fresh. So what a great, great run by all of these competitors for the four wheel parts, every man challenge. And that's what it means. Every man or woman can come out here and have fun here at the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers powered by Optima the Batteries. I'm gonna ship it back up to Ian, Ricky, Jim, take it away. Thank you, Miles. Always down in the pits, always giving us the greatest of information now. Let's talk about this. Dan Fresh, he was last year's winner. He's in that bomber chassis. Is there a way for him to get back into this race? I think there's a way for him to get back into it in the rocks. We always say this. This race, you know, always talk about where is King of the Hammers, won or lost, is it one in the desert, one in the rocks. I think when you talk about these Everyman Challenge cars, I think they are so equally matched in the desert that if he can get out behind them, even if he's 20, 30 seconds behind on adjusted time or even a minute, he can make that time up in the rocks. He just has to get there and get to work. We say that though, there are so many talented people ahead of him. And let's talk about Brent Harrell here. He is currently our race leader on adjusted time. As we look, oh, look down at Turkey Claw here. Look at the action there. We've Jim, got we've got a broken car in the middle of Turkey Claw and they're all just crawling straight over him. If you're broken, you can't move. You become part of the course here. You do indeed. And uh, is this Brad Lovell or is that? That's Bailey no, Cole. Bailey Cole. That's Bailey Cole as well. Yeah, just got a brief glimpse of that uh, stock class Bronco making a pass, uh, what appeared to be on a, on a Legends or a modified car, but we're waiting to see who it was. Just got a brief, brief glimpse over that hill. I think that. we're getting pretty close to seeing some of our first stock cars coming into Turkey Claw. I've been checking the tracker. I see Brad Lovell and uh, Vaughn Gittin Jr. running up the front of that class, and we should be seeing some of them coming into some of our shots soon. Indeed, and that was Rick Lavezzo we just saw down on the bottom right a minute ago. But this is another is, vehicle picking his way through Turkey Claw. That is Scott. No, that's no, Scott Foley out this of Spooners. Is actually, yes, yeah. absolutely. So that is our that is our, one of the cars in the rocks now. We're, is that our current race leader or? So that's that is Scott Foley, but I don't I don't see a car whether they're in front of him or behind him. Just got to wait for that that shot to pull out a little bit. But this may be. I think that's Craig Allen. 
Uh, that's Scott five. Foley. No, that's Scott Foley. You're yeah, quite that, right. That, yep. Yeah, that is Scott Foley, and I'm just trying to see if there's a car in front of him in the rocks or behind him in the rocks. The hard part of these rock trails, you can always tell in the desert because it'll be a dust trail if there is a uh, car in front of it. But in the rocks, you can't really see that. Yeah, this race out the front is really busy. Scott Foley, Craig Allen, and of course, Brent Harrell. Brent Harrell is leading on adjusted time as he came through Hammertown, but is in oh, third here we position go. So physically. Now, so now, is, is that our, I didn't catch the number on that. So that should be Jeremy Jones, we believe. Well, if that's Jeremy Jones, he's either jumped a couple of places uh, or the other vehicles have already made their way ahead. Yeah, we can see just way up there, we see that car. I believe that's still Scott Foley up in that, on the top of that shot uh, in Spooners. I'm just trying to get a number off this car as they work our way through. But at the same time, in your big picture, we have even more action coming in. Uh, with more cars coming on Hammertown, we're going to see a pass on the short course. And that's Dan Fresh, I believe, overtaking on the short course. He's got some ground to make up. I don't think that is damn fresh. But Ben, you know better than anybody else. You've been behind the wheel of one of these cars. If you're headed into the rocks and you're behind the wheel of a bomber car, you kind of got the DAC stacked in your favor, in my opinion. Yeah, you're in a good position, but it's uh, your race to blow. So you've got to drive smart. You've got to keep it together. So much more can happen in the rocks. Now, I think that's Andrew Gorman maybe coming in here. Now, we saw Andrew Gorman. I've got to check that number, but I think that is Andrew Gorman. And if that is, we saw him stationary in remote pit one earlier today. But the car looks very, very tall at the back, and they were working at the back end of the vehicle. So it'll be interesting to see what's going on there. As we can see, a winch recovery taking place, and much and plenty of cars still poking their way through Turkey Claw. And that is Jeremy Jones in Spooners, and we are speculating that that is the second car that we've seen go through there because we just watched Scott Foley, which actually you can see right in front of him. So the question will be, are we going to see a little bit of a pass in the rocks? Does is, Jer is it worth Jeremy Jones to push him or just stay behind him? Because he does have him on adjusted time as long as he stays on that bumper. Yeah, I'm just trying to have a look right now on my tracker just to see where vehicles are. I'm not showing any stationary. Um, I am showing Scott Foley as our lead vehicle currently. Being chased by Jeremy Jones. Then behind him is, um, I'm showing Cody Young um, and just off course. But and that look could at, just be a tracker blip. Jeremy Brent Jones Harrell. is just reeling him in in the rocks right now. He's just pushing up behind him. And the, th this is one of those times where, he, you know, is he in communication with his pit? Does he know, like, I'm sure he knows he has him on adjusted time. Does he try to pass him or does he just stick behind him? Okay, I've got some news. It looks like the 595 of Craig Allen is actually stopped on course currently just outside of Hammertown, or he's still in Hammertown potentially. Just looking here. No, I think he's just outside of Hammertown. It looks like he's showing as stationary somewhere near Baldwin's jump. All right, I think we're going to see a pass right now going on in Spooners right now as we watch Jeremy Jones possibly make his way around Scott Foley. And that puts a lot of pressure on Foley because if he's in front of him, he's got him. Exactly. So it's a Trent Fab chassis overtaking a Bomber Fab chassis. Oh. Here in Spooners, no, tried. he returns the favor. Tried, but he closed the door on him. And Scott's not going to give this up easy. He knows he wants track position. This isn't like the desert where they hoot their horns and move out of the way. You are still racing. You're going to cover the guy. It is a race. You're not going to give it up easy. And well, the uh, thing about these rock trails is, you know, anyone who's run them knows there's the line, which is the fast line. And then when you try to overtake someone, yeah, there's another line there, but it's not necessarily faster. It's often harder and can often damage the car. Now, they have to be so careful. Let's not forget, these vehicles are running 37 inch DOT tires. That means these are street legal tires. They're not racing tires like you find on the 4400 class vehicles. So they have to be really careful and protect those sidewalls. Well, we use that term DOT pretty loosely here in the States, Jim. <laughs> so uh, I, I've had some pretty interesting DOT tires that are quite sticky in my life. <laughs> well, I can tell you race director Liam O'Donnell is uh, keeping a real close eye on the tires. I believe it, because that would be one place that you could get, edge out a little bit of advantage in this class for sure. I saw him out there last night measuring some of our UTV finisher tires to make sure they comply with the rules. So he's keeping a close eye on things. Yeah, and if you see him walking around, you'll see he actually has his tape measure clipped to his belt, ready for action. 
All right, as we watch our two current race leaders make their way through Spooners, that is Scott Foley and Jeremy Jones right behind him. Any news on our uh, sitting still car out of a 595? No, 595 five, five is still stationary, but I can tell you that Dan Fresh is now making his way out and is going over Baldwin's jump right now. If I just look on the tracker, I'll try and give you our top five or six vehicles. It does look like Brent Harrell is showing off course at the moment, but I will update. It's showing him as moving, so I think that could be a tracker glitch. Sometimes there, Jim, when they're deep in the canyons, the GPS just gets a little bit confused. Absolutely. The trackers work in a bit of a double way. Both they transmit back to us, but they also log a GPS that we can download afterwards to make sure the course was accurate. So everything is covered there. And as we watch, we see even more cars making their way back into Hammertown right now. But the story of the day right now is what's going on up in Spooners. Whoa, I think we saw, uh, for a second, it looked like right before that camera moved, it looked like we saw Scott Foley pulling over and letting Jeremy Jones by, but I could be wrong. But it looks like here's that broken car that you were talking about earlier, Ben. It looks like they're trying to either move it or possibly recover it. And right, that's the car we were talking about before, Ben. There's bomber number one. There we go, Anthony Areola coming into shot in, in the original bomber. Now there's a vehicle with some history. Uh, this is this defines the Legends class, this car. Oh, look at that behind. I think that vehicle behind might have had a roll. The light bar's fallen off it. It's got a tire missing off the uh, right-hand front. Yeah, yeah, it definitely does not look to be in good shape. And this is right here in this big picture. This is the story of this class. It's traffic in the rocks and how well you can get through these rock trails around things like rolled over vehicles, broken cars. What's your plan? Do you have a plan and how are you going to execute on that option A, B, C, and D? And the key thing there, Ian, is not to over push it in the rocks. If Jeremy's caught Scott, it might be a smart idea for him to pull over, let him go, chase him through, look at the lines he's racing, have a breather, and then as soon as you can get going again, take the pass back. All right, but while we get while we reflect on that, we're going to throw down to Miles in the pits. Miles, take it away. Talk about action. I have Eric Weichel, Woody Rose, and the 4777 all in at the same time. Woody Rose has a right front tire. Eric Weichel has a right front flat tire. So lots of action out in the rocks. Yeah. Having fun. Hey, Woody, how, how much fun are you having out there, buddy? So much fun. Oh, I'm so stoked I got the uh, lap one done. Now it's onto the rocks which I have not seen yet, so my trusty co-driver, Justin Wicks, will uh, get me through, hopefully. That's awesome. Well, Woody, good luck. I'll let your crew do your thing. I'm going to run down here and talk to Eric Weichel. Looks like they're uh, doing a right front flat tire as well and uh, doing a little fuel. Eric, big thumbs up from him. He's laser focused right now, making sure everything's good to go. So with all this correct safety gear on, you can change a tire in full safety fuel while they're fueling. So they're kind of doing double duty as we speak and having some fun out here. So just lots of action down into the pits. We've got a Jimmy's car, two trip fab machines. I got Jeffrey down here. How much fun are you having out there on course, buddy? Lots of fun. So you got the desert loop down, now you're heading to the rocks? I yeah, here's the, this is the rock man right here. <laughs> All right, I like it. So that's two back to back to say they don't really know much about the rocks, but their co-driver does. So they're they're excited to have them in the car, make everything happen. So lots of action. And now I'm waiting on the Broncos. They're going to be right here in this area as well. So we'll have lots of action down here in the hot pits here very shortly. So it looks like Eric Weichel, you're about to take on out for your rock lap. Going for the rock lap. All right, well, it looks like you're getting ready to uh, ship out, so have fun and good luck out there, buddy. Thanks, boss. All right, so he's about to take off. We'll get out of the way, because like I said, I don't want to cost anybody any time. I just want to bring the, the action to it. So it looks like they're uh, wrapping things up, so we'll send it back up to you boys in the booth. Okay, thank you very much, Miles. Now, this is one of your countrymen sitting here. Ian, this is Rob Inglis. He's out of Alberta, Canada and he's in a world of pain as he tries to pick his way down through Turkey Claw. Yeah, we're watching, uh, uh, Ben spotted him earlier. It looked like we saw this vehicle, obviously it's rolled, you know, as we said, they got the light bar broken off. No, literally drove the wheels or the tires <laughs> off that car. Well, we say it's rolled, the bolts could have just fallen <laughs> out of it. But this is Rick Lavezzo right now, picking his way into town. 
Rick is on double duties this week. He's got a running here in the 4500 Yukon Gear and Axle Modified class. And then tomorrow he'll be taking out a Penel Fab IFS car for the 4400 class. Yeah, so many drivers do that. They make that double duty. They basically use this as a pre-run, come out, shake down the course, get a feel for it, and then they go in, jump in that 4400 car. The question is, do you really want to get back in a race car after being in, a, in this race? Is it, really, is it really worth it yourself to do two days back to back? You know what, Ian, I did that two years, and it was the best thing I ever did for my racing program. Mm -hmm. Getting in that car twice, running that course at speed. Yes, you can pre-run, yes, you can see the course, yes, you can make notes, but driving it at race pace is the best thing you do. But the two cars are very different. Uh, from a solid axle bomber or a Legends car to a big IFS race car, you drive a very different line in the rocks and you drive a very different aggress aggression in the, in the desert. So you need to make sure, but it is a great advantage. All right, as we watch right now, we're watching that 889 of Rob Inglis getting passed by the 4863, and this is... That is and, John Holtzman. And then, uh, oh, and now we have another car into Spooners. Now, we're not sure if this is... That's Dwayne Garrison. That is our current leader in the uh, Yukon Gear and Axle 4500 modified, modified class. He made up a lot of time then, because that may be the third car into Spooners. Ian, I'm showing about eight cars in Spooners. Eight, eight it's cars. quite a long trail. Yeah. So uh, there's going to be a fair bit of traffic up there, which is really awesome. We've got a really tight race on our hands here. Yeah, this is remarkable for the race to be so tight at this stage and with so many different cars from so many different manufacturers to be right at the pointy end. Fantastic stuff. And remember, we got three classes running today. We have the Curry Axle 4800 or sorry, the Curry Axle Stock Class 4500 Yukon Gear and Axle Modified Class and the 4800 Brandic Motorsports Legends Class. Okay, while we continue with the action here in Spooners, we're going to pass out to Matt Holt. He's in Remote Pit 1. Matt, what do you got for us? All right, Richard, how's your day going so far? Could be better. We flipped the car, but we're still doing it, and we're still cruising. Passed a bunch of cars, having a good time. Again, this is race mile one, so it's still really early in the day to see how it's going to shake out. So uh, you're, you're in the desert section now. You're headed for the rocks. What's your plan for the rock section? Today? Cruising, have a good time. Try to keep it on the rubber. Yeah, we appreciate that. Again, it looks like the car's got a little wear, but you know what? That's what gives a character. We'll let you guys get back to it. All right, thank you. Okay, and thank you very much, Matt. Welcome back to the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers. We're here today for the four-wheel parts, every man challenge. Ian, what a day of racing so far. Yeah, it's been absolutely amazing. We've seen the Legends class basically dominate out on that desert loop. Lots of those cars in and back into town. We watched a couple of the modified cars come back through Hammertown. Still waiting on a stock class car. We have not seen a stock class car make it back to finish that first loop. Ben, how long do you think our stock class cars get back into town? Jim, I'm, I'm watching them come across the desert heading towards Tur the KMC Turkey Claw. I think we might be 15, 20 minutes before we see a stock car at least. We did hold them that extra five minutes at the start to give them some clean air and try and keep them a little bit separated from some of the traffic. And uh, it's going to be a great race with, uh, with those stock cars. Yeah, we just saw that shot from Turkey Claw. A mess out there right now with two broken vehicles basically clogging up the popular line on that trail. Here we can see it right here. This, there's a, this small car and there's one right in front of him. As we see somebody else making their way in, I don't can't see a number on that car quite yet. That is the 5759. The one advantage these guys do have is it's downhill. It's easy to clear. They're not trying to climb Turkey Claw this, this year like we have in the past. So we should be able to see this traffic self-clear and, and you know, the idea is you, you work as a team, you get the car out of the way because it's slowing you down. So, you know, hopefully those drivers will uh, get themselves out of the way and we'll keep this turkey claw nice and clean. Yeah, that 57.59 was Greg Johnson out of Utah. So good to see that he is still moving along. But it's safe to say anybody who's still out there on their first lap who's from the 4800s or from the 4500s has probably had a problem. I believe that was, uh, that looks like that might have been, been Craig Allen, I was think. Was that Craig Allen? Yep. Yeah, oh, just certainly pulled, pulled over and let him by because he was coming through at, uh, at a good pace. Yeah, I'm just trying to get confirmation on uh, Craig Allen and where he is on course at the moment. No, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm still showing Craig Allen as stopped at present, but I will let you know if his tracker pings because that did look like Craig Allen. I'm just going by the color of that car. That may have been John Matthews. 
may have been John, but he has a, that blue Yukon gear and axe. Either way, we'll see it soon because they should be coming into Hammertown. And Jim and Ian, I'm keeping an eye on the tracker. If you're at home, you can keep an eye on our tracker. Look at the cars live. I've got Scott Foley and Jeremy Jones. I think Jeremy Jones is just ahead of Scott Foley. I've got Brent Harrell and Cody Young all in outer limits. All four cars in outer limits right now. They're really making some good time on our course here. Yeah, now this is what we were saying earlier about once these cars get into the rocks, they actually really come alive. Uh, particularly the bombers and those Trent fabs, they were designed for the rocks. And it's amazing to see what they can do out there. They lose time in the desert, but then they make it in the rocks. Yeah, there's some quite technical rock inside of Spooners and Outer Limits, uh, especially Outer Limits. And the, the UTVs yesterday would have been slowed up a lot more than these Legends cars are going to be slowed in the rocks here. There's uh, the number 628, another uh, bomber car you can tell. But look, that's a left front flat from the looks of it out there. That's Corey Allison, I believe. Oh, and here we've got a Bronco in Turkey Claw. Yes, this is Brad Lovell, first Bronco into tr Turkey Claw. By no, the that's car 13. That is Bailey ah, Cole. That's Bailey Cole, yep. I Bailey. think we may have seen Brad Lovell actually already come through Turkey Claw, unless I'm mistaken. Bailey's oh, and we have another one there. right yeah, behind him. That's Vaughn Gooden Jr. Vaughan. there. I've been watching the tracker and Brad's been out in front for a long time with Vaughn right behind him and Bailey was quite a gap back. So Bailey, Bailey must have really put his foot down. Made up some Not time. Not sure what's happened to Brad, but to catch Vaughn and get past Vaughn, he's doing really well. All right, and that is out in Spooners. That was our first group of cars to head into the rock section. So Ian, I'm just checking the tracker. We do have Brad Lovell about to come into Hammertown. He is still running ahead of Bailey Cole. And then I'm seeing Bailey and Vaughn in, in Turkey Claw. We've got a great race going on here with the stock class as well. Yeah, there's uh, those three Broncos up in front, which is not surprising to anyone who's followed that stock class. They dominated it for many years ever since Ford came out here with the Bronco to build a vehicle specific for that class. And they put a lot of effort in those three. They did. They're some of the hardest working drivers on the f in the field. And it's not just the flashy gear they've got. It, the vehicle is amazing. It you is. You look at it, you pour over it, and you just go, wow. But those drivers, they're out here doing their homework, and uh, they're doing the program justice as well. What I love about that, though, is you can go and buy a Bronco off, the, off from your local dealer and go out there and enjoy it. And this year, they're launching a King of the Hammers edition Bronco, I was inspired about, by Dave Cole and Jason Shearer. I was about to say that. You can walk over and check out the King of the Hammers edition Bronco here in Hammertown at the Ford booth. It has definitely got the best of the best and the aftermarket parts on it. And that's Nick Allegri there making his way into Spooners. And, and, and speaking of Broncos, guys, Miles is in the Bronco pit. Brad Lovell's coming in. Take it away, Miles. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, Brad Lovell in the Ford Bronco down here, basically doing a fuel. Looks like they're checking out a tire. They're ready to change it, but I don't see any issues down here. This AMS oil machine looks like it's in great shape. Everything's going good. Got a big thumbs up from Brad and Roger Lovell. And we know Bailey Cole and Vaughn Gittin are right behind him, so they'll be in here shortly. Vaughn Gittin Jr. is actually going to hop out of the car, and Lauren Healy is going to hop in for the rocks. So lots of strategy out here, but again, these Ford Broncos in the Curry Enterprise stock class running up front, running strong. The car looks like it's in absolutely great shape. They are you know, pushed through the desert, and it is ready for the rocks. Those 74 weld portals up front holding up strong. That's going to give them a huge advantage in the rocks here in just a little bit. And I've got Kurt Ledoux. He's part of the Bronco team, just kind of checking everything out. How's it going, Kurt? It's going great. You know, Brad's the first one in here. They're running tight. One, two, three, four, all the Broncos. Ford guys are here. Team's doing a great job. So uh, they're done fueling, so now they can look at the car. So, yeah, it's... You know, it's just the beginning. It's going to be a long day, but great to see all the competitors out here. And, you know, uh, it's just another amazing Dave Cole, King of the Hammers. It's absolutely. The largest off-road race in the world. Yeah, and it's great to see. I mean, we get lucky enough to do a lot of great things, and it's always fun to see where we bump into each other. And, you know, at Crandon, uh, down in Baja here at King of the Hammers, uh, I mean, hanging out with a legend, it's, been, it's always a pleasure, my friend. Yeah, I know it's great. I'm just happy to see Brad having a great day. We've been a big part of the Ford Bronco program for a long time, and to see him out front is amazing.
And how cool, I mean, King of the Hammers started with nothing and is built to what it is, and now we have a King of the Hammers edition Ford Bronco. I mean, you've uh, helped evolve some of the Bronco stuff. How cool is it? Well, we've been out here also with the new DR, which is a race version you can buy, you know, for the general public. So, you know, it's just, you know, to see a manufacturer like Ford involved and, and grow the sport is amazing. And to be at my age and my part of my career to be part of it is truly a blessing, and I look forward to every day. Absolutely. Well, uh, well, you know, I've grown up watching your race down in Baja, and now we've kind of traded a little bit of everything, but always a pleasure having you out here, and thanks for the insight, Kurt. Hey, and I want you guys to come out to my swap meet February <laughs> 25th, 26th out at Saboba. And uh, okay. I said I'd get a plug in, but thanks. <laughs> you got it. Thanks. You. All right. All well, right. thanks, Kurt. Uh, while we wait for Bailey and uh, Vaughn getting come in here, we'll send it up to the booth, and I'll be ready for the next two Broncos. Thank you, Miles. That Bronco program is amazing. You know, this week we've been doing a lot of uh, commentary from our booth in Hammertown. We've done a couple of shout outs to some vendors and asked for a pizza the other day. They bought a pizza up to the booth. If anyone Bronco's listening, bring me a Bronco. I'm sure I can put that in my suitcase back to Australia. But while we're waiting for that, Jim, let's, let's have a look at the scoreboard. Yeah, let's have a quick look at the scoring. Now we've got three classes racing today. We have got the 4800 Brannett Motorsports Legends class, the 4600 Curry Enterprises Stock class, and the 4500 Yukon Gear and Axle Modified class. I'm just gonna run through the top 10 in Legends. In 10th is Nicholas Aguilari. In 9th is Steve Graff. In 8th is Chad Jesse. In 7th is Michael Kelly. In 6th is Brian Tempt. In 5th is Cody Young. In 4th, it's our physical race leader at the moment. It was Jeremy Jones. In 3rd is Craig Allen. In 2nd, this is Scott Foley. And in 1st, is the young man Brent Harrell. That is how they crossed the line when they came back into Hammertown. It will change on track, though. In the 4500, um, Yukon Gear and Axle Modified class, as they crossed the line for the first lap, it was Dwayne Garretson uh, in first position. Then in second position, it was Rick Lavezzo and Justin Hall is in third. But now this is really interesting. Brad Lovell is leading the 4600 Curry Enterprises stock class. But check this out, gentlemen. Dwayne Garrison came in in the 4500s with a one hour 43.16. Brad Lovell came in with a one hour 43.38. Nearly as fast as a 4500 class car. That's just wow. That's crazy, isn't it? I would say that's probably 99.5% driver, 0.5% car at that point, because <laughs> I think you could, we've seen Brad and uh, the Lovells come out and they ro raced for years, they raced that, that I, I can say this affectionately, that clapped out Ranger that has been racing forever and they put it on the box almost every single year. And so it was, I think that if you put Brad behind the car, behind the wheel of a car, I'm not surprised to see him do it so well. But Ian, you say that, and I'm actually gonna disagree with you. Wrong. That Bronco is our first IFS vehicle on course, and that is a huge advantage in the desert. Agree, Brad is an amazing driver, but that IFS front end gives them a huge advantage in the desert, even over the modifieds that are much bigger engines, much bigger suspension, and, and that's really showing through this morning with those three Broncos moving up through our Legends modified field, even though we started them well back. Definitely, yes. There's, I'm not taking anything away from the Bronco itself. I just think that Brad, uh, when, well, not just Brad, any of the three Bronco drivers out there, there's such talent behind the wheel of every single one of those cars. Not surprised to see them doing so well. All right, well, as we take a quick break from the action here in Johnson Valley, just remember that if you want to become a premium member, you won't miss any of the action coming to you here from our live stream. It's kingofthehammers.com king forward slash live. Built for those who answer the call. This is the all new, get it done, Nitto Recon Grappler. A true all train for the job site or the campsite. Recon Grappler stands out as the new standard for all-terrain light truck tires. A true all-terrain tire for everything in between.
Fight Chase, number 23. It's 2023. This championship's yours. Let's show these guys what's up. Easy, boys. It's not over yet. Big dog still got to eat. <laughs> Whatever you say, big dog. Seriously? These fools think I'm pride? They know the deal. Over 25 years of off-road racing dominance. Proprietary patented race technology. Proudly made in the USA. Unparalleled customer service and support. The choice of champions. King Shocks, the leader in off-road shock technology. So it's decided. We'll park even deeper into parking spaces so people think they're open. Surprise. <laughs> Can't hear you, Jerry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, can we get a system where when someone's bike is in the shop, then we could borrow someone else's? No. Or you can get a quote with America's number one motorcycle insurer and maybe save some money while you're at it. All in favor of that. There's a lot of buttons and knobs in here. everybody welcome back to Johnson Valley OHV we're here watching the four wheel parts every man challenge but we have the man the myth the legend the voice of ultra four miles house with miles what do you got for us thank you Ian yeah Bailey Cole's in here and second in the Curry Enterprise stock class in that Bronco he gave me a huge thumbs up only a fuel and go nothing else uh, now I'm gonna run over here to Vaughn Gittin Vaughn Gittin is getting out of the Bronco throwing in his uh, teammate Lauren Healy, looks like they did have to re-rack a spare tire. They, they re-racked a spare tire. So they must have had a little bit of issue on the on course, but other than that, everything looks good. So Vaughn Gittin Jr. brings Lauren Healy a very clean Bronco. Looks like they uh, may have clipped the uh, door handle a little bit, but this Ford Bronco still looks like it's in great shape. Nitto tires still holding there, 74 well portals looking strong. This Optima battery, Monster Energy Machine is looking like it's doing its job right now. And look at the team in full safety gear, making sure everything runs as smooth as they can. But what a great race. Brad Level, it looks like he has about six, seven minute lead on him. And then it's Bailey Cole second, and Vaughn Gittin and Lauren Healy, team fun haver out there, close behind in third position. Yeah, the Broncos uh, in this Curry Enterprise stock class running strong. Just doing a little uh, TLC on everything. Vaughn Gittin runs the desert. Lauren Healy's gonna go out there and battle in the rocks. It's been a great race so far for the 4800 Brannock Motorsports Legends class, the 4500 Yukon Gear and Axle Modified class, and right here, the Broncos in the Curry Enterprise stock class. And that's exactly why we call it the Every Man Challenge. So I've got Vaughn Gittin Jr. that just hopped out of this uh, Bronco. And it uh, looks like you, you may have had one flat tire out on course. Yeah, we uh, I think we caught a slow leak back there. Um, we got caught behind about four or five guys, pushed it past. They were just refused to get out of the way. So we're running with them. I think we just caught a slow leak because once we got in the desert, um, we were ripping and uh, it just let go. So I think it, I think we we're on the liner. and. Uh, yeah, but uh, we got out, we changed it really quick, and uh, we're not in a bad spot at all for, for Lauren to go out and do what he does. Yeah, I mean, you brought him a clean truck. All three Broncos look like they're in great shape, and it's one, two, three, once again, the Curry stock class. Uh, you guys really own it and dominate it, but it's really cool to see what Ford Performance brings to the table for you guys. Yeah, those things are absolutely unbelievable out there. They rip, rip in the desert. No problem through Turkey Claw and just such a fun, fun th truck to drive. Broncos are unreal. Yeah, and obviously tomorrow you'll have one more lap. Today's just two laps. Tomorrow's the third lap. But there's nothing better than seeing uh, race pace or you're doing a pre-run at race pace. 
Yep, yeah, man, it was uh, it was really nice. Definitely got some extra notes in today, but uh, it's all about what uh, Lauren's out there doing right now. So I'm gonna go hop in one of our uh, production Broncos and go chase it. All right, Vaughn, always a pleasure. Uh, good luck uh, today and tomorrow, and we'll see what you can do. Thanks, buddy. So lots of action going on here in the pits, but it looks like you know there's so much going on out out on course. Let's throw it back to Booth and get us caught up. Okay, thank you very much, Miles. Always good to hear from you down there in the pits and always good to hear from Vaughn King Jr. Now, this race is really starting to take pace now. The incredible number of vehicles at the pointy end, but let's have a look at our tracker and see where our race leaders are right now as they make their way into the rock trials. Thanks, Jim. So you can see that the leaders have come out of Outer Limits. They've tracked down that green section, which takes them to pit two. Scott Foley is now first on course. He's heading back out to that red section, heading for mile 85. But Brent Harrell is right behind him. And I think on corrected time, Brent's going to be right there. We saw Jeremy Jones sort of stop at the top of Outer Limits. Maybe he had an issue at the top of Outer Limits. I think he's in third. And uh, we've got a real race going on here because I think Scott's got the physical lead. Brent's probably got the actual corrected lead, but Jeremy Jones is right there in case any of them have an issue. And we've still got up the top right of our screen, Cody Young in fourth place. He's gonna be keeping them honest. So let's get this right. We've got four cars out there and four different manufacturers of vehicle in this race. We've got a bomber, we've got a, a Horschel, we've got a Trent Fab, and we've got a Miller. That's quite incredible. That's, I love this that's racing. That's pretty cool, isn't it? It is indeed. There's no clear favorite here right now, and there's so much to play for in these rock trials. Ian, what are you thinking? Well, I think the most important thing that I think this race is going to come down to is, as Ben uh, hinted to, we're looking at the trackers, that corrected time. You know, we basically have uh, Brent Harrell in so close to the lead, but he started so far back. It's really, he just has to stay in the game to basically finish it out and, and, and take this win. As long as he keeps those guys in sight, he'll get them on corrected time all day long. Yeah, we're watching a vehicle coming into the infield now, literally three wheels on his wagon. And he'll be coming across into the pits. And that is Derek Summers coming into the pits now. Now, there's safety laws here in Hammers about what these guys have to do is we just cut back. That looks like that is in Turkey Claw, the KMC Turkey Claw. Yeah, that is the car that we watched uh, them basically struggle with. It looks like they finally got uh, out of the situation that they were at. But right now we're gonna jump up to see Matt, Hol up, Matt Holt up in remote pit one. Matt, what do you got for us? All right, I'm here with Rick. Rick, it seems like he has had some problems. Let's talk about it. Yeah, we were uh, we were running pretty good. We, we passed about 10 or 15 cars, and uh, we started uh, third to last. We coming in about five miles out, uh, we started running real lean. The motor started missing, so we think we did some damage to the motor inside. So we, we're going to call it a day. Again, 4600 class, that's our stock class. That is an extremely tough. Uh, there's a lot of limitations. You, know, you have to stay pretty close to stock issues for the vehicle. Uh, what, how does that compare to running a modified class? Uh, it's it's tough, you know. There's a lot of rules that uh, make it fair for everybody, I guess. But uh, in the desert, we run our bypass shocks a little, a little faster. But, okay. Yeah, there's a couple couple different things like just the body shocks, but uh, we still run pretty good. We were going pretty fast, you know, until we weren't. <laughs> and again, that uh, that's what Miles says all the time. He's like, we had a great day up until we did. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and this is your first time racing. This is our this is our fifth attempt. We're uh, we're over for five. We uh, so uh, this guy standing over here. Uh, we, we have a, a program called Pit Grip. Veterans to ride the team with yeah, yeah. races. And Mr. Dave Cole is incredible. He always invites us here to be his guest. So we're really grateful for him for uh, always having us out here the last five years. So pretty fun, but we're bummed it's over. Awesome. Then again, that's a great program. Get veterans in there and again, get everybody new guys out here and see this and experience it. Just, I'm sure it's a total joy for them to do. So again, this is Matt Holcomb from Rope Pit One. We'll see you guys later. All right, that is an absolute shame to hear that uh, he is out of the race in that stock class car. You know, uh, just a few seconds ago, I had one of, uh, unfortunately, John Matthews' crew member ran up here let me know that he is also out of the race. So the attrition is starting to set in fast and furious in this race uh, and that's just going to happen out here you know this is a punishing race especially for those stock class cars that are out there speaks even more as you were saying before ben how good those uh, broncos are doing out there uh, absolutely Ian. and something else i picked up from that interview with matt is there was a bit of wind noise on that microphone and i'm starting to see the flags flap here in hammertown are we going to get some of this dust moving away 
Is it going to start clearing off this this uh, dust bowl we've got going on here? Give us give us some uh, some of our drivers some better vision out on the course. Well, if you're a leader, you want that win because once you come out of these rock trails, you've just got that long little stretch of desert to get back to town. If you're in clear air, then you're in good position. Yes, but Ian, if you're the leader, you don't want any wind because you want <laughs> everyone else true. to be living yes, in your dust cloud. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the thing. And like when you race, if you're really smart at this, you choose the side of the course to actually make the wind blow across the people behind you. You can get really technical when you start getting this light breeze. Okay, that's Justin Bath now waking his way down through Spooners. But uh, while we continue with the action here, let's just thank some of the people who make this all possible. Can-Am, Ford, Bronco, Monster Energy, Optima Batteries, Nitto Tires, Progressive Insurance, Toyo Tires, Four Wheel Parts, Griffin Radiators. Amsoil, Tribe 16, CA Technologies, Spider Tracks, KMC Wheels, Laser Nut, PCI Race Rodeos, SDHQ, our sponsor of the Rookie Program. And also Curry Enterprises, Brannock Motorsports, Yukon Gear and Axle, sponsor of all three classes that we're watching today. Holly EFI, King Shocks, VP Racing Fuels, and Warren Factor 55 for, for getting all of our recovery guys hooked up with gear. ARB, SRT Off-Road Moto, Share My Coach, Dana Spicer, Electrified, Axle RC guys. Action Sports Canopy and Natio Lights. The Terra Crew, Onyx Off-Road, Recaro Seats, EMPI, Pro Eagle, Baja, Baja Beef Jerky, and Buggy Whip. I'll fix three of those for you so the Americans can hear this right. It's Dana Spicer, <laughs> Electrified, <laughs> Nacho Lights, and MP. I do the worldwide stuff. You stick to the, you stick to the detail. Uh, well, we wrote you a letter in 1776 to let you know how we were going to pronounce that. <laughs> All <welcome>. right. <laughs> All right, look at this. We've got one of our stock class uh, Suzuki's crowd favorite for sure out there. It looks to be, uh, we just had a quick glimpse of that and there's more action. Look at this, something's going on in Spooner's Bend. Yeah, that is the uh, the 866, that is Sean Ratsky there. And that rear axle is buried. Big undercut there, it's probably be bellied out. Hopefully they can get that car up and moving again. Oh, big, big rock in front of the front diff as well. That's not going anywhere in a hurry. This is exactly what you were talking about earlier, Jim, with these 37-inch tall tires. This is where it makes a huge difference when you get offline in the rocks. And this is also going to work to the advantage of our top 10 who are out in front of this. They're going to put some ground on, on everyone else. This may cause a bit of a backup, I think we might see here. And Spooners has a couple of choke points. I can't quite see exactly where in Spooners we are. But these guys are going to have to work to get around this competitor if they can't get going pretty soon. Yeah, we were watching that in Turkey Claw. You know, Turkey Claw is just a little bit wider of a trail. There's a few more lines to get through there. But as you said, when you get into some of these rock trails like Spooners, Sledge, Jack, some of these ones, there is no way around, especially for some of these cars running, thir well, for most, all these cars running 37 inch tall tires. That is definitely a spot. Luckily, it looks to him, he's got a little bit of a line burned around to the outside. They'll be able to get around him. Yeah, it looks like that won't be a problem there, but it is a problem for these guys. They look like they're pretty stuck. Yeah, there's not many winch points inside here. these trails either. The rocks are very big, they're very loose. You try to winch against them, and you just pull them towards you. Yeah, I can't really see what the... If he's trying to back it up, get it reset. Looks like he may only have rear-wheel drive. Uh, I think he has only rear-wheel drive by the looks of it. Certainly nothing happening on the front there. Based on where that big rock is on that center section of that diff, my spec... Oh no, now he has four-wheel drive. There we go. I was assuming he may have lost a front drive shaft <laughs> on that front rock. Possibly yeah, that, that would have been a big hit there. It's always amazing, isn't it? A few inches in one way or the other. The difference between gliding through and being stuck forever. But still, we have a race continuing here, and our current race leader is Scott Foley. He started on the front row of the grid this morning, and he's putting together a fantastic race right now. But, but putting pressure on him is Brent Harrell, who is not a, has him on corrected time all day long. Now, we did see Brent Harrell showing a stop uh, earlier. I'm going to be bringing you more news on that, but I can tell you that Jeremy Jones is picking up the pace and catching Scott Foley. Yeah, Jim, I, I uh, show Brent Harrell has stopped on course. He's dropped to at least fourth. He's where that pit entry rejoins uh, the track, and he is dropping well back. And that's unfortunate for him because, as we said, Brent had that uh, pressure of uh, corrected time because uh, leaving the line 21st. Oh, and it looks like it may have just updated. It looks like he may, he may be moving now, but he is physically fourth. 
but the question is how much space is between him and our leaders because he does have that five minute buffer zone. He does indeed, but these we are still not even halfway through these trials yet. There's a lot of racing to come today, and this young man is incredibly fast in the rocks and the desert. Yeah, we have just started into the rock trails, Spooners being the first one, but there's a lot of trails that these guys have to hit that are basically the iconic Hammers trails out there. Uh, ben, if you're in one of these cars, what's the trail that's got you worried the most, if you're mid-pack, let's say? Uh, honestly, those first two, getting a clean run up Spooners and Outer Limits, right, that's going to set the pace for your rock trails. The rest of them, you know, there's a lot of hard trails out there. There's a lot of new trails that I've never driven. Dave's added a bunch of trails into this year's course. There's been a, a few new trails in the last couple of years, so some of them would worry me a bit. But just getting through Spooners and Outer Limits, often we have them at the end of our races, that, you know, last, last hurdle and uh, they're doing them first, so getting that clean is very important. Getting through that first section very clean, I agree. Oh, and here we watch another one of our stock class cars making its way. This is a great option for a stock class car, being a full-size Jeep Cherokee. Just to remind you at home, anyone who's in that stock class, they have so many rules they have to keep in, in place. So this being a, a V8 powered, four-length front and rear vehicle, very pop, very good uh, platform to build from. Yeah, that's the McNamara brothers. There, the 4696 out of Ridgecrest, California. Been racing with us for a long time now. As we cut back to this vehicle, now just look at this. You see the spare tire just bouncing on the back of the rack? That has definitely, I think, been replaced. Indeed. Always worries me when you see them bouncing around. You're just waiting for it to fly off the car as the straps break. Now, Jim, we were talking this morning with Ricky about how this race is full of a lot of guys who are racing with their mates. They might just do it for a bit of fun. And uh, I've got a pretty cool tidbit. We saw that epic battle this morning with Craig Allen and Scott Foley going off that, that first pole position, battling that whole first lap. Unfortunately, Craig, he's still sitting at the top of Baldwin Hill. He he's got some issues. Scott Foley's leading the race, but they were actually high school friends. They both live in Norco, uh, Norco California. Craig was our two-time national champion in this class, uh, with, sorry, with rock crawling in the Pro Mod division, and they actually own 20 acres out next to Laser Town that they come out here and recreate together on. So, you know, really cool to see those guys go toe to toe. Great mates, landowners together, racers together. That that's really cool about this Legends class and, and all of our Everyman Challenge. Yeah, I want to go back to some news that we were giving earlier about John Matthews. John Matthews, is, uh, unfortunately, had to retire from the race, but he was last year's champion. So a tough break there for John Matthews. And a big fan favorite at home, I'm sure. Yeah, and he's one who's always been in the hunt for this race. You know, as you said, last year he finished. Uh, he podium didn't win, but he did podium, did win the championship, I believe. Uh, yeah, well, he actually won his class. Won yeah, his last class, year. Yes. yes. Won his class last year, but he's always kind of been chasing that down. But unfortunately, this year, uh, just bad luck. Apparently, at race mile 57, uh, broke the transmission in half, lost all drive on the vehicle. Yep. Okay, now also I've got some news just coming in. I, I am showing our current race leader, Scott Foley, has stopped on course. Now, this could be a tracker ping, but you never really know with these trials. So we'll keep an eye on this story right now. That is Brad Lovell into Spooners. As we said, that's the introduction to the rock trails here. So this is the first section they're going to hit. So he's at a blistering pace in that stock vehicle. He's mixed in with all those Legends cars. Brad's making this vehicle look easy up, Spooners. It's tough out there. There's big rocks. He's only on 35, so the stock cars are on a smaller tire than anyone else racing today. So they're even further disadvantaged. Brad is making that look smooth and easy. Yeah, definitely the levels, no stranger to the rocks. Old school rock crawlers from back in the day made the transition into King of the Hammers Racing, then into short course, then into Ultra 4. He's just kind of like the family that races together, stays together. That looks like a little uh, Toyota 4Runner, possibly. Certainly one of our 4600 class vehicles as we watch the lead 4600 class vehicle in the Curry Enterprises stock class. This is Brad Lovell making his way through Spooners. And I hate to say it, Ben, he's making it look easy. He is making it look very <laughs> don't, easy. Don't put that juju on him. <laughs> don't put that bad luck on him. The announcer's curse. Yes. These Broncos looked so clean when they left the, the start line. 
Not sure they're going to look that clean when they get to the finish line. We've got a lot of rocks ahead of us, a lot more technical driving for these guys, but it's cool to see how well he's moving. But as you said, Ben, three absolutely phenomenal drivers behind the wheels of each one of these Broncos. Absolutely. And in the rocks, they're IFS. A little bit disadvantaged, a little bit harder to drive, but I actually really like the IFS in the rocks. And if you know how to drive it well, which all these guys do, you can really make it work for you. They've got the additional advantage of those 74 well portals. Bit of extra front diff clearance, bit of extra height there, nice stance on the vehicle that's looking really good in the rocks there. I think the more important uh, news with that front portals on that Bronco is it just takes the load off those CV shafts. So you're basically removing that gear reduction in, in prior to the wheels. So it just takes the load off those CVs, allows them to live a lot longer. Absolutely, and we do a lot of uh, portal axle conversions back at my shop in Australia for Land Cruisers and a, a few other vehicles. And it's really cool what they do to the drivetrain. And to see them out racing here with these these uh, 74 world portals, it's really cool. And still plenty of actions in the KMC Turkey Claw as these vehicles look to come down Turkey Claw and make their way back to Hammertown to complete lap one. Now I can't tell, that might be another one of our stock class cars uh, making its way through Turkey Claw right there. It is. Absolute certainty, just trying to get a number on that one right now. You can see that the driver and co-driver out in the 819 basically spotting everybody through. Helmets off, so I'm going to assume that their day might be done out there. And that's a very sportsman-like uh, thing to do. You know, you're stuck, you're in the way, you spot the others through, help them get past you as quick as possible, and it also means they're not going to drive over you if you help help them through. And yeah. here's some big news. Look at this. We are in Spooners, and this is, I believe that's... Is that's that, Bailey. That's Bailey, yes. I was about to say, is that Bailey cool? But who is... Who's sitting right here? Is that Scott Foley? No, 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 no. Scott... No, no, no. So it's well further around the course, yeah. yes. Okay, so this is Bailey. He made quick work from we, Hammertown into Spooner. We saw Bailey in Turkey Claw when Brad Lover was coming into town, so he's really not far behind him. He's hunting Brad down. But we need to keep an eye on adjusted time on this one, guys, because Bailey started well behind Brad because mm. Bailey opted out of qualifying. And then when they were into Hammertown, it was basically Bailey and Vaughn. Now it'll be Bailey and Lauren. I'm surprised we didn't see Lauren right on Bailey's bumper in the rocks there. Okay, I've got some news about the leader. Scott Foley is moving again, so it was probably a tracker pring issue. Also, when they're rock crawling, if the tracker pings just as they come to a stop, it will show stopped. But there is a change behind Scott Foley. It looks like Cody Young has moved up into second position, and it looks like in third position is Brent Harrell. Yeah, for, well, we saw Brent sitting in fourth, and remember, Brent does have a five-minute buffer between him and the leaders. Yeah, I'm also just looking here. Jeremy Jones' tracker hasn't actually pinged for a very, for at least six minutes, so I'm going to keep an eye on that because uh, I reckon he's going to suddenly jump right up the course. An important thing to remember about those trackers when they're in those canyons, sometimes the GPS signal doesn't just, it will not ping up through the canyons, and that's sometimes why we see them disappear. Absolutely. Guys, we, we just saw Bailey making his way through Spooners in that stock class vehicle. I want to give you a quick update on finishes in the first lap for the stock class vehicle to give you a bit of an idea where we sat. We saw Brad Lovell do that epic time of 1 hour 43.38. Bailey was a little bit off that pace in the number 13 Bronco. He was 1 hour 48. Lauren Healy, just a little bit behind him again, 1 hour 53, so five minutes between each of them. John Williams has crossed the line in his in his Jeep in the 4600 Spider Tracks uh, stock class. He's fourth in class in two hours and three minutes. We've only got four across the line for that second lap, but we're starting to see these stock cars move right up through our field. And we just see right now, that is now what was the Vaughn getting, now Lauren Healy stock class Bronco is in Spooners. Uh, when we saw Bailey and Spooners, we were wondering where, how far behind Lauren was, because they did seem to come through Hammertown together, and there he is making his way through Spooners right well, now. I'm going to speculate that Vaughn did the desert lap and that Lauren's got home for the rock lap. That's because what we I saw, saw happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we saw Miles talk about that when they were in the pits. Oh, yes. I he, missed that bit. Yeah, he pulled him out and, uh, and, and Lauren jumped in for the rock lap, which is a great, great you know, as as Ben said, Lauren has so much experience in the IFS car in the rocks for many years out here in Johnson Valley. So a great person to put in that car for the rock lap. Yeah, so Cody Sinclair there we see making his way through.
Cody's been racing with us a long time. It's always good to see him out on track. Very distinctive vehicle, just picking his way through these trails, putting those 37 inch tires to work. And this is just the introduction to the rock trails today as part of this lap. As we said before, these cars are racing. You know, we talked about this. They're racing the same course that the UTVs raced. Will we see somebody come close to a UTV time, Jim? I don't, I don't think I'm not talking the leader. Let's move him out of the way. Because <laughs> that was an amazing. Yeah, like, got, everyone's like, it was like, lunch? Winner? What? What's happening here? It wasn't even lunch. It was 11.30. <laughs> We'd have barely finished morning coffee. Exactly. Yeah, I felt like the race had just, the last car left the line and the winner's pulling in to get, yeah. the, get the check. But will we see these guys come in around that same time as our top 10? I personally think they're going to be somewhere around about sort of quarter past 12, sort of even 12.30 before we start seeing that lead car coming into town. So I reckon we're going to be at least half an hour to an hour slower than that first Carl Cheney amazing run yesterday. I mean, it, it, that, don't want to talk about it too much, but it was phenomenal. As simple as that. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, I was literally, I wasn't here, I was watching, and when I heard the time of the winner coming across the line, I was shocked, because it was so fast. So are we going to see a third lap in UTV next year? I hope so. I, I would like so. to see a third lap in all of them, and then a fourth <laughs> lap for 4,400. Why not? <laughs> Let's change it up a bit, but it's Cody Sinclair now making his way through Spooners. Nice and tidy, keeping it, keeping it sharp as he picks his way through. Yeah, working their way through those rocks. As we said, that's the first section of, uh, of rocks for these iconic Hammers trails. And uh, Ian, Jim, we're talking about three different classes here. We've got our Legends, our Modified, and our Stock Cars. There's one more class. There's one more class. The e My favorite class, the EV class. EV class with Keith Silver in the 2412. Now, unfortunately, not the best news on that. I've been following him on the tracker, keeping an eye on him. Looks like he took the start this morning, went over Baldwin Hill onto Emerson, and unfortunately he's out there. Something wrong with that car, it's not working. Still. That's a Maybe shame. we can send him some solar panels or something and get him going again, because it is a great, great class. We want to see that grow, but um, tough luck for him at this stage. Hopefully he can get it running again and keep going. But we'll, uh, we'll keep tabs on him as well. I look at the EV class this way, Ben. You know, yeah, it's, it's brand new. I kind of think back to the days of, of King of the Hammers 2007, 2008. <coughs> if we took those cars that we raced in 2007, 2008 and brought them out here, they're probably going to make it off the starting line up over Baldwin Hill and break down on Emerson Dry Lake Bed on a good day any day. So the fact that they are basically pioneering that class it's a shame they didn't make it but you know it, it that's what it's going to take it's going to take multiple races for a vehicle like that before we get to the point where they're coming around and, and competing and doing both laps like our like our basically our, the cars we're watching today yeah and i think we'll see that class grow and grow and grow and be really successful into the future there's a lot of motorsports embracing uh, electric vehicles or uh, uh, vehicles that can capture uh, energy and reuse it so really cool to see that grow and it's, it is the future in that way. Well torque makes you smile and when you uh, want to have a little bit of fun you go ahead and jump in a vehicle with a whole lot of torque and uh, some of the EV cars that are out there you can have a lot of fun with them uh, out there but right now we are once again deep into the four wheel parts every man challenge unfortunately with the loss of that EV car we're down to only three classes racing today we have the Curry Enterprises stock class Brannock Motorsports uh, sorry, Braddock Motorsports Legends class, excuse me, and the Yukon Gear and Axle Modified class. And right now the story of the day, I think, is all about Brent Harrell and how is he able to keep our leaders inside his adjusted time window because that is all he has to do to win this race. Yeah, well, um, Ian, I'm watching the tracker. I'm staying on top of this timing here, keeping an eye out on the, the footage here. Scott Foley is opening up a lead here. We're starting to see him open up on Jeremy Jones and Brent Harrell. Um, Scott's moving around our rock trails, really making some good time. Let's see if he can keep that up. Let's see if the others can chase him down. As, as you said, Brent only has to catch him 
by five minutes. He only finished five minutes behind. So this is going to be a great story. We're going to keep an eye on it all day. Yeah, as we've talked about many times, uh, and we kind of hit on this fact for everyone watching at home, this is an adjusted time race. Everyone has left the line at a specific time, and they're essentially racing the clock even though they're racing each other. Now, yes, they are racing the clock, but if you are, uh, Brett Harrell, knowing that you have that five minutes in your back pocket and you're up in the mix with the leaders it's got to feel good so all he has to do is get through these rock trails a little bit quicker get up to our leaders get them in his sights and that'll make him feel a lot better in these rocks but we have a lot of rock trails to tackle today yeah Ian while you were talking we were watching the Toyota stock class vehicle of Chris Menely. He's out of Chino, California. He was making some mean uh, work of that desert. It was looking quite good. Yeah, you know, that, that is one thing. The stock class cars, just like the technology trickles down from all the all the 44s into the 48s, and the stock class cars, the Bronco speaks to that. There's a lot of technology that has basically come up out of those higher classes that have been able to make those stock class cars work a lot better. And speaking of making it look good and work better, that is our leader, Scott Foley into Dirty Love. He is really pushing around this course. All right, so what I'm gonna do right now, since we have him, I'm gonna start my absolutely unofficial timer here that means nothing to anybody else but me. And I'm gonna start a, a stopwatch on him. There we go. And then when, when we see our next car through there, we'll, uh, we'll have an idea of where everyone's gonna be. So as Ben said, that is Scott Foley, current first vehicle on course, current race leader until we work through some adjusted time. All right, so Ben, we've been talking about these Broncos all morning out there doing uh, work in the desert, but we have our friend Scott Rain here on stage. He's gonna share with us some other news from Ford. Well, thanks a lot, Ian. Uh, Hammerton race fans, you guys having a good time this morning? I know this guy has. He's been here from the very beginning. Are you guys Bronco fans? How many Bronco drivers do we have out there? There's a couple right here, no doubt. Well, we got a very, very special announcement in just a second. As you notice, they have a couple very cool Broncos up here in front of us. We're going to bring this guy up on stage. I think it's not the first time he's probably been up here. But uh, let's walk up to the stage. Mark Rushbrook, he is the global director for Ford Performance Motorsports, and he has a very special guest. I think he might be a two-time king, I'm not too sure, but let's get Mark out here. Mark, welcome back to King of Hammers one more time. Oh man, thanks for having us here. We love being here. I tell you, this is our fourth year of the relationship that we've had with Dave Cole and King of the Hammers, and to be here with all this passion, it means so much for us. We love racing all over the world. We do a lot of racing on, on the track. We also are doing a lot of racing on off-road. And to have this opportunity to be here with our Broncos, with great racers like Von Gittin Jr. and all of these passionate fans, it, it means so much to us. But we also use this race location for developing our product. So yes, we're here to race for these weeks, but other weeks when you, there aren't all these people here, our teams are here, Von and our other drivers come and develop great products like this to make them even better so that people can buy street legal products, take them home, and then go off-roading with them if they want. And this is the latest with our Bronco Raptor, 418 horsepower, EcoBoost, Fox live valve shocks, 37-inch BFG tires. It is the real deal. One of the great things with Broncos is the Bronco off-rodeo experience. And we wanted to make that even better once we made this Bronco even better. So that's what we're announcing today, that there's a special Bronco off-rodeo for Bronco Raptor at the Nevada location. And Vaughn has been part of developing that, so I'm gonna turn it over to him and let you guys let him tell you guys about it. Yeah, what's going on, everybody? Appreciate the love. Thank you all for coming out. This is a, a brutal course this year, and appreciate you all coming out. Really, uh, really enjoy the energy. And yeah, the, uh, the announcement today is for is is that all bronco raptor owners are going to get exclusive experience at the raptor off rodeo something that myself lauren healy bob burns brad lovell have developed from ground up to give every raptor owner an epic unique experience 
to get them comfortable with the capability and how to use their Raptor to the fullest so they can go out in the wild on their own and be comfortable. And most importantly, from my perspective, put smiles on everybody's faces that owns a Raptor. And so uh, if you are a Raptor owner, you can go to Bronco Raptor or BroncoOffRodeo.com slash Bronco Raptor. Get your information, but you will be notified. Um, but this is in Nevada. It's a very unique location. And what we were looking for, you know, this truck was, was born and bred around Ultra 4 and, and that mindset of being able to hit the desert, hit the rocks, hit the trails, and drive home after. And um, we found our own little private Johnson Valley in Nevada. We've got desert, we've got rocks, we've got whoops, we've got jumps. We've got a couple other very special features that we've built into it. You've got a lot of passion from myself and the other drivers I mentioned in it. And uh, for me, the opportunity to develop it and so that thousands of people will be able to get inspired to come out here with their own vehicle is uh, what it was about for me. And, and uh, you know, hats off to Ford for thinking about what happens after you buy this and wanting to, you know, educate and, and enable its owners to be experienced because that also inspires the next generations. And so uh, hats off to you guys for, for just thinking big like that and uh, investing and making it happen. And um, we got a sweet video, give you guys a little taste of it. And uh, if you all are considering a Bronco or a Raptor, I might be a little biased, but I can assure you you're not gonna go wrong. Hit it! Welcome to the Mojave Desert. We're here in Nevada, where desert racing's roots lie. We're on an adventure traveling through the same desert where off-road racers have cut their teeth for years. We're really going to be integrating 30 plus years of off-road racing experience. And this has everything. Fast desert, technical rocks, all the stuff that Bronco Raptor was built to conquer. We found our own personal Johnson Valley and now owners get to come enjoy this playground. Your face is gonna hurt from smiling so much. Thank you, Scott, Mark, Vaughn. That's amazing news from Ford and the team. It's great watching them out here now. I did put the call out earlier, seeing if Ford wanted me to uh, wanted to bring me a Bronco I could put in my suitcase back to Australia. Someone has just dropped me a little Hot Wheels Bronco. That's probably about as much as I'm going to fit in my suitcase. But thank you very much. Good luck. Sounds like some great, great things happening at Ford and the new off-road park. Yeah, Ian? you can't you, you can't go wrong getting being able to spend a little bit of time with uh, with Vaughn and and, Lo and uh, Brad and all those guys and and definitely Vaughn out there uh, messing around with the Bronco. And uh, if you're in Hammertown, if you uh, turn around, there's also a pretty uh, pretty iconic Bronco also parked just outside the uh, outside the fire pit here. That's the OG very very first winning uh, King of the Hammers vehicle out. That's old J.R. Reynolds uh, OG Bronco buggy still kicking around the lake bed, which is super cool. But right now, we are watching the four-wheel parts Everyman Challenge race, and we're watching the 48-37. Now, that is... Oh, we're going to see a pass here. Passing Scott Foley. Now, this is a pass for the lead, Scott. Yeah. yeah, uh, Ian, yeah. This is huge. Yeah. We've seen Jeremy Jones catch and pass Scott Foley. This race is really unfolding here. Yeah, and that's Jeremy Jones passing Scott Foley. If he gets in front of him, there's no question he's got he's got the not only physical lead but lead on adjustable time because on adjusted time because Scott Foley was first off the line in that number two position. Jeremy Jones started in number six, which is basically two lines back. So 
min a minute. A minute behind yep. him. So if he stays in front of him, Scott, not only does Scott have to pass him now, he's got to put a minute between him if he wants to get the physical lead back or physical and uh, adjusted time win. As we go to Turkey Claw, where we're seeing more and more of these stock vehicles make their way through that section of rocks. I just got a quick glimpse. That's uh, Jeremy Purick out there in that uh, 392 powered four-door JL that he's out there racing in. And we talk about these stock cars and we usually think, you know, stock motors, small motors. That is still a stock motor in that car. Well, the best. Wow, it's not small. The best thing Jeep ever did was put a, a Hemi in a, in a Wrangler because that made V8 swaps 50 state legal. That's how that works here. So I was happy to see that myself. As we're watching a helicopter chase one of our stock uh, stock cars through the desert right there, that's uh, looks like a little Toyota. Yeah, this probably doesn't have a V8. It would like probably significantly no. smaller in, in this uh, little pickup. Oh, but look at him get a little bit of air out there in the desert. Good for him. He really is pushing that little truck there, isn't he? I can't tell by the year of that truck. That could be an IFS truck, to be honest with you. But we talked about that before, the amount of technology that trickles down from some of the higher classes into the stock classes. And right now I cannot see through the dust, but I believe that is. Oh, he's gonna land the drone on the car. Nope, he's gonna he's gonna crash the drone. That's all right. They're tough. They can handle that kind of stuff. Well, you can't say we're not getting you close to the action. How cool I, is that I thought for a second he was going to land it on the roof of the car, and I was got that'd be pretty impressive. But right now we are into spooners, as we said before. This is the first rock trail that these cars are going into before they just spend all day or the rest of their day in the rocks here in Johnson Valley. Yeah, these guys still have a long day ahead of them. They're going to be out on the trail for a long time. I think we saw our leaders uh, yesterday finish. I believe this is our current race leader We're coming into the Can-Am Chocolate Thunder. This is where they, we saw them qualify up Chocolate Thunder. Now they're coming down Chocolate Thunder on the race course. And then they uh, take a left. And they don't necessarily go up idle issues, do they? They go around the outside of it, don't they? Uh, they have to go up a significant amount of idle is issues. Yes, they do. So this Jeremy Jones, first on course. He's clean Chocolate Thunder. If you're out there at the Jumbotron, you've got a great view of this. We've got jumbotrons all over the lake bed here, but whether you're out at Chocolate Thunder at the lake uh, down at Hammertown or watching around the world, we're bringing you this. This is a new leader, Jeremy Jones, heading up Idle Issues. Yeah, and I've uh, once again restarted my unofficial start wa start uh, stopwatch up here to see uh, when we'll see Scott Foley make that turn to come up Idle Issues. This is essentially the qualifying course backwards, is what these guys are running right now. Yeah, I think the only uh, the only difference is they have the option of going all the way to the top and over, or they can go across that nasty side hill and get out the top there. We'll just have to see uh, what options the uh, the course designers have given these guys. Speaking of uh, qualifying, you know, probably you know, every year qualifying there was that iconic moment. Last year was Lauren taking the uh, you know that twenty foot waterfall drop. This year has got to be the Shannon Campbell saving the roll at the top of Idle Issues. Uh, as he came out there top. So lots of action in uh, qualifying, but right now it is all about our current race leader. It looks like he's making that right-hand turn that you were talking about. Yeah, he's taking that right-hand turn across the side hill there. He'll turn up and pop over the top. Looked like he had a little bit of trouble just getting up that ledge that we saw them all dropping down in, in qualifying, but he's now clear out of idle issues. Some of those ledges are huge on that section, of course. They are okay, massive. So I've got my uh, unofficial stopwatch rolling, and so when we see Scott Foley make that turn into idle issues, I will stop it and we'll give you a time between the two. Yes, yeah, so on tracker I showed Scott Foley is coming down Chocolate Thunder, so hopefully we can see him shortly. Uh, hopefully yeah, I'm we'll sure he'll it. be chasing Jeremy down. He won't like getting past. He won't like letting him getting get away. So he'll be pushing that car to the limits and trying to keep up. Yeah, so hopefully we'll get back to it, the camera shot of, uh, there he is right there. Is it? No, I don't think that's. That is def definitely not a bomber. No, that 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 could, that could looks like, that looks like a Miller car, doesn't it? Yeah.
So we're just trying to get a number. So up. that would be the 4862 of Cody Young so from Young Blood Motorsports. So has that, he passed Scott as well? That could be. The, if he is, he's one minute thirty seconds behind our current race leader. Because when I stopped my stopwatch and then realized that, that was not who we thought it was, I restarted it. It was at the one minute thirty second mark. But it looks like he's having the exact same problem. Uh, that our race leader was trying to get. It's this one waterfall here. It's inc incredibly loose on the right. And it's covered in dust. We ran the shootout down there as well. We've had a bunch of vehicles running down there. But Cody Young, he started four grid positions behind Jeremy Jones, which puts him a minute corrected behind Jeremy Jones uh, on, on our corrected time. So he would be within 30 seconds of striking him at that point because he's a minute 30 behind him. But it doesn't look like uh, Jeremy made up through her problem. But it looked like he had a little, slowed down a little bit uh, at the back, which he's not going to want to do. Uh, he's going to want to start putting some space between uh, himself and that second place car if he can. He doesn't have the cushion that I think he kind of hoped he, hoped he had. Yeah, he's picking his way through that, that boulder field, trying to keep those tires alive. We saw a lot of tires in this next section get destroyed in qualifying. So these guys are going to have to be careful. All right, and it looks like we're jumping back out to Turkey Claw for a second here. Oh, there we got another one of our, it looks like a possibly one of the stock class cars making its way through the desert. As we're watching our current race leader, Jeremy Jones, right now, based on our completely unofficial timing, we have him not only physically first on course, but I believe he is first on corrected time, unless we see the gap. Oh, no, not now. Look at the gap that's been. Oh, that so is Scott Foley that's there. Scott, so problems. we missed him go through. So we missed him go through. So that's Scott Foley, probably 30 seconds behind Jeremy Jones, which is good for him. We have a great race here, Ian. Yesterday, we saw the leader of the UTV race get a bit of a lead, dominate most of the day. Right now, it's anyone's race here. This is really going to be a great afternoon of racing as this unfolds. Yeah, and as we come around, we're looking for the other. We saw the uh, another car right behind Scott Foley. We're trying to see. There he is. Made his way. Looks like he took the alternate way up and around through uh, through idle issues. Yeah, so they have to stay in the rocks there. It's very clear, and uh, he'll be making his way back down too. I'm sure he'll be chasing Cody down. And that is Scott down. Sorry, that that is Cody there. Yeah, that's Cody. We just saw him make his way up idle issues. And it looks like instead of making the right-hand turn, he may have gone all the way up through the top just based on where we saw him on that wide shot a second ago. So that is one, two, three on course right now here as part of the four-wheel parts every man challenge. And this is just one class that's racing today. So these are our one, two, three in our Brannock Motorsports Legends class and who we haven't seen yet at Chocolate Thunder, who was pushing right at the beginning, leading the, the first lap, is Brent Harrell. Let's keep an eye out for him as this unfolds. And we also want to keep an eye out for Dan Fresh. We saw him come into town with a flat tire, where was, obviously that's what two flat tires is what took him out of that first lap. But, you know, lap, we expect to see him pushing up to the front of the pack. It's just, can he make an, up enough time to get through there? One of the next uh, what, the next cars to come through this section that we'll really want to keep an eye on as well is our stock class. We saw Brad Lovell with a comfortable lead, but then we saw out of nowhere Bailey Cole so, kind of pop up and be right behind him. So the question is, has Bailey been able to reel in Brad? And then Lauren was behind Bailey in that Ford Bronco. So that's Broncos 1, 2, and 3 in that stock class. And we should expect to see them at Chocolate Thunder pretty soon, I believe. So Ian, I'm just looking at the tracker and just spying on our stock class like you were talking about. Looks like those Broncos are still running nose to tail. They're just clearing the top of outer limits. So it will be a fair while before we see them in Chocolate Thunder, but they are still making great progress. 
Yeah, working their way through. We've been watching them for sure. They're kind of right in the middle of all of those uh, Legends cars as they make their way in through those rock trails. Remember, these Legends cars, they started almost 40 minutes before the Broncos. So the Broncos have a, a big time difference there. Yeah, absolutely. And we're watching one of our modified cars come into Hammertown. Uh, Victor Bunners. Bunes. I'll go with Bunes. Bunes? Oh, Bunes. I'm going with Bunes on that one. Yep. So it looks like Victor's going back into Hammertown, finishing his first desert loop in that modified car, 45.72. So these guys have until 1 o'clock to finish their first lap. We've got a lot of cars out there that are doing it a bit tough. Hopefully we can get as many of them through and back onto the second lap. Here's what I – jump on the tracker for me, would you there, uh, Ben, and let's have a look for – see if you can find me car number 4313, I believe it is. That is Holly Fowler. Yes, is she moving still? It does not look like it, does it? No, unfortunately I have her off course. She is moving, but maybe she's had some issues and limping back. That is a shame. I was one to hope to see how Holly's out in that 4500 class. And at the same time right now we're seeing, look at this, this is one of those choke points that you were talking about earlier, Ben. We've got some action going on. Yeah, it looks like we've got co-driver out of the vehicle trying to get this all cleared up. Yeah, pulling winch line through that section. I can't tell. Hey, all right, let's jump back into town. Here we go. And here is, uh, I believe, another one of our stock class, or could be a modified car. Uh, this looks like a Bronco again, I believe. No, that's a no? JL. Oh, it's a JL. Yeah, you're yeah, absolutely that's a right. 40, 4,600 stock class JL. And there, we were just talking about this. this is Jeremy yep. Purick. He's headed, it looks like he's on his way back into town. He's coming in in the, that's that 392 four-door JL. Making his way through that really nasty cross grain through the saddle. Still a lot of racing to go for these guys. There is. All right, so now I believe this is our leaders right now. Yeah, this is definitely Scott Foley, and I, I think that's Jeremy Jones ahead of him. So Scott's caught, caught Jeremy up again. And they're really battling these guys. They're pushing these cars to the limit, trying to find the lines to stay ahead. Yeah, and I think Scott Foley, that would be a good spot where Scott Foley, he, he's going to want to make a pass there shortly. And this is another bomber coming down Turkey Claw, the 628. Yeah, you can see him putting those spider tracks axles to work. And now we're out in Spooners. Again, as we said before, this is sort of the introduction to these rock trails. And this is Brent Harrell coming into Chocolate Thunder. We were asking about where he would be. So he's, he's making that, that Paul Horschel obstacle car. Uh, All right, so Chocolate these Thunder. are, if I'm not mistaken, is this? Slash? Yeah, this is Scott now in front of. Yeah, it looks like he made the pass, which is what we thought we'd see. All right. Was that, was that the clock line at Sledge that they were in? It certainly looked uh, like it from No, them. they should nope. be in Wrecking Ball at the Wrecking moment. Ball, okay, there we go. All right, no problem. So that is Wrecking Ball. I, was I couldn't tell by the... Uh, Heading towards Wrecking Ball. Yeah, so we, uh, that was our current race leaders, and it looked like Scott Foley has put the pass on, so now he is physically first, but he needs to put space. Oh, and look at this. Because of this, we now have everyone's packing up now. Look at this. We have one, two, three physical on course, but on corrected time, that is not how these cars would look. And, and this is the thing when you're playing follow the leader and one person gets stuck, it can hugely advantage the guy in third or fourth. Yeah, and it looks like uh, looks like uh, Scott has made his way possibly through. He's trying. So right now, Scott is currently first physical on course. Right behind him is the 4837 of Jeremy Jones. And I couldn't see... Oh, look. And this is Cody Young. And that's Cody Young. We just saw him make a big move down, and he was trying to make the pass, but just got a little bit offline. And if you're following at home, along at home, the ticker on the right, that shows you the corrected time that these cars have come through our start finish at the end of lap one. So have a look at that, see where your favorite races are. There's a lot of finishes through that lap one now. We're bringing you some times in case you uh, haven't seen them come through. Yeah, and so right now we are just, we just watched Cody Young physically third on course. Uh, and then 
Scott Foley physically leading the race and Jeremy Jones, but based on how close they were together on that section of course, corrected time, Cody would probably be feeling really good about seeing both those cars so close to his front bumper. Absolutely, Cody's in a, in a great seat here. And uh, let's not forget, Brent Harrell's still hunting those guys down too. Moving his way through there. And where's Dan Fresh? Where, where, I'm, where is he in this mix right now, Ben? You're popping up on the tracker. There's that Horschel car. Looks like it has cleared Chocolate Thunder. We were just watching him a second ago. Made the turn up to idle issues and is working his way across. So Ian Dan Fresh is still moving, but he's uh, down near Clawhammer, so he's still got a lot to go. He has well and truly dropped out of the lead. Yeah, that's a shame. We sort of always watch him every year to put on a good show for us here. All right, and so right there in that big screen, those are your physical race leaders on course. That is Scott Foley at the front. Right behind him, Jeremy Jones. And then right behind him, I be we believe, is that Cody Young behind him, Ben? Yeah, that's Cody Young. Yeah, right Cody there. Young following up in, uh, in third position, yep. but probably first corrected. Oh, and there's Jeremy. There's, that'll buff out, don't worry. That's fine. A little bit of body damage there on the side. of. The oh, and look who's back in the booth. It's our good friend Ricky Johnson back for some more, more fun in the desert. How absolutely, you doing, Ricky? Absolutely, absolutely. And... A little bit of shuffle up front, but a lot of the same guys. And uh, the, now we're in the most difficult spot. And, and we're I'm a little shocked that these guys aren't making up more time on the side-by-sides through the rocks. But I think after everybody getting stuck in there, it really took a lot of the dirt out in between, making the transition a lot more difficult. I think it's also the fact that, you know, we, we, t we criticize the side-by-sides or question their ability in the rocks, but I think nowadays, especially being able to run a 35-inch tall tire, they're able to tackle these trails. The difference between a 35 and a 37 is actually only one inch. It's yeah. not two because there's an inch on the top and an inch on the bottom. So it's not a huge difference. And if you get a good, you know, obviously we had an incredible side-by-side -side driver take the win, but, uh, yeah, you get a good side-by-side -side driver, they can do well in those rocks. Well, and we're going to see that tomorrow in the in – the in the, in the other class, in the 4400 class, that we have some of those guys coming out here with the 35s. It is going to be pretty. It's going to be a great show. All right, and as we watch, uh, the, you know, you know, you know, Ben and I always talk about the, the heroes of the sport being that 4800 Legends class, but these are like the those stock guys. They're like the class 11 cars of our uh, of our of our KOH, excluding our Broncos. Our Broncos are like. You know, yeah, maybe a class five slash class eleven. Yeah, well, and, and that new technology. Uh, we, we we watched Bailey Cole race that same exact vehicle in the Desert Challenge. So that that's going to be the race coming in. Watch and see who can bring to put that together. And as we watch the action in Spooners, Jim, Ian, I'm going to sign off for a little bit. Let you guys call the action. I'll be back a bit later to check in how this race goes. I've been Ben Napier. Enjoy the show. Thank you, Ben. Thanks, Ben. Always a pleasure being in here. So now it's myself and Ricky Johnson here in the booth. At least uh, we'll get uh, just just one straight accent now, right, Ricky? That's right. Just the Johnsons. Just the Johnson. The Johnson <laughs> boys here. The one, oh. with, the one with great hair and the one with not. There's here. Uh, speaking of our Class 11 style stock class, that was a Suzuki out there in the rocks. And that's just sort of uh, always fun to see those Zooks poke their way through uh, these rock trails out here at the Hammers. Well, and, and we're watching we're going to be we're looking probably under an hour for our, our winner to be crossing the finish line i think i think you're right i think you know i don't think that we're going to see him come in and beat that uh beat that uh, side by side time but i think maybe an hour hour and 20 minutes we'll have our whichever winner here and and the question will be when they get here how much adjusted time math are we going to have to do exactly and that's the thing everything that happens when they cross the finish line is unofficial because we have to go back, look at the trackers, see if they hit their VCPs, see if there's any speeding penalties in the pits. There's a lot of things going on as well as we need to make sure that they didn't get outside assistance or anything like that. But when we come back, <clears throat> we are going to be bringing you back to the Four Wheel Parts Airman Challenge presented by Progressive. We're going to step away for a quick break. If you are looking to, to want to go without the break, you can go to kingofthehammers.com forward slash live to miss all that we'll see you in just a minute renowned worldwide for reliability 
The ARB Airlocker is a must-have for off-road drivers, including rock crawlers, overlanders, and racers. With over 100 applications, ARB Airlockers gives your vehicle the traction you need to tackle virtually any challenge with the flip of a switch. Dana's involvement with King of the Hammers includes our sponsorship of the EV spec class with our Spicer Electrified E powertrains. Dana is here not only to invest in the next generation, but also to provide the next step of technology that's needed to race in the desert using electric technology. Curry Enterprises has over 60 years of off-road knowledge. From the harsh deserts of Baja, to the extreme rocks of King of the Hammers, to the Jeeps we drive every day, Curry has the right axle set up to fit your needs. Curry Enterprises, passion for performance. Welcome back to the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers powered by Optimal Batteries. You are watching live the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge presented by Progressive Insurance. I am Ricky Johnson along with Ian Johnson. We're bringing you all the action. So many things have happened. We're about an hour and 20 minutes, 15 minutes, somewhere in there, but a lot can happen in between here and the finish line. But that's the time that we're looking for, about 12.30 for our the winner of the Everman Challenge to make it to Hammertown. Yeah, and once again, just to remind you, we are racing three different classes today, but our current race leaders are all part of that 4800 Brannock Motorsports Legends class. We also have 4500 Yukon Kieran Axel modified cars out on the course and then we also have our Curry Enterprise stock class out there as well but the story right now is all about our race leaders we basically have Scott Foley we have Jeremy Jones basically battling out at the front but it, I think this race is 100% going to all come down to corrected time I, I think so and, and that, I, I love that because the well that you get the emotions of the first across the line, which it always feels good to do that. But then the clock starts. Like all of your all of your family and friends is like hit the stopwatch and they start counting, and it gets closer and closer. And we've seen this race won and lost by seconds. Yeah, and it's kind of funny when you think about it. They're going to be out there for you know three four hours, and then it's going to come down to just seconds, as you said in the end. And the question will be, can our current race leader put enough space between himself and that second place car? But uh, right now. We are looking at, uh, who's this, we're in Spooners right now, watching one of our uh, Legends cars work their way through. We've seen a lot of traffic out there on this race course. We've seen a lot of attrition, but we're kind of just keeping an eye out. This is Cody Young right now. Now, I believe Cody 
is currently sitting in second or third spot. We've seen that lead change hands three or four times out in the in these rock trails, and it's basically going back between Cody Young, Jeremy Jones, Scott Foley, and we're just keeping an eye on what's happening. And this is, we're basically now we're into Chocolate Thunder. This is Nicholas Allegri coming down Chocolate Thunder. This is the exact opposite of the qualifying course. They come down Chocolate Thunder, they turn left and go up Idle Issues. It, qualifying was unbelievable at Chocolate Thunder. We saw Shannon Campbell go for a flip. We saw a lot of guys, because now, Ian, you can go back a few years where everybody was like, let's, because I remember Jesse, you can, Jesse, you know, Combs would say, oh, you can pass me in the desert, but when the rocks come, I'm, I'm coming after you. And where it was fast in the desert, slow in the rocks, not anymore. No, now this race is just fast everywhere. That's the reality. Ben and I were talking about that during qualifying. You know, Ben, obviously seasoned racers, race, yep. race this uh, track, race this race many, many times. He said, the minute it has become a sprint race from start to finish, it's just a completely different race. And that's what we're looking at right now as we watch our current rate. We believe it's our current race leader. That is the 4837 of Jeremy Jones make his way through those rock trails. But to get back to what you were saying, Ricky, yeah, I loved seeing quali qualifying out at, at Chocolate Thunder. I thought it was super cool. I think it changed the game for everybody. Right, because it's not a short course track. It's not wasn't a lot of desert. It threw the rocks in, but a lot of guys had to take chances, and, and we saw it bite some of the legends like Shannon Campbell. Yeah, but you know, I've watched that video over and over, and whenever I see someone post that video online, I point out one very important thing. When you watch Shannon Campbell come over the lip on that at the top of her, uh, of Idle Issues, yeah. and he, you can watch the car, there's so many videos that have been posted in slow motion, that car starts rolling, if you watch, the tires do not move. They stay perfectly still until he's back on all fours and he stabs the gas. Exactly. That is probably some of the best driving that I've ever seen out here, because the ability to stop that car on all fours, stab the gas, and stop that momentum, 95% of the people out here, myself included, would have just white knuckled that all the way to the bottom and been through, through many, many rolls, but he was able to stop that car mid-roll. Well, what they say a lot of times when it came to uh, race cars with a clutch, when you spin both feet in, I mean, you push the clutch in, push the brake, he had the, he had the wherewithal, stay off the throttle, stop those wheels as soon as it caught traction, he was right on top of it. So it's pretty crazy that he's that, he's that aware when he's flipping down a hill. That's right, and we just saw our physical race leader, Jeremy Jones, head into nacho dip not nacho dip it's nacho 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 that's right. dip that's right but right behind him i believe that's cody young all right so we're what that is our current one and two on track right there and once again it's going to come down to correct the time because cody because cody young started 10th um, so we have a, a slight take, that's Jeremy Jones in front, correct? Yeah, Jeremy Jones in the front, the 4837, right behind him, Cody Young in that 4862. But it's really only maybe a minute between the two on corrected time. Exactly. And so what I'm going to say is that if you look, this is one of the hairiest sections of the course because you're hanging off the side and not a lot of room to make a mistake, but you have to carry a bunch of momentum because if you do shoot down that sand dune, you're into a ton of rocks. You can see them, claw, uh, Crab and Cyrus looks a little bit um, like uh, Carlos Sainz over in the Dakar Rally. Yes, and there we go. So that's our physical one and two. What I'm looking for is number three. I'm looking to see where is Scott Foley in this mix, mix because he was right in there with them just a few minutes ago. But right now as we move into Sledgehammer, and this is a part of the course where we might see some bottleneck issues come into place. Anyone who's out here and recreate wheeled Sledgehammer, iconic trail. When you get up to what's called the plaque line, there's really not a lot of options up in there. But I was, I was watching some people pre-run it, and it looks like it's completely changed this year. Well, and yesterday, we it was a parking lot. At the end of the day, we, we've seen some vehicles being uh, with the high-powered helicopters, getting them out of there. But these two drivers are going back and forth. So if the race were to, the checkered flag were to fall right now, it would be Cody Young that would win on corrected time. 
Yeah, but as we watch them, so this is li this is the literal start of Sledge. So that left-hand turn right there, that is a very tight little pinch rock. So you come around this section, it's loose, there's a climb that you have to go up. Just like uh, just like we see this dri our driver doing right now, you got to go high left to make it all the way up. You get up the top of that, then you turn right, and then it's just boulder, 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 all the way up to the black line. Ian, what I liked when I saw to Cody right there was he waited. Some, some racers would just like stick their nose in there, next thing you know, then you got the other driver back up on top of him let them clear the section in front of you and then you go he's taking a slightly different line now is he going to back up turn hard to the left and try the line that uh yeah, that's the, the line. Jimmy, that, you know, I, I've, I've driven this in my uh, goat-built car, which is very similar to a uh, Miller chassis car in both packaging and, and wheelbase and everything. And so that is the line for my car in there. In a bomber car, it's very similar. You just want to get high up on the left. But I would be down in this little section where he just was and get in there because you tend to lose that front axle when you're in there. But at the same time, I'm running on a 40-inch tall tire. These right. guys are on 37s. Right. I'm going to put on Instagram Live so that, so that everybody can see where you're pointing, <laughs> what you're saying right here, right here. I see it. I didn't know, and Good I agree point. with you 100%. Yes. But it, it, when watching, if, if he moved to the camera right, and the, he's having trouble in that hole, so he's having a hard time with that, that right front tire, He's got to get over that limb. Yeah, basically what's happening is it looks to me like he was just diffing out. But that's the solution right there. When in doubt, throttle out. <laughs> Always the solution. There you go. I'm going to pass it over to Jim Marsden. I'm going to be back for the finish. I'm going to introduce the top three. But, Jim, we have a race going on right now for the leader. And right, right there we were watching um, second place lose a little bit of time, probably about – uh, 45 seconds, which is crazy. In open desert, 45 seconds is a long way, but here it's just around the corner. So, Jim, take it away. I think the bigger bigger story here is the fact that now that we're following Cody Young through there, who I don't see is Jeremy Jones in front of him, who was literally on his front bumper a second ago. Thank you, Ian. Always great to be back in the booth with you. Yeah, look at the Cody Young here. He's just making... Uh, giving us a schooling here as he picks his way out through Sledgehammer. Ah, now there is Mr. Jones, it looks like. Now He's this is the ledge. This is the bit that was catching out so many people yesterday. This is the plaque line and they look, they're they're not even, it looks to me like they're just already gonna go ahead and, uh, and pull it. Yeah, it looks like they're reconnecting the winch at the moment. Now, so what's happening here is the co-driver's run out. He set up a winch point. He's had to run back so that he can actually lock the freeze ball on this winch. Now many of our Watchers at home in Europe and Australia will be wondering why they're doing that as uh, most of the winches that we use outside of the US have air operated free spools that are operational from inside the cab. They also have in cab switching, not something we see a lot here in America, although there are a few cars starting to switch to those kind of systems. This is actually kind of a good strategic setup to be because instead of sitting on that ledge and hitting it and hitting it and hitting it, he's actually, Jeremy Jones has basically put the brakes on Cody Young. And no, what he's doing here, he has actually used common sense <laughs> and actually a really, uh, it, this is, to me, this is real racing. This is a man who wants to win. This is a guy who's saving his car, saving his tires, saving his transmission. He has track position, no one can pass him. So he's taking that line, winching through and making sure he gets clean up through Sledgehammer without stressing his vehicle. That to me is great racing. Yeah, but as we're watching him sit there, he does need to put a little bit of space between himself and Cody because Cody probably has a minute, a minute 30 of corrected time. And this is who we were looking for a minute ago. This is the Scott 75 Foley. of Scott Foley. It looks like he is now just at the bottom. So he's he's come a fairly far pace off the pace of our leaders because they were bumper to bumper a few minutes ago. Right now, this is Jeremy Jones making his way up through. Now I'd like to see um, what Cody Young's going to try to do with that, with that ridge line at Sledge. Is he going to pull cable? Is he just going to try and bounce up it? Yeah, it's hard to tell because it might be better for him to try it to keep the gap very close. See, if they had been back home where we race, we would have been pulling cable up alongside um, Justin Jones. So literally, and he is also pulling cable. Look at this. 
Yeah, obviously these guys have made the decision early to uh, basically pull cable on. This is called the plaque line at Sledge. This is the hardest yeah. part of that course. Now, this this is interesting, Ian. See, again, this is another thing I, I can never quite understand with Hammers Cruise is why they're not using Bluetooth comms. There's so many Bluetooth comms available out there, and again, people in Europe and again, people in Australia will be frustrated watching this because it's such an obvious thing to do. We spend so much money on transmissions, tires, amazing chassis, and for the sake of a few hundred bucks, we don't have Bluetooth comms. Seems very strange to me. Yeah, you know, I think it's, uh, well, you know, here we don't like to get out of the car, Jim. I know you guys like to do that. You guys like to do a lot of winching. But this is but planned. Here, yeah. This is not something they've just decided on the fly. This is something that they thought about, they spoke about in their pits last night as we watched Scott Foley bogging down in the rocks in Jack. Yeah, I don't know if that's Jack, to be honest with you. I'm not, not sure it's Jack either. I think, I think that this looks is the like bottom the bottom of sledge. Yeah, that's what yeah. I think I, as well. I think he's making his way up to, uh, up to Scott Foley right now. I think he's going to be basically, uh, or sorry, this is Scott Foley. I think he's making his way up to Cody, kind of closing that gap a little bit. But uh, it's been a fantastic race so far. Let's not forget, over 150 cars left the line here at 8 a.m. this morning. And if you're just joining us, this is the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, and we are here for the four-wheel parts every man challenge. And if you want to uh, get a hold of some of those fancy Bluetooth comms that uh, uh, Jim was just talking about, you can stop over and see one of our sponsors over here, PCI Race Radios. They do do certain versions of it. As always, we always here on the lake bed. but Indeed, as we watch Cody Young making his way through in his Miller Pro chassis. Now we watched, um, so he's, he basically winched that plaque line, but it looks like he was getting the winch basically fully pulled in and wasn't going to commit to the second winch point. Yeah, I think it's Unless that co-driver is walking up to it right now. I think that co-driver might be running in front. They may just try to drive it first and then worst case scenario, pull cable. All right, as we jump back into Hammertown, it looks like this could possibly be another one of our stock class cars coming in. Great view of the short course section there. Oh, and speaking of a stock class car, there's the four wheel parts stock entry. I love watching the 4600. Uh, Curry Enterprises stock class. It's a class that everyone can get involved with. Oh, and look at this. Look at We're going to have a pass going on yep. at the top of Sledge. So this is our current physical race leader, Jeremy Jones, in the bottom left. And this is Cody Young looking to take the pass here. Over the top side. Oh, but that is a risky spot to do it if he can make it. So this is the end of Sledge. So when you come out through here, once you get through this section, it's a pretty clear shot. This would be... You can see the bottom is a little bit flatter. This is a loose, hilly climb. It looks like he may be calling it quits and letting him go. Yeah, well, I'm just wondering here, just watching the body language here, has Jeremy Jones got a problem? Is he pulling to the side to let Cody Young pass? It looked like because he it was pulling, putting his winch line away or a, a winch anchor away. So I, yeah. I can't tell, but I, it's, it looks like the co-driver is getting back in. Yeah, that's he what is, it was. Yeah. So it looked like they had a winch anchor up on this rock to get through that section for whatever reason. Don't know why, because normally you could just drive right through that. But look at this rock here. If you get high centered on that large rock in the center, it's, it looks nothing on the drone. But when you get down there, it's half the size of the car. I'm going to bust your chops like Ricky busted mine. That rock right there, you meant the one in the center of the screen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the one I'm pointing to the that, everyone, pointing can, to that right everyone at home can see me pointing at. Exactly. So as we watch Jeremy Jones make his way through the top, as I said before, once they get clear of that one little rock section, they are out of sledge, but they still have more rock trails and more racing to do. This is just what we consider one of the hardest points because of Most the fact certainly. of that bottleneck. Yeah. And you have to be so careful as you work your way through these trails. These rocks are incredibly sharp and you have to look after those tires. One flat tire here can cost you four or five minutes. And in a race like this, that could be three, four or even more positions. All right, and now we're that's back. That's Woody Rose. Woody Rose. So that is at the bottom of, that's not Chocolate Thunder, that's actually Idle, Idle issues. issues. So he's gone down Chocolate Thunder, turned right, went up Idle Issues. That is basically the qualifying course, as we said before, qualifying course backwards. Now, of course, we saw them doing Idle Issues, as you say, backwards the other day. That's Wayne, Dwayne Garrison, we just saw, I think he, I'm right in saying he, at the moment that he is our highest placed 4,500 Yukon yeah. gear and axle modified class car as we watch our current race leader, Jeremy Jones. 
He's already made it clear of Sledgehammer, so this is basically the trail out of Sledgehammer. We've had a lot of attrition in that 4500 class and not a very big showing in that class this year. I was very surprised at that. It's an interesting class, but the thing with the 4800 class is you can go to a hydraulic steering system, which is relatively simple to set up. Whereas when you go to 4500, the 4500 has to have a mechanical link. It takes a lot of thought to get it right and to keep it strong enough to survive these rock trials. I think honestly nowadays, especially if we were going to compare dollars to dollars, I think it would honestly be cheaper to build a Legends car than it would be to build a 4500 car. Oh, absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, and that's why you see the growth in 4800. Yeah, great class to watch, and right now we're seeing just bumper to bumper action out here in Jack North. And when you watch this, you think to yourself, well, why doesn't it just drive around him? Why doesn't it just push past? These trails are burnt in. If you cut off the line, it is so easy to just damage a tire or to get hooked up on a link, and you'll see that car behind you just push on by. Oh, and there is Dan Fresh. That's We've Dan been Fresh. speculating where Dan Fresh is. So now Dan has made the turn. So this is the basically the what I would call the backside of the qualifying course we were watching earlier in the week. So he's made it down chocolate, up her problems, and around the corner. But he's got to be... 10 minutes off for our leaders. Oh, absolutely. And the thing with Dan Fresh is he's not the fastest driver out there. He will tell you that. But what Dan Fresh is, he's Mr. Consistent. He doesn't normally make mistakes, rarely gets flats. So for him to have had two or three flats today already, highly unusual. And here's something that I never thought I'd say. We've got the little helicopter out chasing the little Suzuki Samurai in the desert. <laughs> and that was Eric Weichel we just saw there. And there he is again, just coming into shot. Amazing footage coming out here, and there he is again. He is. He's here. He's there. That Eric Weichel, he is everywhere. See, there's nearly a rhyme there. There we go. You could do it. <laughs> now, has he actually got a flat on that right hand front? I think it's it. No, I think it's no, just I dust. Think it's just yeah. dust in the shadow. I think he's doing well. Looks like the car's uh, doing well, picking its way through the rocks. He's looking sharp there, and there's Woody Rose, looking like he's making his way down towards her problem. Yeah, so Woody, this is the section where we just saw Dan Fresh go through. So it was Dan in front of Woody, but as we said before, Dan is definitely off race pace, which is not normally what we see from Dan. Dan, we normally expect to see him sitting up front. Exactly, but as I say, he normally is a perfect race technician. What he does, he puts together a fantastic race by not making mistakes. But today, he's had problems. Two flat tires Exactly, we saw. yep. Yeah. Highly unusual for Dan Fresh. He's usually the guy who's standing here on stage telling us that he's had no flats for the last six races. <laughs> exactly. All right, we watch a stock class uh, car from the looks of it make its way into Spooners right there. Completely different. Now these, as we talked before, tire size, stock class limited to a 35 inch tall tire. Yeah, and 35 inch tires are hard work out there on these trails, particularly in cars that are weighing something around about the 5,000 pound mark which is two and a half ton for everybody else in the world. Yeah, if you were, uh, if you're in one of these cars, by the time you dress them up and get them prepped to race, you are, you're in that five to 6,000 pounds. That's Brexton Glines working his way through Spooners. Oh, look at this. We got some action out here. Uh, looks like a fl flat tire. Wow, now you know who this is, don't you? This is Brent Harrell. Yeah, Brent Harrell and, that, and, that, uh, and the, the car that we've been talking about all morning. The Horschel car. The Horschel car, yep. See those spider tracks axles up front? I have a few of those in my rigs. Great axles. Exactly, axle. yeah. I use spider tracks as well. The, the best of the best, in my opinion. And you'll also notice you have those huge Willwood calipers on there as well. Yep. And coming around him right now is... That's Dwayne Garrettson, That's isn't it? Dwayne. It looks it like it. It is. Yeah. So this is the first of our 4,500 Yukon gear and axle modified class vehicles. We were talking about this a little bit earlier. So the Legends class car, as you can see here, only has a single shock absorber, whereas the modified class car of Dwayne Garrettson that just went past is allowed to have two shock absorbers per corner, limited to 14 inches, and must be mounted on the axles. Yeah, you saw, you, that was a perfect example of that tire off, off the Legends car, single shock per axle, but they're able to do use that trailing arm in the rear, or in the case of this car, and a lot of the bomber fab cars we see out there, a leading arm up front, so the shock is set back, gives you more wheel travel, allows you to uh, compl uh, get a little bit more tuning in that suspension, and also helps on these rock climbs, believe it or not, especially those leading arms can make a huge difference when you're in the rocks. That's great action here, got to say a massive thank you to our production crew putting camera assets through all of these incredible trials and bouncing all these 
images from the most hostile of environments that is the Mojave Desert. All right, and I, that is our current race leader right there, Jeremy Jones. And so now we just need to see how far behind is our second place. Where is Cody? That is the question. Where, Where is, is Cody? Cody? Yep, because he was right on his bumper coming out of sledge. And it's so easy when you're chasing down somebody in these rock trails to try, we saw him earlier, trying to pick a line up past an almost impossible trail, somewhere that he would not normally have attempted because your head goes, your mind goes, you do start to think silly things. I must make that pass instead of just waiting those couple of crucial seconds and keeping your car together. Yeah, and I, I, especially with Cody, he knows he has to get in front of him and get a little bit of time on him as well. Or sorry, the no, other it's way the around. other way around. Other way around, yeah. I <laughs> yeah, no, Jeremy, Jim. yeah, yes. Jeremy, yeah, Jeremy Jones has actually got to push on. He needs to stay. I believe he needs about one minute thirty. One minute, yeah, it's about a minute. Yeah. All right. So as we're watching here, stowing the jack, using the universal hammer of the exactly. right yep. foot. Looks like he's got an AGM jack there. All right, so here is Scott, Scott Foley. Foley. Did we just miss? Well, I'm just thinking that myself. Have we missed something here? Because I didn't see any dust. Mm. So Interesting. The, the person we've lost is Cody Young in all of this. Well, I'm showing Cody Young as still moving as of 11.41, which is four minutes ago. So I'll be watching his tracker closely. We definitely thought we'd see Cody before we saw Scott. And it didn't look like he was in front of Jeremy. Yeah. No, I'm still showing Cody Young in front of Scott Foley, so. Okay, so we may have just missed him on the camera exactly, shot. Exactly, I think so. And that's the uh, 4806. As I reach for my notepad. That is Steve Graff. Steve Graff coming down Chocolate Thunder, making the turn up into Idle Issues. Once again, I will remind you that we have three different classes racing today. We have the Brannock Motorsports Legends class, the Yukon Gear and Axle Modified class, and the Curry Enterprise Stock class. This is the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge presented by Progressive. And Woody Rose on screen at the moment. This is a Trent Fab car. We saw Woody Rose doing ever so well at the National Championships. Ah! Oh, just digging his way. Up. Looks like he's digging his way through those rocks, making a few adjustments to the trail for everyone else who's going to be coming in behind him. And that's the whole point about off-road racing. Off-road racing, the trail is constantly changing. Every single car that passes through makes minor changes, changes it for the car that's coming in behind. You know, I think we saw that really play out in qualifying this year, especially when we went to qualify for this exact race. We saw all of a sudden... Lauren Healy shows up outside of power hour and he's like, no, I'm not hitting this after 100 cars. I'm going now. Thank you. And I'm going to throw a bunch of winch line up that hill and, and, and get this thing over and done with. Yeah, absolutely. And it was very, very interesting. Now, I really enjoyed the qualifying course this year. What I really enjoyed about it is that we had the UTVs qualify on it. Then we also had the Everyman Challenge classes qualify on it. And then the 4400s. So there was no way anyone could complain and say, hey, man, this course is too hard. Everybody had to race the same. Everyone had to race the same course. I agree with you. I love that it was back out on Chocolate Thunder. I love that it was the setup that it was. You know, I, Ben and I were talking when we were out there calling it. We said, you know, it's it's a true snapshot of what is a race out here at King of the Hammers as we're watching a pass go on. Oh, look at that. A big save. Good move out there in Chocolate Thunder. As we're watching a little bit of uh, action come down here. Yeah, that's Jacob Paccio making the pass. I think Jacob might have had an issue out on course. He was further up the field than we see him right now. So I think he's actually starting to pass traffic. He's already passed before. Yeah, he's working his way through that rock section of Chocolate Thunder, making the turn to head up into idle issues. 
Now, Idle Issues is no joke. This is a serious trail. Oh, it's an incredibly hard trail. Uh, it's it's even harder to go down, as we have saw in qualifying. <laughs> well, there is a fast way down. Uh, it's just not yes, the best way down. Yes, everything goes down, as I say. A rental car will go down once. Exactly. And there's a, just a fact of life that gravity sucks. It does, yes. And I think the gravity is a little stronger over on that part of Johnson Valley sometimes. <laughs> but right now we're watching Steve Graff make his way. He has obviously just passed that section that we were talking about. Her problems, he's over, or sorry, uh, idle issues. Then they come up over the top, they get down into this uh, section of her problems through the rocks, and they'll drop down in that sand wash, making their way over to Jack and Sledge. It is, and I think it's absolutely wonderful and a testament to all of the car builders out here that we have so many different manufacturer chassis right the way through our top 10. You know, maybe we need to do a little F1 thing here and do like a Manufacturer's Cup. We used to do that. Yeah. There used to be a national championship for manufacturers. I'm don't, not sure that that's actually happening anymore. I think we do need to look at that and bring that back. I mean, how many manufacturers do we have now? We have, obviously, we all have Bomber, we have Campbell, we have... Uh, Horschel. Horschel. Uh, we have Miller. Um, oh, good grief, I'm forgetting loads. Trent. Uh, got, the list goes on and on and on. And then um, Off-Road Armoury. And then, yeah, oh, I can't believe you put them so far down the list. Oh, well, Jim. exactly. You gotta, oh, you're going to be in no, trouble when you get I'll, old. I'll get in trouble <laughs> if I don't say this one, Blackbird Industries. Yeah. Um, it goes on and on like this. Uh, the, the, the list is huge. And, uh, oh, right, Jimmy's, of course. Yep. That's how, how could I forget those? And then we got... Uh, and then every now and then a hardcore heavy hitter from the desert racing world, like Triton, Triton Engineering, yeah. will show up and be or like, oh, yeah, this racing is fun. Yeah, Pennell as well. We've got yep. them racing. So, so many different chassis manufacturers. And if I missed any, I do apologize because I've probably missed about and then 10. Let's, Let's not forget the most important kind that can still win, especially this four-wheel parts every man challenge, which is the me in my backyard Absolutely. chassis builder, which is awesome to watch. Yeah, we love that. Do you know one of my favorite things I saw this week was actually Blake Wilkie in a home-built trophy bug. Oh, well, love yeah, that. that that's, uh, we could call that home-built, but there's a lot of skill in that home. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> that, there is. But that is Eric Weichel in the 406. And this is in a Jimmy's Fab chassis. Yeah, we speak of that uh, build it yourself. You know what we, uh, we were trying to find Holly Fowler on the tractor earlier. If you uh, want to see what it takes to come and race in the 4500 series, she did a daily video on her YouTube channel. On uh, she she has a, a wheeler, a wheel there on a regular uh, basis, mischief maker, and she basically documented the entire build of her modified class car every single day and what it took to put that to change a two door. JL into a modified class car what it takes to get out here and race and so it was fun to watch and it's a shame to see her looks like she's out of the race off the track yeah it's always sad to see but, but there there's is always, always next, next year there's always next year and yeah. there is always attrition at these races one of the other things that was astonishing yesterday that we had over 50 percent of the field complete course yes. remarkable yeah at that i think that's a testament to how tough those utvs are getting they're getting the manufacturers are really embracing this style of off-roading for the utvs and we see them just basically getting better and better and better and also as you were saying jim chassis builders specifically modifying those utvs for this type of race Indeed. I love these images we're seeing here. Another car working its way down through Dirty Love. Now, this isn't actually a line I know particularly well. Can, do you know this one? I do not know this one. I think this is one of the new sections that we've got uh, popping up this year. A lot of new trails this year that uh, a lot of people have never driven before until they got out here for the race. And this is Justin Bath. He's already been up idle issues and he's now making his way along the wash. And this is interesting to me because this is where, of course, they were racing uh, during qualifying. And look how rough it is. And these guys were coming along here at 60 plus mile an hour. Unbelievable. Yeah, that, that was probably the best part about qualifying was watching them bust through that sand wash section right there. But this one, they're actually staying more in the rocks. You can see the qualifying line was actually just a little bit further out for some of them. They were in that more in that sand section, but I think they have to stay up more in the rocks on the actual race uh, race day here. But as we see, he makes that turn, heads up into the trail. and uh, But still, still in the game, playing around. But right now, I think uh, our big story right now is our leaders and where are they at because as we speculated we expected to see our leaders probably back in here around the maybe one o'clock mark uh, yes it's going to be interesting to see exactly how long it does take them to get back into town I'm just looking on my tracker at the moment it still looks like 
Jeremy oh. Jones is our current physical race leader. As we watch a little Suzuki, one of the many, I mean, probably the second biggest manufacturer out here is the Suzuki Samurai. <laughs> Suzuki Samurais uh, are, are probably, there's more of those in the stock class than Ford Broncos, which is surprising, but we've got these Suzuki uh, uh, Samurais out there having fun. And for people of a certain generation, they might have started their off-road careers in these vehicles. I've owned a few Suzuki Samurais. They're a lot of fun. Not what I'd want to race at King of the Hammers, but great little great little vehicles for sure and this is Eric Weichel and making his way along be heading up into her problem any moment now it's a 4800 class car so single shot configuration 37 inch DOT tire and is allowed to have hydraulic steering all right so he's making his way through this rock section here comes through this little st the climb is a lot steeper there than you think and then more importantly the number of cars that have been through there make it incredibly loose all right so we're watching Eric make his way up through this section okay so as the action continues here at the 2023 progressive insurance king of the hammers and this is the ev uh, this is the four wheel parts everyman challenge we're going to pop out for a short commercial break and we'll be back with the action very soon sometimes adventure is a road a ribbon of dirt winding through the woods or a strip of pavement disappearing over the horizon. More often than not, how we travel these roads is the adventure. Move confidently. Journey often and stand strong when the pavement ends. So it's decided. We'll park even deeper into parking spaces so people think they're open. Surprise. <laughs> Can't hear you, Jerry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, can we get a system where when someone's bike is in the shop, then we could borrow someone else's? No. no. Or you can get a quote with America's number one motorcycle insurer and maybe save some money while you're at it. All in favor of that. There's a lot of buttons and knobs in here. Chase, number 23, it's 2023, this championship's yours. Let's show these guys what's up. Easy, boys, it's not over yet. Big dog still gotta eat. <laughs> Whatever you say, big dog. Seriously? These fools think I'm fried? They know the deal. of off-road racing dominance. Proprietary patented race technology. Proudly made in the USA. Unparalleled customer service and support. The choice of champions. King Shocks. The leader in off-road shock technology. everybody welcome back to Johnson Valley OHV we are in the middle of the four wheel parts every man challenge race we are keeping track of our leaders out there and uh, Jim I think we're going to uh, jump on our tracker here shortly and see what's going on 
Yes, we watched Justin Bath there picking his way through the rocks. We're going to have a look at our tracker and see where our leaders are. Now, look at this incredible number of cars you see here. Now, the pale orange ones are vehicles on their first lap. Everything on a yellow dot are vehicles on their second lap. Also, you'll see that some of these dots have little red triangles at the bottom. That means they're stationary. But let's look at this guy here. This is our physical race leader at the moment. We see it's Jeremy Jones. If we look down there, just highlighted here at 11.57, that was the last time his tracker pinged. If we go into second place here, this is Cody Young. Now you'll notice that Cody actually has two trackers seemingly run. Ignore that, but that's also 11.57. So we can see that there is a physical gap on course between our second, first and second place vehicles. And we know that Cody needs to be within a minute and a half of Jeremy Jones to be able to take that win. So there's the, yeah, so this is the second Cody Young. Not sure why we're seeing two bursts of Cody there. Maybe Cody's so good, he has to have two of him. So, or he's so fast. <laughs> now, Scott Tholey looks like he's our current third position. He started on the front row of the grid today. So it's interesting to see that he's now fallen back into third place. But these guys are picking their way out through the trails. And you can see here, it's not going to be long before Jeremy Jones picks his way through those final trails out into the desert and starts burning fuel on his way back to Hammertown. Yeah, he's basically, based on that last little ping there, he was headed right into Aftershock. Once he fin This is him right here. Once he gets through Aftershock, swings around the back side of the, uh, back side of the mountain, and then, like you said, it's just dry lake bed, cut across, a little, uh, little bit of wash to the desert, and then he'll be headed back into town. Now that's always the interesting for me thing for me is when they actually get back into that lake bed, the radiators are full of dust that they found from inside those rock trails. They start to push on and they still have to watch those transmission temperatures. They have to watch those engine temps or motor temps and keep everything tight and together. But this car is a seasoned car. This is a car that has been on the track for a while. I wouldn't expect to be seeing those kind of problems. Yeah, it's always good to see. Uh, it, I'm sure in his mind, be happy to be where he's sitting right now in that position he's physically first he has a good lead he does have to put a little bit of space between him and that second place car but right down in our uh, shot inside is that's our first stock class vehicle right there that's brad level or we're yeah. assuming that he's still in first Indeed. he was he was the last time we checked on all the trackers but uh yes we believe that brad level is still leading of our three ford broncos yeah it's absolutely incredible to see the pace now, who's this? Is that Justin Bath, maybe? It, it's hard to tell. But we're watching this car make its way. We're watching Jeremy Jones just plucking his way through. Oh, and right, driving right by him, there is Dan Fresh. Oh, that's great news. Good to see him back on track again. And still going strong. He's yep. quite a way off pace, though. Oh, we, we, we clocked him uh, basically top of her problems. Unfortunately, from our race leaders, he's about 10 to 15 minutes behind. Yeah, and at the pace uh, Jeremy Jones and Cody Young are running at the moment, that is almost unachievable to catch that back unless they have a problem. But this is the Hammer Trails and anything is possible. It's not over until it is over. How many times have we seen people literally only a mile or two from Hammertown break with no way of making it back? Yeah, we've seen it many times. We've even seen you know, there's that classic, uh, classic uh, shot of Shannon Campbell finishing this race on three wheels. Uh, Tom Way's coming in on three wheels. You know, anything can happen on that last. Let's little not push. forget Hunter Miller yesterday broke a belt. One turn to go. Oh, pushing they, it yeah, across the line. Had to push it across yes. the line. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen here in Hammers. But right now it's about this guy in the top left of our screen, Jeremy Jones in his Trent Fab machine, picking his way through. Yeah, doing an excellent job making his way through Aftershock. That's that last little rock trail he's got to get through before he can end up. But at the same time, we're watching Dan Fresh make his uh, move through the Nacho Dip heading into Sledgehammer. The question will be, how much traffic is on Sledge at this point right now? Because we've been watching all day. Everyone pull up that slack or that plaque line, sorry. We watched all the leaders pull up the plaque line and immediately pull cable. Didn't even try to hit the ledge. So the question is, is he going to pull into a similar situation? No, we'll have to keep an eye on him. Now, Jeremy Jones came first in Moab in 2022 and first at Crandon in 2022. So he's no stranger to being on the top of the box. But this is the big one. This is the one that everybody wants to win. It is King of the Hammers. This is a four-wheel pass every man challenge, and he'll be giving it everything he's got. Yes, and there's Dan Fresh making his way. This is uh, just the first little section. This is the very, very beginning 
of Sledge. You come in here and you got to take a hard left. There's a little bit of a sort of a pinch climb right here. You can see Dan might back up and get a better line, or he's going to take that far right line, I guess. Yeah, no, see, this is interesting. I love watching Dan Fresh in the rocks. He just makes it kind of just look That easy. was an excellent, <laughs> excellent one shot of that little ledge right there. We saw, actually saw our leaders struggle a little bit on that section. But yeah, he's making quick work of this bottom, bottom half of Sledge. The question will be, is there any traffic at the plaque line? I don't think there will be, but that is our second place car. That is there, Cody Young in the Miller Pro chassis, making his way down through the trials. Now he's got to try and close that gap. As we were saying before, he needs to be within 1 minute 30 of Jeremy Jones if he's going to take the title today. Oh, and here's a little bit of action from our stock class. That's one of our uh, Broncos. That is Lauren right Healy. now Lauren Healy. Von Gitten took it out for the first lap, and then Lauren took it into the rocks. Yeah, see if I can find a position for you and Lauren. See roughly where he is. As we're watching Cody Young, he he's fairly oh, close to Jeremy Jones right now based on I'd just looking on the screen. Exactly. I'd like to know um, where Bailey Cole is right now. Because we we saw Bailey, and he was there, and then he just disappeared. He's, he's vanished, yeah. Let yeah. me see if I can have a look on my tracker. All right, as we see Dan Fresh right now, he is on the plaque line at Sledge, and he is, oh, maybe, I think the co-driver is unbuckling and getting out. This is what we've seen play out all day. Pretty much everyone has pulled up to this one section, has pulled up to this spot, and winched. Yep, I see them throwing the recovery rope out the front. And Dan's co-driver will be climbing out here, and it looks like they'll be winching their way up that section. As Jim checks our tracker right now to see what's going on with our stock class Broncos. As with all good technology, sometimes it doesn't do exactly what you want it to do. But that's okay. Oh, I think we may have found him if this is him in the... Or no, that's Brad Lovell. That's Brad Lovell. That's Brad Lovell. I was trying to see if it had the Amsoil on the side, which it did. And so that's Brad Lovell, which we assume is our leader in our Broncos uh, stock class vehicles right now. All right, you can see that... All right, so we're watching Brad. So it's also worth noting that the stock class, or should I say, the Curry Enterprises stock class actually have bypasses, so they won't have to do the heavy hardcore trails such as Sledgehammer. Yeah, they get a couple spots where they don't have to go. They basically get to skip some of those uh, incredibly hard rock trails. So they get a little bit of a different race course. And if you look on the tracker, you'll see some different green lines for that, I believe. Indeed they are. But right now we're watching Brad take that Bronco and make his way through. And he is a, looks like he's on his way into Chocolate Thunder right now. So what I'll do is I will uh, start my unofficial official stopwatch. And we'll see when Brad gets clear of Chocolate Thunder. Right, so right now we are watching, I believe that is Scott Foley. We've been watching him all day. He was well in the lead for a while. Yeah, he was going very, very strongly. Started on the front row of the grid this morning alongside his great friend, Craig Allen. Unfortunately, Craig had a problem just outside of Hammertown on the beginning of lap two. Yeah, but we're watching him. Uh, he's definitely fallen off race pace. Not sure why. As he makes his way through this rock trail. And, and our pitcher of pitcher, there is Brad Lovell coming down through Chocolate Thunder. That is the first stock vehicle we've seen clear Chocolate Thunder. 
Is the unofficial stop clock what now running? I started it. I always start it right when they make that turn to go up uh, idle issues. So we'll see when we see uh, the next stock vehicle in there and we'll get a little bit of an unofficial split time. See, I find that amusing. They, they take out the hard trails and then they say, I'll tell you what, why don't you just go up idle just issues? Just go up idle issues, yeah. It's <laughs> easy peasy. Yeah, you're in good shape. Go up there and hang a right. Oh, look how hard he hits the rocks there as Brad tries to pick his way up through idle issues. It's a, it's a serious trail. There is a big ledge there that everyone is having trouble with. And right now, this is Scott Foley. That is our, I believe that's our physical third vehicle on course. It is indeed right now. Our first vehicle on course is Jeremy Jones. And second on course is Cody Young. So it's Trent Fab, Miller, chassis, followed by Bomber. Yep. Probably uh, just stopped here to get that thing into high range, and away he goes. Yeah, it's worth noting that most of these vehicles will be running a two-speed transfer case, and most likely a three-speed automatic transmission, although some of them, particularly the Bombers, will be running that four-speed 4L80E transmission that's favoured by Randy. And uh, now he's come to a stop here. What's going on? Yeah, it looked like, a, I, first, I think, it maybe just gathering himself up. Maybe he felt he shifted into high early and he put I, it back into yes. low. I would have done. <laughs> <laughs> Most of these vehicles are capable of speeds up to sort of 85 mile an hour in low ratio. So low ratio is usually enough for all of these trails and it's only when they get to the desert they'll be switching to high box. All right, and there is, so there's another one of our Broncos in that same section that we just saw Lauren going up, but that, or sorry, that's Lauren. We just saw Brad, but we, that, I, we don't see, and Bailey was in between them. He the last was, time I'm still checked. trying to find him on my tracker at the moment and I can't see him right now. So as soon as I have any use, oh no, I've just picked up Bailey. There he is. All right, and this is one of our stock class Suzuki Samurais making its way through the desert. I say that's Bailey, it's not Bailey, it's a number 13, which is actually Justin Hall. They're both running the same number on this race, but in different classes. So I can tell you that Justin Hall is going very nicely in the car number 13. Well, good for him. Exactly, I will try and find the other 13, other 13. and once I do, I will let you know where he is. There we go, all right, as we watch Scott Foley, making his way through. This is the last rock trail. We just saw our leaders clear this section of trail. And just to remind you, once again, we are racing three different classes today on the race course, the 4800 Brannock Motorsports Legends class, 4500 Yukon Gear and Axle Modified class, and the Akuri Enterprises Stock class. Leaders right now are all in that 4800 Brannock Motorsports Legends class. I can tell you now that our lead two cars are nearly out of the rocks and heading into the desert. As we watch Scott Foley there just briefly. This could be our leaders based on this where could. this camera is. Yep. That does look like that's Jeremy Jones. That that's, that's Jeremy Jones, current race leader. And he needs, what did you say, Jim, about a minute? About a minute and a half he needs over Cody Young, but we'll get clarification of that from Race Ops. So obviously Jeremy Jones left ahead of our second place car and this race is a corrected time race so he does need to put a little bit of space in between himself and that car behind him in order to win but based on what i'm seeing in dust trail wise i don't see anybody directly behind him or at least not as close as they were when they were in the rocks together. let's not forget as soon as they get to the desert they start to open up that throttle it, the distances become vast very very quickly yeah it, it can be a big stretch right here because this is a fun spot you get to come yeah. down off that little as you like to call it jim that little goat trail and then you drop onto what feels like a formula one track because <laughs> it's nice and soft and there he goes. Now, and we still haven't seen, look at this, if you look at the top yep, of the screen, I'm we still don't see that second place car, which I thought we would have seen by now. 
Now the interesting thing about these cars is they have full hydraulic steering. So when you're going flat out across this lake bed, even as you're trying to hold the wheel straight, the wheel is creeping in your hands, gently turning, even though you're going straight, and you just having to glide it through your hands. It's absolutely amazing. And look at the dust coming off of Jeremy Jones's Trent Fab car. And here's the and, and speaking of what he was doing there, if you watched him when he dropped down on that lake bed, that's what Ben was talking about earlier. He could have dropped onto that lake bed, hung to the left hand side and just gone flat flat out but you watched him he drifted all the way across that entire lake bed and the wind is going to pick his dust up and just slowly move it across this lake bed Tactics. blinding everybody behind him it's Tactics. perfect now whether he did it on purpose or not <laughs> if i was him i would say i absolutely meant to do that <laughs> but you can see that that dust is hanging there but just slowly moving to the left so if you're behind him but we still haven't seen our second right place now, car. Right now, if I was Jeremy Jones, all I'd be interested in is the gauges, gauges in my car. I'll be watching my water temps. I'll be watching my transmission temperatures. I'll be listening to every knock, every rattle that you can hear, trying to ignore them, trying not to think about the finish and just concentrating on the ground in front of me as we watch Brad Lovell, our current 4600 race leader, yeah, we've certainly seen, Brad, uh, we still haven't found Bailey. We saw uh, Lauren, Lauren, which is Vaughn and Lauren, in that other Bronco, and we've seen... But just uh, look at the pace. Oh, he's doing very well in this car. Unbelievable pace here. Yeah, Brad doing very well. You know, that whole Ford Bronco program definitely put in their homework, came in here, did it right, Designed a car specifically for this race, put a lot of factory back effort behind it. And we can see that uh, Brad is making quick work of this particular section of the race course. All right, and then speak of the devil, there is Lauren Healy. Looks like, oh, it looks like he just made that section. So now I can go ahead and hit my unofficial stopwatch. So my unofficial stopwatch has him about six minutes behind. Yeah, I'm getting some news. I'm looking at this now. It does look like Cody needs to be within one minute of Jeremy Jones. Wow. So this is going to be very tight at the moment. It looks like it's Jeremy Jones' race to lose. Yeah, based on what we saw coming down that uh, single track getting out into the desert. Uh, also getting some news that uh, Bailey Cole is currently in pit two. It looks like they've got the left-hand front tire off at the moment and doing some work inside on that Bronco. So oh, let's hope that he can him. get going. Well, that answers the question as to where we thought he was. All right, so this, I believe, yeah, this will be our second car on course. This is where we just saw our race leader come through. And what's really telling to me is that dust that he should be chasing is long gone. So Cody Young, second car on course, chasing down our leader, but the leader is long gone by this point. Exactly. I reckon that Cody's got to find something in the region of around about a minute and a half to two minutes at the moment. And when you're in this desert, that is not easy to find that kind of time. I mean, we're really, Jeremy's gonna to have to have a problem for Cody to be able to pull back that kind of time. In the rocks, you can find it. But out in the desert, I'm not so sure. Especially not with these cars, you know, we look at the 4400 cars and they're so different. You know, you've got cars that, you know, really can uh, tick off speeds in the desert that the other cars can't. These cars exactly. are fairly evenly matched when they get Well, let's just talk about the speeds that we can expect these vehicles to be getting to. I mean, these are both 4800 class cars. I'm guessing that the Trent, Fa um, sorry, that the uh, the bomber, uh, the, the Trent Fab car of Jeremy Jones, I'm guessing he's probably got a TH400 transmission, which is a three-speed transmission with an Atlas transfer case. That tends to be the favoured, and particularly also uh, for the Miller chassis, again, the favoured TH400 and an Atlas. That's going to give them, with the engines that they're going to be running, which is probably something in the region of 600 horse, I'm guessing that they're going to be producing something around about 105 mile an hour as a max. Yeah, it will really depend on what gears they put in those axles because you know the the hot the hot gear in those spider tracks axles for ultra 
4 racing is around that 540, 538, but do you want that with 37 inch tall tires? Exactly. Probably not. So I don't know what gears they put in the axles for these particular ones. So, but yeah, I would say you're probably right, right around 100 miles an hour, but they both can do 100 miles an exactly. hour. Exactly. You know? And that's the difference, isn't it? Right, okay, we've got a car coming on screen here. This could be uh, one of our EV cars. The EV cars. The EV cars. Well, I like to say one. I like to <laughs> maybe maybe more next year. Well, well, fingers crossed. I'm still waiting for somebody to drop a Tesla power plant into one of these vehicles. I have a Tesla power plant going in a VW thing right now, and there actually is a a VW thing. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Cool. There is a uh, te there is a Tesla power plant EV vehicle out here as well. Uh, I don't know if it's racing, but I don't think they got it done in time. But it was coming. It was called the Test Ten. That was the uh, that was the name they gave it. Okay, right. So here we have. Is that our current modified leader? That's, That's Dawson Allington. He's running in the 4500 class. And we've been watching him. I think he was top of the box on 4500 for a while. Was he not? Um, no. I would have to double check that, but I'm not sure that he was. I believe 4500 is Dwayne Garretson. Dwayne Garretson. Yes, I think you're right. Ah, uh, now that I think that's Justin Bath that we see out of the vehicle there. Oh, I think that is the 417. I can't tell. Uh, I see a nine. Ooh. If it wasn't Justin, I do apologise. All right. So right now we're just watching. I think that's back on Dawson Allenton again. I, I think it is, yes. This car used to belong to Matt Howell back in the day and was no stranger to the podium here in the 4500 class. Matt sold it a couple of years ago and Dawson took up the reins. All right, so there we have, this is Lauren, Lauren Healy in the Bronco. We just saw Brad Lovell come through this section a little while ago. And as we speculated in our unofficial stopwatch, he, he, he is, uh, we speculate him to be five minutes behind Brad Lovell. All right, so we are getting close to seeing leaders back in Hammertown, we assume in 25, 30 minutes? Less. I think it's going to be 15 to 15 to 20 at max, I would have thought. So it's going to be very soon indeed. We're going to see these leaders coming back into Hammertown. Let's not forget, over 150 cars started this morning on the four-wheel parts. Every man challenge in three different classes. The 4500 Yukon Gear and Axle Modified class, the 4600 Curry Enterprises Stock class, and the 4800 Brannock Motorsports Legends class. And it's the Legends class that are leading up this race right now. Yeah, as we are watching Lauren Healy take that stock class Bronco and make his way through what I believe is the bottom of Sledge. And it looks like we got someone on the cable. I believe that's, uh, oh, it looks like we have multiple, multiple lines being attempted. I believe that is, uh, I think that's the, based on the rocks, it's hard to tell, but that couldn't see where we were. As we watch, there's Lauren Healy. Oh, Neely. wow. Look at this drone footage. Absolutely incredible. We're below the car. <laughs> Just following him through the rocks. The technology that we have out in this desert just is mind-blowing. All right, lots of action on this trail. We got multiple people pulling cable. And that is Lauren Healy working his way up through Jack North. Just look at the size of these rocks. Almost every single rock is bigger than these 35 inch tires. You're asking a lot for a 35 inch tire to get through some of these trails. You definitely need to know every inch of that car, every spot that you're gonna be placing a tire. All right, so there he goes through this section of Jack. All right, so he's... All 
All right, as we see some action out here in Johnson Valley, look at all the people jumping out through the rocks. All the spectators lined up along the side of the race course here, watching the action. Oh, look at this, Jim. That is our current race leader, our physical number one on course right now. That's Jeremy Jones in his Trent Fab car. Look at the pace, Ian. Oh, he's flying, as you said before. He's putting space between him and that second place car, which he has to do, and he's definitely moving through the desert. Yeah, he is. He's absolutely flying along now. There's a lot of desert between him and Hammertown. Yeah, I believe he was right near race mile 125. As we watch car number 833 make its left. Yep, turn. that's Kevin Condon. Kevin Condon making that left hand turn. The bottom of Chocolate Thunder heading up into her problem. Jesse and Cunter are stopped there, possibly changing. Shift, we will talk about this, but they change from high box to low box. And if they're not familiar with the course, what they happens is they come down through Chocolate Thunder, they make the change to high box when they see the sand, come around the corner and go, ah, I need to change again. <laughs> well, or probably the bigger issue right there is that section of course has probably changed a lot yes. over the day. Now the one thing when you get to the bottom of Chocolate Thunder, you get to the sand, you think, fantastic, this will be wonderful. You get on the sand and you think that all the wheels in your car are falling off as it literally just sucks it down there into it. There is no traction in that sand at the bottom of Chocolate Thunder. It is amazing how loose that sand is. All right, so here we are back to our race leader as we chase him through the desert as he finishes up this section. Yeah, I can tell you now that Jeremy Jones is at around about a race mile 125 to 130. Ooh, what did that tracker say for speed, Jim? Let's have a look, let's have a look. What do we got? <laughs> Would you believe our tracker pinged just then and it's showing him at 35, 35. Mile, an hour, mile an hour, <laughs> I, which he's clearly doing more than that I, there. I feel like he's going fast. That might be metric miles an hour because they thought you were looking <laughs> metric. at it, Jim. You gotta double it and add 30. That's how it works. That's metric well, miles that an hour. Well, lo <laughs> that looks very much like he's doing something around about the 70 to 80 mile an hour. So that's the same shot, except now instead of from the helicopter, we're watching the helicopter pace him. That's gotta be the best feeling when you're in that car right now. You're basically looking out the window, you see the helicopter, you know that you are well in the lead of this race. And more importantly, no dust coming in behind Exactly. You. The thing with the helicopter coming alongside you is this. You either know you're leading or you've done something spectacularly bad that they've <laughs> had to put a helicopter on you. And as you're in that situation, you're driving along going, I wonder which one it is. Okay, this looks like this might be number, no, that's Scott, that's Scott Foley. That's Scott Foley just coming out of Emerson Ridge, in, or coming down Emerson Ridge onto the dry lake bed there. So he is well, our third place car is well behind our current race leader. And the, but the story right now is all about our race leader as he makes his way along the desert. We just had one of the OG 13, Eric Mustard Dog Anderson, just passed him by the booth. Great to see him back out here in Hammertown. All right, so there is the left-hand turn that he has to make. And now it's a big, long, straight shot if you're following on the tracker. So here he goes, Okay, back we're just, up to speed. Just getting some news right now, just looking on the tracker, and Cody Young is actually showing stationary on a place that we would expect for him to be going fast. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on that story, but it does look like our physical second place car has come to a halt at around about race mile 110. All right, so yeah, let's take a quick look at that tracker, Jim. Let's see what's, uh, what we can see if everyone's following along at home. Oh, and dealing with traffic on the race course as you're leading the race. Okay, so here is our tracker right now. And if we look at the top right hand corner there, well, there we go, let's go to this one first. This is our current race leader. This is Jeremy Jones. He's making his way past 
uh, there. And if we cut back to the right, you'll see this here. This is Cody Young, currently showing zero miles an hour, uh, around race mile 120. We would be expecting him to be doing something in the region of around about 40 to 60 miles an hour here. So this is real tough love. Yeah, right where you see Scott Foley right there, that is that dry lake bed. So that's high speed, no questions asked. Yeah, and 81, 82 miles an hour. But when you come off there and turn left, you do get into some single track. You get into some, there's some gotchas and some geodes out there in the desert. Now we were talking about it earlier. The big problem here is often you come out of these rock trails, you lay down the throttle, particularly on those open lake beds, and you cook your transmission or you cook your motor. Let's hope that hasn't happened. But at the moment, it's all about this man. This is the 2023 Four Wheel Parts Every Man Challenge. And this man here, Jeremy Jones, is our race leader. Yeah, and he has a good amount of time between him and the second place car right now. It is his race, as you would say, Jim, his race to lose. But I think he's uh, in good shape. He's already made the left hand turn uh, that we didn't see on the tracker but he'd already made that turn we saw it live on camera and he's headed down into Hammertown we should see him here very very soon so if you want to watch the winner of the four wheel parts everyman challenge 4800 Brannock Motorsports Legends class cross the line you'd better get down here to Hammertown soon so as we watch Kevin Condon making his way up through her problems. Yeah, but there's one other thing we need to talk about in the tracker, Jim, and that is that we're watching him fly through the desert, but he's got to go through one last little spot, and that's KMC Turkey Claw. Yeah, now this is the KMC Turkey Claw, but look at this, Ian. Look at all these vehicles that are showing stationary inside a Turkey Claw. There are some still showing moving as well, but is this lap traffic going to be a problem for our race leader? It, you know, the one good thing about Turkey Claw is it is a wide enough section of rock that I think you can basically pick your way through. You're not looking at the bottlenecks that you see in uh, in a place like Sledgehammer or Jack. Yeah, and we can see now Jeremy Jones, he's making his way down through towards the KMC Turkey Claw. What a day of racing here, Ian. And oh, just it's... how close was the racing right the way through lap two until about halfway through lap two and Jeremy Jones just suddenly burst forward and start, and took command of this race. Yeah, and we thought that we were going to see Cody Young put some pressure on him, but his tracker just updated. He's still sitting still, and Scott Foley just passed him. Yeah, so it looks like our physical second on track at the moment is Scott Foley, the man who started on the front row of the grid this morning. But what we want to see right now is we want to see what happens when our race leader, Jeremy Jones, gets down into, to, into the KMC Turkey Claw Trail. Because that trail, as we saw on that tracker, has a lot, a lot of traffic sitting in there. It does. But you know what? Jeremy Jones, he knows how to race. Jeremy Jones knows how to wheel. I've got a feeling he's going to be able to pick his way through that traffic. Well, as I said before, I think the good news is that Turkey, that trail, that Turkey Claw Trail, it is a wide trail. There's a lot of optional routes to get around everybody. Uh, hopefully, he realizes how much space he has between himself and that second place car, and he realizes he doesn't need to push it too hard. He just has to pick a good line and crawl his way through. Yeah, I think that's John Rance there. We're looking at uh, in the OG Bronco. Just waiting to get a confirmation, but I'm fairly confident that's exactly who that is. Yep. Great to see him moving. Looks like he must have had a problem out on course because he actually came in with a fairly reasonable time earlier on as we watched the uh, 747. Trying to make its way through Sledgehammer in the Nacho Dip, yeah, also that's known as the Black Line. So. That's Chad Jesse there. Or Chad Jesse. Yeah, He's lots lots of action through here. This is above the plaque line, I believe, is where they are right now. They're kind of working their way through. There's a bunch of spots in there. As I said before, there's a perfect example. There's no alternate routes for these guys coming up through here. This is just one spot, whereas when they get into KMC Turkey Claw, they will have a lot of alternate lines to choose from. And I think this is our 4500 Yukon Gear and Axle Modified Class Leader, Dwayne Garretson. Yeah, we've been watching Dwayne all day. As we said before, three different classes racing today. So it looks like we have our uh, current leader, possibly winner. Well, obviously, that'll have to be all confirmed. It's unofficial. Heading back into Hammer Town should be here in 10, 15 minutes. And this would be our Yukon Gear and Axle Modified class current winner, or current, sorry, current leader. 
We'll see uh, how well they can do working their way through the rocks. Yeah, just looking on the tracker here, it looks also like he is our physical third place vehicle on course right now. Wow, so this is well. amazing stuff from Dwayne. I mean, let's be honest, normally, this, club, this race is dominated by 4,800. So if we see a 4,500 up there, that would be incredible. Yeah, very good for him. Good, uh, definitely a good race day. And then speaking of vehicles that are moving their way up through the pack of this mix, we also have our stock class cars. We've got the Broncos in there. As we fully expected, we see the Broncos coming in and basically dominating that class like they've done in years past. But the bigger story there is I believe we still only have two moving on track. We know we have Lauren moving, and ahead of him is Brad Lovell. It in, in their Bronco, Bailey Cole, uh, last time we checked with Bailey, he was on remote pit two and they were working on the front side of his car. So saying that, if he doesn't get that car fixed, there's a good chance that instead of having a Bronco clean sweep across that podium, we may have a different vehicle coming in in that uh, third place spot in that stock class. My personal choice, I wanna see a Suzuki Samurai there. You'd have to be different, wouldn't you? I, I just, I love a good, I, I want it to be Amber Turner, but I haven't, uh, I haven't seen her pop up on screen. But here we have some action from the Nacho Dip. I have to say that for you, Jim. You, can't uh, you do have to say yeah. that for me. I, Emmy was getting desperately I, I, upset with I, me I heard her. I heard her busting your chops on the nach, <laughs> Nacho. As someone said to me earlier on the text message, say, how can a traitor from Australia and somebody from, uh, sorry, a criminal from Australia and a traitor from America be telling you about the Queen's English? Well, like I can say it's their country, their rules. It is. Well, it's called, <laughs> I, I'll still pull some Canadian out on there and tell you. It's called proper English for a reason, Jim. So I'll, I'll let you go on that one. But there we go. I think that is the 4571. Okay, this is the 4609 here. I love this truck. This is so cool. Looks like it's Thomas Cornelius coming in to complete his first lap. Yeah, you gotta love seeing that old iron out, you know, at, and oh, oh, and here we go. This is that's Dawson Allington. That's Dawson Allington in that uh, in that uh, old. Uh, well, I say old, old, old. Not, well, it's Matt Cowles' old Matt car. Matt Cowles' old car. Oh no, car. It's not, no, no, no. Sorry, oh, no, this is the right. 353. I do apologize. That's Peter Doolin. It is coming down yes. through Chocolate Thunder, making a left headed up into. Uh, so many delicious. Jeeps. So many Jeeps. Uh, they're all just Jeeps. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's great to see car out here in the Gen Right colors. So. Yeah, and I'm, I'm hearing that he is racing for cystic fibrosis to uh, gain awareness and raise money for that. That's great to see. Always great. It's great to see those Gen Right colors out here on the race course. All right, so that is 75. That is Scott, Scott Foley. Foley. We as, uh, are conspeculate second vehicle on on course right now. Conspeculate. There's Con a well, word for this I, time I just of the did, afternoon. I just invented that. I, I think have, you have just made that up. Is that it? That, that, that's a Canadian, isn't it? I think it was more we can speculate, but I forgot to put the space <laughs> in between the two Okay, words. I can tell you now that we should be seeing our current race leader, Jeremy Jones. He should be making his way into the KMC Turkey Claw any minute now oh there, and he, there is. he is you called it jim there he is in the kmc turkey claw trail and the question is how much traffic is he going to have to contend with it looks clear in this trail well this section the track looks is clear. lying to me yeah but we don't <laughs> we, wait till the camera pans and we'll see what happens i i think it i it's think it sweet. absolutely lied to you yep someone went in and moved all those cars dave cole's been in there with his broom pushed them all to one side and said jeremy have a clean run yeah. home yes very fortunate for jeremy at that point in time to come in there and not have to deal with any of that traffic that they were looking at and imagine being jeremy jones right now looking to the bottom of the KNC turkey claw seeing oh, hammer you get, town you in see front home, of you you know it's the, it's yours to have at this point because look more importantly look behind him nobody there exactly he nobody can do there. no more he, all he's got to do is hold on to it you know that he's going to be with almost within radio contact of his team and they're going to be saying to him hey bud your next guy is 10 minutes out keep it together keep the wheels on it take it easy yeah so the question is is this a, a second place car so that's uh, that's our second place car right there that's Scott Foley being chased by the helicopter so he's well behind well behind if our If you look there, race there's a helicopter sitting on the ground as well. Well, they got to get fuel sometimes. <laughs> so that is right now our current uh, second place vehicle, second car on on course. 
So as we said before, when I was talking with Ben, you know, I was talking to Randy earlier on my way up in, in here today. We were talking about he wanted a bomber on the top, top of the box because whenever a bomber wins the 4800 class, he tends to win the 4400. So the question is, does this, do you think Randy will take like, well, maybe I'll get second tomorrow instead of first because the bomber will come in second place. <laughs> right, well, that's Scott Foley. Fantastic images here, but I can tell you, very, very shortly here at the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge, we are about to see Jeremy Jones joining us in town. Yeah, we saw him make his way through KMC Turkey Claw, that one section, and he was really close to town. So he's basically going to drop back into Hammertown. He will be in great shape. He sees the finish line. Finish line is in sight. He just has to make it through that one little section of desert, and then he will be in perfect shape to come in and basically win that class. Well, he'll finish that class. Then obviously we have to do all of the checks of his uh, GPS, make sure he hit all those VCPs, and then he will, will be crowned the king of his class. Indeed, I can get him more news on Bailey Cole. It seems that he's actually broken a passenger side or a driver's side CV shaft in the front of that Bronco. Sounds like they've got it fixed and he's back out on track. So thank you very much. That is excellent news for him. I'm sure that the Ford Bronco uh, camp would love to see another clean sweep of that stock class. And here we are seeing what we were talking about before. This is that top section of, I believe this, I don't think this is Jack. I think this is the top section of Sledge that we're looking at right now. Yeah, I agree with you there, and that is just trying to catch us. Seven four seven. Seven four seven and four eighty one. We've been watching these guys basically winch their way through these two sections. Yeah, that is Chad Jesse. So that is almost certainly that that uh, is Sledgehammer that we're looking at right now. But the big story right now is coming across the saddle and making his way towards Hammertown. He should be coming up on camera as he comes around the bottom of King Hill very, very soon. Will be our current race leader, Jeremy Jones. Yeah, we should see him make his way back into town here shortly. We saw him clear KMC Turkey Clock very, very easily. You know, we've specul we speculated or con speculated about all that traffic out there, but we ended up being a completely empty trail for him. Yeah, and the 4881 there, that is Jay Schwab trying to find a winch line, trying to work his way through. And it looks here like we've got multiple co-drivers running cable. So as the action continues here at the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers at the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. All right, so right now we are sitting here just counting the seconds until we're going to see our leader come in. He's got to get through that. He made it through a KMC Turkey Claw very, very easily. And we're just, he's got to make it across the saddle, which is that washed out section before he gets closer to town. Now, the interesting thing for me is I would have thought we'd have picked him up on camera by now. I think, uh, I think we're just getting everything ready and into position. There's a Bronco looking vehicle there. Looks like he's coming in to complete his first lap. I believe he is, I think you're right. All right, so that is another one of our 4,800 cars making its way through that first lap. I think you're right though, Jim. Oh, and look, there it is, Jim. I said it and it happened. There's a little Suzuki Samurai plucking its way through Spooners. <laughs> oh, here we go. There we go. Okay, so here we go. What do we got, Ian? So right now we are watching Jeremy Jones. Jeremy Jones, our current race leader in the Brandick Motorsports Legends class here in today's race, the four wheel parts, every man challenge. He sees Hammertown in his sights. He basically is gonna come through this section that we're calling the saddle. Just got a lot of little whoops and doops and G outs can bite you if you don't pay attention. Uh, dodging that tire or tool bag, I didn't see what it was, but uh, he can see Hammertown. All he has to do is get back here and it's his race. Absolutely, this is fantastic stuff. Jeremy Jones is our current race leader. He started on the third row of the grid this morning in sixth position. In sixth position. 
Only a few short turns away before he'll be joining us here in Hammertown. He has the short course to contend with, but just look at the depth of these ruts as he picks his way through. He's got to be so careful not to catch a tyre right now. Yeah, he definitely has a lot of space between himself and that second place car of Scott Foley that we saw just a few minutes ago blasting across the desert. But this is Jeremy Jones, Trent Fab car, Legends class car. As, as Jim said, well sorted out, raced many times. Exactly. He won in Moab last year. He won in Crandon last year. But this is the big one. He'd give all that away to win this one here today. This is the Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers. This is the Four Wheel Parts Every Man Challenge. And this is Jeremy Jones about to come round the base of King Hill and join us here in Hammertown. Yeah, he's just got to make a couple turns here and then he'll be dropping into the short course. Look at this, fantastic scenes. It's a perfect day here for racing in Johnson Valley, California. The sun is shining, the skies are blue. We've got a light breeze. But right now, it's about this man, Jeremy Jones in the Trent Fab car as he makes his way into the infield. All right, through the short course, just a couple little turns in here. Once he gets through these Talladega turns, as we like to call them, he makes it in. He's gonna be headed through the Bronco arch and over the Yukon launch. Absolutely, he's been battling these trails all day. He left the line at 8.01 this morning. And as he takes the final turn, little over four hours and 20 minutes, Jeremy Jones lines up for the final jump. He takes the checkered flag and is unofficially first here at the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers Full Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. There we go. You can see our course workers basically sliding him around, getting him into position. We'll have him over here shortly. But there he is. That is your first finisher for today's Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. Jeremy Jones in his Brannock Motorsports Legends Class 4837 Trent Fab Machine. And we see him now, he's making his way down to the stage and he's going to be joining us here very, very soon. And we're going to get our man himself, Ricky Johnson, to find out how his race day's been. All right, so before he comes up to the stage, I think we're going to throw it down to Miles down here. Miles, tell us what you got. So the Trent Fab car driven by Doc Jeremy Jones and Dan Young riding shotgun in the 4800 Brannock Motorsports Legends class is unofficially our winner here for the four wheel parts everyman challenge. And this Trent Fab car looks like it could go another lap like they are gonna do tomorrow. I gave them a big thumbs up and they both pumped their fists. They are super stoked to be here right now. They started at 8.01 this morning and they've been racing strong all day. And like I said, the car still looks gay. The uh, drive shaft has a little bit of tear on it. They definitely rubbed some rocks, but they put it out here. They made it happen. And like I said, this Wyotech machine is still looking good. What a great, great race for Jeremy Jones. Everything's looking good. Great to see him in here. Those Yukon axles still staying strong. And what a great, amazing day. They've been prepping for this all year long and he's super stoked to be here right now. You can see, you can tell he's a little bit tired, uh, but Dan Young is still pumped up. And like I said, they've just been doing this all day and they've, looked for, they've been looking forward to this for 365 days because as soon as this race is over, you're already thinking about the next year here at King of the Hammers. What a great, great run. Leo Dahl, our race official, is checking them out with him. So I think we're just going to strip him straight up to stage and have Ricky uh, have a chat with him up there on stage with Ricky Johnson. So we're going to send him up there having an unofficial chat with our winner, unofficially Jeremy Jones and the 4800 Brannock Motorsports Legends Class during the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. He just is the first finisher for the four-wheel parts every man's challenge. 
So it looks like Ricky's ready. I'm gonna send it up to him. Ricky Johnson, it's your show, buddy. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the four wheel parts, every man challenge. Now this is unofficial. Hold on, he's just talking a little bit. Jeremy Jones, you need to get out of the car for this one it, it, because right now, unofficially, you are the first place first place driver, so we do not want you doing this interview from in, uh, inside the car. Come on out. No, no, no. Let's hear it for our winner, Jeremy Jones. The legs will start working in just a moment, buddy. Just give them just a moment. Congratulations, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, the unofficial winner of the four wheel parts, every man challenge, Jeremy Jones. Woo. So Jeremy, you, you qualified really good. You're up front, but it, obviously there's a lot of challenges out there. Yeah, there's a ton of challenges. We had to winch three times, I think, and we just got some bad holes and some bad lines. And um, our desert lap, I thought, was pretty solid. So, and then we just kind of made forward momentum, and here we are. So I, 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 I haven't won this race, but I have been out there. All of a sudden, it's a blur. And whenever I ask you a question, there's a thousand thoughts of I could have lost the race right there, or maybe that was a great race, a great move to help you win that race. Um, gosh, we could have lost a couple times we winched, I think. Um, there was a couple times I hit it too hard. We caught a, a kicker out there somewhere, which we thought maybe compromised our driver's front tire or wheel. So I made him change it at pit. It wasn't flat. I mean, these things are bomb proof tough, but I just didn't want to take the chance because we kind of took that chance in Oklahoma and we split a wheel in half and it, it ended up costing us several positions. So. So obviously the first one I want you to, to throw it out to is your co-driver. These guys are getting out, running around, doing a lot of things, and they're also either piping you up, in a lot of cases, calming you down. Oh, man. I couldn't do it without this guy. He's been my friend, my confidant for a long time. So... Oh, so I'm emotional, sorry. No, 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 I, I, I'm completely understandable. Um, no, Dan's, Dan's the man. He. He's probably one of the better co-drivers I've ever seen. He just nails it every time. So I can't say enough good things. All right, so let's hear for Dan, the co-dog that was getting it out all day long. So now let's talk about the people that get you here. Obviously, you don't, uh, you've been given a hat. Wait, put your hat on, do, do the proper thing. Yeah, hold on, let's get it on right. Yeah, there we go. There we go, got the tire sponsorship on for the tires. Yep. And now you've been given the cell phone to go over the list. So who do you want to thank? Hold up, hold up. He's looking at Instagram right now, seeing if there's any photos of him. Checking his, checking his profile page. All right, who would you like to thank? First of all, Dom and his crew, Dominic Balducci and his crew, man, they really put it together for us. This car was solid, super solid. So um, our uh, main main guys that helped get us here, WyoTech, they're here to, to like meet and greet you guys. Hopefully we, we can uh, get some of the future innovators to go talk to them and maybe uh, maybe make their way up to Laramie and, and go to college up there. Um, Mickey Thompson, they're amazing. These tires, we didn't kill one all day. And I mean, this was a, a race of a, yeah, we should have killed them all. Um, race line wheels, again, super tough. Uh, Neopco drive lines, um, Yukon gear and axle, uh, worn winches, Trent Fab for building an amazing car. Dave Schneider for helping us do everything that he does. Uh, gosh, Jim at ATO, Warrior Built, Jeff Van Horn for putting our motor together, Josh at Proper Tuning, Dan and Jess, of course, uh, Mike Hatch, um, Rick, Scott, Bob, and Woody back home, Sean and Trace for being here, uh, my friends Tim and Melissa for help getting us here, uh, friends and family back home. We want to thank the fans and staff and everybody of Ultra 4. Uh, the media, gosh, they're amazing. You see them all over out there. Uh, all the fellow racers and all of the generous volunteers for giving up their time. I mean, seriously, we couldn't do it without you guys. So thank you guys so much. All right, Jeremy, a couple more questions. What did you think of the course this year? I thought it was incredibly fast and there were some definite challenging spots. So it was great. It, it paced the car on both ends of the spectrum. And then also, you did not start up front. You were right up in the top 10 off qualifying. Did, did you see when you went by the guys? Or did you, where did you pass it and get into the lead physically? I have no freaking clue. <laughs> so 
they were I we thought that the Juicy Whip's car was in front of us I mean so we were pushing to try and catch him and we never did so we thought he was the one coming in because when we talked to Dom coming off the hill he said we were P3 so we were just kind of like okay uh, I don't know we'll just push as hard as we can and see what we get so well there you go ladies and gentlemen the winner at unofficial the winner of the four wheel parts everyman challenge presented by progressive jeremy jones all right ricky thank you very much well as we get jeremy jones off stage we're jumping back out to action at kmc turkey club that is scott foley making his way through and that is our second car on course it is indeed scott foley started on the front row of the grid this morning with his very good friend craig allen Unfortunately, Craig Allen had a breakage just as he started the second lap. But Scott Foley right now is making his way towards Hammertown. But this on screen right now is Dwayne Garrison, who is the lead vehicle in the 4500 Yukon Gear and Axle Modified class. We've seen him pass Cody Young, who unfortunately seems to be still stopped at around about race mile 120. And that's very impressive because that'll put him physically third and first in his class. Yeah, Dwayne Garrison, just trying to find out where he started this morning. He started in 13th position, so he would have been the uh, seventh row of the grid. Or, or fourth row of the grid, sorry. My mind is shot at this time of the day. All right, so we're watching Dwayne make his way through this section of desert. He still asked, has to make that, that left-hand turn that is very uh, common to see out there in the desert. You see them drive along, they huck a hard left, and then he has to make it all the way back down to Turkey Claw, KMC Turkey Claw, and then back down into Hammertown. But that is your current 4500 Yukon gear and axle modified race leader in today's Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. Yeah, Dwayne putting together a great race here. Hugely popular here in Hammertown. There will be a big party if he can pull this off. And he's looking very good right now. Yeah, definitely a lot of space between him and the next 4500 class. Not a very big class this year in that 4500 uh, uh, class at the this Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. And then the next uh, leader we'll be looking for, we want to see where our stock class vehicles shake up. We saw uh, the levels out well ahead of everyone else, and then right behind them was uh, Vaughn Gitten and Lauren Healy. They're sharing driving duties in that other Ford Bronco. And then behind them, well, for a while in between them, we saw Bailey Cole, fortunately, but uh, you did get news that he is out of the pit and he is moving now. Yeah, Bailey Cole, it sounded like he had uh, some kind of drive shaft issue with the left-hand front. Sounds like his remote pit team have been able to fix that for him and get him back out on track. I can also tell you, looking at the tracker, that Dan Fresh looks like he's just about to be working out onto the lake bed and making his way back towards town. All right, so as we watch everybody come down through Chocolate uh, Thunder and head up, so what the reason that we bring these leaders in and we basically hit on the fact that it's unofficial is we still have a lot of things to check once they get back into Hammertown. Every single one of these cars carries a uh, basically a GPS tracker. That's what we're watching on our tracker on the computer when we talk about they'll have to pull the, but the tracker does two things. Not only does it give us information here in the booth, it also tracks everywhere they go on the race course. Yep, there's also other things we need to check. We need to check physical tire size. 37 inch is the rule here. We are not have to use a DOT tire, so we're making sure that they're not stickies. Uh, we also need to make sure of other things, make sure there's no um, illegal inflation devices on the wheels. So there's lots of things and that's the reason that we use the word unofficial until Race Ops gives us the green light and that's why awards will be at 4 p.m. this afternoon. Yeah, we just want to make sure all the T's are dotted and the I's are crossed as we like to say and when we get them in here, get them across the stage, but we want to share the excitement with you so we get them in here quick and right now we're seeing some action from other, these that's Vaughn getting basically out there watching, waiting for Lauren to come through. Now, is this our, no, I don't want to call it as being that vehicle, but uh, the other thing that's worth noting as well, if you are a driver on course, if someone goes past someone's tool bag, if you're a driver on course, it's possible that somebody might have done something that you disagree with, and you can actually pull a red card on them. And so when you come back to base, you can go to race ops, file a red card, and if that's upheld, that can also 
that can also uh, affect the result. So that's why we're always unofficial until the race is complete. Yeah, I mean, I don't write the check, so I don't think it matters if I say it's official or not. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, and unfortunately, we're watching one of our stock class cars. They're out working under the hood of uh, the looks Suzuki. Like a samurai. They're just winding up the elastic band again. Could be. Looks like they've got. Looks like they were doing some winching from the looks of that uh, rope that's out there, but. You know, there's a lot of vehicles that you can choose to build an excellent stock class car out of it. The Samurai is not the top of the list, <laughs> but it's definitely a fan favorite for sure. Okay, and joining us in Hammertown very soon should be Scott Foley. He's currently second on track. As the action continues here. Yeah, this looks like uh, this is just the bottom of sledge right now, I believe. We've seen a lot of traffic in there today. Probably see even more tomorrow. As we've wa been watching online, all the everyone out pre-running that section of trail. Yeah, let's not forget at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, it will be the Nitto Race of Kings powered by Optima Batteries. Do not miss this one. This is going to be huge. All our previous Kings are racing. And we have so many Kings in waiting as well. Will it be somebody new? Will it be Bailey Campbell? Will it be Waylon Campbell? Paul Herschel? Just to name a few of those that could be capable. Or even Tom Ways. I don't think I've seen Tom Ways as so focused as he is this year. Here's what I want to do this year, Jim, just for fun. Because we always kind of do this. We always say pick your winner and then we'll see what can happen. We're gonna, I want to do it a little bit different this year. Oh, right now, I think we're going to see our winner. No, nope, this is no, sorry, second, second place. place finisher. This is Foley coming in. Yeah. See him making his way across that saddle section. We've spoken about it before, but this is really rough out here. We saw the T1s working their way back out into the desert along this sail trail, and you just saw how hard they were hitting their suspension, so you can only imagine what it's like in one of these limited class vehicles especially after four and a half hours of racing those shocks are good and hot worn out but to get back to my previous thought this for tomorrow jim this is what i want you to do i want you to pick i'll let you pick a solid axle winner an <laughs> ifs winner and a wild card winner ah, i like your style i think that's what we're going to do for tomorrow i've got mine picked we'll, we'll we'll go through it all tomorrow and we'll go from there but right now here we are Watching, this is a second place, second car to make it back into Hammertown, second vehicle on course. Yeah, right now, this is Scott Foley in the Bomber Fab car. He's had a fantastic day. He's had some frustrations out on track. And this is what we're talking about. This race is becoming a sprint race. You have to have a perfect day if you want to be here first. Yeah, they push hard all day long, and it's whoever's uh, equipment can just stay together. Who has the least problems out on course? We were speculating earlier. We didn't really know if our winner, we assumed that we didn't see our winner make any tire changes. So that may have been what helped him get in the lead. We're not sure uh, what's going on right here with Scott Foley. If he had any tire issues, we've seen a lot. We saw Dan Fresh, shockingly, in that first lap, lose two tires. I think that's what put him so far back in the pack for the rest of the day. But right now we're watching Scott Foley make his way. All the way through this section, you can see he's gonna drop down through here, make his way past King Shock Mountain. And that's Hammertown at the top of your screen. That's where he's coming home to. Once he gets through this section, he just has to put the pedal to the metal or hopefully just keep his wits about him. Swing around the bottom of King Shock Hill and then he'll be back into Hammertown through the short course. And that will be your second car making it back today as part of the four wheel parts, every man challenge. So here we go. This is Scott Foley right now. Car number 75. This is a man who's no stranger to Johnson Valley. He wheels out here with his good friend, Craig Allen. And here he comes now into the short course. The 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers four wheel parts, every man challenge. Yes, yeah, so he'll, he'll make it through this corner. He'll have two more corners to go. And then he'll make his way through the Bronco Arch up over the Yukon Launch. 
and it's so tempting to bury the skinny pedal as you're coming to here where we don't want to see any rollovers. Keep it on four wheels, Scott. Make it round this corner, please. And he'll see that wonderful sight, that checkered flag, that huge arch. One more jump, one more straight, and Scott Foley crosses the line in unofficial second place in class and unofficially second place overall at the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge 2023. Yes, excellent job, Scott. Good to have you back in Hammertown. We'll get you into the infield here, get you up on stage shortly, find out about how your day in the desert went. So we talked about this earlier, Jim, we said, would we see anybody coming in at that UTV time? Now, I don't think it's fair to compare these guys to our winning UTV, because that was an amazing run. But they're, they're, they're definitely off pace from that. Yeah, but we have to remember, these cars are limited classes. These cars have rules and brakes. The UTVs do also have the rules and brakes, but there's also unlimited. So that means they can have the best suspension companies. They can have the very best of the best. But as Scott Foley comes down here, we're going to have pass it down to Miles, who's going to have a look around this car for us. Miles, go for it. All right, I've got Scott Foley down here in his bomber chassis. Unofficial second place in the 4800 Brannock Motorsports Legends class. King shocks are looking good. Everything's going great on this car. We've got the laser nut on the side. He's hoping to grab some of that hardware later on this afternoon. But Scott Foley is super stoked to be in Hammertown right now for the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. Again, everything is unofficial until we dot our I's and cross our T's. But again, this bomber car looks like it's ready for a third lap. The car still is in great shape. Lots of uh, stuff going on with his. It's been beaten and battered, but it still looks like it's been having some fun out here. Big thumbs up from Scott Foley. Super stoked to be in town. They started racing at 8 a.m. this morning and have been pushing hard ever since. So let them get unbuckled and we'll send them up to, uh, to stage with Ricky Johnson here very shortly. But it's just so fun to see these cars straight. So it's great to see the car right when it finishes it. But so far, so good. Scott Foley has had a great, great run today. Again, unofficial second in the four wheel parts. Every man challenge for the 4800 Brannock Motorsports Legends class. Leo Donnell, our race official, is having a quick little chat with him. But I think we're uh, getting ready to ship him up on stage here pretty soon. So we're going to send him up up and have a chat with Ricky Johnson here in just a second but it's been a long day it's been an exciting day and he is there and he's got some fans in the crowd super excited so Scott Foley we're gonna get him up on stage with Ricky Johnson Ricky Johnson bring him on up buddy all righty, thank you, Miles. As we have the unofficial second place in the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge, Scott Foley, who started on the front row, um, did an unbelievable job, lost the lead somewhere along the way. We'll talk to Scott here in just a minute to find that out. As soon as he shuts it off, um, was an unbelievable race, very demanding the whole time. This is one of those bomber chassis. But ladies and gentlemen, your unofficial second place in the four wheel parts everyman challenge presented by progressive scott foley everybody you got to get out for this buddy all righty scott foley who started on the front road was out in front. We're gonna to talk to him, get, get, the, get the details on how his race went. But once again, your unofficial second place in the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge, ladies and gentlemen in the bomber chassis, Scott Foley. All righty, Scott, I see some fatigue, a little bit of shaking going on, but you started up front. 
Where did you lose that lead? Uh, I think we lost it in. Uh, I think maybe they went sled. We went jab. We thought they pulled something off. Yeah, I don't. Know. I'm not sure where. Somewhere in the rocks, you guys. Somewhere in the rocks, you got past. But uneventful day. Was it a very eventful day? You guys were running strong at the start. You had a really commanding lead at the beginning. Yeah, we did. We, uh, I think it was mile 20. You got the lead and all the way here and all the way to the rocks. And we just tried to keep our pace. You didn't have to get out of the car once. So no, no flats. BFG, awesome tires. King, Foddy, thank you so much for everything you did. Odyssey Battery, uh, CVM, uh, like I said, King. Oh, we'll get we'll get back to the sponsors in just. All of them right here, my wife, hold family. On, hold on, you got to say it into the microphone. Slow down, buddy. <laughs> all of these right here: my wife, my daughter, my son, my dad, my grandpa, all the pit guys, everybody that shows up help. That's what it's all about, big family. All righty, Scott. We've been talking to the different people about it. That the course. Uh, different different uh, thoughts about it, but what was your thought between the high speed and the tight technical? Uh, I don't, I don't know, man. You just, <laughs> you just try to keep moving through the rocks. That's what we did. I didn't want to have him get out to winch nothing, and he didn't. I didn't want to get out and change the tire because I sure as hell didn't want to get out because I'm beaten. So I just tried to keep the tires off the sharp rocks. And just listen to what he told me to do, and we're here. All right, so that is your wingman. You're the Batman. He is Robin. Let's talk about your co-dog. He does a lot of things. He's calling out everything for you. And if he needs to get out, he does. But you you were a nice guy this time. Talk about your co-dog. I was. He's my best friend. He's the one that got me into this damn thing. Um, he's a great co-driver. I mean, unbelievable, man. He knows the rocks like nobody else. And I just, I just go where he tells me to go. All right, now obviously you're driving with the bomber chassis. Obviously, uh, they, 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 it's been a very strong vehicle out here before. Any problems out there? No, Randy makes an amazing chassis. These cars are, are light, fast. Uh, they work awesome in the rocks. I, I think it's one of the best chassis out here. Solid axle car. It is the best solid axle car chassis out here, hands down. All right, and you did thank a lot of people in the past or before this, but uh, honestly, let, let's hear about who who helped you, helped you get here. My dad, my family, my my wife, who lets me leaves me alone in the garage till midnight. Doesn't just let me to come inside. Him, Joey, my co-driver, um, all the pit guys that support to prep this car right the night before, we're getting the fuel ready for the pit trucks, double checking the air pressure, lug nuts, just putting time and effort and just looking at the car, make sure nothing's leaking, and everything's running the way it should. And then it's up to me. <laughs> all righty. Ladies and gentlemen, you're unofficial. Everything is unofficial until 4 o'clock. So I want to remind everybody to be back here for the award ceremony at 4 o'clock. We'll have your official winners right now, ladies and gentlemen, unofficial in your formal parts. Every man challenge Scott Foley. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Okay, so we cut back to the action here, and that is Dwayne Garretson waking his way down through the KMC Turkey Claw. And that is the third vehicle on course. That will be our uh, unofficial leader of the 4500 Yukon Gear and Axle Modified Class. Third vehicle on course right now. Absolutely, he's doing a killer job here. Fantastic to see. He's in a Jimmy chassis car. Let's not forget the difference here is the steering has to have a mechanical link. That is the biggest single difference in this vehicle to the 4800 class. Yeah, they do get to have multiple shocks per corner, but all the shocks must be mounted directly to the axle. So no trailing arms, no leading arms. And if you look at the vehicles that obviously the 4800 Legends class that came through here, they do take advantage of that trailing arm, leading arm, specifically in that bomber uh, chassis. It's kind of, it's, it was its signature, probably one of the very first vehicles through that leading arm suspension on that front four link. Right, can I have a look back now on the tracker and see what we've got? I can tell you that Dan Fresh is now heading down, making his way towards Turkey Claw. Yeah, that's someone that we had our eyes on early in the day. Unfortunately, he had some bad luck out on course on that first lap with two flat tires. But he, uh, if he's headed to Turkey Claw, he has made up a lot 
a lot of space. The question is, will he be able to make up enough time to come in here and still podium for that uh, 4800 Brannock Motorsports Legends class as it is right now? We are all eyes are on that modified class car. That is our third third car on course. And then we'll be uh, starting to look at the tracker and figure out where our stock class cars are and who is leading that race. Yeah, I'm getting some interesting news about the stock class. I'm going to be checking my tracker, but I've had news from somebody who's out on course. who's saying that Lauren Healy has made the pass on Brad Lovell and is currently leading the stock class. But I'm waiting for confirmation. I'm checking my tracker and I'll come back to you with that news just as soon as I have it. We'll call that right now super secret double unofficial news. Absolutely. Until we have a confirmation either on camera or on tracker. But that would be a huge move for Lauren if uh, he was able to make the pass on Brad out there on in, if they were stuck in the pits for that one section. Because I know that he was out there hunting him down slowly but surely. Yeah, I'm just looking at my tracker now, and it looks like we have got more cars making their way out of the rock trails. Looks yeah. like we've got Nick Allegri working his way through. We saw him earlier today. And speak of the devil right now, we're jumping right out to Emerson Ridge. So this is, you can see there, this is the cars that uh, Jim was just talking about. They come down that little section of rock trail right there at the top of your screen, and they'll drop down into the bottom onto Emerson Dry Lake Bed. This is where we see a lot of speed. Now I can't see who this is in this car because obviously I can't see the number. Yeah, I'm going to suggest to you that that's a 4800 class car just looking at the steering setup there. It, it definitely does look like it has a full hydraulic steering on it. Looks like it might be skinned uh, classic Bronco style. Yeah, I'm thinking Jimmy's. Could be a Jimmy's, Jimmy's car, yep. Jimmy's 4x4, Randy Rod, well known out here. Did a lot of that early Bronco skinning and we're going to see a number here. So that is 1949. 1949 is Nicholas Aguilari, which is uh, um, that's who you Gary. Just, that's who you just yep. said was coming out. There. Oh, and look at this in sledge. This is right, looks like right near the plaque line. This is the nut, looks like the nacho dip got some cheese, Jeff. Indeed, and that's Daniel Guttenberg. Yep, he got some Daniel Guttenberg. And based on the number of people in race suits, I think there's some traffic behind him right oh, now. Oh, yes. They'll all be saying, thank you very much, Daniel. We've got some racing to do here. Could you please get yourself on four wheels? Yeah, get out of the cheese. I wonder if that's like right now, would that be like a spicy queso nacho <laughs> dip? Or maybe just a mild, mild picante? Okay, I'm looking at my tracker. And right now I can tell you that it does look like Lauren Healy is ahead of Brad Lovell. Wow, that is a huge move. We, we've we been watching those two battle it out between each other in that stock class, both driving those brand new Ford Broncos. Looked like the Lovells had a good, good pace going and a lot of space between them. But if Lauren was able to make up that gap, that's great news for Lauren and Vaughn, all part of Fun Haver team, also known as Voren. Team Voren, Vaughn and Lauren. <laughs> I can tell you this though, and this is really, really interesting. If they get into the desert fairly soon they are going to be coming back inside the top six of our finishers today now it's worth noting that our 4600 curry enterprises stock class do have bypasses out on track we have to take that into consideration but the fact that they're going to be coming in inside the top 10 remarkable i think the bigger story uh, when they come back will be is bailey cole able to get his bronco back out Will it be another clean sweep for the Broncos here in the stock class? Or will we some, see somebody else sneak in and grab another uh, position on that box? Because last year it was clean sweep. Broncos, one, two, three. It was indeed. I'll be honest with you, their pace is so dominant in the desert. I mean, we saw Brad Lovell an almost identical time to Wayne Garrettson in the 4500 class. That tells you how fast they are in the desert. I don't think any of the other 4600s really have anything for them once they get out there. Yeah, it's, it's a huge, huge gap, as you were saying, to be able to, be able to put those uh, stock Broncos in the mix of these, these 4800 and 4500 class cars. But right now, right now, this is what we've been talking about all day. And the question will be, I think what we're seeing right now is a snapshot of what we're gonna be seeing uh, tomorrow. 
in Sledge. This is a trail that is notorious for traffic out here in Johnson Valley as part of King of the Hammers race week. And I think we're going to see some action. Look at this. This Dan is Fresh. Dan Fresh coming into Turkey Claw. That is the last rock trail that he has to get through. So Dan Fresh, even though he's had all these problems today, may still end up with a podium spot in that 4800 series. Absolutely, it looks like he's gonna be our fourth car across the line if he can keep it together. Now Dan, of course, is the ultimate tactician in these trials. He's usually squeaky clean, no breakages, no flat tires, but that's not the race that Dan's had today. Dan's had to suffer multiple flats as we watch this man Dwayne Garrison, our current leader in the 4500 Yukon gear and axle class, and third car on course, making his way towards Hammertown. Do you know who's going to be happy right now watching these uh, two cars come in if Dan Fresh comes in and is able to pick up all that speed, all that time? Because we saw him come in with two front flat tires. Yes. He was way back. Mm -hmm. We saw him 10 minutes off race pace coming out of Chocolate Thunder. Everyone who lines up tomorrow in a bomber fab car is going to be happy. <laughs> Very particular well, Randy don't... Slauson because he only wins on odd numbered years, and this is an odd numbered year. Yeah, that's very true. But don't forget, Scott Foley was also in a bomber fab car. That's what I'm saying. We got two people, two bombers coming in. That's a, that'll be. I'm sure Randy will be very happy <laughs> if Dan Fresh is able to come in and put two bombers up on the podium today. But right now, it is all about Dwayne Garrettson in that 4500 class. That's the Yukon Gear and Axle 4500 modified class, and he is currently leading that class as he makes his way across the saddle and comes back into Hammertown. Yeah, and Dwayne Garrison looks fantastic here. He's making his way across the last of the few ridges in the saddle, dropping down, and he'll just be heading around King Hill, as you've already said. There is no better feeling than driving down towards Hammertown after hours and hours sat in the car. And he's been in this car for nearly five hours, four hours and 55 minutes on the clock. Yeah, he'll make quick work of this desert section, then he'll drop right into the short course. We'll see him make a couple turns, and then we'll throw it down to our friend Miles, and then over to Ricky. But right now, you are watching Dwayne Garrettson, the current race leader in the Yukon Gear and Axel 4500 modified class. Dwayne is coming back into town. Here he is. So here comes Dwayne. He's only got three more corners. He goes round one. He's now going to come in round past the Gomez pits. Turn two. All right, and then he has this big, long, sweeping turn before he gets lined up for the Bronco Arch and the Yukon launch. Here he is. This uh, is your unofficial winner of the 4500 Yukon Gear and Axle Modified Class, Dwayne Garrettson. And he crosses the line to be first in class at the Yukon Gear and Axle Modified Class here at the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge at the Progressive Insurance 2023 King of the Hammers, live here in Johnson Valley. Yeah, he's absolutely lost right now on course. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he hopped that right and was like, you want me to go out here? Where's the stage? Uh, I think uh, he's chasing that porta potty. <laughs> Five hours in the car. Five hours in the car, <laughs> yep. Yep, they're gonna get him lined up and get him over to Miles. Yeah, Dwayne's a great friend of Miles. So Miles will be super stoked to see Dwayne crossing the line. And there goes the course markings. That's okay, they're, they're made of plastic, they'll be fine. <laughs> we'll just put that right there, there we go. All right, so here comes Dwayne. Dwayne is gonna catch up. We're gonna throw it down to uh, Miles with his, I don't know if his patents come through for that wrench mic yet, but it's gotta be. Well, he had a new one given to him by Robbie Gordon earlier this week. Oh, an official Robbie Gordon mm. wrench mic. It's gotta be nice to have. But all right, as we watch Dwayne make his way through the pits, that are set up here, you can see everyone's pits. Yeah, he will be so pleased to be back into town. And he's gonna be coming alongside Miles any moment now. Miles is gonna have a look around the car before we get Dwayne up on stage. Here we go, Miles. Thank you, Jim, and what a great deal for Dwayne Garrettson, giving a big thumbs up. He's super stoked to be in town, unofficially first in the 4500 Yukon Gear and Axle Modified class in his Jimmy's chassis, Ford Bronco clip. This thing is looking great. What a great, great run. 
for Dwayne Garrison. And speaking about the Yukon gear and axle modify class, he's been on their team for a long time, so they got to be stoked. Dwayne's got to be stoked. His co-driver, Jeremy Tipton, is in here getting rid of that, some things, but just super, super stoked for these two dudes. Dwayne Garrison, the Ricky Bobby of Ultra 4 Racing in King of the Hammers out here. What a great, great run he has had. The car still looks like it's in good shape. They tore this thing completely down, did an amazing prep, and it proves that's why they are here making it happen. These Brannock arms on the back still uh, straight and strong. Everything's going great. What a wonderful day it has been of racing for the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. And I love saying that because Dwayne Garrett's a true everyman. He works on these uh, in an off-road shop all the time, making things happen. And then his part-time job is back at home doing the thing. So like I said, the true uh, everyman challenge, Dwayne Garrison, we're gonna send him up on stage. We'll have Ricky have a chat, but man, what a great unofficial win for Dwayne Garrison in the 4500 Yukon Gear and Axle Modified class. Oh, yeah, Heck yeah, buddy. What a great, great run. So Dwayne Garrison is getting ready to head on up. We'll have a chat with Ricky Johnson up on stage. Third across the line, unofficial first, Dwayne Garrison. So I'm going to throw it up to Ricky. Let him chat a little bit while we wait for him to come on up. Ricky, take it away, buddy. Thank you so much, Miles. Dwayne Garrison, you can see that giant smile on his face as he rolls his way up here. First unofficial in 4,500. Wait for him to shut that off. Ladies and gentlemen, you're in unofficial third place in the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge and, and unofficially first at 4,500, ladies and gentlemen. Garrett, I'm sorry, Dwayne Garrettson, come on out. Winners gotta come out of their car. I know you don't want to, you have to just sit right there, but you gotta get out and talk to your people. All right, put, put your hands together for Dwayne Garrettson. Hell yeah. <clears throat> Dwayne, you got a big smile on your face. First 4,500 in, unofficial, but everything look, is looking good so far. How'd it go for you out there? Man, we went phenomenal. We got the best team, we got the best sponsors, I got the best co-driver. Today just kicked ass. So a very uneventful day, just just a day in the park, just like pre-running? Man, actually, uh, we had two hang-ups. We had to use our awesome custom splice winch rope and our worn winch. A co-dog had to get out two times. A uh, mistake one time on my part, and then just a, he just, we just needed it on the other one. There you go. So, um, excuse me. Obviously, you don't get here by yourself. It takes a, it takes an army to get this race car here. Who do you want to thank? Man, I want to thank everybody that came out with me, uh, all the guys that are on my crew. Uh, most of them are standing right here. I don't want to miss them all. Frank, Owen, uh, Drew, Cody, Jim, Jared, Dennis, uh, Joshua. Uh, man, those guys, Gary, Blake. Uh, we got some help from Oklahoma boys, Nathan, uh, you know, my wife, my family, you know, uh, man, praise God, Jeremy for doing all he does. And then, you know, of course, I'm going to step over here so y'all can see all these sponsors. <laughs> Everybody, Yokohama Tire, Raceline Wheel, Yukon Gear and Axle, Brannock, Warren, Jimmy, Spider Track, Song Machine Center, Sign Planet, Stein Yeager, Scranton Truck and Trailer, Red Flow, Patterson Wellhead, Limitless Performance, Willwood Brakes, the CDL Academy. Uh, man, it, it takes all these guys, PRP seats. Takes them all, takes them all. Every racer out here knows that you can't do it by yourself and uh, support the companies, man, that support us. And man, I'm just stoked, this is awesome. All right, let's talk about your co-dog for a little bit because you guys go through so many motions up and down. You know, when you make a mistake, he has to pipe you up or calm you down. How did it go for the, the two of you out there? Man, it really went really good. I don't think he dialed me back maybe one or two times. Uh, I just kept telling myself that, you know, we needed to keep the tires on the car and we needed to keep moving forward. And, uh, you know, we've been out here a bunch of times, man. I know we had the, the talent and the parts and the cars, and it just never went this great. Well, awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, your unofficial winner of the 4500 class, Dwayne Garrison. All right. Get the team up here for okay, a Okay, and fantastic. That's so good to see Dwayne Garrison crossing the line. And while Dwayne's been coming up across the stage, I can tell you that another finisher is here. It's car number eight. It is Dan Fresh, unofficial third in the 
Brannock Motorsports Legends class, and this is a man who's no stranger to being on the podium here in Hammertown. And that is incredibly impressive. We saw him have a rough start to his day, and at one point in time, he, we basically considered him completely out of the running for any type of position on a box out here in this 4800 Brannock Motorsports class, but he was able to reel it back in, finish his day, and what's looking like an unofficial third finish for Dan Fresh in the 4800 Brannock Motorsports class. We're going to have Miles down there to have a quick walk around on that bomber fab car. Miles, what do you see down there? Thank you, Ian. Yeah, Dan Fresh in this brand new bomber fabrication car. Fourth overall, unofficial third in the 4800 Brannock Motorsports Legends class. What a great, great run he has had. He's been racing with us for a long time. He races Baja, he races rocks, he races a little bit of everything. But this bomber car is looking great. So you know Randy Slotson's got to be stoked that he knows that this race course is built for a bomber. But a great, great run. Everything still looks great. Tires holding there. Warren Winch up front. Doesn't look like it got too much use today. But yeah, again, the, the car just looks great out here. And he has got to be stoked to hopefully be on the podium once again. He's won out here multiple times in the 4500 class. He's raced the 4800, and I believe he's still going to try to race his 4400 car tomorrow. Get a great thumbs up from Dan Fresh. I think the, we'll clear the stage here in just a moment and send him up here very shortly. But again, the car just looks like it's in great shape. These cars get beaten and battered. Uh, just right around 140 miles of some of the toughest terrain you could ever have out here in Johnson Valley for the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers powered by Optima Batteries. We are right here in the four wheel parts every man challenge again unofficial third spot in the 4800 brannock motorsports legends class looks like it could be mr dan fresh so we'll send him up on the stage again another thumbs up super stoked to be here the adventure off-road bomber is going to head up on course they're up on stage here very shortly the number eight dan fresh it's got fired back up, so he'll head on up and have a chat with Ricky Johnson here very soon. But again, what a great showing by our top four competitors thus far, and we got a lot more out on track. And I know Dan's gonna be super, super excited. But great job, Dan Fresh. So I'm gonna send it up to Ricky Johnson. Ricky, take it away, buddy. All righty, thank you, Miles. They're watching Dan Fresh as he works his way up. He's got some stories to tell us because we... <clears throat> Hold on, I'll get, we'll get back to Dan in just a second. Ladies and gentlemen, unofficially fourth place, Dan Fresh. An unbelievable drive. We saw you have problems at the beginning, then two flats. You disappeared off the map, but then you drove back. So you had to have it in full charge mode. Yeah, we were, we were pushing this thing. We figured, you know, obviously we're here to win, and uh, whoever won, hats off to them. They must have ran an amazing race because we were pushing really hard all day, and uh, just some bad luck. You know, we tried to jump into those big rocks where Dave at the meeting said, hey, you got to take the big rocks um, going up. Uh, what was it? Thor's hammer up there near the top, and we were in the big rocks, and we got hung up and uh, had to winch and broke the winch line, and guys are going by on the sand hill like crazy, and I'm like, maybe we should have taken the sand hill. <laughs> But he said stay in the rock, so we tried to run by the rules for the first time in our lives. So uh, anyway, uh, it was a it was a hard fought race. Mike did a great job. I got to give it up to the team. Uh, they fought hard. We were supposed to have a new car out here, Ricky, this race, and uh, just couldn't quite get it together. So we went into overdrive to get this thing ready. Um, all the sponsors uh, helped out a lot. Uh, Jeff Ginter. Uh, he built the engine in this thing, and it is an absolute rocket ship. I mean, it's uh, it's hard to hang on to. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously a little bit different than your 6100 truck and the desert racing and that, but how did you like the course, the, the, the two different laps, say the bigger wide open desert loop versus the rocks? Okay, so the, the desert loop was definitely way more wide open than usual because we didn't have much rocks in it, but uh, we're coming across and just happened to get a couple of flats, but... Uh, that, that obviously hindered us a little bit, but uh, 
going out in the rocks, those were legit. I mean, I know he's got a trail name legit, but those rocks are, they're, they're for real this year. Well, you were, you were down 20 minutes. You were basically, you were, had disappeared, and a lot of the people were just, had counted you out. But that's what I was saying. You had to put it on full charge to get yourself back up here and get through a lot of dust. Oh, well, we figured at that point it was, it was break it or, or try to get back on the box. So, uh, yeah, Mike and I talked about it. It's like, all right, we'll hurt our bodies a little bit, even though we got to go out again tomorrow. But, uh, yeah, we, we put on charge mode and uh, we're able to get it up here. So I, I really got to thank some of my sponsors. Uh, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have Tremor wheels on board this year, and uh, I definitely got to test one of their wheels out. We got a flat probably 15 miles out, and we were out of tires, so we ran on that rim all the way back to uh, back to Maine. So uh, hats off to those guys. Milestar, uh, this is a new tire from Milestar, and it gets just absolute amazing traction going up the rocks. Um, I'm really impressed with their tire. Um, Adventure Off-Road. Uh, some of the guys there, they do a lot of the uh, help out with the prep and things like that. Cole, he's here in the audience. He's, uh, he's one of my main pit guys, and he, he did a great job pitting it or uh, prepping the truck. Um, let's see, Sparco, uh, Fox Shocks, Warren Winches, Factor 55. Um, we've got uh, Dynamic Motorsports. They do our torque converter. Um, uh, let's see, uh, PSC, they, they helped us out with a new steering set. But, yeah, just a lot of great people. I'm sorry if I forgot anybody. Obviously, on the spot, it's always tough. So what what did you gain? What any knowledge that you're going to take from today for tomorrow besides j just out there getting seat time? You know, getting in the rocks, I think that's a good, it's a good indication of what it's going to look like tomorrow. It's even going to be worse. But, uh, obviously, we'll be on a 40 tomorrow, a little bit bigger shock package. But, uh, yeah, the... As far as what I gain, God, it's a, it's crappy. <laughs> the whole thing. I mean, it's really, it's a tough, tough, tough section through the rocks. So I, I can't imagine what it's going to be like on that third lap out there. Uh, you know, a lot more horsepower in these via in the other vehicles are going to be really ripping it apart. So I couldn't tell you where it's going to go to pot, but uh, I will say Thor's hammer is definitely one to look at. Well, definitely. Well, Dan Fresh, you always, you're, you're out to impress in everything from the 61 on the desert race to whatever it is. You did a phenomenal job. Thank you for staying in the game and giving us something to talk about. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Fresh.
just saw action from Emerson Dry Lake Bed out there uh, in the in the backside. That is the last section that they come through before the big long desert loop to get back into Hammertown. And this is Emerson Dry Lake Bed. That's what we we're just watching right now. And I can't see whose car that is. If I had to guess, it might be the 4881, and that's just a guess based on the tracker, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I think it's a good guess. I think that probably is Jay Schwab making his way in. It does look like a 48 Legends car that we saw, but that is a 4517. That's the 4517. So that's another one of our modified cars. Just to remind you again at home and here in Hammertown. Oh, and here we go. Here is the levels out in the desert charging hard. Yeah, that was Jesse Oliver in the 4517. So good to see him still moving. So we still have podium places to fill up today. We've only had one modified Yukon gear and axle modified car come across the line. We still have two modified spots that are wide open. We haven't seen a single stock class car make it back into town and the stock class cars we're watching right now are Lauren Healy and Brad Lovell. All right, that is the 1776. Making its way out of, that would be the bottom of Chocolate Thunder, came back around, went up idle issues and then they come back down through her problem. And oh, look, it looks like Bailey Cole is moving again. That is good news for him. So that's Bailey Cole. That's another one of our stock class cars. And right now, this is KMC Turkey Claw. This is another one of our uh, modified cars. Yeah, just looking on the tracker right now, it does look like Bailey Cole is currently in that third position. Yeah, in the Curry Enterprises stock class, but he is a long way behind. And we did see that car moving again, which was great news. He's a long way behind the current race leader, who is Lauren Healy, who we should be seeing entering the KMC Turkey Claw very soon. But at the moment, it's the 1776. And 1776 is Jeff Watson from Arizona, making his way up through those trails. So much raw racing to come here today. We've only had a few finishes. 153 starters at eight o'clock this morning and they've now been on course for five hours and 16 minutes. That's a long time in a race car. And as I said before, we still have multiple podium spots to fill today. We still have two more spots. We have not seen the second or third place car come across part of the Yukon, or sort of the Yukon Gear and Axle Modified class. And we have not got any of our stock classes. And right there, you can see some action right here in Hammertown. That is the eBay Motors group. eBay Motors out here in Hammertown with set up over in our vendor area. I don't know about you, Jim, but I buy a lot of parts off eBay Motors. Uh, yes, eBay is a very dangerous place to be for me as I cannot stop buying things. So massive thank you to eBay Motors joining us out here on the lake bed and giving out some free swag for our fantastic crowds here in Hammertown. Yeah, and if you want to have a little bit of fun while you're in Hammertown, stop by the eBay Motors truck. They've got a super cool little RC track set up over there. I did some work with eBay Motors this year. We were part of their Parts of America tour. Basically, they loaded up a whole bunch of cool cars and hauled them all around the country to a bunch of different events. Lots of fun to work with those guys. It was neat to see them out here in the middle of the desert. But right now, oh, there, yes, Bailey Cole is back moving again in that number 13 stock class Ford Bronco. As Jim said, right now he is currently the third place vehicle in that stock class, making his way through the rock trails. But our leader in that class right now is Lauren Healy. He is indeed. Just looking at the pace of Bailey here. Bailey is usually very fast with his rocks. Let's just see how he gets on. But look at the size of them, they're absolutely enormous. Very difficult as we watch the 8.33. I feel that's I should Kevin, know that. That's Kevin Condon right there. It is. Yep, Kevin Condon, and that is the bottom of a sledge. Lots of action we've seen today as people make their way up through the nacho dip. 
We saw a roll over there earlier that was causing some traffic backed up. I don't know if that's been cleared yet. Oh, and look at this. In our KMC Turkey Claw, there is Lauren Healy in that stock class Bronco. So that will be our current race leader in that class of the stock class. That's Lauren Healy picking his way through KMC Turkey Claw. He'll have to drop out of that trail over into the saddle, a little desert section, and then he'll be back into Hammertown. He'll be happy to get that Bronco back home. And don't forget, you can go to kingofthehammers.com forward slash live and find all the tracker and scoring information there. I'll be able to keep up with the race and be able to keep up with your favorites. Then tomorrow, let's not forget, it will be the Nitto Race of Kings, powered by Optima Batteries, starting at 8 a.m. Do not miss that. That is going to be very special indeed. As we go back to Jack North, and we were watching Bailey Cole, but that looks to me is... That is the Horschel built car. That, that is the Horschel built. That is Brent Harrell, I believe. Brent really was at the pointy end of this race for so long this morning. So it's great to see him back on track again. Yeah, we saw him, unfortunately, with a flat. They had it apart, uh, fixing up in sledge. Uh, at the moment, Lauren is wild. That is Brent Harrell. Yeah, so that's Brent Harrell making his way across the saddle. So that's that brand new Horschel, Paul Horschel built car. It's absolutely beautiful piece of machinery. All of Paul's cars just always coming up with something new to look at as we're watching Bailey Cole right now. Seems to be backing down. Looks like he's going to be picking an alternate line on this particular trail. So these are the stock class cars that we've been watching today. I'm just getting some news on the stock class as well. It sounds like Lauren has had a flat tire as he makes his way through Turkey Claw, allowing Brad Lovell to close the gap between him and them. This is going to be really close stuff as so both these cars head towards Hammertown. Let's take a quick look at our stock class starting order. Who's got adjusted time in that group? Well, that's very interesting indeed because, if I'm not mistaken, uh, no, they started side by side. So Brad Lovell and Laurel Healy were side by side as they left the line this Speak morning. Speak of the devil, there you go. There is Brad Lovell. We just saw Lauren through this section maybe one minute ago. So this is actually going to be down to physical track position. This will be a great finish. I love this. Over 140 miles of racing, and we are merely down to <laughs> seconds as they come across the line seconds. in each of these classes. Incredible stuff. And what's been fun to watch in that stock class is the lead has changed hands multiple times. Absolutely, yes. So that is really fun to see. So we're going to see those stock class cars come in, but right now, who we're watching come across the saddle right now will be one of our next modifieds. This could be, I think this will be our fourth. Yeah, I think this is Nick Allegri coming in now. Yeah, and that'll be our... <laughs> I believe this is the fourth Legends car we'll see come into town. As we said before, we still have lots of podium spots to fill up. Yeah, now Nicholas Allegri, he started on the 13th row of the grid today in 26th position. So this is Nicholas Allegri. He'll be making his way round the bottom of King Hill shortly and coming to join us in town. And I believe he is going to be the fourth in legends and fifth overall. All right, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to take a quick break from the action here. I'm going to hand my mic over to the voice of Ultra 4, Miles Hasselquist. He's going to take a break from the wrench mic, step on one of these headsets to bring in uh, our next few finishers. And joining me in the booth right now, it's the one, the only, it's Miles Hasselquist. Miles, how are we doing? Oh, I'm doing great, buddy. Uh, thank you, Ian, for uh, stepping out for a little bit, give you a little break. Always a pleasure working with you. But, Jim, we had a great race. We've had a great week. It's been absolutely amazing here. Yeah, we spent all year waiting for hammers, and it never disappoints. And look at this. That is Brent Harrell. Car 56, he's crossed the line. We'll be getting him up on stage very shortly to speak to Ricky. 
He debuted that car a year ago, and it's an absolute work of art. That horse machine is absolutely amazing. I was uh, able to watch their pits earlier this morning, and they had a complete game plan to make it happen. It was really professional, really cool to see Coach and everything going along. And while we, before we bring him up on, up on stage, we're going to take a quick break. We'll have a chat with him after this. There's only one place to go to do your rig right, and that's at Four Wheel Parts. Now is the time for bigger tires and larger wheels. Now is the time to lift your Jeep at 4WP. off-road technology and we bring to you the next step in user-controlled lighting. of the racers in the world will never get. I've accomplished everything I wanted to do and now he's just like taking the reins. I want to be remembered for being a, a, a huge part of short course, not just racing, keeping it alive, helping it grow. If it comes down to the last weekend and I'm in it, the boys better watch out. <laughs> Okay, and welcome back to the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers. We're live here in Hammertown for the 
four wheel parts every man challenge what a day of racing miles and we have something very special that just came through the bronco arch right now lauren healy and vaughn getting juniors bronco came through so unofficial first place for the 4600 curry enterprises stock class yeah it also looks like we've had nick O'Leary cross the line in fifth place overall and brent harrell in sixth place overall which will be fourth and fifth in legends class but we'll be getting all of these people up on stage very soon but it also sounds like the Lovells are going to be making their way into town very soon as well. But this car here, the 2567 of Vaughan Ginn Jr. and Lauren Healy, looks to be at the moment the unofficial winner in the 4600 Curry Enterprises stock class. Vaughan Ginn Jr. took the desert lap. Lauren Healy took the right, uh, the rock lap, and they are all smiles. Super excited. Team Funhaver Off-Road is out here. Unofficial first place on the 4600 stage it's gonna be great to see i saw woody rose in the lineup too so we missed him coming across so that's a top uh, top six in the 4800 brannick motorsports legends class yeah that's the second if it is official it will be the second win for vaughn getting juniors bronco as they picked up the trophy last year and in fact it looks like it's probably going to be a very similar podium to last year if brad lovell comes in in second which will be the same as he managed to score last year as well But we have lots of cars joining us in Hammertown right now. And don't forget, we have lots of stuff going on here in town. So as the races are starting to end up, still check out everything going on. We have the Crab Feast at the KOH Outpost till 8 p.m. this evening. That's out by the Welcome Gate. So it's really cool to see all the different things. As we have Brad Lovell, unofficial second place in his Bronco, coming on into town. Brad and Roger Lovell in that Amsoil Bronco ran strong all day. And what's that, three minutes behind their teammate? Absolutely. Lauren Healy. They started side by side off the line. Both of them had some problems swapping tires out on the track, but it'd be great to get the levels up here. We'll be able to find out what they have to say very soon. But unofficially, it looks like Brad Lovell is going to be in second place in the 4600 Curry Enterprises stock class. So a great showing by the Broncos once again. Vaughn and Lauren, and then Brad and Roger. And then third place, could it be Bailey Cole? Time will tell. We know we had some issues early on, but got it back in action. I think Brent Harrell unofficial eighth, and Nick Allegri unofficial ninth. And it sounds like Scott Rain has Brent Harrell out on stage. Scott, take it away, buddy. Uh, thanks a lot, Miles. I'm looking at this guy when he drove up on stage, burped the throttle pretty hard a couple of times. He is too serious to have just finished a race like this. Brent, congratulations. Unofficially, we haven't figured it out yet if it's fifth or sixth, but unofficially fifth or sixth on stage after a race like that. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Um, glad to finally be here. It was rough out there. What was the course like for you? Obviously, no, you, I mean, for me, that's the face of an off-road racer right there. All that dust, that little bit of sweat and the dust stuck to it. You're an off-road racer, my friend. Yeah, it was, it was rough out there. There was, first loop was pretty quick and then second loop, I had a, quite a few technical issues out there, but, um, had a good, good run going, so. Did you, did you make him work very often, pretty much? Oh yeah, he was out of the car quite a few times. <laughs> well, I'm looking at his neck, so I don't know if that's from the, the, the harness or you choking him, I can't tell. Uh, yeah, he got jarred around pretty good over there. But. Well, uh, you got a small army out here in front of you, man. Who, who helped you get here? Um, I'd like to thank my pit crew, you know, wouldn't be out here with, without them helping me. Uh, my dad, family, they back me on everything that we do, uh, God. <laughs> All of our sponsors that have backed us this year, um, Nitto for jumping on board, they're a phenomenal tire. Fox Shocks, uh, Rigid Industries, um, brightest brightest lights around, so. Max Tie Downs, um, Tube Works, Justin, my, co my co-worker. Or <laughs> my hey, he just smiled. Do you catch that? 
Is he is he always like this calm, cool, and collect and just like eh, really? Well, I just got to hand it a note. You're eighth overall, fifth in class. Congratulations, man. Perfect. Thank you, guys. There you have it, Brent Harrell. Nice job. Tomorrow, your dad. You're backing him up tomorrow? All right. Well, thank you, Scott, and congratulations, Brent Harrell and Justin with Tube Works and that obstacle pull a horse built machine. What a great, great showing by all. But, Jim, it's still a race out there on course. We've got an unofficial podium for each class, or an unofficial first place finisher in each class. Yeah, we have indeed. This is where it starts getting complicated with the multiple classes, but we've got nine vehicles across the line so far. Let's start in ninth position. It's Nicholas Allegri. We have on stage shortly. He's ninth in overall, sixth in Legends. In eighth is Brent Harrell in fifth over or in class, eighth overall. He's and Woody Rose, we're gonna see on stage very shortly, is fourth in class and seventh overall. We talked to Dan Fresh just a little bit ago, third in class and sixth overall unofficially. And uh, we're gonna be speaking to this man very shortly, Brad Lovell, who is fifth overall and second in class. And then Lauren Healy unofficially winning the Curry Enterprise stock class, first in class and fourth overall. And Dwayne Garretson, who is first in class and third overall. And our only finisher in the 4500 Yukon Gear and Axle Modified class. And second class, second overall is Scott Foley in the 4800 Brannock Motorsports Legends class. And the man who brought it home earlier today, who's first in class and first overall, was Jeremy Jones in the Trent Fab Machine. Fantastic stuff. Finished in an amazing time of four hours and 42 minutes. On screen is Cody Young. He was running strong all morning long, was second overall for quite some time and had a hiccup. Not sure uh, how that happens, a tough break for him, but that's, uh, that's part of racing. It is part of racing. And this is... This I is hear some horsepower. Exactly. This is Nicholas Ogre coming on stage now, and Scott's going to be talking to him very shortly. Big smile by Nick Allegri. Nicholas Allegri out on score. That's Brian Tripp that's tipped over. Looks like that's up at the Can-Am Chocolate Thunder. Back to Troy Bigby, Digby out on screen. He'll be coming into town here very soon. And it sounds like Scott Rain is ready for an interview. Take it away, buddy. Well, thanks, guys, and um, what's, what fans can't see, but the crew, crew might know about this, is a little message right above the steering wheel. I'm not going to tell you what the verbiage is, but it's pretty um, self-explanatory. Don't mess the motor up, basically. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. But, Nick, uh, congratulations, man. Uh, hell of an afternoon. What was the course like? It was, it was fun and brutal at the same time. We had an amazing day out there, and... Uh, Everybody that helped out with this car, uh, Ryan Agan, Grom, JP, Evan, me, Dad, uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting some people, but uh, it was, the thing just worked amazing today. But I know one thing, you gotta start with everything brand new to get through that beat down. Well, my other question, I look at your co-driver and I like doing that too. Yeah, I'll talk to the driver, but I wanna look at the co-driver and just get a feel for what his afternoon was like. Yeah, that, I'm thinking he's lying right now. Here's, here's the deal. I co-drove for him for two years. And this is my very first time driving this race. I just don't have social media, and I'm not in that rookie program. But I am a rookie. So <laughs> did you make him work it all this afternoon? He worked pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I got a little note here. It says ninth overall, sixth in class. Not a bad, not a bad deal for your first year, man. Thank you. That's awesome. Who got you here? Who, I mean, you got, obviously you got a small army right here. I mean, my wife, she. Wait, 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 I'm gonna stop him right there. You're the first driver all week long to do it the right way. The wife always comes first, I shout, man. Right. She, uh, she sees where the money goes and my dad, if it wasn't for his dad and then my father, our business has been around a long time and I'm very lucky to be running a business at third generation and. I'm, I guess I get to enjoy more of the benefits from their hard work. So I'm very appreciative. Well, something tells me that was a very soft moment, and uh, congratulations for remembering that and bringing that up. There's nothing like family and friends. 
uh, that support you in something like this. But my, my last question for you, what was it like when you came around that corner up on the stage and saw them all right here? It's a beautiful moment. I can't get anything better than that. I'm trying to get a tear out of them, but it ain't happening. <laughs> nice job, Becker. Can you say, can you just say what's on the car? <laughs> Cowboys and kilos? Yeah, perfect. They, they never say it on TV. I just wanted to hear. Cowboys and kilos? What? What is it? Oh, I forgot one other thing. AccuTune. He set the suspension up perfectly. It worked flawlessly today. So. Well. Right <laughs> you'd be a lot shorter. You got, yeah, you got a ways to go to get my height. But hey, it's, it's time to party. Get your ass off the stage. You got cars lined up. You got, you got family and friends to hang out with. Nice job, guys. Nick. Very cool. Seriously, he is the first one to remember the white pups first. First one. You're supposed to smile over here. Nick, yeah. Well, thank you, Scott. Congratulations, Nick Allegri, with a great run. Looks like it's going to be Woody Rose up next. So Woody Rose should be fourth in class and seventh overall unofficially. We'll bring him up here very soon. He's part of the 4800 Brannick Motorsports Legends class during the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. It's been an amazing event here at the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. And tomorrow is the big race of the week, the 4400 Nitto Race of Kings. Kick that off tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. and we'll leave the we'll leave it open till 10 p.m. tomorrow night. So we'll be racing for 14 hours tomorrow. It's going to be absolutely amazing. As Woody Rose is getting pulled up on stage again, unofficially fourth in class and seventh overall. And we've just had another finisher coming to Hammertown. It was Troy Digby, who's part of our rookies program. He's coming across the line in 10th overall and second in the Yukon gear and axle. 4,500 modified class. But joining Scott on stage now will be Woody Rose. Scott, take it away. Thanks a lot, Miles. Well, I'm going to start with this. Fourth in class, seventh overall, and you look like hell. Oh, it was it, it, he's, he's got stuff in his eyes. He's all red-eyed. Um, but congratulations, man. Not a bad way to spend an afternoon, is it? No, not at all. I'm glad I finished. Last year, we uh, were about top five on the road, and uh, transmission fitting went out. So uh, I'm just glad to finish. Well, I'm kind of glad to look over at the co-driver and see that the, the, hand, the grips are still on that T-bar. Um, you, didn't, you didn't make him scream or nothing today? I don't know. We lost comms about <laughs> halfway through, and he was giving me hand signals. So. No, you didn't lose comms. He pulled the plug on his helmet. Oh, no, I'm pretty sure I ripped the comms out of my helmet because I don't know what happened. But it was in the rocks. <laughs> Did you make him work today? Uh, yeah, twice. We got stuck at the top of uh, Thor's hammer and then uh, sledgehammer. We just, I had him hop out and immediately winch. We didn't even try to tr climb it. <laughs> You know, Woody, I tell you, man, I'm really impressed by this car. I love the, the, the profile, the looks of it, and just walking around it. And I come to look on the ink in the cockpit. You know, nothing really fancy, but it is a workhorse. And it put the, you put it through the paces this afternoon. And um, I'm looking at a bunch of people behind you that you don't even know are standing right there, ready to give you a big old hug. Uh, what do you think about uh, your crew, your family, your friends that are here supporting you? I can't thank my crew enough. Uh, Derek and my mother, my stepfather, Derek, they went down to Sacramento right after qualifying to bring the transmission down to Jim at AGO, and he rebuilt it overnight. Uh, next day, it was back in the car. So, uh, and it's running great right now. <laughs> so I'm um, super stoked on that. And uh, yeah, I can't thank them enough. My crew helped me out putting the transmission in, and my co-driver for, you know, being there and trusting me. <laughs> well, what about some of the companies behind the scenes that got you here? Um, Yukon Gear and Axle, I can't thank them enough. Raceline wheels, those things, I don't know what they look like. I'm curious to see. They held up through like 30 miles of abuse on flats, just the rim. 
And then uh, next in tires, of course, they held up great. I got two stick flats earlier in the day because I was bushwhacking, which wasn't nice. Um, line to line coating, Mechman alternators. Uh, actually, you know, left some of my hardware at home, so I didn't run a spare. But it's okay. The crusty one on the car worked all day. Um, Trent Fabrication, of course, for building an amazing car. Um, Brannick Motorsports, Warren Industries, FK Rod Ends, The Auto and Tire Doctor, and uh, Rugged Radios. Oh, congratulations, man. Uh, not a bad way to spend the afternoon. And Fox for rebuilding one of my shocks. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's time to celebrate, grab something cold to drink, and kind of wipe that face off from all that dust. Yeah. Not a bad, not a bad way. It's open right now. <laughs> <laughs> time to celebrate. There you go. Miles, back to you, bud. Well, thank you, Scott, and congratulations to Woody Rose, another great competitor here in the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. Jim, it's been a great day of racing, and don't forget, tomorrow is the big show. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. We are here at the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, and tomorrow will be the Nitto Race of Kings, powered by Ultima Batteries. It's going to be starting at 8 a.m. sharp. And we've got the big man, Paul Wolf, leading off on the front row of the grid. Next to Jason Shear. I think it's his ninth year in a row leading out in the lead pack. Jason Shear can really run some qualifying, and he's uh, definitely going to be a tough one to beat during race. He is. Jason's going to be in a new car this year. What can he give for us? But right now, it's about the four-wheel parts, everyman challenge. We've already had ten finishes cross the line. It's three different classes. And while we continue with the action here, we're going to pop out to a short commercial break and we'll be right back here in Johnson Valley. PCI Race Radio is the leader in off-road communication since 1972. Our equipment was developed for racing in Baja, perfected for enjoying the weekend with family and friends. Stay in touch with our track stereo intercoms, two-way radios, satellite communications, helmets and headsets. Find new adventures with GPS. Breathe clean air with Race Air Fresh Air System. PCI has the highest quality communications, navigation, and safety equipment, backed by the best support in the industry. Find us at hundreds of events each year, supporting our equipment on site and providing the PCI Weatherman Relay. See you in the desert. race in the world as far as I'm concerned. When you need your winch, that's the only thing that matters. It's about getting to the finish line first. It doesn't matter how you do it. in the 4500 Utah. Wait, 
Is that disappointment? What? So let me clarify a little bit on that. And while I do think that is absolutely amazing on the fourth overall, we got to do some bypasses. So it, it, while it's unbelievable, wait, 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 we got to take a couple bypasses wait, wait, that those wait, wait, bad dudes wait, also wait, wait, had to go on. Wait, 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 wait. A am I hearing this guy being yeah. humble? <laughs> Have you ever humble. known me as anything other than humble? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. But, no, thank you so much. I mean, back-to-back -back wins for, for Bronco, for Von Aver, two years in a row. You know, the – it's unbelievable what this Bronco does. I'm, I'm telling you, we're passing the 48s and the 4500s all day long in this stock class truck. It is absolutely unreal. Well, talk about what the afternoon was like because you both split job duties. You're, you were out in the rocks. You were out in the desert. Is that how it was? So what was it like for you out in the rocks? <clears throat> yeah, so, that, I mean, that's our strategy. You know, we got a really big race coming tomorrow. You know, it gives us some, some awesome opportunity. Bond dials in the desert. I dial in the rocks. And, and it just, it works great. It still keeps us really fresh for the race tomorrow. Because doing, you know, seven hours in this truck right now, that, that'll that, that kind of beat you up for tomorrow. So I think our strategy is absolutely on point. And, and it just, when we got out into the rocks, I knew that, you know, I had, Brad was about 10 minutes ahead of me. Bailey left right in front of me. And so I, I knew, you know, now, as every year, that's when the race starts. It's get through the desert, right? Don't don't burn down the truck. And the race starts in the rocks. Did you make your guy work? I did make Jesse work a lot today. <laughs> and, and I kept telling him, man, good job. Get back in, get some water, because it's not stopping anytime soon. He absolutely killed it. Well, when you handed it off to this guy right here, I should say no, you handed it off to him. Uh, uh, Vaughn, what was the desert like for you? Yeah, we, uh, we ran a really clean race. The goal was, you know, not to push push too hard and just try to race. We weren't trying to race Brad the whole time. It was whoever got out in front, just don't let him leave the dust. And so that happened. Brad got me going out to the desert. I stayed in his dust the whole race and um, just gave Lauren a clean truck. Uh, we lost a little bit of time, um, but, uh, you know, I knew Lauren would do what he did in the rocks and, and make it happen. And just can't say enough about our amazing team, the whole four performance crew and uh, Optima Batteries. Little tires, these things are just absurd. In the desert, in the rocks, in the sand, it doesn't matter. And uh, this truck is, like Lauren said, the capabilities. And uh, it's an honor to share a seat with this man. And these co-drivers are just next level. And we just, we got an amazing crew around us. And uh, it just feels good. Well, uh, when it comes to the Ford Bronco, the situation, you were a part of it this morning. Any added pressure but that the Bronco Raptor presentation this morning? Nah, not at all. I mean, you know, we're just us, man. We just be us. That's just what it is. And that's, uh, you know, I don't I didn't even think about that. I just got up and talked. So, um, but, what, you know, you asked about the desert. There's one thing I should tell you. I think Eric and I looked at the sky about 45 more times this year than last year. The desert is rough. And what I mean is you'll be going good, ripping, ripping. There's a big one. And you just go, boom, boom, right? And, and it happened quite a bit and he had to he had to pull me back because we knew we had to get Lauren a good car but it's intense out there those trophy trucks and the rest of the the trucks racing have really beat the desert up but um yeah it was it was epic and I'm just grateful grateful to be up here well I think the name of this team is pretty much self-explanatory do you think they're having fun what really congratulations guys nice job to both of you actually all four of you nice job yeah, thank you so much, everybody. And thank you, everybody, for coming out, all the fans and spectators. You're what make this special. We're super grateful and, and humbled and honored to be a part of the, of the Ford Bronco, you know, the heritage and everything, you know, being reborn out here and inspired by Ultra Four and King of the Hammer. So. Well, just, you know, I'm going to give Vaughn the opportunity to have the last word. Thank you all so much for coming out. <laughs> I just said that. Nice job, guys. <laughs> Well, thank you, Scott, and huge congratulations to the Funhaver Off-Road team, Lauren Healy and Vaughn Gittin, Jr., on a just-to-time fourth overall and unofficially first in class. Throwing out some swag for the fans. What a great day of racing for the four-wheel parts every man challenge. We've been out here for a couple weeks having a ball for the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. And there is Cody Young coming on. He'll yeah. be in town here very soon. That's great to see that Cody Young's back up and running again. He was running in physical second place and fighting Jeremy Jones for the lead for a long time earlier today. Then he had breakages just after he left the Rock Trials. So it's great to see that he's back up and running. And I can tell you that we've had another finisher here in Hammertown. Crossing the line in 11th place and 7th in class, it's rookie Jay Schwab. 
And did we talk about Troy Digby? We did. Okay, I missed that one. I may have said it. There's a Trent Fab car, it looks like. That could be Ryan Taylor, possibly, with Team Indiana. Number 53, last year's national championship in the Ultra 4 USA. There's Ryan Webb with Kryptonite Customs, at 717. Picking his way through these rock trails. Uh, these rocks don't get any easier, Miles. We do keep the finish line open till 6 p.m. tonight. We're trying to get awards squared away for right around that four o'clock block hour. And the cutoff for the second lap was at 1 p.m. this afternoon. Yeah, so nobody else can go out for lap number two. Well, that time has been and gone. And we already have a great many cars out there on course at the moment. Let's not forget 153 cars left the line earlier today. And look at that great shot out of Emerson Ridge. We have a drag race. Who's going to be able to pinch you off going into the single line desert area? They're cruising at, you know, 80 plus, maybe up to 100 miles an hour on some of these cars. And the dust is thick. The wind's blowing a little bit. Coming out of the east as Cody Young is coming on into Hammertown. I see the Rock Rage Racing team up here up front rooting on one of their teammates. They'll be racing with us tomorrow as well. Cody Young driving the Miller Pro chassis. And we saw him physically second today, running strong. But hey, he had issues. He adapted and overcame. And that's what we do here for the four wheel parts, every man challenge. As a checkered flag comes out, he makes it through the Bronco Arch. It is indeed, Mars. In fact, for a, a split second, he did take the physical lead. And then Jeremy Jones closed the door. Took it right back. Oh, here we go. Is that Jesse Oliver, possibly? Yes, that is Jesse Oliver, the 45-17. Bummer. So out there on Emerson Ridge, Jesse Oliver's out of the car. Hood is off. Helmet's on the ground. Tough, tough break for Jesse Oliver. Another true four-wheel parts, everyman challenge competitor. Does a lot of the wrenching by himself in his garage. There's a Jimmy's chassis, it looked like. Oh, there's Fast Eddie out there checking him out, making sure everybody's safe and sound. Yeah, just getting them off the racing line, making sure they stay safe. And again, it takes so many volunteers. I just said Fast Eddie out there. He uh, helps with the NorCal Rock crew. He's been here for over a month helping us here out, getting everything set up. We've got over 200 volunteers. It takes an army to put this huge event on. So thank you to each and every one of those for making this possible. And we've got volunteers from around the world. We've got volunteers from the UK and from Australia and from so many other parts. And yeah. if you want the greatest seat in the house here at King of the Hammers, why not sign up for our volunteers program? It's been great to meet some of those competitors. And there's Buddy Carlton making it through. And still, it looks like we've got another car waking its way in towards Hammertown. Who's this, Miles? That is the 4812 of Jacob Pacheco coming on into Hammertown. Now, I think Jacob had some issues out on track. He was running very strong earlier today, right up the field. So it'd be interesting, but let's not forget everybody who finishes this race, they all have a story. They have the story about how they got to Hammers. Then they have the story about the actual race itself. As you said before, mate, it takes an army. It's absolutely amazing, but it sounds like Scott Rain has another competitor up on stage. Scott, take it away, buddy. Thanks a lot, Miles. And dare I say, we got the the fastest brothers in off-road racing up here. You guys have won so many races, so many championships. Brad, Roger Lovell, second overall, I'm sorry, second in class, seventh overall, one hell of a way to, I'm gonna talk to him first. <laughs> one hell of a way to spend an afternoon, huh? Oh yeah, that, what a day. Uh, you know, we pushed these Broncos harder this year than we did last year, no doubt. That was, that was a sprint race from the very start. Back and forth with Vaughn all day. I think the farthest we were apart was maybe one or two minutes the entire day. 
and the pack. How many times did he make you work today? He, when I say work, I mean get your butt out of the truck. You know, I, I did spend a good bit of time out of the truck, and it wasn't, but it wasn't just for me. It was getting other competitors out of the way, and you know, you keep the course moving, you're going to have a faster race too. So yeah, I worked hard, but we both worked hard, and Brad did a great job out there driving. It's what it is. Well, I'm looking at both of you, and. I don't know what it is. The last couple of years, you haven't like like he's not well groomed and like he used to be. And the short course days, but Brad, uh, congratulations, man! Uh, second year in this Bronco, and you guys are still showing how we get around this course. Yeah, thank you, Scott. We knew it was going to be tough uh, facing off against Vaughn and, and Lauren out there, and uh, Vaughn got the jump on me going into turn one. We got him back about a mile later, and we led the whole way right up until we had to hit pit two for a tire change. That let Lauren get by right on the, the last stint there. And then we both had flats uh, one time after that. But that gave the jump to get out there. And uh, it's a great competition. Those guys are really quick. And congrats to our Ford Performance teammates for taking first. And I love great competition. I just wish we came out one better, Scott. Well, it tells you something right now when I, we just had the uh, Vaughn and Lauren up here smiling just like you guys are, are right now. And that tells you a little bit. But here's the thing that amazes me. It's getting to a point, this race in particular, is getting to the point where if you get a flat tire, your day's almost done. It's a sprint race. you got to re almost rely on the fact that your competitors get a flat. Yeah, it's absolutely a sprint race. You know, uh, 35, 40 miles out, coming through pit one, Vaughn was 15 seconds behind us. And then going through midway through the rocks, I hear he's a minute behind us. So it's been, uh, it's been very competitive, and I do love that competition. That's what we're here for. Uh, big shout out to AMS Oil and our whole Amsoil team out here, they've been behind us for almost 20 years now, Scott. And there's so many people out here on our team, uh, out there in the pits that did a hell of a job for us, did a great job for us prepping stuff all week so we can get out there and pre-run. And so big thanks to all you guys, Level Racing Team, Fire Guys, thank you. Uh, also, BF Goodrich Tires, we've never raced on anything but BF Goodrich Tires out here. Those things do great. Super rugged. I hit stuff so hard, I smashed my elbow into the into the door and everything. Uh, the method wheels hold, holding up great. Fox shocks, you know, they have us really drilled down on the type of shock we can use here, just a monotube shock, and it's amazing what Fox has got working on that uh, in, in the truck here. It's it's phenomenal how these Broncos work in the desert. So super happy to be up here representing our team, AMS Oil, Ford Performance, and, and Ford Bronco, and happy to be here with you, Roger. Once again, second in class, seventh overall, not bad day. I, I couldn't be prouder, and the fact that Brad and I have been doing this as brothers forever is just, it's a family for us, and I love it. I love it. Well, one, the last thing I'll mention is the fact you know your mom is watching you right now. So congratulations to both of you, and she's watching you. I know. I know. Thank you, Scott. The Level Brothers, second in class, seventh overall. Miles. Well, thanks, Scott. Yeah, what a great showing by the Broncos. We'll see what happens. And speaking about the Curry Enterprise stock class, there's Amber Turner. She uh, has been cruising strong. She started as a volunteer. Now she's racing with us. We have Checkpoint Dolly out there on course, helping everything uh, roll smooth. But Amber Turner and that little samurai that could, still running strong. Yeah, these trials are tough. These trials are really tough. We're going to try and do it in a uh, Suzuki Samurai, that is for sure. So great to see her still moving out there. She works for the three-time king, Randy Slauson, uh, uh, with Bomber Fabrication. Does a lot of welding and fabricating during the week. And then she has some fun with the Samurai. So we'll see how Randy can do tomorrow. But it sounds like while we wait for a little more racing action to come to us, we're going to take a quick, quick break and be right back after this. Built for those who answer the call. This is the all-new, get-it-done, Nitto Recon Grappler. A true all-terrain for the job site or the campsite. Recon Grappler stands out as the new standard for all-terrain light truck tires. True all-terrain tire for everything in between. So 
it's decided. We'll park even deeper into parking spaces so people think they're open. Surprise! <laughs> Can't hear you, Jerry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, can we get a system where when someone's bike is in the shop, then we could borrow someone else's? No. Or you can get a quote with America's number one motorcycle insurer and maybe save some money while you're at it. All in favor of that. There's a lot of buttons and knobs in here. Chase, number 23, it's 2023, this championship's yours. Let's show these guys what's up. Easy, boys, it's not over yet. Big dog still gotta eat. <laughs> Whatever you say, big dog. <laughs> Seriously? These fools think I'm fried? They know the deal. years of off-road racing dominance. Proprietary patented race technology. Proudly made in the USA. Unparalleled customer service and support. The choice of champions. King Shocks. The leader in off-road shock technology. Welcome back, world, to the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. We are racing here during the four-wheel parts. Every man challenge, we see Kimberly Sparrow out on course. But it sounds like Scott has another competitor up on the stage. Scott, take it away, buddy. Thanks, Miles. Mr. Rigby. <laughs> Troy Digby. Troy Digby. Here's the deal. Dirt All Digby. that. Oh, Dirt Digby. There we go. Dirty. Okay, here's the deal. Second in class, more importantly, top finishing rookie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, big old smile on that face, as dirty as you are, dusty as you are, big old smile on that face. As he looks in the mirror, he just looked in the mirror. You want to take a moment, kind of shoot your hair a little bit or uh, no? You know. <laughs> what was the afternoon like? Um, we hauled ass. I mean, we were, we were flying. We were, we made it through the desert. We almost got out of the desert and the exhaust fell off. And then uh, I don't know, we ran out of gas coming into main pit. So luckily we coasted in and they got, we could barely get the car to get, you know, get ready to get the gas in there. And, uh, and, uh, and then, yeah, we went back out. The rocks were good. We nerfed a couple of people. Uh, that felt cool. Um, and uh, yeah, we didn't get hung up one time. So you didn't make him. You didn't. Get, he didn't get out of the car at all. Well, and so we got we got in a little traffic jam in Sledge, and that was a good time for him to go ahead and get out. And in case we got the winch ready, and it would have been quicker just to winch and get through safely and not break. And that's what we did. And then he hopped right back in, and then we booked it, booked it out of there. So I, ha I have to say that you're the top finishing rookie. If I'm looking at your co-driver, and he's been. Rem He's been reminding me, okay, don't forget about that sponsor, don't forget about this sponsor. He's whispering in his ear. Oh, no, 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 no. So I, I have to say that that's your MVP. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, he keeps me in line for sure. We'll talk about the uh, your fans, your fa you know, family, your friends that are right here, and the support you've gotten from them as yeah. well as everybody in the side of your car. Yeah, everybody here has uh, all my buddies from back home, from Louisiana, Texas, North Carolina, Colorado. Everybody, everywhere. They're all here. We all met here and, you know, a bunch of strangers helped fuel us and everything. So, 
you know, we couldn't have done it with them, without them, for sure. Do you need any antifreeze or any coolant before you pull off the stage? Uh, it'll roll. It's downhill. <laughs> it's downhill. We'll make it. They told me they're completely out of coolant, so it's like, that's why I had to ask. Yeah, but it, was, it was pegged. The, it was, <laughs> the water tip was pegged at 250 for the, I don't know, 15 miles. We didn't, we started slowing down a little bit, but we knew, we knew we had to finish, but we knew we didn't want to lose position, so we went back down about 40. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, guys, congratulations. Uh, more importantly, finishers yeah. of the Everyman uh, Challenge. Uh, nice family. job, man. Yeah. Yeah, so I got some sponsors I got to thank. Let's see, I got it on my phone. You know, smart, smart guy. So we got Outlaw Off-Road. We got Mickey Thompson Tires, not a single flat. Uh, Ultimate Nine, they've been, they've been great. Um, Yukon Gear and Axel, we're running their lockers and their gears and their hubs and the drive sl slugs and all kinds of parts. KMC wheels, we were on some, we're on some hardcore forged wheels, and uh, my buddy Luke right here helped us get those, so that was cool. Um, rock crawler suspension, I mean, we made it. You know, it's still attached. We we finished. We didn't have a problem. Tyree lights. I mean, look at all these awesome lights. You know that they hooked us up with, and you know we didn't need them during the race, luckily. But free running, uh, we used the heck out of them. And then we got oh, that's it. That's it. I gotta thank the rookie program too. They're awesome. So uh, I got nothing else, man. <laughs> nice job, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Miles, that was a fun interview. Well, thank you, Scott. And yeah, congratulations, Troy Digby. And I believe he's going to get that rookie, the highest rookie finisher for the four-wheel parts, every man challenge. We'll see how it all shakes up as we switch back to Emerson Ridge. Fantastic shots here, Miles. And I think we've got two cars about to come into shot there, or whether that might be. No, we did have two cars. It, it started with two. Yeah. Now, when you come out of those rock trails, you get out onto the Emerson Ridge here. Long, open lake bed. You start putting your foot down. And what as, as you put your foot down, you start to hear all the noises, all the bangs and the rattles. You're looking at your gauges. And what a great day of racing it has been. Let's give a huge shout out to Can-Am, Ford, Bronco, Monster Energy, Optima Batteries, Nitto Tires, Progressive Insurance, Toyo Tires, Four Wheel Parts, Griffin Race Radiators, Amsoil, Tribe 16, CA Technology, Spider Tracks, KMC Wheels, Laser Nut, PCI Race Radios, SDHQ with the Rookie Program, Curry Enterprises, Brannock Motorsports, Yukon Gear and Axle, Holly EFI, King Shocks, VP, Warren Factor 55. So please support who supports the sport. Without all those amazing marketing partners, we would not be racing here today during the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. And we are racing right now during the four-wheel parts, every man challenge. Looks like that's Carrie Allison on course, but it sounds like Scott's got another one. Take it away, Scott. <laughs> I just busted him just a second ago. They're in here taking selfies. For real. Of each other. They're, uh, hey, guys. Uh, Congratulations, Jay. One hell of a race. Um, not a bad rookie program you got going here. Nope. Second in class, uh, in, in the rookie class. But uh, talk about the race course. The race course was fun. The desert was fast, you know, and uh, the rocks, they were all right. It wasn't too bad. Kind of a little messed up up there in Jackhammer. But uh, yeah, I heard sledge was jammed, so we just took Jack and then bombs away. That side hill was a little sketchy, but. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, because I go. Z turns was fun. I like going down that. I want to see people go up it though. Oh, going up would be challenging. Um, I don't know. It was fun. Turkey was fun. I got to pass one of the guys I'm pitting with right through Turkey on the first lap, so that was exciting. Um, yeah, loved it. I'm looking at the co-driver like I normally do, and he's like, you know what? Enough of this talking. Give me the hell out of the car. I want a beer. <laughs> he wants to do it again. Well, uh, talk about the the. Uh, Family members out here, your friends, uh, the companies behind you, uh, they got you here. Um, talk about these smiling people. Yeah, absolutely. So my co-driver, David, here, his whole family has just been a ton of support and everything. And then just all these friends and family. Uh, I call them family, you know, the race family, right? Everybody that I come out to races with, you know, we, we don't really hang out a whole lot. But, like, when we come to races, we're always together. So the race family, right? Um, and then Warrior Built Foundation. <coughs> Can't thank those guys enough. They're just amazing. 
uh, they came on board and just fully supported me with this and everything. And then uh, Yokohama Tires, they, they have been just truly amazing with this uh, whole experience. Um, it, it really made it as far as I'm concerned. It was, especially being a rookie, you know, we're just kind of small people here. We're just, I'm a hobbyist at best, you know, I just happen to have a bomber car and everything. And, you know, auto off road, you know, I started that when my dog passed away. and. You know, that's kind of the backstory of all that. And just, yeah, it's, this is kind of my therapy, you know. It's like what Warrior Built does, you know, for veterans and everything. You know, they look after each other and get people out um, and help out. So, and they've helped me out tremendously. So I can't, again, can't thank them enough. You know, Yukon Gear and Axle too. We abused these gears and these axles all day and they held up so thank you yukon definitely appreciate all the support you guys have given us uh got rigid and prp those guys have been nothing but awesome um definitely appreciate them uh helping us out when we needed a few items here and there um you know so five rights brewing i got a whole bunch of beer sitting at my camp i can't wait to get back there and crack a cold one um Thanks, RJ. I definitely always appreciate your support. Um, one of the best Northwest breweries around. So, and he started out just like me, just a hobbyist, you know. And then he started a company and just kind of ran with it. So, it's kind of building, building dreams and following them, right? So, well, but here's the deal: you're about to get mobbed by a whole bunch of friends, family, and crew. I want you to smile more. I want you to be excited. I want you to be freaking happy because you pull, you two guys pulled off something. Your whole crew pulled off something that a lot of rookies don't. You finished the foil parts every man challenge. Nice job, man. It was awesome. No, I'm super excited. Couldn't do it without these guys. So, yeah, seriously, thank, thanks everybody that's had my back. I, I truly appreciate it. It's been a hell of a journey. Well, Miles, I tried real hard to get him to get excited. But it just didn't happen. I need a beer. Yeah. Who's got a beer? Yeah, give me a beer. Miles, take it back, bud. All right, thank you, Scott. And congratulations, Jay Schwab, another finisher for the Four Wheel Parts Every Man Challenge. That's the 4583, it looked like, of, I'm usually better than this, Eddie Oliver. <laughs> and we've had another finisher and across the line. Look at King's Veto, a huge oh, traffic wow. jam. That's what, <laughs> that is a traffic jam. Uh, there's a parking lot there on the, the 105. Yeah, it's always difficult to know what to do in such a situation. Do you sit tight or do you try and go round? I'm really oh, bad at queuing. That's Schaefer. That's John Schaefer. He's a, been a 4600 Curry Enterprise stock class machine for a long time. He did not be able to make it, so he put that in the Warren booth to have them kind of show it off. And then uh, Sergio, his co-driver's out here, he said, why don't you go out and have a little fun with my race truck? It's got a little bit of life left in it. So uh, it's out there running strong. There's number 44 of Josh Bocci. In the KMC Turkey Claw. So we'll have Bocci in, the, in Hammertown here in just a little bit with Havoc Racing. It looks like Peter Doolin out on Emerson Ridge with that Gen Wright Jeep pushing strong, racing for cystic fibrosis, trying to bring awareness to that. And I think that's anti roller, isn't it? Might be wrong. Is that bomber number one? That's forty-eight thirteen of Rory Ramoro. Ah, but it is a bomber. It, you got it that is right. a bomber. I got that right. I saw the yellow flashes there. I thought it might be uh, Anthony. And there is the four-wheel parts car. 4600 Curry Enterprises stock class. And we cut back to the bottom of Chocolate Thunder and heading up into Idle Issues. Oh, there's Sean and Brian McNamara talking about the four wheel parts everyman challenge. There they are, the everyman out there pushing strong. I can't remember which brother, but one of the brothers is going to be riding with Brent Gagabear tomorrow in the big race in their four-wheel parts machine. They've been racing this Cherokee for a long time and they are true competitors 
in the Curry Enterprise Stock Class. There's the 680 of Colin Horn Hornock. He's up in Jackhammer. Not much movement going on. We're up at the King's Veto where we saw the traffic jam. See some of the stock class cars still moving through. There are a couple bypasses in the Curry Enterprise stock class they're able to use. But it sounds like Scott Rain's got another competitor for the four wheel parts every man challenge. Take it away, buddy. Thanks, Miles and uh, Cody Young. That was probably the best indication what kind of crew you have. They shoved your keister up onto the stage. Uh, eighth in class, 12th overall, ain't nothing to sneeze at from what I understand. You were running up towards the front there for a while and had issues. But uh, man, what a great way to spend an afternoon, huh? Oh yeah, no, it was amazing. We uh, were running good. I think we were physically second, right behind Jeremy Jones, maybe ahead of him on correct time at once. but. Uh, got down to the back lake, lake bed and uh, lost the front driving line, took out our coolant line, uh, brakes, everything. And uh, yeah, we pulled off, overheated, pulled off and changed the drive line, put, tried to fix up the coolant lines and put all the water we had in the radiator and got us another five miles until we overheated again. Then uh, waved down some other competitors. Thanks to those guys, they threw us some water and Topped the radiator back off and purged it and got all the air out and kept going and got us another five, 10 miles and then did it all over again. Um, and then finished the rest of this section on low range because we didn't have brakes. And and yeah, we never gave up and we made it to the end, man. Well, that's pretty much what the four wheel parts every man challenge is all about. You guys lived it right to the epitome. Um, talk about some of the fans and uh, your family and friends here uh, that are helping out as well as your crew and all the companies involved. Yeah. No, definitely got to thank my wife and uh, my uh, my parents uh, for helping me out, you know, and, and the whole crew, Rock Rage crew. Um, got to thank uh, Jeff Ginter, you know, builds a, an awesome motor. Uh, we abused this thing today, so I'm sure it's going to need some work. But, um, you know, uh, Chris at Maximum Off-Road Transmissions, uh, Ryan with AccuTune Off-Road, you know, he, he's done a lot for me. Uh, he spent hours and hours uh, in his trailer tuning our shocks, trying to get them just right. Um, and there's, you know, there's a, a ton of other guys. Renegade uh, Race Fuel, and I can't even think right now. Yokohama Tire, they helped me out this year a lot. Uh, thanks to Paul, the whole crew, for everything they've done for us. Uh, we raced on Yokohamas for the past couple years. Last year we made a, a change right before, but got on them back this year, and we we're happy with them. We had uh, one flat the whole race. So, you know, thanks to everybody involved. Well, nice job, Cody. Time to go re grab some of those beers back in the pit area and celebrate with your family and your friends and your crew. Uh, nice job, and uh, welcome to the podium one more time. Thank you. I got to thank this guy right here, <laughs> my right-hand man, dude. He, he uh, If it wasn't for him, we might not be at this finish line tonight. So, Thank you, guys. Very welcome, buddy. Nice job. Right there is the representation of the special bond between driver and his co-driver. So nice job to these guys right here. Miles? Well, thank you, Scott. Jim, what a great race we have. There's Brian Tremp out on Emerson Ridge, plugging away. Yeah, it's been a fantastic race today here at the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. And that there is car number... Th oh, that's, that's another the, Bronco. No, that's, that's another Bronco. That is not the Bronco that's I was Rance, expecting. That's if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's the 431. Oh, I was expecting that to be Bailey Cole. For I a did moment. the same thing. So John <laughs> Rance and that Bronco still pushing strong. They've been building that this season. Sean Rance's dad's been racing with us for a very long time. John Rance raced UTVs for a while, but Lauren Healy linked them up with Ford Performance and got a Bronco. Back to Brian Trimp, and somebody's flying on the lake bed. That looked like a, a Bronco, so that could have been Bailey Cole. Yes, it is. So Bailey Cole is a flying on Emerson Ridge. The number 13. Mitch Thorpe riding shotgun with him from Australia. And back to John Rance in the KMC Turkey Claw. Switching back and forth. Yeah, it's great to see John Rance getting the recognition he deserves. Let's not forget Sean Rance has the OG 
Bronco that we've seen racing out here for so many years. And we're just looking at our tracker right now just to see if John Rance is on his first lap or his second lap because if he's on his second lap there's Josh Boxy. No, it looks like John Rance is actually still on his first lap. Okay. Thanks for the update, Jim. And it sounds like Scott Rain's got another one. Scott, take it away, buddy. Yeah, Miles, and this guy knows exactly how to celebrate. Jumps out of the car, jumps on top of the car, puts his fist in the air, smiling co-driver. Going to give me a big old greasy hug because they're both... Oh, man, you guys are a mess. Yes, we are. <laughs> And I like what he did to, did to his car. He's already thanked his wife. Sticker on the car. That's <laughs> uh, right. one hell of an afternoon, man. Yes, so if people don't know, the last time I raced King of the Hammers was 2017 in a stock class vehicle. We won King of the Hammers. Ben Burroughs and I decided to sell the car because we couldn't afford to move up. So I went sprint car racing. My really? wife and kids decided they wanted to, they bugged me to do this, right? Really? Yes, they were on me. They didn't like the sprint car stuff, so they oh. wanted to come back. So, it's too dangerous. No, no. They like, they grew up, my kids grew up doing this. It's our passion. This was my 50th birthday. I turned 50 December 29th. This is my birthday present to myself. I love my wife, my kids, my friends, crew members, everybody that put this together. I could not have done it without them. Mike, <laughs> my crow driver, believe it or not, I only met him a month ago. <laughs> this is the first time we ever been in a car together was this week. We met twice before we got in the car and we came out and did this together and I could not have done it without him. Yeah. Big shout out to Henry and Ty. They did everything before we got here. When we got here, we got extra help. Before that, it was just the three of us doing it by ourselves. We have to thank Milestar Tires they're our first sponsors on this car. I ran into Martin. He said, let's do it. He wants me on the car. I want to be the tire sponsor. And I said, I want to do it. So I trusted Milestar. We had great luck with them. I appreciate everybody. Love my wife. Love my kids. Thank you, guys. Man, when I turned 50, I got shoved out of a plane. That's all my wife did for me. <laughs> no, you think I'm kidding. No, no, no. Mike. I'm telling you, I got to know the story behind this whole uh, one month ago thing. So, uh, they called me Dirty Mike, now you know why. Yeah. <laughs> I, wor I, wor I worked on a lot of the Trent cars. Special thank you to Derek Trent, Dave Schneider, building one of the safest, baddest cars out here. Got a phone call, Derek goes, hey, you want to ride in the car at the Hammers? I said, you know what, I've done some short course stuff, why not, I'd absolutely love to. Calls me back two days later and he goes, no, I'm serious, get your shit together, we're going to the Hammers. <laughs> Called up Jacob, drove out to his place, met his family. We clicked, thought, hey, why not? Came out here, we've had some teething issues, we worked through it as a team. Can't say thank you enough to all of the people that have come from across the country to help work on this car to get us where we're at today. Thank you guys very much. Well, I have a funny feeling there's a couple of, maybe a little sheds of a tear behind some of those dark sunglasses. This guy right here, you got, I'll start the fire suit, probably the cleanest guy I've seen up here on stage all day long. <laughs> you not so much, but man, Congratulations to both of you, and uh, kudos to this crew right here. You guys did it. Okay. One more thing, I apologize. I gotta get my sponsors in here because I'm horrible at it. Milestar, of course. Uh, Warren Winch, they helped us out. We broke a winch pre-running. They came through with one. Factory 55, Rosa 4x4 Outfitters, Raceline Wheels, Guts Racing, Alfaro's Custom Wiring, Rugged Radios, Adco Drive Lines. Couldn't do it without them. Thank you, guys. <laughs> also, a special shout out to Chris Ray for his help, navigating tips. That guy's awesome. We couldn't have done it without him as well. Also want to thank Dan 200 for having our back all week over at SDHQ. Through thick and thin, he had our back. Thanks, guys. Not at all. Your wife. I like, to thank my wife. Oh. I like to thank my wife and kids for everything, allowing me to come out here and do this. Oh, your balls are going to be busted when you get home. Wow. Guys, time to have some fun. Thank you. Miles. This is going to be a blast for this group right here. Nice job, guys. Thank you, Scott. As we see, that was Ryan Taylor coming into screen, coming close to Hammertown. 
Yeah, Miles, if we just have a quick rundown through our finishers so far in 14th position across the line in 10th in class is Jake Capaccio. We've just seen him on stage. In 13th and 9th in class is Kevin Condon. In 12th, in cla uh, 12th overall and 8th in class is Cody Young. In 11th in overall and 7th in class is Jay Schwab. And in 10th overall and 2nd in class is Troy Digby. 9th overall and 6th in class, Nicholas Allegri. In 8th overall and 5th in class is Brent Harrell. Unofficially 7th overall, 4th in class, Woody Rose. Then 6th overall and 3rd in class, last year's winner, Dan Fresh. 5th overall, 2nd in class, Brad Lovell. Then 4th overall and 1st in class, Lauren Healy. 3rd overall, 1st in class, Dwayne Gerritsen. And 2nd overall and 2nd in class, Scott Foley. And the overall unofficial winner, 1st in class, 1st overall, Jeremy Jones. Been a fantastic day of racing here in Hammertown. What a day. It's been amazing. Absolutely amazing, Jim. And look at the parking lot up at Kings Veto. Kings Veto is one of the toughest trails here at the Four Wheel Parts Every Man Challenge. And you can see how difficult it is just by the traffic jam of vehicles sitting there in front of us. Thank you again if you're just getting tuned back in. This is the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers powered by Optima Batteries. We are racing the four wheel parts every man challenge as we see speak, as we see Mick Henson still plugging away in his Toyota. That is Justin Reese's old truck. They've teamed up with Rusty Nail Racing. I believe that's the 4813 of Rory Romero. Back to Mick Henson. Oh, I love seeing these old Toyotas out on the track there. That Toyota has won the stock class race before here at King of the Hammers. Looks like it's coming back in. I'm not sure if it's completing its first lap. I believe it is, but that is Bailey Cole. On a mission. Look at that Look at the speed. floating through the desert. Now I'm going to step on out to my tracker. Now if you go to kingofthehammers.com forward slash live, you can find all the information, tracking and scoring, live as it happens. On screen is Sergio, the 4688, driving for John Schaefer. Great to see it still out here competing with us. That's nearly a word. There's Greg Johnson out on course, up in her problems. That Jimmy's 4x4 chassis. And let's not forget the course is open until 6 p.m. tonight. Then we have an allowance for adjusted time. So many races out there. 153 races left the line this morning from Hammertown, making their way into the desert for a 72-mile loop before heading into those fabled Hamel tri Hammers trails. 155 started, what a great race, but it sounds like Scott Rain has another one. Scott, take it away. <laughs> Thanks, Miles. And it's too bad the fans or even their family and, and that crew cannot hear what they're saying but amongst each other right now, real quietly. But uh, that just tells me you guys had way, way, way too much fun on the course today. Uh, Kevin, congratulations, man. Awesome way to uh, finish up a long day out on the lake bed. Thank you. Yeah, we uh, we had a we had our day cut out for us. We started in 82nd. Um, I'm not sure where we ended up, but uh, the last I heard, we were in eighth. Um, so yeah, we made top 10. Starting 82nd, we had a hard fought battle. Um, JT, my co-driver, pushed me. Man, he really got me to step outside of my comfort zones. Um, we stepped outside of the trail a couple times into the bushes, which uh, I hadn't done in the past. But after plowing a few bushes and passing about 30 guys, I, I realized that that was the way to go. So uh, JT, thank you, man. He, he pushed me and got us to the finish line, and we rolled the car. Actually, we made a bunch of passes, rolled the car, got it re uh, recovered, um, and then made it to the finish line, man. How many times did you make him get out of the car to? Uh take care of you? Uh, only twice. We, we only lost Yokohama. Um, Yokohama's been amazing. Paul and Bob Root, everyone at trackside. Uh, Yokohama's been great. We only lost one tire today. It was my fault. I got a little overzealous. Uh, when we saw a traffic jam, I popped a tire. Um, other than that, the, the tires hooked up great. We had an amazing day. The vision wheels were killer. Um, we only had to use the winch a couple times. Um, we made up plaque with uh, no winch, which I was stoked about, but we did winch twice. Uh, the worn winch was amazing. Uh, again, vision wheels were awesome. The rugged radios, all the communication was perfect. Um, Jimmy's 4x4. I wouldn't be here without Randy Rod. Randy Rod has taken care of me since the start. Uh, 
So, Brandy, thank you, man. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be your brother. So, love you big time, man. And love to Jimmy's crew. So, everyone knows that uh, I'm, I'm a diehard Jimmy's fan. So, I will be forever. And, and I really appreciate all your guys' help, especially all the crew, man. Uh, DJ, my pit crew, man. DJ, uh, we got DJ's dad out here, too. Um, my wife and kids at home. Uh, we have an amazing crew, man. Uh, thank you again. I had a blast, man. Would you do it again? Oh, yeah. It's our third year. First finish. So, yeah, I got it. Wait, wait. wait. Are, you, are you reading his eyes? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 4400 tomorrow, and uh, Kate, our friend Kate, is going to be debuting his uh, new car. So we'll be pitting for him and, and keep an eye out for the number seven, Kate Rod. Nice job, guys. Congratulations. Right on. Thanks, man. Miles, another fun interview. Absolutely. Thank you, Scott. Congratulations, Kevin Condon. It looks like that's the Garrett Martin out there on Emerson Ridge in his Jimmy's car, still plugging away for the four-wheel parts, every man challenge. We had three separate races going on all at the same time. Here's a stock class car for the 4600 Curry Enterprises stock class. Dwayne Garrett's in the unofficial winner for the 4500 Yukon Gear and Axle modified class. And Jeremy Jones, unofficial winner for the 4800 Brannock Motorsports Legends class. Don't forget to go to kingofthehammers.com to keep up everything going on this week. Go to racingtracks.com, live.ultra4racing.com for some live scoring. There's Sergio still plugging away up in her problems. Lots of action going on this week. It's been absolutely amazing, Jim. Yeah, it's been so good to be here at the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers. An awesome week of racing. It started with the motos. Then we went on to the desert racing. Then we had short course. And here we are now with these fantastic races. Yesterday it was the UTVs. Today it's the four wheel parts. Everyman Challenge. And tomorrow will be the Nitto Race of Kings powered by Ultima Batteries. But as the action continues here in Johnson Valley, California, we're going to head out for a short commercial break. No, we're going to actually head out to Scott Rain on the stage. Ah, you caught me. <laughs> so, Scott, take it away, buddy. <laughs> I don't know where to start, man. Your reaction getting out of that car for the first time in how many hours. Uh, but, uh, Ryan, nice job, man. Uh, 15th overall, 11th in class, unofficial. But, uh, yeah, um, you're the first one, I think, that, the, that your pit crew beat you up on stage, oh, man. Right. Look behind you. You surround them. I believe that. Well, this is Team Indiana, you know, and that's what we're – we're all big family. So without, I'll tell you what, without some of the guys helping me push through some of those rocks out there, we wouldn't even be here. It's awesome. We'll talk, talk more specifically about that whole, whole deal in the, the afternoon, actually. Okay, so uh, Brian Tramp, a good friend of ours, was in there and he, uh, he helped us push through, what was it? Uh, I don't know, a few spots, actually, because we were side by side. He pulled on and I pushed, he pushed. He ran me so hard one time. Corey said, come on, hit him hard, hit him hard, man. I thought, is there a back end of this car left on there? But we, we did good. It was a fun race. Uh, it's always so straining mentally, physically, you know. Like you just don't expect it. I think the first desert loop's going to be fun, and it was a blast. But, uh, man, we, we blew one tire, and that's only because the guy backed into us. So I am super stoked. These Yokohamas are awesome. And these Brannock shafts, they're in his car. I'm going to tell you, they took a beating. I mean a solid beating. There's so many spots out there that all four tires would lock up. And this thing, I just grind it, just flooring it, trying to get through there. And it pulled out, it'd pop out and go. And Corey would say, he'd get pretty excited because he wouldn't have to winch again. But how, many time, how many times did you make him get out? Ask him how many times you got out. That'd be Can you, one, two, three. <laughs> I don't want to tell you. Just enough. I don't want to tell you what he said because it was pretty vulgar, but... First time or last time? Yeah, every time. He was getting pretty mad at me. He was not happy. But it was definitely fun. We had a good time. Well, well what was it like? I mean, I've never... I haven't asked anybody this question yet, but your evening coming into an event like this and then the morning coming into the event like this, I mean, what was your mindset? So, I was honestly super nervous for the qualifier. I don't know why. I think it's just because you start one at a time. And once we got to here, man, my blood pressure was... Super calm, super happy to be going. You know, once you get in the car, I feel like everything kind of lets loose because all that preparation, we spent months. Corey came over my house, he lives two and a half hours away from me. So for him to come work with me, it's a lot. He put in a lot of hard work. That's a lot of man love. Yeah, 
Yeah. That's not why. It's going to make me cry. Cause... Eight. That's what this event is all about. <laughs> the four wheel parts every man challenge. Uh, you guys were challenged. You succeeded. You're up on stage. Hell, you finished the damn thing. And not many yeah. people can say that. So let's add something right there to say nothing of being the top 10. Yeah, for sure. This is the second time I finished. Last year was my first year. And uh, it's, it's, it's an emotional roller coaster for me. It's so much fun. And it's a long, long way to get here because we're from Indiana. You know, so we work hard. Well, you know what? Time to grab something cool to drink. Hopefully somebody brought something for them. Yeah. Uh, oh, there you go. Time to celebrate, guys. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Miles, they're celebrating out here on stage. You take it away back there in the booth, bud. Thank you, Scott. And you have Brannick Motorsports. That is the true 4800 Brannick Motorsports Legends class. Ryan Taylor and Corey Day did an amazing job. I know Stan the Man Haynes is down there super excited. This is the four wheel parts, every man challenge. That's Brent Dixon on screen. Plug it away. What a great run it's been. Thank you for everybody for staying tuned into the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optum the Batteries. We're gonna step away and take a quick break. We'll be right back to more action here in Hammertown. There's only one place to go to do your rig right, and that's at Four Wheel Parts. Now is the time for bigger tires and larger wheels. Now is the time to lift your Jeep at 4WP. There's only one place to go to do your rig right, and that's at Four Wheel Parts. Now is the time for bigger tires and larger wheels. Now is the time to lift your truck at 4WP. off-road technology and we bring to you the next step in user-controlled lighting. all through your afternoon uh, but what was it like up there on course uh course was actually a really awesome course had, had a lot of fun during the desert uh desert lap uh, we had a few little problems 
um, had to come into pit. We lost brakes for a little while. Um, and then uh, one of the knuckles, on our, or uh, one of the new joints on the uh, front dr drive line uh, came out of, one of the cups came out. So it has been a little time in uh, main pit, uh, but uh, we got that fixed thanks to all my crew. Uh, and uh, we took off on the desert course, uh, desert, or the, the rock course. Rock course is a bit brutal this year, but uh, had, a, had a great time with it. Uh, got caught behind some uh, lap, or some traffic out there that was uh, waiting going up Thor's Hammer. So we spent about an hour in Thor's Hammer. Uh, finally got through that. And then uh, after that, we, uh, we uh, pretty much cruised as fast as we could. We had a couple flat tires. Uh, one, yeah, still do, still do. <laughs> Same flat tire, we lost that on the desert course. Uh, so it's out there somewhere. Um, but uh, it, it was a great time. Well, I'm, I'm trying to think, I had to look down at this again. 13th in class, 17th overall. Not a bad afternoon, man. <laughs> Not a bad out at all. How many times did you make that guy get out of the car? Uh, we got, every time he got out, I got out, so. <laughs> Well, I got to tell you, the partnership between a driver and co-driver, that's the first time I've heard that all afternoon. So if he got out, you got out, not a bad, you know, that's a partnership, man. That's right. That's how we roll. Well, who helped you get here? Uh, well, first and foremost, uh, my, my whole family, my wife and daughter, who has been putting up with me being at the shop the whole time. Um, my son, Logan, he's always at the shop uh, uh, working on the car with me. My whole pit crew that that uh, comes down there, helps me work out, work it. And... Uh, you know, all of our sponsors, which I'll let uh, my co-driver name off because I'm always bad at forgetting them, uh, except Dirty Life right there. <laughs> uh, keeping us going all the time. Um, and we're actually, uh, we're actually in a, a borrowed car right now from uh, uh, Ryan Rockhold. So uh, I don't know if uh, any of you know the backstory, but this, this is originally Lauren Healy's car. And then uh, Daryl Gray, then uh, uh, Ryan Rockhold, and then I borrowed it from him to race the race. Well, if it originated with Lauren Healy, not a bad way to borrow. Not a bad way to borrow at all. <laughs> not at all. Well, congratulations, guys. Uh, hell of an afternoon. Time to celebrate, get something cold to drink, and uh, have a fun afternoon and evening. Nice yeah, job, guys. We have a uh, co-driver. Yeah, we want to thank our sponsors. Warren Winches. Luckily, we didn't have to use it today, but when we do, they're always on point. PCI Radios, Baja Designs, Optima and Odyssey Batteries, depending on which car we're in. Uh, good All Racing. My family, my daughters, my wife, all our pit crew killed it today as they do every day. Good all racing is a family. We do it together and uh, we always come out on top. So thank you all. Nice job, guys. Congratulations. It's time to celebrate. Well, if you want pictures, get your butts up here. Miles, Jim, back to you guys in the booth. Okay, thank you very much, Scott. And still the winners keep crossing the line here at the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. Let's not forget, we've got three classes racing, racing today. The 4800 4, Brannock Motorsports Legends class, the 4500 Yukon Gear and Axle Modified class, and of course the 4600 Curry Enterprises Stock class. Yeah, so now, we had three different races going on all at the same time. That Obviously, they're scored separately, uh, but they're all racing on the same course. And look who's in the KMC Turkey Claw, Jim. Absolutely. This is Bailey Cole. This is a young man who grew up driving in this class. He used to come out here on a battered old Toyota. And right now, he's driving this amazing Ford Bronco and bringing it home. And, I, been, and we know... A, he we know he's had problems, we know he's suffered from adversity, we know he's had breakages, but that's what this class is all about. It's about bringing it to the finish. The never give up attitude by everybody out here at King of the Hammers. That Bronco's gonna come on in. Bailey Cole and that Yukon gear and axle machine still pushing strong towards that finish line. Jack, all the way from Australia, came over and helped crew chief. I've been hanging out with him for the last five weeks or so so great and here's another great competitor in the curdy enterprise stock class that is mick henson and the rusty nail 46 19 that car has won out here at king of the hammers in prior years still pushing strong leaf springs all the way around Oh, I love these old Toyotas. Do you remember when Cody Addington was out here in his old Toyota? I'm still a fan of his from back then. What was that, 2012 or no, 13? No, 2013. He came out here on the first year I did, 2013. 
And we lined up. We lined up together on the same EMC race, and did so well that Dave let him in the big race as well. So great to see. Looks like that's Peter Doolin on the screen. But up next, Scott Rain has another one. Hey, these guys jumped the gun, man. They're back there on stage and they come up on the stage and they're already refreshing themselves. <laughs> hey, uh, Steve, what a hell of a way, a way to spend. I keep saying it's spend an afternoon and you guys did one great job. In fact, um, right now 12th in class and 16th overall. Um, hey, anything in the top 20 in a race like this with this many cars, pretty damn good. Nice, yeah. Um, Real happy with the finish. Uh, we had a rough week. Uh, DNF qualifying, had to start the race 85th. Uh, passed a lot of cars in the desert. I think we got around, I don't know, 60 or 70 cars in the desert and came in pits like round eight, but uh, made up some rock trails clean. Uh, strategically went up uh, sledge and winched right off the bat, got up it and uh, ended up having a uh, relay failure for cooling fans and uh, overheated the car and had to pull the dash apart and do some hard wiring and that took some time and uh, then uh, happened again actually lost the fans again and took the dash apart uh, but yeah, we brought it in well I'm looking at your code driver like I always do when you guys come up here on the stage and he's looking kind of tired eyes are a little glassy but I being from Wisconsin, I love your choice of refreshments, man. But uh, how many times did it make you get out of the car? I think John had to get out of the car <laughs> two, three times. It wasn't bad, but uh, not one flat tire this whole race. Uh, I don't know, I guess not. What you can't see is the co-driver when I asked that question. What are those deals? But uh, yeah. I John answered the question on that one. Uh, but yeah, these middle tires, they held, I mean, amazing. I really thought that after punishing them and like, oh man, we hit that hard and not one flat. Uh, dirty life wheels stayed round, um, held together. Um, our motor guy, Revolution Racing Engines, this thing just, it purred the whole time. I mean, it, it from what we put it through, it really held together and then, uh, we had a rebuild trans, uh, maximum uh, uh, racing transmissions, changed the valve body on the old trans. Temperatures were amazing. I don't think it went over 150 all day. Uh, yeah, uh, torque fluids, just amazing. You know, temperatures stayed where they needed to be as long as the cooling fans were running. Um, then the steel nuts car, this is, I think, the best car in the desert. It, you could drive this car one-handed, drinking a cola, <laughs> 85 miles an hour through the big stuff, and it just stays straight, and it's an amazing car. Well, real quick, talk about all these people are standing right here cheering you on uh, uh, today, but I'm sure behind you the whole way. So, definitely could not have done it without our racing crew. Uh, my wife, of course, April there. Uh, we got Brett with Climax Fab, the Cooks, top-notch fuelers. I mean, couldn't ask for any better. Yogi, Richard, Larry, uh, right? I know there's a bunch out there. I, you know, if I forget your name, say your name. Uh, sorry. Uh, well, you know, I'm not gonna put you on spot anymore. Get up on stage here. Let's. How old? Really? 43. 40? 40. 43? Yep. Oh, uh, oh, yeah? All right. Well, happy birthday, man. 43. Uh, family crew, come up here for pictures real quick. It's time to celebrate. Miles, Jim, back to you. Well, thank you, Scott. Another great competitor here in the Four Wheel Parts Every Man Challenge. It's been a great day of racing as we keep it going with the 4558 of Billy McAllister out there at Dirty Love. So Billy's still pushing strong. I believe he's in the 4500 Yukon gear and axle modified class. There's the 4887. Paul Tyler. That's a fun one. That used to be a 4500 car. They've converted it to a 4800 Brannock Motorsports Legends class car, and it's a right-hand drive. The steering wheel is on the wrong side of the, the vehicle there, Jim. 
he was out here when I was, I believe it was Thanksgiving, he was out here tooling around. We got a chat with him, and he went running a few trails. Did you, you say the, the steering wheel was on the wrong side? The, I believe the you, incorrect side. No, 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 sir. I think if I believe it is literally on the right side. <laughs> uh, I, I love back and forth with you, buddy. <laughs> For those who don't realize that uh, vehicles in the UK and in Australia, New Zealand and Japan all have the steering wheel on the right-hand side of the car, so therefore literally the right side of the vehicle. I mean, I like giving you a hard time. You're technically right, but yep. I'm technically right. Nope. But that doesn't matter who we are at the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge 2023, coming live from Johnson Valley, California. I believe we, that's Tracon Johnston that we were just seeing back to Paul Tyler. Now I saw this vehicle here working its way through Hammertown. Is this a one lapper? I'm guessing it is. I would assume so. I think they're part of the 4500 Yukon gear and axle modified class here in the four wheel parts everyman challenge. It's been an amazing week and it is not over yet. The 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. This is the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge, and tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., the biggest off-road race in the world, the Nitto Race of Kings. But it sounds like Scott's got another one. Scott, it's your show, buddy. Yeah, you think I'm new at this. I had the microphone. Well, anyways, buddy, congratulations, man. Uh, I had to write it down, if you didn't know, 18th overall, top 20 with all those cars out there, and 16th in class, 16th in class, yeah, so, all the, all the, he'll tell me, yeah. I feel like I'm in the middle of a conversation with a couple of buddies, man, like, uh, talk about the day. Uh, it started off as a rough day. We qualified well, started ninth uh, overall, uh, went into the desert. My talent tank went a little dry. We flopped it on the lid. <laughs> so luckily, got got pulled back over. Uh, had a competitor. I wished I knew his car number. Great guy stopped, spent time, got us back on our wheels. Uh, we rolled. Everything after that, man, was pretty smooth. Uh, can't complain. Well, I got, I got to tell you, of all everybody that's been up here and finished so far, your co-driver has got the best hair. We well, only had to get out of the car. You only had to get out of the car twice today, once because I rolled him over. <laughs> well, you must have like like made him run up the mountain and back down or something because he looked worse for wear. But you know what? You guys are like, it, there's a special bond between your driver and co-driver. I say that a lot, and uh, something tells me for him to be sitting there still. After what you're seeing happened out there, kudos to him. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, talk about some of these people right here that have been cheering you on. Oh, we got our whole pit crew there. Uh, most of us are from South Carolina, some from Georgia. We got some from California. Uh, and we come all the way out from uh, Greenville, South Carolina to make this trip every year. This is our seventh year racing. Uh, seventh year racing, the best finish we've had so far. So. Well, I got one last question for you. You're in NASCAR country. What do you tell your neighbors or co-workers or friends that you guys do? Because this is a long way away from NASCAR. You, you say Ultra 4 and they go, what is that? <laughs> They're like, go-kart race? No. So uh, we tell them it's a cross between rock crawling and desert racing, kind of merged together. So. And they just look at you like you're nuts and walk away. <laughs> That's about it. Well, you know what, congratulations. Uh, one hell of a race. And now it's going to make the drive back a whole lot shorter. Nice job. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Scott. It looks like Bailey Cole is coming into town in his Ford Bronco unofficial third spot in the Curry Enterprise stock class as he crosses the Bronco Arch. He had a few issues, but he battled. He made it happen, and they are here in Hammertown. Again, unofficial third spot in the Curry Enterprise stock class. What a great run by Mr. Bailey Cole as we switch to Kimberly Sparrow and her husband Hunter Sparrow out there in the 4800 Brack Brannick Motorsports Legends class up in Jack. Yeah, and it looks like we've got a complete repeat of the stock class from last year. Last year it was Vaughn Brad Bailey, and this year it is Lauren Brad Bailey. <laughs> but so it looks like it's going to be an unofficial Bronco sweep once again in the Curry Enterprise stock class. What a great run by all the Ford Performance athletes out there. 
He raced that that same Bronco during the Toyo Tire Desert Challenge presented by Monster Energy last weekend. So great to see him be able to just keep on pushing that Bronco through its paces. I believe that's going to be Mick Hitson with Rusty Nail Racing. Still trying to crawl through Jack North. Love seeing, this is kind of where the hammers all started back with the 10 benders taking all these old Toyotas up these hammer trails. And that's how this whole thing came to life. With a handshake on a napkin, 13 buddies came out here to see who could run all the hammer trails in one day. And that was J.R. Reynolds back in 2007. This is the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers. This is the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. It's been an amazing race today. I'm Jim Marsden. I'm in the booth with Miles Hasselquist, but it's time for me to pass over to Sweeter Tones. Emmy Hall, welcome to the booth. Thanks, Jim. Always a pleasure working with you. I have so much fun up here on stage with you. I'll see you a little bit later on, and we're going to party tomorrow. It's going to be a great day. Emmy, welcome to the booth. Miles, you're going to have a way more fun with me, I guarantee it. Yeah, buddy. I like it. We're going to have some fun up here. Looks like Victor Bunez up in Dirty Love. So I saw that we had our first finisher across the line at like 12.30 today. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. That was Jeremy Jones in the 4800 Brannock Motorsports Legends class. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, we thought that those UTVs were going to take a while. We thought these guys were going to take a while, and people are just coming in, setting a really fast pace here at the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. I love it, I love it, I love it. It's a great time. It sounds like Tiffany Stone is joining the team once again. She's on stage. Tiffany, take it away. A big congratulations to you, Ryan. Looking at this, overall 19th. 14 in your class. You just threw your steering wheel at me. Walk me through your day. I'm done with that steering wheel for the day. For the week. For the week. How was it out there? Oh, it was rough. Rough. Hard. They don't call it the hardest one day race for nothing. Uh, man, it's just, we're just glad to get here and get out of this car. And I got to pee. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I know you've got a bunch of people to thank. Who do you like to thank? Oh, uh, I like to thank my wife. Um, Good Lord above, Liquid Molly, um, Kenda Tire, great tires. We had one flat and it was my fault. Raceline Wheels, uh, Gill Industries, SGS Transfer Case, Maximum Transmission. There's so many, uh, I'll probably forget some. Um, Vivid Lights, Vivid Lumen, sorry. Um, and all my crew, uh, we couldn't have done it without them. We had a, uh, yeah, fab school, loaned us some plate to fix some cars after qualifying. I had a fuel pump go down. So, yeah, I mean, we've been scrambling the whole week. All right. Well, nice job. You finished uh, the big race for you today. I'm going to give you back your steering wheel so you can uh, continue to drive off. We did have Pro Eagle Jack. We used it. We got a brand new jack from them. We used it one time. The pit crew got to use it. So, uh, pretty awesome. Awesome. Well, one more round of applause. Here's your steering wheel so you can uh, head out, Ryan. And nice job back up to you guys. Thank you, Tiffany. Congratulations, Ryan Webb. We saw Jeremy Purick just a minute ago, then Victor Bunez still out on course, and there's another Curry Enterprise stock class car up in her problems. <laughs> that sounds really bad. He's just all up in her problems, man. It's like that, a little that gossip happen, guy. I love the names of these trails. I know that the first person up gets to name those trails. Uh, I think it's hilarious. Everyone names them like they're a 12-year-old boy, but it just makes it what makes what makes Hammer special. Absolutely. That was Jesse Bennett we were watching just a moment ago, and now we switch to the 4405 of Mike Costello. That's an old 4400 car. All you got to do is go back to a single shock and a 37-inch DOT tire and come out here racing in the 4800 Brannock Motorsports Legends class. Thanks again to Can-Am, Ford, Bronco, Monster Energy, Optima Batteries, Nitto, Progressive Insurance, Toyo Tires, Four Wheel Parts, and Griffin Race Radiators. And speaking about all of our amazing marketing partners, we're gonna throw it to a commercial break and we'll be right back after this. This is the old, get it done, Nitto Recon Grappler. 
a trio all trained for the job site or the campsite. Recon Grappler stands out as the new standard for all trained light truck tires. A true all terrain tire with everything in between. So it's decided. We'll park even deeper into parking spaces so people think they're open. Surprise! <laughs> Can't hear you, Jerry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, can we get a system where when someone's bike is in the shop, then we could borrow someone else's? No. no. Or you can get a quote with America's number one motorcycle insurer and maybe save some money while you're at it. All in favor of that. There's a lot of buttons and knobs in here. Chase, number 23, it's 2023, this championship's yours. Let's show these guys what's up. Easy, boys, it's not over yet. Big dog still gotta eat. <laughs> Whatever you say, big dog. Seriously? These fools think I'm fried? They know the deal. of off-road racing dominance. Proprietary patented race technology. Proudly made in the USA. Unparalleled customer service and support. The choice of champions. King Shocks. The leader in off-road shock technology. Welcome back, world, to the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. We are racing for the four-wheel parts everyman challenge, and there is Brian Trimp, the 896, coming into the KMC Turkey Claws. We'll have him in Hammertown in the next 10 minutes or so. So I'm looking at the tracker here, Miles, and it looks like uh, number 13, Bailey Cole, is our next finisher across the line here. Uh, looks When I zoom out on the tracker, there sure are a lot of yellow dots all out in, still in the rock, still with a lot of ways to go. So Tiffany, who do you got out there for us? Bailey, nice job. Unofficial third in your class. I know it's a dusty one out there. Walk me through what happened and who would you like to thank? Oh, we were doing really good early in the day. We were right behind Brad getting into Turkey Claw, and then we got into some traffic just on that sand hill. I think everybody kind of had to deal with that, though. Ended up coming through the pits about three minutes behind him on corrected time. Chased him down through the rocks a little bit. Uh, me and Lauren were battling, trying to pass lap traffic. And I kind of turned, and I got my tire wedged in a rock, and I busted up a CV. Had to winch three or four times getting up out of there, but that was the last time we had to use our worn winch and kept on moving after that, so it was good. You've got a big smile on your face. I know you and Mitch, and he's obviously got to keep you calm out there. What is it like to be out there, to know that you're running this, to finish King of the Hammers, and then, of course, be on the stage and having this chat? Oh, uh, we were singing songs all day, having a great time. It was, it was a great day of racing. Who would you like to thank today? Oh, so many amazing partners. We have Fo uh, Fox, for sure. Um, Ford Performance, obviously, with the awesome Bronco, four-wheel parts, Yokohama, Sparco, 74 weld maximum, Yukon gear and axle, of course, spider tracks, so many amazing partners. Awesome. Well, another big round of applause for Bailey Cole. Bailey, nice job out there. 
Back up to you guys. Thank you, Tiffany, and a huge shout out, Bailey Cole. It looks like it's going to be a Bronco sweep for the Curry Enterprise stock class. What a great, great run by everybody out there, a true everyman challenge. You know, this is my favorite race, Miles, because I love the fact that it's just folks that are building this stuff in the desert, you get some, or building this stuff in their garage, you get some wackadoo things out there. Car vehicles that are powered by propane. You've got stock classes where you just think there is no way that thing is going to defy physics. And then it goes out there and it does just that. And we had one competitor in the Dana Spicer electrified EV class, Keith Silva, but they had a little bit of issues today. Tough, tough break for them. Yeah. Really was looking forward to seeing them do well. Yeah, they were having a lot of... Ele uh funnily, electrical gremlins. Uh, they said that they had downgraded them to electrical lawn gnomes, but it sounds like uh, they've been stuck up at Remote Pit 1 for quite some time, which is really a giant bummer. I was really rooting for those guys. Uh, I know that Kyle Seglin, Boston Kyle, was out there helping those guys. He had run his forerunner that he'd put a battery in uh, last year and the year before that here at the Hammers. And um, yeah, so Keith and his wife, Melissa, they had a lot of help, they had a lot of support. But they did build that vehicle in their garage over 10 months. They spent a lot of their own money. Keith is a experienced rock crawler. That rig looked pretty good. So let's hope that they can make it back next year or make it into some short course racing. Absolutely, it was well on screen is the 1717 of Johnny Valdez. Still pushing strong, trying to make their way along the four wheel parts every man challenge we are still trying to do awards here in about a half hour but remember we got to dot our i's and cross our t's before we hand out some of that laser nut hardware it's you. look at the crowd right here in front of the jumbotron so much great action yet to come. We'll be lighting up that Tribe 16 fire pit here in just a little bit. Sounds like we have Tiffany Stone up on the stage. Tiffany, take it away. Thank you so much, Miles. Peter, I just told you some great news. Third in class, and it is your rookie season. Awesome. This is amazing. I love everything about this. Peter, just a moment of your time. Don't cry, because if you cry, I'm going to cry. But walk me through your day, and who would you like to thank? Um, okay, I want to thank I want to thank Mickey Thompson Tires, uh, Raceline Wheels, Factor 55, Curry Axles. I want to thank Jen Wright for doing an amazing job. I want to thank every one of the Jen Wright crew who are out here for the last week helping us get ready. I want to thank Jeff Perkins here, my co-dog to my right, who does an amazing job. Uh, I want to thank everybody who came out today, all the spectators. We could see you all in all those canyons cheering us on. It was amazing, the energy, so thank you very much. But most importantly, I want to thank my wife, Anjoy, for letting me be out here and do all this crazy stuff. And, you know, it's like, you know, we want to come out here as part of this community and do the right thing for, the, for our land and for our open spaces. And, you know, I saw that today. I saw a lot of people respecting other racers. I saw, yeah, you know, we pulled some people off of uh, who were straddled on rocks. We helped them out. Uh, we help winch a guy back out of sledge. I mean, you got to participate. You can't just be out here just being the asshole going forward. You got to be part of the community, and I think that's what we wanted to be today. So I hope um, I hope the King of the Hangers team uh, are proud of what we've done today. Well, I know each and every one out here is proud of you. Everybody behind you is proud of you. A big congratulations one more time. Thank you. And back up to you guys in the booth. Thank you, Tiffany. What a great run. And Peter Doolin is uh, bringing awareness to cystic fibrosis. So a great shout out to him for putting that on. And another finisher for the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. Again, thanks to everybody for tuning in to the 2023 Progressive Insurance King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. I am Miles Hasquist, and I'm going to sign off for the, e the evening and give it up to Ian Johnson. Thanks, everybody, for everything. And I loved listening to Peter. He was so excited there getting his third in class. And uh, third in class here as a rookie. Here at the uh, Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. We're just getting our booth reset here. Ian is here, Ian, with all of his wonderful, glorious standing up hair. You look like you're super excited. You've just rolled out of you. 
can just roll out of bed with hair like that and you look excited. I often do. Like that's sometimes <laughs> how that works. So, all right. Thank you, Emmy. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Miles, for welcoming me back. But I'm hearing right now that we have uh, Tiffany on stage with another finisher from this year's Four Wheel Parts Every Man Challenge. So take it away, Tiff. Thank you so much, Ian. Over here with Chad, Jesse. Chad, 17th overall in your class. You finished King of the Hammers. How are you feeling and who would you like to thank? I'm feeling amazing. This is uh, our fourth try at it in different cars, and this is the first time completing it. Um, just real quick, I, I couldn't do it without my co-driver, like all my family and friends, which are standing right down there. My wife, we put a lot of hours and time into this car, and then we had to try to figure out how to make a big car go fast. So we, uh, we felt really good about the race. We were doing really good, and then Things fell apart, but that's hammers, and we've done it enough times to know you have to fight to get here. So we, uh, three tires later, a borrowed tire, driving on a flat for 15 miles to get to a pit, uh, having cars run over the hood, we made it. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, a big congratulations. Nice job to you. One more round of applause for the 747. And back up to Emmy and Ian. All right, thank you so much, Tiffany. Now I'm looking at the tracker. We still have a plenty of folks out there in the rocks, and unfortunately, some of them have got that little red dot on the, underneath their number, which means that they are not moving. But remember, folks at home, that tracker pings every two minutes, and sometimes it doesn't ping at the same time for all racers. So you need to take this tracker not as gospel, but more as a guide. Now, Tiffany, we got Tiffany working pretty hard today because we've got cars that are just coming up onto our podium one right after another. And it looks like next we've got number 37 coming up to the podium. That is Dustin Sexton. Dustin and Tiffany, let's see what you got for us. Thank you so much, Emmy. I want to chat with you, young man. 17th in class. You've got the, uh, a real co-dog right here for you. I, and can I uh, get... So I can't hear This is all. your true co-dog. Oh, hi, Indy. And Indy's out right now. So walk me through your day. How are you feeling right now for King of the Hammer? Good. We had, we had a good race. Um, you know, our Yukon gears held up really well. We had a slight issue with an alternator belt popped off, so that oh, kicked I us back a good like half a an hour. Um, and uh, we did really good. We had a little bit of issue with the winch as well. That stopped working when we got to sledge. Guy was upside down. We were going to winch him back over, but couldn't do it because I didn't have a working winch. So we turned around, went up jack, and uh, finished up. So that was our day. Would you like to thank anybody? Yeah, I'd like to thank all my pit crew, LC, D-Lo, Johnny B, and the twins from Fire Twins. They did a great job. They all fueled us and took care of us all day long. I'd um, like to thank my sponsors, Yukon Gear and Axle. Mickey Thompson Tires did a great job for us this year. Um, Raceline Wheels and, of course, Sexton Off-Road. Awesome. One more round of applause for the number 37 of Dustin Sexton. And back up to you, Emmy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Looks like we've got the uh, 4572 up there trying to make his way up Chocolate Thunder. Bouncing a little bit on those rocks, backing up to take a different line. Oh, buddy, don't back up too far. It's always so scary when you see them backing up because you think, wow, the, are they still going to be able to steer? Looks like he's trying to get around there to the right and digging himself a hole. That is Victor Bunis trying to get up Chocolate Thunder here in the four-wheel parts every man challenge. That's where we've got all of these great garage builds out here doing the exact same course that we'll have at the 4400 race tomorrow starting at 8 a.m. Well, almost the exact same course. You have to run one extra lap in those rocks, which is always nice and fun. Sorry, I had to b uh, bail on you in the boot there. I, mean, I had to go out and say hi to, hi to Dustin out there in his car. Him and I go wheeling uh, 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 throughout the year all the time, so it's nice to see him finishing. One cool thing about that uh, car he's racing is that car used to always have Bronco skins on it. So he was like a, a Bronco guy before being a Bronco guy was cool. So <laughs> and, and Dustin spends his time rebuilding and restoring Broncos back in his shop, so it's super cool to see him out here having fun finishing off getting another finish here in Johnson Valley at the Everyman Challenge. Now Ian have you had time to spend uh, spend any time in that Bronco Raptor? 
Uh, no, I haven't spent any time in the Bronco Raptor. I, I did own a Bronco for a little bit. I bought a brand new Bronco and then immediately sold it. Um, <laughs> it's it's nothing against the Bronco. It's just I'm not meant to own new cars. So <laughs> that's just how that works. But I will say this. I think the Bronco is definitely an amazing vehicle. I think it's being put to its paces out here and it proves that it's been a great truck to watch out in the rocks. And it's super cool to see all three of our Broncos in that stock class coming back in and getting back on the podiums one, yeah, two, three, which is super cool. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, we took a stock Bronco Raptor through part of her problem when we did the press launch for it. When they said we were going to do that, I was like, there is no way a stock, just stock right off the showroom floor is going to do it. And then I had to eat my words because, man, did that thing haul butt through that trail. It was pretty darn cool. Yeah, I'm more of an old iron guy myself. I think the newest vehicle I own is maybe a 2007. <laughs> and so I have a bad habit of cutting cars in half to making them feel work better in my mind. So I'm more of a more of that old school guy. But right now, we still have a lot of drivers out on course right and now and we can see them battling the sun as it goes down here in johnson valley for the four-wheel parts every man challenge yeah i mean driving into the sun is just so frightening because you just really can't see anything and you're just trying to go off of your pre-run you can only have one hand on the steering wheel and trying to block that sun and relying on your co-driver to see stuff that you just cannot I always tell people, you know, that the vehicle will find its own way through the rocks, and it really will sometimes. But here we can see some of the, uh, this is some of the carnage that we're seeing in Sledge, and we've kind of been keeping a track, keeping track of a lot of this all day, and I really think this is going to be the story for tomorrow as well. This is what happens to our drivers when they're at the back of the pack. Here we're seeing a driver coming up through the bottom. This top part of Sledge is actually not that hard. You know, we've renamed this the Nacho Dip Sledgehammer, so you can see what we have here at the front. He's like in like a little bit of maybe some mild queso mm -hmm. and then these two in the back <laughs> that's like a, a picante maybe picante salsa nacho dip back there yeah. and then i think this one that pulled up in the very back that's like a mild yeah that mild 889 salsa. that is uh that is rob inglis and uh those guys are from alberta canada they call themselves the a team well that's a yeah, yeah but it's eh yeah no it's canada eh? and it, you're kind of forcing that it's got to oh. just be like a, a. yeah a. Yeah, like, how's it going, eh? How's it going, eh? Good, eh? <laughs> yeah, I can do that, because I can, I can do that, because I'm from there, so I can, it just comes naturally for me. So here we go, as we're watching more and more drivers make their way through this course. This has been a race of attrition here all day. You know, we had three classes leave the line today, 4,800. Brannock Motorsports Legends class, the 4500 Yukon Gear and Axle Modified class. And there's one, there's a Samurai that I've been looking for all day. That is the 468, and I believe that's Amber Turner. That is Amber Turner. It's good to see her still moving around. Looks like they've gotten that winch out more than once. Yeah, I think, I think Amber was expecting to do that, but it's super nice to see her still out there. But right now, we're going to throw it out to Tiffany on the main stage with another finisher here at our Four Wheel Parts Every Man Challenge. Thank you so much, Ian. Congratulations to you. Looking at this, 19th in class for you, Brian. How are you feeling today? And you got your little boy up here. Ew. This is Connor. This is our third time racing here. Um, second time finishing. Super proud of my team. Got everybody down there. Got. Uh, I'd like to thank Mickey Thompson, Yukon, Jeep Armory, Metro Fab, Miller Welding Supplies, King Shocks, Optima Vision, HP Tuners, Try lights, Off-Road Anonymous, Warn, which we use the winch quite a bit because we rolled today. Um, Edmund Speed Shop, Dynamic, uh, and Iron Man Off-Road. I'd like to thank Colin Morlock, my uh, co-driver, and my whole crew, you know, my dad, my wife, uh, Mike Larson, uh, Ray, Craig, Tom, and everybody else here that made it here. Brian Viersma, the owner of Jeep Armory, helped me put this car together. and. Very happy to be up here. Thank you. Awesome. And just a quick question for you, little guy. How do you feel that uh, being up here? Are you a little shy? Can I just get a high five then? Let me know you're a little happy. Oh, no. I got denied the high five. It's okay, though. A big round of applause for the 896. And back up to you guys in the booth. 
congratulations, guys. Now, there's there's a racer who's ready for the finish. Did you see? You had the sponsors all written out there on the sheet of paper. Knew uh, exactly who to thank and when to thank them, which is awesome to see. But here we are. So now we're back down into the KMC Turkey Claw. This is the last section of rocks that these drivers have to go through before they head all the way back into Hammertown. And this is 4811. That is Paul Kraut in the 4800 Legends class. There we go. So another Legends car finishing. Once again, for those of you uh, questioning what classes, so we have 4800 Legends class. So those are, sometimes they're older uh, 4400 cars, but they're limited to a single shock per corner, uh, but they can have full hydraulic steering, but they are running a 37 inch tall tire. And what you're watching right now is I believe a stock class or a modified class car. I can't, I saw the number and it disappeared. I'm looking at, I believe that is a modified class car. So the modified class cars, they can have two shocks per corner. Both of those classes have unlimited engine options, so a whole bunch of horsepower. But the modified cars can run a coilover and a bypass, but they do have to have a mechanical steering linkage. So that means they still have to retain some type of steering gear or a steering rack on the vehicle that connects the steering wheel down to the tires and wheels. And then, of course, out there, you got the stock class, which is kind of what it sounds like. you got stock cars that have been modified with off-the-shelf parts. Uh, very, very similar to what you'd see driving out on the road uh, or out on the trails if someone just wanted to build something to go wheel. And this may actually, no, this is not a stock class car. I can tell by the front shock on it. But those are those cars that you're going to see on the trail, just like a weekend wheeler, everyday driver. And we we're looking at Amber Turner's uh, Suzuki not too long ago. And it's a perfect example of a stock class car. Yeah, and look at how long that front hood in there is. It's like he's just driving a box. Just like well, all Jeeps are like driving shoeboxes down the road, and that's just awesome. I have many Jeeps. They all have the same shape, square. square. That's how they roll. Yep. All right, speaking of modified, there's a modified of 4532, and that would be, uh, that's a section of trail that we looked at. Basically, they come up, come back down Chocolate Thunder, rather. They turn left, go up idle issues, and then they're over into this set section of rocks right here. This is her problem. And that's the 45. That is the 45 at 32 truck, Steve Crawford. That, that's Steve Crawford out there making a win. There's a shot from out in King's Vito. We just got action all over this race course as we have many drivers coming in and finishing this race. Great day of racing. As of right now, these guys have been in this car for seven and a half hours. Yeah, you know, when you consider that the leaders came in here in, what, four and a half hours? These guys are taking almost twice as long, and we still have many, many people out there in the rocks. They might be out there all night, depending on what's going on. I think that our recovery folks are going to be really, really busy this evening. Yeah, I, I just hope they don't have to recover the same way as we saw a UTV being recovered this morning via helicopter. So Yes, that uh, was Robbie Gordon. Well, my question was, did you think the reason it was looping around town was it trying to pick up the VCPs out in the desert? I, I mean, that's what I would do. And I'd be like, what? I got all my VCPs. I don't know what your problem is. <laughs> <laughs> got, all my, uh, got all my VCPs. I, I think I did well. So that's the next question. Next year, will we see someone pick up, pick up their car up from a helicopter right out of, uh, at a hammer town? But right now, we are out in Chocolate Thunder. This is the 4810. That is Garrett Humston and Seth Carpenter. They are from Lincoln, Nebraska coming out a long way from the mid coast making their way out here to beautiful Johnson Valley California and the four wheel parts EMC race All right, Emmy, while we sit here and, and talk about this and watch and wait for our next finisher, you know, we've been kind of looking around all, all week, and I'm asking every announcer the same question. You don't have to answer today, but by tomorrow, you need to have three different winners picked. You get to pick a solid axle winner, an IFS winner, and a wild card. Ooh. So you got to pick those now. Okay. And then we'll see who gets it right. I actually... I'm going to change one of my winners because I had a different person picked and I'm going to make a change up for tomorrow. But okay, so and then we're, we're putting it all up and if, we, if we're right, we win a million dollars? No. Oh, you're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> 
Now that was the 4465 uh, vehicle going through Turkey Claw, but they are on their first lap. So they still need to get through Turkey Claw, get here into town, and then get out to the rock. So those guys are pretty darn late. Yeah, that is a long, long day. Now there may be a cutoff time for them before they're allowed to go out on lap two. So they may have already elapsed past that. And if that's the case, they will not be uh, heading out on the lap two. I'm not sure. I'll have to check with Race Ops on that little piece of information. But normally there is a cutoff time for that first lap. Yeah, in uh, yesterday that cutoff time was one o'clock. I would say that the cutoff time was probably two or three. But again, um, if Race Ops can chime in, we would love that information. That's a long day to be on lap one. Being it's a there long for seven day. And a half hours. I know you have to wonder what happened to them. But you know, there's uh, there are a few vehicles still on lap one. Uh, four six six three is still up on lap one, but they are not moving. Uh, also, 4635 is on lap one and not moving. And then, unfortunately, my favorite, uh, the 2412, the electric vehicle, those guys are also not moving and had, did not complete their first lap. Yeah, that's such a shame. I, I absolutely love that car. I was super excited to see it out here last year, sort of working its way through it, and they were able to finish that first lap last year. I know their goal was to get an actual both laps under their belt this year, but unfortunately... Yeah, well, last like year that was Kyle Seglin in the four. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So this year is the is the test 10 so test it's a, 10 yes. it's the old it's the old uh, chevrolet that they have thrown a tesla um performance battery and, and motor in all right as we watch this little jeep comanche modified work its way through and here we go now we have another one of our this might either be a mod looks like a modified based on that uh shock package up front it's hard to tell from this angle yep 45 4583, I believe, and that is Eddie Oliver and Justin Le Leons. All right, and now we're back down into the Can-Am Chocolate Thunder, where they come. That's Rob Boardway as he comes down that section. In this Legends class car. You know, and I have to wonder how many people look at a vehicle that looks like that and they just think, man, what a hunk of junk. And you just got to say, yeah, but you should see what this baby can do. <laughs> I've got trail rigs that look worse than that. I don't think I'd ever call that a hunk of junk. <laughs> I wouldn't either, but, you know, <laughs> people who don't know. <laughs> All right, so we're watching lots of action here. Once again, we are in the middle of our race today. This is the four-wheel parts every man challenge i'd like to give a shout out to a bunch of our vendors that we have set up here in hammertown we got can-am ford bronco you can go over and see the bronco the bronco r i think they had a raptor on display over there as well optima batteries set up here in hammertown of course all the guys from nitto tires it's always fun to go over and talk to my friends over there progressive insurance toyo tires four-wheel parts and griffin radiators who i believe unless i'm mistaken is the oldest supporting sponsor here at king of the hammers i remember when it was just the griffin king of the hammers a lot i remember easier, that too it was a lot easier to remember when there was just one sponsor yeah we didn't need to have streams <laughs> of paper to tell us who we have to give shout outs to out there in the hammer town as well we also have amsoil the guys from tribe 16 ca technologies i just came back from the spider tracks booth that's where i was before i came up here to see thomas and the boys looking at the new u joint they've designed which is really interesting to see that technology hopefully it'll pop down into some trail rigs laser nut PCI Race Radios, SDHQ, who sponsored our rookie program. That stands for Super Duty Headquarters yes, for anyone who's does. not from the area. Curry Enterprises, Brannock Motorsports, Yukon Gear and Axle, who is the three sponsors of the race that we're watching today. Holly EFI sponsored the shootout the other night, which was always fun to see. King Shocks, VP Racing Fuels, Warren and Factor 55. You know, those guys definitely helping us out. Not only supporting the sport, like Miles likes to say, but also all those Warren winches on those recovery vehicles, keeping all of our competitors safe. Yeah, they have certainly been getting a workout today. I'm sure those recovery guys have been moving really quickly because once a vehicle breaks down in these rocks, it can cause a bottleneck pretty darn quickly. So those recovery guys are really hustling out there, using those Warren winches to get the vehicles cleared so that our competitors can continue racing safely and quickly. Yeah, we also got to thank the Terra Crew ARB Onyx Off-Road, which is the official mapping partner of King of the Hammers. They are. I don't know if you know this, but in the Onyx Off-Road app, 
Hammertown is actually on the app. Yeah, I with know. With all the streets and everyone on it, which is great. Yeah, and you didn't even have to do anything. All you had to do was refresh your maps, and then it showed up. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and that's also a good thing to have on your phone, especially tomorrow if you've planned to go out and watch the race. You know, be smart out there. You know, this is a live race course. Don't get on the race course. And the best way to not get on the race course is to know where the race course is. Yep. So having an app like Onyx Off-Road, definitely helpful. Recaro Seats, got them in a bunch of my buggies. Super comfy, keeping all of our competitors safe. MP, I'm a VW guy at heart, so I still got a bunch of MP parts kicking around my shop. I just ordered some the other day for my uh, my little VW bug. Pro Eagle Jacks, Baja Vita Beef Jerky, which unfortunately I need to say, I'm looking around the booth, I'm feeling a little light on my jerky up here, Baja Vita. Buggy Wick, ARB, SRT Off-Road, Share My Coach. I have to say this for Jim because he says it wrong. It's Dana Spicer Electrified. Just he says it wrong because okay. he's, he's British, you know. <laughs> XIL RC Cars, Action Sports Canopies, and probably one of my favorite sponsors right now, Nacho Lights. Just because I, I like saying that. Nacho Lights is amazing, although Jim says that wrong, too. He, he says, says Nacho. Nacho. He also he says, says Nacho. Empty Weird. Yeah. I fix that for him. He says, I can't remember how he says it, but he says it Britishly. It's, yeah, it's you know, those British guys have a different word for yeah. everything. That's how it works. They yeah. also spell things funny, too. No, that's terrible. That's, right. But anyway, so now... So that's, uh, we just wanted to give a quick shout out to everyone out there. And as my friend Miles would say, please make sure you support those that support the sport. So when you hear us talking about all those sponsors up here on the stage, those are the people that without them, there would be no King of the Hammers for you to come and watch. But right now we are watching this 4,500 modified car. This is kind of a cool little modified car. That's a Jeep Comanche based vehicle. Spot it from the bedsides from this far back. That's the 4506. Yeah. Who we got there? So if it And there we have the 1311 rig making his way up her problem, 1311, is driven by Rob Bordway and Eric Johnson, coming all the way from Gig Harbor, Washington. That's the home of the Deadliest Catch. Did you know that? That's is it really? Yes, at the old Gig oh, Harbor. I thought Deadliest Catch was up in well, Alaska. Well, yeah, but they don't live in Alaska. They just go up there to fish. They, right. They're all based out of that uh, Washington uh, state area. And here we are. Now, this says Jack, but I think that this is actually the top of Sledge, unless I'm mistaken. We've kind of been watching that all day today, and we've got some drivers out of the cars. We've seen a lot of bottlenecks on this particular trail. The good news is tomorrow, our 4,400 cars don't have to drive this twice, but they have to go up Jack one uh, day and up uh, Sledge uh, the other lap, I should say. So it's two different laps. But I think if you're at the back of the pack tomorrow, you're going to find some traffic on Sledgehammer when you get there. So it looks like uh, that car that was stopped is 4865. That is Don Radke and Steve Radke from Rad Donkey Racing. So those two drivers, driver and co-driver, look to be out of the vehicle. Hopefully they're just winching and not broken. All right, what we're watching right now, we're seeing uh, one of our cars. Oh, and here we are back at the Can-Am Chocolate Thunder Trail. This is the 4894. And while we watch them pluck their way down the trail, we're gonna throw it out. Tiffany Stone's out on the stage. She's got another one of our finishers for us here at the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. Thank you so much, Ian. Trent, congratulations, just asked you and you said you're worn out, but 39th in class, walk me through your day. Nice. Uh, well, today the desert got a little dusty right off the bat. None of us could see. It was bad, real bad. We decided to go left, stay out of the desert, and then we, uh, brake caliper came off the axle completely. It stayed inside the wheel, lost brakes, plugged the line. Lost the line. <laughs> Fuel line was leaking. We had a heck of a time. Put it all back together, left the caliper off, and just kept on going. Well, that's a feat in yourself with all those things that you said happened wrong, but you're still over here. You're still talking to me. Who would you like to thank for today? Well, first of all, I'd like to thank my wife, my family, and, uh, you know, TWC Racing, you, Colin Warren, Rugged Radios, uh, Vision Wheels, Excess Batteries, Stage 8, uh, Gatekeeper Off-Road, South Bay Driveline, L Rods, Mel Balmer, Schaefer's Oil, All Train Concept, Brannock Motorsports, All Tech, and last but not least, these are the tires I started on and the tires I finished on, no flats, Max's tires. 
Awesome, nice job. One more round of applause for the 4811 over here of Trent Roberts. And back to Emmy and Ian. Thanks, Tiffany. And as we jump into the action here, there is who we were talking about earlier. That is Amber Turner, Amber the Hammer, out there in her little Suzuki Samurai, running in that stock class. This is a crowd favorite and a personal favorite of mine. Oh, absolutely. You know, she was building this car up until the very last second, getting everything dialed in. Looks like she doesn't it, look like those front wheels are turning there, not, Ian. Looks it does like she not look lost. like, yeah, it does not look that, at least it doesn't look like that. No, oh, oh, there, there we go, go, there we go. Yeah, okay. she may have, but it looks like the front is kind of catching in and out. She may have a locker issue in the front or something. It's hard to speculate from here, but it certainly didn't look like, and this is always never a good time when you're chasing your co-driver down the trail. He's saying, let's go, follow me. <laughs> so, All right, uh, I think that is back to... That's back to... Back That's to Amber. Ba back to Amber the Hammer. So here we are, and we're watching her try to make her way up this trail. And she's, as you said before, I Emmy, mean, it looked like she had a little bit of trouble with that front not pulling, but it looked like at that last second before we cut away that there was a good chance and it started to pull now. Yeah, so here we've got a co-driver spotting a driver through, like, I mean, those are pretty giant rocks, but it's not a very difficult section. So, Ian, what do you think is going on here? I'm going to just take a wild guess and assume that there might be something broken in that car, and he just wants to get him through the trail. And we have another finisher coming through right there. We'll figure out who that is and get him up on stage. But there we go. Oh, it looks like Amber's made Yay! her way up. Yay! Go, go, Amber! Good job, Amber the Hammer. So I think the person that just came through is uh, someone who was just finishing their first lap. I don't believe that that is a, an official finisher. Oh, uh, they fooled me by waving the checkered flag. They I, probably fooled him as well. I think. I'm not 100% sure. It's tough to see uh, here on the tracker and with the numbers. So looks like we are going to go to a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we will be doing our awards here at the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. See you in a minute. Well, park even deeper in the parking spaces so people think they're open. Surprise. <laughs> Can't hear you, Jerry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, can we get a system where when someone's bike is in the shop, then we could borrow someone else's? No. Or you can get a quote with America's number one motorcycle insurer and maybe save some money while you're at it. All in favor of that. There's a lot of buttons and knobs in here. Introducing Nitto's all new Nomad Grappler crossover terrain. Built for the adventurous types, on road, or off. Nomad Grappler brings with it legendary Nitto toughness, while providing a smooth, forgiving ride for the path less traveled. It stands strong when the pavement ends. Number 23, it's 2023. This championship's yours. Let's show these guys what's up. Easy, boys. It's not over yet. Big dog still got to eat. <laughs> Whatever you say, big dog. Seriously? These fools think I'm fried? They know the deal. Over 25 years of off road racing dominance. Proprietary patented race technology. Proudly made in the USA. Unparalleled customer service and support. The choice of champions. King Shocks. The leader in off-road shock technology.
everybody. Welcome back to Johnson Valley. Here we are c calling the race for the four wheel parts every man challenge. We're watching these cars work their way through these rock trails. We've already had our finishers and right now we are just waiting for our official awards ceremony to start here on the main stage in Hammertown. I'm Ian Johnson and with me is Emmy. That's right, Emmy Hall. Emmy Thank Hall you very is here. much. I should have known that. Yes. No, I that's, apologize, Emmy. It's all good, buddy. It's all good. So Emmy's here with me in the booth, and we're just waiting to hear from the stage crew that the awards are set up. So if you're in Hammertown and you want to see your winners get handed out their laser nut racing hardware, get down to the main stage, and you'll see all the finishers from each class. Now we've had three classes on the course today. Yes, we have. We've had the legends. We've had the stock. I think the stock is my most is my favorite because they just don't look like they're going to do anything. And then they go out and they do it. And I love vehicles that surprise me. Yeah. And that, that is the Curry Enterprise stock class, the 4800 Brannock Motorsports Legends class, and then the Yukon Gear and Axle 4500 modified class. All very different vehicles, but they all tackled the course today and they we, i tackled there's some still tackling there, it right there now. are so many people still tackling it's crazy it's like an offensive line out there i mean look at this tracker just so many yellow dots sprinkled around so many of them have little red dots underneath them which means that they are not moving which just hurts my little heart because i want to see everybody be able to come through and complete this race you know and with the uh four wheel parts every man challenge a finish is almost as good as a win i talked to a lot of drivers this morning and i asked them what their goal was and they said our goal man is just to finish that's right and in our picture and picture there she is the i would say the the i'll say the woman the myth, the legend, that's Amber <laughs> Turner out there in that stock class Suzuki Samurai. She has just come down Chocolate Thunder, and that will be her going, I believe that's her going up her prop, or up idle issues, I should say. And then she'll go hang a left here and go up over the top. This is the qualifying course that we saw everybody, but it's great to see her out there still moving along. I don't think Amber has actually ever finished no, in she, the allotted time. No, no, no. She didn't finish last year. We were all pulling for her. I think she had an axle problem. I believe you're right, yeah, yes. And uh, I remember she was here in, in main pits, and everyone was just, come on, come on, you can do it. And it just wasn't her year, so hopefully she can get through now and uh, get out here and get across the finish line and through town. It'll be awesome to see her come across this finish line. When she does, I'll be waiting for her here in the May, at the main stage because, as I said before, it'd be great to see Amber bring that samurai home. It's great to see her. Amber's out working with Randy Slauson at Bomber Fab. You could see, you would expect her being a, with that kind of pedigree, possibly jump into a bomber car, but she said, no, I like my, I'm all about the Zook life. I'm just going to keep living that life. It's a hard life, but someone's got to <laughs> do it. Well, you know, she and her mom both competed in the Rebel Rally this past year in an Isuzu Vehi Cross. Yeah, I think she's got. Once you get sucked into that weird car yeah. life, it's 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 it becomes a uh, an addiction, not a choice. But what we're seeing right now is we got uh, this car. I can't. I didn't catch the number on it before it kicked out some dust there. So 44, 48, 19. So. We see 4819 heading up into, and I believe this is actually, I believe, now this could be Jack. So 4819, and we saw a broken down car in front of him with the hood up. And the question will be, are they at one of those pinch points that we've been paying attention to all day here during this Four Wheel Parts Every Man Challenge? Now 4819 is Jesse Lee. So he is up, he is, uh, this is his first ultra race. His first ultra four race was KOH in 2017. All right, so we're watching him make his way through the trail. We saw a little bit of traffic up there. Uh, the question would be, as we've talked about all day today, some of these rock trails in these hammers trails, some of them are nice and wide. Turkey Claw is an example of that. You can get three, four cars wide in there. Lots of different options on the rocks. Some other trails like Sledge and Jack, they're pinch points, spots that when someone is broken down, you cannot get around them. It's incredibly difficult. So I don't know if we're going to be looking at that right now at this particular part, but that is Jesse Lee. It looks like he is headed up and he's going to be trying to make his way around that car i cannot i cannot see who that is so but right now our friend pam hall is on the main stage and i believe we're about to start our award ceremony for the four wheel parts every man i 
I'm lying to all of you. I take that back completely. I'm going to dial that back. Not awards. It's just Pam wants to talk to somebody. Pam, who are you talking to? Why, thanks, Ian. Uh, I'm up here with Mr. Garrett Martin. Looks like you had one or uh, quite a day out there. Give us a little rundown of your run out there. The rocks were brutal. Uh, we lost our brakes, uh, started losing some of our steering. Our shock bolts are loose. We basically lived it in the last 30 miles. No tool. We lost our tools halfway in, lost our spare tire. It was a brutal day. Okay, so it was a rough day out there for you. I asked you when you came in what happened to you, your nose. Give us a, a little thing. What, what did you do to have the scrapes going on there? We took a G out pretty hard in the desert, and I think my helmet got it with my glasses on. But yeah, I didn't realize it till actually you just said something about it. <laughs> well, you'll see it. Everyone's seeing it at home right there, right now. Uh, give us a little shout out of who you would like to thank for getting you up here today, finishing this brutal race out there. Well, because I got in trouble last year. My family, he also wants to thank his family for letting us come out here for two weeks. Um, like to thank um, uh, my pit crew, um, people on my team, uh, Miller, um, Team Change Order, um, Chris, all the team. Well, awesome job for getting up here today. Finishing this race is a win in itself. Would you have to agree with that one? I do. Awesome. Well, thank you. You guys, let's give it up for Mr. Garrett Martin. All right, thank you, Pam, Garrett, Martin, and again here on screen, we've got Amber Heard. She's made it through idle issues. She's going to be going uh, through her problems here pretty soon. She's still got quite a way to go. She's got to get through most of those rocks, but if I know Amber, I know she does not quit. Well, the one good thing about it is the stock class does have a lot of bypasses for these rock trails, so they get to ra get around some of the trails uh, on the, uh, so if you look on the tracker and you see the little green lines, that's our stock class bypass. So she does still have a lot of uh, rock trails to get through, but she uh, could be in, honestly, in pretty good shape based on where she is right now. Especially, I think she's in better shape than she was in before in the past. Uh, but right now we are watching the 4689, and that is a 4689. That is. Brexton Glines and Caden Glines, so, uh, so related there. Another one of our stock class cars. So that looks like, based on the body on that, it looks like it's probably an, a Jeep LJ from the looks of it. Another great option for a stock class vehicle here. You know, they got such a great heritage out here in these hammer trails, these Jeeps. Nice long wheelbase on that, probably about 111 to 114 inches would be with their or sorry, I take that back. They'd be able to stretch it to maybe 109 inches. Now we're back on Amber Turner as she makes her way up her problem. Now, talk about a difference in wheelbase. Yeah. You could probably fit two Samurais on a Jeep LJ. <laughs> Look at how tiny that little wheelbase is. Now that makes her pretty nimble in the rocks, but what does that wheelbase mean for rock crawling? Well, when you're going uphill like that, it's somewhat unnerving. The one good thing that Amber has for her is she spent a lot of time. You know, you can never take away the seat time in a car. So look, here's another Zook out there right now. But I think this is actually a 4,500 Suzuki. This will be a modified version of, but. Yeah, you can tell that wheelbase right there on this one is much longer looks than a little what's going bit, on in Amber's. Yeah, looks a looks a little bit longer and possibly a different suspension setup. But you know, there's a whole herd of these Zooks out here and they were all hanging out together. You'd see Amber post up on social media, all the little Zooks, which was great because you see all these cars there. Because like you said, they're so nimble and they are, you know, they are great cars out here in the rocks. They're just not what I would think of when I want to say, man, I'm building a race car. Well, Go you know, find me a Suzuki. You know, I'm building a race car. You know what it is? A Suzuki? No, I it's a Mazda so. Miata. Uh, well, yeah, I have, you know, that's a different world. I have friends who have no, race No, it's got 27-inch tires and a lift and 538 gears. Oh, well, that's, see, I have friends <laughs> who have race car Maz Mazda <laughs> Miatas, not, not, uh, not jacked up Mazda Miatas, but yeah, that, I guess you could do that, a little Mazda Miata action. Yeah, we're planning for the Mint 400. They're uh, giving us a gambler class, so we'll We'll get a one lap at the Mint 400. Thank God, because I don't want to drive it more than 100 miles in the open desert. So let me ask you this. Does it have the mandatory gambler roof rack? No, it does not have the mandatory. <laughs> no, I've actually put a lot more money into this car than most gamblers. I think, I think that Gambler 500 should be given credit for bringing back the popularity of roof racks 
more than any other person. Oh, yeah. yeah. Every gambler car has a roof rack. All the roof rack companies should thank Gambler 500. <laughs> They've probably increased the sales of roof racks tenfold based on the thousands of people that show up to those uh, events out in Oregon. But, you know, but all jokes aside, Gambler 500, great organization. They spend a lot of time cleaning up your trash out on the trail. So, hey, do me a favor. Don't give them any trash to clean up. Thank then they, you, yes. Then they won't need those roof racks, right? Exactly. Well, so, they're all camped out by Turkey Claw. I know they were getting here today, so you'll start seeing a lot of weird old gambler cars running around. I know there's a lifted limo out here that I've seen. So when you see that lifted Crown Vic or uh, Reliant Robin, that's going to be the gamblers. All right, so that's great to hear. Uh, so it looks like we are ready for our awards here at the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. We're going to be giving away that laser nut uh, hardware trophy. Those things are really big. I would need like a whole new trophy room to put one of those things in. They are pretty cool. But right now we've got Pam on stage to start us off with our awards. Pam, take it away. Thanks, Ian. Thanks, Emmy. We are going to start off this evening with our fastest rookie plaques that we are giving out to the rookie program. Courtney here has been amazing with all of the rookies out here. So we are going to start off with the 4800 Brannick Motorsports Legends class. Jay Schwab, go ahead and make your way up here. You are the fastest rookie in your class and you were ended up seventh in class overall in your class. Jay Schwab, are you here? All right, how about Troy Digby? Are you over here? Make your way over here. Mr. Troy Digby, you we're the fastest rookie in the 4500 Yukon Gear and Axle Modified class. So come on up here. You're going to get your plaque. And don't leave because we have you again here in just a moment. Oh, yeah. Congrats to Troy Digby. The rookie program has been amazing. So much stuff has been going on with that. As I keep saying, everybody that's been racing out here for years, they wish they would have had the rookie program themselves. So Troy Digby, give it up for Troy Digby one more time. All right. Thank you, Pam. That rookie, th that rookie program is pretty cool because you get a lot of help along the way. You know, it's hard to come in here and know just exactly what you're supposed to do, where you're supposed to go, how you're supposed to set up your vehicle. And having a group of people that are there to help you and support you is pretty darn awesome. Now, I got to say, uh, Ian and I were just given a crab feast by Tracy or by <laughs> Tiffany and Outpost. Uh, they brought us a beer and literally you guys, like six crab, six, six crabs worth of crab legs. Uh, so if you hear us munching around on the camera, that's what it is. All right, so I believe we're gonna have Pam continue on with our awards on the main stage, which is good because as Emmy said, I got a whole bunch of crab and a whole bunch of beer to drink here. So take it away, Pam. I'll be in here eating crabs. All right, thanks guys. Out here for the 2023 Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge, we are going into the 4800 Brannick Motorsports Legends class. We want to bring up in third position, Mr. Dan Fresh. And in that number two position, Scott Foley, go ahead and make your way to the stage. And in that number one position, Mr. Jeremy Jones, go ahead and come on up. Okay, so. Do we have all three of you guys here? Okay. I don't see them, so we're going to go ahead and move on over to our 4500. Oh, here comes Mr. Dan Fresh. And then Dan and Jeremy, come on up. Do we have Scott Foley here? Oh, perfect. Hi, how are you? I just. Didn't even look at you. I'm sorry. Awesome. All right. All right, you guys, let's give it up for Jeremy Jones, Scott Foley, and Dan Fresh. All right, pop those tops. Let's give it a celebration. You guys just finished the 2023 Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. Let's uh, spray some champagne out here. I don't either.
All right, you guys, let's give it up one more time for our Brandon Motorsports Legends class. Good job, guys. Jeremy, you need to get in the middle for the pictures. Yeah, you're the number one. One more picture with Jeremy in the middle, guys. All right, we're going to go ahead and move on to our 4500 Yukon gear and axle modified class. In that third position, Mr. Peter Doolin, go ahead and make your way to the stage. Second position, we know you're here, Troy Digby. And in that number 26, in that number one position, Dwayne Gerritsen. Oh, and you know what? I just uh, got word here. I knew we had one rookie that start, uh, finished in the top three, but Peter Doolin, another rookie. So we have two rookies that just completed the 2023 Four Wheel Parts Every Man Challenge. 4,500, yes. Troy, get on up here. You're a rookie. We can tell that you didn't come back up real quick. <laughs> I wait till I'm going on. <laughs> All right, and do we have Peter Doolin? We don't have Peter. All right, guys, go ahead, put those trophies up high. Then we're going to open that champagne up, get a photo op. Oh, he's getting ready. Troy's ready. <laughs> All right, let's give it up one more time for Dwayne Garrison, Troy Digby, and Peter Doolin. All right, we are going to move right on into our 4600 Spider Truck Stock Class. This is a class that uh, everybody's been watching. We have in the third position, the number 13 of Bailey Cole. In the second position, the 4621 of Brad Lovell. And in that first position, the 2567 of Lauren Healy. You guys go ahead and make your way to the stage. I see you guys off to the left of me. It's a Bronco meeting. Come on up. I'm ready to ask y'all. All right, Brad. Yeah. Thank you. Or do you want to shake me? Where's Bailey? Is Bailey here? There you are. Hi, Bailey. Hey, Bailey. Okay, you guys are on the other side. So I'm going to, we'll have you, we'll do the celebration from here now, let's yeah, yeah. want that in it. All right, you guys, let's give it up for our 4600 Spider Track Stock Class. In that first position, again, Lauren Healy and Von Gittin, and Brad Lovell in that second position, and Bailey Cole in third. All right, let's pop the top of that champagne, then we have a special giveaway here in just a moment. All right, uh, Vaughn has an honorary look on his face, so watch out, guys. All right, I'm going to bring up Trevor Worthington with Ford. He has a special giveaway for Vaughn and Lauren. Hey, thanks everyone for coming out. On behalf of uh, Ford and Ford Performance, we really want to congratulate all of our uh, our, our Bronco drivers and navigators today. Outstanding first, second and third. And I hate to do this, but a presentation uh, for the winners. The fun havers are about to have a bit more fun. A check for $50,000. They're buying tonight. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you, Trevor. Awesome, thank you, Trevor. Vaughn and Lauren, would you like to say something about this awesome check that you guys just received? Talk about it. Talk about what I want to talk about. Talk about whatever you want to talk about. Talk about today's the check. Uh, I've never won fifty thousand dollars doing anything in my life, so this is pretty damn cool. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it was kind of like the lottery, I feel like. <laughs> awesome. Well, congratulations to all of you up here on the stage today. Let's give it up again for Mr. Lauren Healy, Von Gittin, Brad Level, and Bailey Cole. All right, back to you, Emmy and Ian. All right, everybody, thank you very much. Pam, that is awesome to see those awards get handed out, and how cool is that? Having that extra check coming there from the Ford internal combustion engine program. That was super cool. Yeah, but what a right nice now, prize. Yeah, right now we're going to take a quick break from the action from here in Johnson Valley OHV. We are still racing, still cars on course for the Four Wheel Parts Every Man Challenge, all part of the 2023 Progressive King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. to go to do your rig right and that's at four wheel parts now is the time for bigger tires and larger wheels now is the time to lift your truck at 4wp off-road technology and we bring to you the next step in user-controlled lighting. Everybody, welcome back to Johnson Valley, California. We are here in the middle of the Four Wheel Parts Every Man Challenge, and we still have guys out on course finishing this race. Uh, as we said before, we have three different classes out there racing. We just got done with our awards, which was super good to see. All of our podium finishers get their uh, hardware from our friends over at Laser Nut. And uh, my fingers here are a little greasy, Ian, because I've been chowing down on crabs up here. It's pretty amazing. From the outpost, we just got a big old bucket full of crabs, and it's been a really great dinner. Yeah, apparently, if you want to, if you wanted to partake in some crabs, you could head out to the outpost, which is out on the way out of Hammertown out on Boone Road. Apparently, they're doing a crab boil tonight with a whole bunch of stuff, and they got, oh, excuse me, some giant beers out there, which you can never go wrong with. Just remember... All in moderation, not if you're going to keep going down Boone Road and uh, out for the rest of the day. Be smart, you know, no, don't drink and drive. But right now we are back out on Emerson Ridge as we're still tracking a few of our racers that are still out on the race course competing in this race. Yeah, it looks like our next finisher is going to be 4506 Dustin Brayton. He's in the modified class, but he is just past race mile 125. He's between race mile 125 and 130, and uh, he will probably be here in maybe 15 or 20 minutes. So we do have a little bit of a wait for Dustin Brayton. Yeah, so while we do that, just remember everyone, this is now we have just passed 
eight hours worth of racing out there uh, and we have a lot of action we were just following amber turner out there in her race car she's in that little suzuki a samurai i know that there's a lot of fans here back in hammertown hoping to see her come back and finally finish one of these races in the allotted time she's always sort of timed out the one thing to remember is the stock class it's it is a different race course there's a lot of bypasses they get to take and so they have their own little sections they need to go around out there so it's basically their own standalone race while they're mixed in with these legends and these 4500 modifieds but you know that can be a, a little intimidating knowing that you're out there with those faster vehicles especially when you're going through on part of the desert part where you might be a little bit slower and then the next thing you know you've got some big vehicle right on your butt but i know that racers here are really kind to each other they give them the beep beep and they give them the pass yeah speaking of a stock class car there we got one right there i believe that is 4623 is who we're watching right now and 4623 that is john williams so John Williams out there, what looks to be, uh, that's either a JK or a JL, it's hard to tell uh, because of the taillights being swapped out on it, but he's making his way through this uh, rocky section and Emerson seems to be a little bit off course there. Wasn't sure if he uh, having some trouble. It looks like there might be something hanging down from the front of his car. It's hard to see from this angle, but just that last camera angle, we had it look like he maybe had something hanging off the front end of the truck. Yeah, but look at those shadows are lengthening out there on Emerson Ridge. The sun has gone down behind those mountains. It is 431 here. We've got about an hour left of daylight before these folks are going to have to start turning on those lights and making their way back to Hammertown in the dark. And spe you just say that, and here we are. This is a this is a ballsy move right here. We're watching a 4680, uh, I believe it's 4687. I believe it is. This is the LJ, or sorry, 4689. It's right in the front. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't those see are that. those are Bre that's Brexton and Caden Glynde. Yeah, and uh, to go out there with a stock class vehicle with uh, no additional lights from the looks of it, I think that's uh, that's pretty risky. I think yeah, I'd that's want brave. All the, I'd want all those lights. <laughs> on the front of my car if I was driving a stock class. And remember, if you're in Hammertown and you want to go see some lights, pop on over to the Nacho LED booth and see those guys over there. Yeah, I am not a fan of driving at night. I like to get everything done in the day. So the, just the idea of being out in the rocks at night without a good set of lights would just make me super stressed out. Well, the big thing is, you know, when you're out in this desert, especially out here in Johnson Valley. I mean, Johnson Valley is a hard place to get around. You add the fact that you have no light and, and in the dark, this desert gets really, really confusing at night. So if you're out here recreating, why don't you go ahead and download that Onyx Off-Road app, and then you'll know where you are. You'll know where the live race course is. You will know where uh, where you can and cannot be when you're out there in the desert. It's a great thing to have. It even works when you don't have cell phone service, and it has Hammertown in it as well, so you can find your way around hammers. We were just saw a shot from Emerson Dry Lake Bed, one of our stock class cars, motoring down there as we see. That's that 4689 truck again, the Glines brothers. Yeah, it's working his way up. This is this is basically the end of Chocolate Thunder. He has made his left and he's heading up idle issues to go up to that next section before he moves over to her problem, basically running the qualifying course backwards. This looks like it's probably a Legends car based on the front end on it. Oh, oh no, <laughs> he's like, just not moving. Come on, buddy. Yeah, that's when having those 37-inch tall tires can become an issue. You get hung up on that center diff. He's wishing he was rocking a set of 40s right now, but he's going to drag it over. Looks like he's got it done, which is good. He's going to head up this section, and now we're going to come back out here once again. Yeah, I do believe that is a Legends car based on that single shock up front. 4802 is the number of that car. That is Ross Klein and Dalton Hamilton. Still out there racing. All right, and now this is actually a lot trickier than you'd think. This is where you're making a right-hand turn. Uh, you have options here. You can stay to the left. You can see the arrows in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. You can continue up uh, idle issues to the top and then go over, or you can make the right. The right is uh, less rocky, but you are at a little bit of an angle. You're kind of side hill in there. And right here we have another. This is, a I can tell from the distance, this is a bomber fab car. Can't see the number on it right now. But look at him, he's rolling and rocking through that desert there. 
You can never uh, discount one of these bomber cars out in the desert. Have you driven one of the bombers? I have I, not. I own a bomber. It's great. It's yeah. A, yeah. I have a, one of the. I have the trail version of that car. I just built it last year, and uh, out of the box, I'd have to say it's probably one of my favorite two buggies I've ever owned. I've owned a few. I've got the. Uh, I called Randy up and I ordered the tubes in a box threw it on my chassis table and put it together. Now, mine, as I said, mine's a trail bomber, so it's a little bit different than the race bomber, but the suspension geometry is the same. The actual frame itself is just a little bit smaller, but I absolutely love that car. All right, here's Joseph Fabrizio coming down in a Jeep XJ. As I'm obviously another one of our stock class entries. Oh, 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 good save there by Joseph. They are limited to a 35-inch tall tire on that car, so that's why when you see them in those rock sections, they're sometimes traveling a little bit slower than some of the other cars you see go through there because they have a completely different set of rules they need to follow. And I believe that is Megan Miller. Yeah, I talked to her at the start today. She said that she wasn't nervous at the moment. She was just really, really excited. You know, it's great to see that we're getting more and more women into this sport. I've I'm always said you don't need any upper body strength to, to drive a vehicle. All you need is a little bit of smarts and a lot of guts. I'm going to bet that if you asked her how she was feeling now, her answer would be tired. Oh, yeah, she's been out there for forever. Yeah, it's now we're right at the right at the eight minute eight out. Sorry, eight hours thirteen minutes from the t time we started the race, and then this even longer for these stock class cars, being the fact they started at the back of the pack. Yeah, you know, there's something to be said for just sitting in staging, and you just get all your nerves up, and you're got your gear on, and you're strapped in. You think, oh, I have to go to the bathroom, but then once that green flag drops, all of that goes away, and it is just racing. I don't know, when I raced this back in 2009, we made bathroom breaks. That's how seriously we took it back then. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, pull over, man, pull over. Yeah, I got to use the bathroom, pull over. <laughs> back in 2009, we made fun of Jason Shearer for exercising before the race. <laughs> Called him a nerd. We're like, look at that nerd out there. He proved us wrong. Yeah, I guess None he of did. us, all of us have stopped <laughs> racing, and he's still out there dominating the sport. But this is the Glides brothers out there in this 4689 Jeep LJ. So it looks like 4506 Dustin Brayton has gotten closer. His tracker clicked about a minute ago, and he is over uh, almost to race mile 70, and then he'll be coming through Turkey Claw and coming back home into Hammertown. Yeah, we assume that'll be our next finisher coming in here tonight, but still lots of cars out there tackling the course today. Obviously, all of our stock cars are still out there. They are basically on a complete, they're, they're a similar but different race course. They have some bypasses. Uh, so they're in a race all by themselves out there still racing. We expected that. We always expect the stock classes for a lot of them. I think the reality is it's just a finish, man. I just want to finish. Yep, just <clears throat> JFF, just effing finish. When I look here on the tracker, it looks like they have six bypasses through the rocks. Here oh, is look a, at that. And here's a perfect example. This is at the top of idle issues where I said you had a choice. You could go left or, or sorry, you could go straight or you could go right. This driver has chosen to go straight. And that is a serious climb right there. Yeah, we that saw looks really steep. Yeah, we saw uh, during the shootout, they were dropping off that ledge. And we saw a car basically drop off that ledge and roll right there if you're not if you don't pay attention and you grab those front brakes when you're coming off that ledge you're going end over end i think like looks like he's making the right decision sending the co-driver out to probably pull winch cable over the top of that uh, top of that rocky section now that is actually a little bit shorter of a route to go that way up over the top because if you go to the right you kind of have to go side hill and then around the top of this trail and it's a little bit longer distance wise but if you got to get out and winch it's probably going to be a little bit slower All right, so here we are out in, this is Emerson Dry Lake Bed just after Emerson Ridge. This will be another, this will be another car that we expect to see come in shortly. 
This is their wide open throttle section. That looked like another bomber car yeah. coming through there. You know, it must be such a relief to finally get through the rocks and get out to that lake bed and just think, I only got turkey claw left, man. That's all I got to do. Yeah, and probably the best part, that, that lake bed will feel like a paved highway right? after coming <laughs> on those rock trails. You'll drop down on there and you'll be like, oh, it's so smooth. It's so smooth. I love everybody. My laugh is so good. All right, that's uh, car number 505. As we lose him immediately, get back to the Can-Am Chocolate Thunder Trail, which they're coming down this. This is car 1018. That is Anthony Taylor from Redhead Racing. And based on the looks of that, I'm just gonna assume that that is possibly one of our modified cars. Now, when you look at that vehicle, um, what tells you that that is a modified vehicle? Uh, the fact that he's got coilovers in the front of that car would, uh, well, first of all, you can see the mechanical linkage on the steering, so that's the first thing that gives it away. And then the fact that instead of coil springs, he has coilovers, that kind of gave it away that he's probably not in the stock class, he's in the modified class. All right, so now at 1018, making his way up the Can-Am Chocolate Thunder Trail. Well, that's actually, he's come down. Coming Canada. down. He's her, turned left. He's going to go up idle issues at that point, and then he's going to get over. And right now, we've got, oh, here they are. This is the best trail to call all week. This is the Nacho Dip Sledgehammer. Now, they get pretty sideways as they get up further into this on that soft sand. This is, this is the start of Sledgehammer, and the start of Sledgehammer is, it is absolutely no joke. You can see the ruts that are burned in to that sand. That sand is incredibly soft, and it is, it's at about a 15, maybe 20 degree angle towards the driver's side of the car. So you have a choice, you can go up on the high side, or you can stay down in the rocks where he is. There's a bunch of lines through here. We saw a lot of our leaders stay up high yeah. in this sand. Now it's a little bit sketchier, because it is pulling you to the driver's side the whole time. Yeah, you definitely have to commit. You've got to keep that steering so that you're going straight, even though your steering wheel is locked just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you know, I did take the Miata down there, not quite that far up, and uh, got a little stuck. That is one of my favorite <laughs> trails out here, Sledgehammer. I've wheeled it many, many times in many different vehicles. Whenever we come here, when it's not Hammer's time, that's always the first place that we go. My good friend Tiffany Stone was with us on one of those trips. And uh, yes, we went out and played around on Sledgehammer, and it's Tons of fun. All right, this is Sheldon Haynes in the 4801. Looks like he may have. Yeah, I think that is the wrong line because we've got. Well, it, that's actually, I, if I was to guess, that might be, I think you have a, a two choices there. You can stay up on that sand wash or you can come down in here. This section will be slower because you're in the rocks. You got to right. pick your way through or you can stay up on that, uh, on that line. But you can see, I think that was actually a course worker car. So either they may have been in there recovering somebody or moving around, or it may be somebody out recreating and a course worker was saying, I hey, hope man, no. Oh, look at what's course. happening right now. That is way up in the air, just looking at nothing but sky. And that is a very interesting winch oh, placement. That is not, that physics is not going to be kind to that, these guys. That winch line, I believe, is actually helping him roll at this point. Yeah. But the problem is, I don't think there's a winch anchor on the other side of that hill. Right, I right. think that on the other side of that hill, there's just a couple small little rocks and, and uh, maybe a couple other things. So I think maybe the theory here is that maybe if he lets the winch out, as he drives up, which is honestly be the safer thing to do at this point, there's a good chance that it went, might keep the front end down, but he is going to have to, uh, it's going to take some driving and some winching skill for sure. Yeah, that is bad news, Bears. No! Now at this point, Ian, is it better to just on winch, try to back down a little bit and take that right hand turn? Man, it's hard. That is a hard trail to back okay. down. Uh, that's getting pretty light. If anything, he'll make the high right, highlight reel if he goes over, so <laughs> you're not going to win the stock class at this point, so let's make the highlight reel. That would be what I'm thinking, of, at least if I was the code driver. Yeah, exactly. I'd be I mean, like, you I'm know what? It. We're going to go out with a bang. Yeah, the, the, like I said, the hard part here is I don't think that there is a winch anchor on the opposite side of that hill. Right. If there is, uh, 
If I was that co-driver, I'd be running out a couple hundred feet of line and getting it as far over as I can. It looks like that might be what he's doing, yeah. looking for another rock to put it on, because that particular uh, winch spot was not helping uh, helping them in any way. Now, now, if you've got you know if you've got a shackle or if you've got something else, you can get a winch around a 90 degree turn. But he's just trying to go diagonally to that rock and get the strap around some of those smaller rocks. But that's just that is just not going to work. Yeah, and there's a course worker I think trying to help talk him through that. But there's another one of our stock class vehicles out on that Emerson Dry Lake bed right now. Booking along really well. Maybe if we jump on the tracker, we can see who that is. Yeah. Because I cannot see the number on there. It could be 4688. Definitely. If, if that's a, that's probably the only stock class car out there right yeah. now. So, yep, 4688. That's who we're assuming that is. And that is Sergio Pinillos. All right, as we jump back into Jackhammer, number 819. Another one of our Legends cars. Working their way through these rocks. That is Bobby Lindgren and Justin Reese out of Salida, Colorado. That is Dustin Eisenhower's old car as well. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. Still out here working well. You can see a couple of our course workers out there. If you see all these guys out here and these guys and gals out here, when I say guys, I mean that as a gender neutral. Oh, so well, guys is 100% gender that neutral. That is a gender so neutral, is dude. You can full call, inclusive term at this point. You can call anyone a dude and that, that is inclusive to everybody. There we go. So I just want to clarify that for everyone <laughs> who's listening at home writing me their hate mail right now. So all these course workers out there, guys, uh, guys and dudes out there in those <laughs> or red, I'm just going to say dudes guys and dudes it's my new musical I just wrote it guys and dudes so guys and dudes out there on this course these are all volunteers out there helping keep our course workers safe helping our keeping our fans safe if you see them in Hammertown wearing their red red vests go ahead and give them a complimentary high five Buy him a Dang Brothers pizza if you're so inclined. Yeah. I mean, you can make a lot of friends uh, with a know, Dang Brothers pizza. On the way in, I gave all of the all the gate guys um, some Snickers because I was like, oh, here we go. Back to the uh, Can-Am Chocolate Thunder here, trying to get this rig up and over. And he is uh, giving a new meaning to three-wheel it. If I was in that truck right now, I would not be comfortable. No. The no. good news is, is our course worker out there is going to document this for us. <laughs> I, I see him out there getting a shot. He's the, it's pretty, you know you're doing something pretty special <laughs> when the course worker goes, hold on, yeah. let me get my phone. Exactly, because that dude's seen yeah. everything. He's like, I want to get a picture of this before and during the roll down this hill. And then that poor yeah. guy's just standing there, or yeah. he's just sitting in his vehicle, yeah. looking at the sky, wondering what the heck his co-driver is doing. Yeah, I think his co-driver is, I, I think one of two things is happening. There may be, in a case like this, we may have an actual co, uh, course worker vehicle coming over, or the co-driver's out looking for a, a better winch point. Now, if a course worker vehicle comes over here and helps them, they can still keep going, right? That is not cause for disqualification? I think in a case like this, honestly, that's a race ops call, but the reality is this. The course worker assistance never affects your race if it's a safety situation. And in all honesty, this that, right here screams safety. Yeah, yeah. So, that, that screams safety third, Ian. Yes, yes. So, but from what I'm looking at right now, it looks like, uh, and also the other thing is they're self-recovering right now. They're using their own winch. Yeah. So it looks like they just maybe finally got a better anchor point further back there, which is to be the right decision. Yeah, but now, I mean, that co-driver walked up there to the left of the screen. So we might have just changed a right winch point for a left-hand winch point. Which actually would be the better situation to be in right now. Okay. Co-driver there telling him what to do. This is, you got to have a lot of trust in your co-driver here and do exactly what they say. The good news is there is based on what we saw between that co-driver and driver, there's probably a very good chance that they have some type of 
Bluetooth or wireless headset in that co-driver's helmet. Yeah. And you know, if there's one thing that I love in all of my buggies, I have uh, I have comms in all of my all of my vehicles. I think it's super great. If you're here in Hammertown and you want to improve your wheel and time, whether it's in your side by side or your Jeep or anything, head on over and see the guys at PCI Race Radios. They can hook you up with a, either a VHF, GMRS straight CB or just a set of comms that you can listen to music and answer your cell phone while you're out driving. I have that kind that I can always talk on my phone or listen to music. And now I think that was the right decision yep. to reset that winch point. There we go. Now what will happen now is the co-driver will walk over, unhook that front winch line. When he, While he's doing that, the driver is removing the driver's seat from his butt cheeks because <laughs> he has basically sucked most of that seat up inside of his that body. That was definitely and a code brown moment yes, happening there. Yes, that, he has sucked the seat up inside of his body, and now he has to remove it before they can continue on down the racetrack. <laughs> but, you know, that's great. They were they self-recovered. It took them a little bit of time, but uh, nothing rolled down the hill. No, no, one was sa no one was hurt. Everybody was safe, so they should be able to continue on here in a few minutes. But and unfortunately, no highlight reel, but that's okay. That's for the best. As we're watching the 6 28. This is, uh, from the looks of it, a bomber fab car, unless I'm mistaken. Yep, and 628, that is Corey Allison. Now, his race team name is Don't Be Like Corey. That's, that's. I mean, that's a legitimate yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So he is there in that Legends class. And again, <clears throat> we are waiting on 4506 Dustin Brayton. According to the tracker, he is through Turkey Claw. We should be seeing him here in five or eight minutes or so. Yeah, once they get through Turkey Claw, they just have to cut across that uh, section just outside of Hammertown. It's called the Saddle. That's a little two-track action going out there in the woods, or sorry, out there in the desert. And then once they're through that, then they'll be back here into town through the short course. They'll come through the Bronco Arch, fly over the Yukon Launch, and then they'll get up on stage, and it'll either be Pam or Tiffany going to do a little bit of interview on them. We'll see who, we'll see who pulls the short straw on that one. All right, now we're seeing. Oh, we're seeing a little bit of traffic break breakout down here in her problems. That's the uh, end of that sand wash section where they basically take a left. All right, so we are watching Levi Rhodes make his way up through Dirty Love. They've got that winch line <clears throat> out and ready. Velcro there to their cage. And this is KMC Turkey Claw. This is basically the last rock trail. That's Michael Kelly. So they have to come through that rock trail and you, can, you can't you can see it right now because of the dust, but if you could look through that dust cloud, you would see Hammertown in the distance. You can kind of make it out there as the camera zooms in. That's all of us down there waiting for him to come back into town after eight hours and 30 minutes in the rocks and desert of Johnson Valley OHV. And now we're back into Jack where we're seeing two cars basically pull their way through. This is an, a Legends car, and it looks like possibly two Legends cars, to be honest with you. Yeah, that 819 is Bobby Lindgren and Justin Reese. He's having a little bit of a harder time getting through there. And down at the very bottom of the screen, we have another. So we're going to have a little bit, of, uh, little bit of action in there, and that is 4850 on Melville Ridge. So he's coming down into Hammertown from Melville Ridge, 4850. That is Daniel and Sean Gutenberg. Is that going to be our next car back into town? That might be. Let me see if I can look on the tracker. Some of these guys are not really showing up on the tracker. All right, well, right now we're jumped back out to her problems, 4652. Anthony, Anthony Hadsall, another one of our 
stock class entrance. This is another one of these Suzuki's. Yep, just, just spinning and spinning and not going nowhere. And we got a whole bunch of traffic going out into Jack. This could be one of those situations where out of nowhere, a race for 33rd place breaks out. All right, so while we watch these drivers head up into Jackhammer here in Johnson Valley OHV, once again, you are watching the Four Wheel Parts Every Man Challenge, all part of the 2023 Progressive King of the Hammers Race Week, powered by Optima Batteries. We'll be back after this short break. Renowned worldwide for reliability, the ARB Air Locker is a must-have for off-road drivers including rock crawlers, overlanders, and racers. With over 100 applications, ARB Air Lockers gives your vehicle the traction you need to tackle virtually any challenge with the flip of a switch. Dana's involvement with King of the Hammers includes our sponsorship of the EV spec class with our Spicer Electrified E powertrains. Dana is here not only to invest in the next generation, but also to provide the next step of technology that's needed to race in the desert using electric technology. Enterprises has over 60 years of off-road knowledge from the harsh deserts of Baja to the extreme rocks of King of the Hammers to the Jeeps we drive every day Curry has the right axle set up to fit your needs Curry Enterprises passion for performance all right, everybody, welcome back to Johnson Valley OHV. We are live from the lake bed. Well, actually, right now we're live from Turkey Claw, which is the last trail that these guys need to tackle before they head back into Hammertown. I'm Ian Johnson. I'm in the booth with Emmy Hall. We're calling the race today for the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. Ian, as a former racer here, you just know so much about these vehicles. It's really cool. I'm learning a lot about what is different between all of these classes out here. We've got the Legends, we've got the Modifieds, and we've got the Stocks. I believe our, we're going to have our next finisher is going to be pulling up here pretty soon. But meanwhile, there's a beautiful shot from Melville Ridge. It is almost 5 o'clock. The shadows are getting long. It's going to be dark pretty soon, so you better hope that these guys have got some good lights out here. I think some people are going to be out in the rocks after dark. And oh no, we've got people oh. out of their vehicle. Yeah, that is that stock class Jeep. Uh, I'm assuming it's a, I'm assuming it's a JK. Could be a JL. It's hard to tell from the back end. But it, I, when you see the co-driver out making that universal sign, which is move the steering wheel back and forth, and I'll see if anything's moving. Um, there's a chance that maybe either something's broken, uh, maybe they just don't. It doesn't feel right. But right now we are gonna jump out on the stage. Tiffany Stone as another finisher here at the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. Thank you so much, Ian. 
Dustin, nice job. You had a big cheering section when you're coming through. Looking at this, six in class for the 4,500 mods. Big congratulations to you. How are you feeling today? That was a rough course, but uh, we did it. Second year in a row, official this year. It was awesome. And talking about that second in a row, official this year, what does it make you to feel, what does it feel like to be officially crossing over here for King of the Hammers? Let's say uh, we can cross that off the bucket list, but uh, we'll be back. And who would you like to thank? Everybody. This guy in my uh, right seat, Nick, killed it all day. Last year he had it pretty easy. This year I put him to work. Thor's hammer uh, was a huge traffic jam. He got me through it. Um, and then my pit, my cheering section. We had so many people come out this year to support us. It was amazing. Thank you all. We, we did it because of you. Awesome. Well, one more round of applause for the 4506. And back up to Emmy and Ian. Thank you so much, Tiffany. You know, it's great to see when we're getting these guys across the finish line and all of their friends and their pit crew and their family come down here and cheer for them because this really is it takes a village to get any of these cars across the finish line. And we love having all of their fans and all of the cheering here live from Hammertown. Probably going to get the fire going here pretty soon. We've got a lot of cars still out on course. And uh, looks like we've got Daniel Gutenberg here going through the KMC Turkey Claw. Uh, sorry, I had to uh, jump out on you there. I mean, I had to go out and get a selfie with a Jeep Comanche racing at King of the Hammers. That's just a uh, thing. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty dope. <laughs> yeah, if you got a Jeep Comanche out here throwing down, that's pretty awesome. Because I, I would say that's probably the only Jeep Comanche out here. Uh, in this race, which is super awesome to see, but it's good to see him get a finish. And he said that that was his second second time uh, finishing here, which was super good to see. So glad to see him back in Hammertown, good and safe. All right, and there is our 4060 truck that was having a little bit of winching problems earlier up there on her problem. And looks like he is waiting for that little Zuki. Yeah, we saw the Zook in there earlier. Uh, pulling cable up that section of her problems. It's just super loose in there. And in all honesty, to get up there, you need a whole bunch of horsepower, which is something that uh, the Zooks are not really known for. But this XJ that's stuck in behind them, I think they're having a similar uh, similar situation. So I think probably what we're going to see is a winch from both of them. Yeah, I mean, look, we've got rocks to contend with, but we've also got all of that loose dirt. So that just makes it even harder. You know, loose dirt is one thing, rocks is another, and then you put them both together and it's like, oh, why did I get out of bed today? Yeah, it's, it's definitely a difficult race as we're watching 48.94. Oh, it looks like he has a left front flat in that car based on how he made that corner. I don't know if he knows he has a left front flat. Actually, I think he does know that. But from the color of that Oof. right front wheel, I'm assuming yep. he may have already changed the right front uh -oh. flat. Uh-oh. Yeah, you know, and people find it hard to believe that drivers don't know when they have a flat. But I'm telling you, it's really easy to not know. Yeah, it's it's especially when you're out there, when you get in the rocks, it, it's kind of hard to say. But look, we may have another finisher. We do. That should be at number 707, Michael Kelly. Yeah, we were watching Michael Kelly earlier make his way through Turkey Claw. And so that should be Michael Kelly making his way back into Hammertown right now. He's got to go through a couple turns on our short course. And then he will head into the Bronco Arch and up and over the Yukon Launch. I do love that they get to finish with the little jump. It is, but it's a smaller jump. Yeah, but it's but it's, it's like one final little like woohoo. It's probably for the best, but it's a smaller <laughs> jump. We, we had some uh, excitement last year. And right here, now we are jumping back out to the Can-Am Chocolate Thunder Trail as we uh, catch back up with Megan Miller. Look at the front axle on that car. Whoa, is, there's something leaking on that vehicle. Yeah, it's got covered in fluid. And based on how fresh it looks, it probably just happened. The good news is that could be, it could have just overheated. Uh, could have just got a little bit hot and they just had a little bit of an overheating issue, but it also could be be something more serious right because if that's front if that's her front transfer case she's gonna lose four-wheel drive here at any moment well it, it's definitely not coming it's coming from above the differential okay you can tell by the way it's dripping down there so it's either a steering line it could be a radiator hose or it could be well at this point in the race it could be anything <laughs> but uh, based on uh, based on the look of that front axle it's probably definitely something to do with steering as she makes her way down 
Can-Am Chocolate Thunder. And then she will be taking a left and heading up idle issues. You can see that that winch line is well used on the front of that truck. Looks like they have to their Factor 55 link on the front of that winch. And as we watch Megan Miller take the hard left up into her problem, or sorry, up into idle issues, which will lead her over to her problem. And Brent Dixon making his way through. Now, I, I'm. this might be trying to figure out what trail he is on based on just the rocks. It's hard to tell right now. Let's see if I can find him on the tracker. That's 224. Uh, it's tough to see. Everyone is so stacked up on each other in the, on the tracker. It's tough to see where they all are. All right. Well, as uh, as I try to figure out what trail Brent is in, let's go ahead and throw it to Stephanie. Or <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> Tiffany, you just got a new nickname. It's Stephanie Tone on the stage. Thank you, Ian. So looking at this, Michael Kelly, 707, you are 23rd in the Legends class. You just mentioned that you had some new car blues. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, the rear differential almost fell out. So that, that took a little bit to fix in, in main pit for some round there. And uh, other than that, we had a great day. You know, the car ran good. We bent the drive shaft and the rocks somewhere. And, uh, you know, had to check the speed on the way back, but we had a great day. We had a lot of fun. You know, thank you, Yokohama Tires. These are the same tires I qualified on, did the entire race on, not a single flat. I didn't hold back. Uh, impressed. Uh, Warren Winch, you guys helped me out yesterday. I tell you what, we, uh, we used you. I appreciate it. it. It worked fantastic. Team Indiana, thank you. My lovely wife, all the support. Love you, thank you. My children at home, they're watching. There's some stickers here they drew. If you get that on the shot, it's beautiful. Everybody loves them. Elena Eva, awesome stuff. Thank you, Caden, my co-driver. He, uh, he's a big help today, really big help. We're wore out. Well, I'm gonna let you go. One more round of applause for you, though, for the 707, and uh, back up to Ian and Emmy. Thanks, Stephanie Tone. <laughs> That's going to stick with us forever now. I love it. I'm going to get some T-shirts made up. All right, so as we jump back out to the action, I mean, here we are. This is this is Jack. This is, you know, we talk about this all the time, about what happens when you get into a bottleneck in these trails, and this is exactly what we're seeing right now. We have cars backed up because there really is only one line through that section for right, these guys. All right, so everyone now has got to wait for that 4558 car to get through, and it's just got to be nerve-wracking because you're on a rhythm. You know you're late. You know it's going to get dark soon, and all you want to do is just get going, and now you just got to stop. Well, I think what you're seeing right now as we watch these cars, we're watching the 4894 who possibly maybe was trying to make a move, but unfortunately uh, it's looked like he's hung up on a on the boat side on that uh, on that buggy. Uh, he's trying to make a move to get around, but I, he's got that left front flat, which isn't helping him. And once again, here we are. We have another uh, car up at the top. Oh, this is not good. So, oh, they're going to do the same thing that the other that the Jeep well, was going to do. Well, I honestly think what we're looking at here is I'm assuming based on what the we have both the driver and the co-driver out of the car. We have a winch line hooked up. If I had to speculate, I'm going to speculate that the winch line was free spooled out, hooked up to that rock up there, and then all of a sudden it probably didn't work, and so now they're going to take the car apart and figure out why. Unfortunately. Oh, what a precarious place to be working on your vehicle like that. Yeah, that's just life uh, life in the hammers, though. We've all been there. If you've been out here, recreate wheeling, it, it happens to you. So right now, I think this is another, is this, this could possibly be another this finisher. Should be, this should be car 628. Corey Allison coming around, getting his, uh, getting his glimpse of the short course here. Just have a few more turns to make, and he will be getting that checkered flag and taking that Yukon jump. 
Yep, Corey will be happy to be back into town right here. Looks like this is another one of the, it looks, to me, it looks like a bomber fab car from this distance. It's got that patented spare tire hanging off the back. Very, very recognizable. Great choice to come out here and race with if you're in this Legends class. Making the two turns, he's got to come around two different turns. You'll see him go by that progressive insurance shipping container and that giant Optima battery. And he's going to make one last turn. See that spider tracks axle up front. He's going to head around, get lined up for the Bronco Arch, and then he will come through the Yukon launch. And that will be the end of Corey's race. We'll get him up on stage, and Tiffany Stone will get uh, find Stephanie out. Stephanie Tone, thank you. Stephanie Tone will get her, <laughs> get her uh, story as to how his day is going. And this is Kimberly Sparrow. All right, so this is Kimberly Sparrow making her way through KMC Turkey Claw in her Brannock Motorsports 4800 Legends car. And right here, it looks like we have another one of our stock. This is Megan Miller, who we, we've been watching all day in her stock class Jeep. Going through a brutal day out there for these stock class racers. Another stock class car right there. They fly around. Looks like these stock classers are all sort of bunched up. Looks like I've got another one right behind. I'm a, no, that is not. That can't be a stock class car. That looks like it might be either a modified or a Legends car. Yeah, I love all this drone footage that we're able to have out here in the middle of the desert. King of Hammers puts on a great show with really awesome production values so that the folks at home and around the world can get their eyes on Hammertown. Yeah, and if you're watching at home and you want to get all the different camera feeds available to you, go ahead and you won't have to watch any of the uh, any of the commercials, or as Jim likes to call them, the adverts that break up the action here. Go ahead and subscribe to that premium feed. Go to kingofthehammers.com slash live, and you can sign up for that premium feed, become a member, and help us bring you the action from the lake bed here. Yeah, 25 bucks is worth it. All right, so here we are back to Can-Am Chocolate Thunder. This is actually the top of Idle Issues, and that would be the optional line instead of uh, coming up the top like we've seen our two other competitors do. And it looks like we have a little stock class Toyota. This looks like it may, I was trying to figure out, this is the same trail I was trying to figure out before. I don't know where they are. Based on the cheers I hear coming over the headset, I imagine I'm going to hear Tiffany Stone tell us that she's ready shortly with someone on stage. They certainly had a cheering session cheering for them. All right, so Tiffany, we've got another car up on stage. Tell us how their day went. Nice job over here, Corey. It's good to see you on this side. I know normally you're on that side. So walk me through your first King of the Hammers in the driver's seat. Uh, I would have to say... I'm not sure yet. <laughs> you're not sure, not yet? sure yet? You've had a few hours to be able to think about what you were going to say when you came over this way, and you're not yeah. sure. Well, let's start with who you'd like to thank. Uh, family, my wife, and my pit crew and uh, for helping us get through the whole day, get us to the finish line. And, uh, of course, Randy, for all the help he's uh, helped me with uh, along the way. So couldn't, couldn't have done it without it. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, just uh, looking at this, 59th in the Legends class. You finished King of the Hammers this year for 2023. Nice job. One more round of applause for you. I'm going to let you go celebrate. You got a big crowd right down here for you. you. Nice job for the 628 and back up to Ian and Emmy. Yeah, Corey definitely had a cheering session down in the crowd. I think there's going to be some partying tonight for them, having finished his first ever King of the Hammers, as Tiffany said, in the driver's seat. That's super exciting. As our drones follow the stock class 4619, a little Toyota pickup truck. That is Matt Henson and Cameron Reese from Oklahoma. Yeah, so Matt's out there in his little Toyota pickup truck, plugging away through the rocks. Lots of action. The one, uh, that's just, that's the standard movement for a leaf sprung truck, I mean, When you drive a leaf sprung vehicle out here, it's kind of like riding a buck and bronco through the rocks. And you just got to learn to get that feel of bouncing around like that. It's lots of fun.
Once again, we are coming to you live from Johnson Valley OHV. This is the four wheel parts every man challenge. We have now been racing for just under nine hours. Tomorrow is the big race. Tomorrow is the Nitto Race of Kings. That will start at 8 o'clock off the line. And, you know, we've had the UTVs. They finished in about three hours. These guys, we had finishers across the line in about four hours. How fast do you think those 4,400 vehicles are going to go around the course tomorrow, Ian? Well, the 4,400 cars have a whole other lap of rocks to deal with. So the 4,400 class, that race of kings, it is not a two-lap race like we've seen the past couple days between the uh, Can-Ams and our Everyman Challenge cars. The race of kings is four laps so it's big desert loop rock lap and then a second rock lap so it is a lot of work for them out there i think it's going to be five and a half six hours for our winner to cross the line if they have a flawless day and that 4895 car there kicking up a lot of dust. Jacob Peak just trying to get that power, trying to get those tires hooked up, get a little bit of traction and make it up the very, very tippy top there. And this is the exact section where we just saw uh, our two stock cars. We had that little Suzuki Samurai and the Jeep uh, Cherokee XJ basically trying to winch up those sections. And uh, the fact that they are gone is good news. Uh, but unfortunately for Jacob, uh, that just shows you how tore up up this particular section of the trail is we're talking about i believe this is a legends car so you know he's got hydraulic steering 37 inch tall tires unlimited horsepower and yet still having trouble climbing up that section shows you how loose those climbs have come yeah and he must feel a big sigh of relief as he made it up that hill but there's still plenty of rocks to go and now we're back to jack where we've got a bit of a traffic problem yeah and i think this is uh, very telling is what we're seeing right now now i don't think tomorrow with our 4,400 cars. I don't think we'll see this type of traffic with our leaders. I think the lead group, probably the top 10, 20 cars, will be able to get through here clean and smooth first time. But it's going to be the cars later in the pack when we get a bunch of vehicles that maybe if someone has trouble early on in the race, it could spell disaster for them if they come into traffic like this. So our leaders, if they get into this section of the course, they are going to want to get through here quickly to avoid situations like this where you are just stuck at these pitch points where there's no other way through and here's another spot right here where we're watching we have the stock class four-wheel parts uh, Cherokee having to winch through this section while we watch this legends car the legends car should have no trouble going around him on those rocks he should have the tire clearance and the horsepower to make it work So we've got our uh, leaderboard up here on the big screen and number one is that has come in is in the 4837 car, Jay Jones. Yeah, we have our we have our finishing lineup up here on the screen picture picture that you see right here. So one through five, Jeremy Jones, Scott Foley, uh, Darren Garrison, Lauren Healy and Brad Lovell. Those are physical cars across the line of the with their elapsed time. Of course, we don't have a official timing yet is that correct Ian so we still need to wait for the uh, crossing of the I's dotting of the T's I think as Ricky was saying earlier today yeah they'll have to go in check all their VCPs and make sure they're good but right now Tiffany Stone is back out on stage with another finisher here at our four wheel parts every man challenge nice job out there Daniel you finished this the sun's just about to set, but you still made it within the time crossing the stage for the 2023 King of the Hammers race talk to me about that uh, it was emotional. It was rough out there. Um, did good in the desert. Ended up uh, rolling it in the sledgehammer. I think we were there about an hour and a half. A couple flat tires. Um, got kind of emotional between me and him. We had to winch quite a few spots. It was rougher than I thought it was going to be. Well, you made it here. Who would you like to thank for finishing this race with you? Yeah, I want to <clears throat> thank my son, Sean, for co-driving. So, yeah. Sponsors, uh, Bender Construction, number one. They gave us some tires. Uh, WFO Concepts, Tracker Auto Recovery, 
And uh, everybody that puts this, this race on, uh, Warren, I mean, we used the winch probably a half a dozen times, kept getting stuck in sledgehammer. And, uh, I think aftershock, just stupid lines, it got stuck. And uh, after I rolled it, it was pretty low on oil, so we just limped it into remote two and got it all taken care of and tire thrown on it. And then coming in, in the desert, I just ended up with another flat. It's, you can see it on the back of the car, out in the middle of the desert. I thought I was losing power, and I was like, man, I just think it doesn't feel right. Kept dragging in all the berms, and next thing I know, the back was washing out of me. I was like, I got a flat. So we had to stop out there in the desert, just, you know, 10 miles out, change the tire. But we brought it in in time. Awesome. Well, I'm going to let you celebrate with everybody right over here. One more round of applause for the 4850. And back up to you, Ian and Emmy. Thank you so much, Tiffany. You know, it is great to see the emotion that happens when these guys cross the finish line after months, maybe even years of working on these vehicles and getting them ready for the four wheel parts every man challenge. Looks like we've got another finisher has just come through. I believe it is 4623, but I could be wrong. It but certainly looked like a stock class car coming in right there, and I think that that'll be, uh, I don't know how many stock class cars we've had across the line. I'd have to go back and check, but you can see him. And then we have another finisher, looks like right behind him. But we have that stock class car coming back through, making that U-turn after the Yukon launch. And this uh, car right behind him, I can't see the number, but that it looks to be like a Legends car following up behind him as well. Once again, as we follow 4819 through the rock trails, that's Jesse Lee out there. We saw him just put a, put a pass on one of the stock class cars. He's slowly working his way through these rock trails. And we'll jump on out to Emerson Dry Lake Bed. I believe this is another one of our stock cars coming in. Look at that beautiful shot there uh, on the lake bed coming around. You know, what's great is we got to race really close to the 29 Palms military base. And I believe they even went through the through the base, which has been a rarity for us, which is really just such a privilege to be able to race on that land. Yeah, every year the course changes and sometimes we get special exceptions to get out and get through that uh, section of military land, which is always good to include that in the race course. There's some uh, iconic desert sections out there, so it's nice to see that when we can include that on the race course. All right, it looks like we have another car coming through right now. Yep, that might be a could be a 4813 Rory Romero. It's tough to tell through all this dust, but man. For, unfortunately, the wind, there is no wind out there right now. So the dust is just hanging in Hammertown as once again we jump back out to Jesse Lee. We're still waiting to see more cars make it back into town here. This is the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge, part of the Progressive King of the Hammers, powered by Optima Batteries. We are broadcasting live from Johnson Valley OHV area. It's not the end of the world, but you can see that from here. Literally the middle of nowhere. There's a great yeah. wide shot as the sun goes down. Gorgeous sunset here on the lake bed. All right, so Tiffany Stone once again has another finisher that came across the stage. Tiffany, take it away. Thanks, Ian. Here with John Williams. So, John, fourth in the stock class, and it is awesome because I've wheeled with you before, so I know that you put this through there. Walk me through how your day was with Nate. Oh, boy, we sure had a lot of fun today. I mean, I got to, number one, thank Nate for uh, keeping us going, running the winch. Uh, Big props to BF Goodrich, started on four tires, ended on four tires. The active air system from BF Goodrich, we have CTIS, we were able to adjust air pressures while we were driving today, which really made all the difference in the world for making it through the big sand hills in the course today. So we're definitely excited, but I can't thank uh, all my guys, my family. It's his birthday too. 
Well, happy birthday, Nate, to you. Well, I know you've got a few more people you need to thank as well for getting you and Nate over here. <clears throat> Big props to Rock Crawler. Uh, whipped out some shocks for us at the last minute in a hurry. They worked fantastic. Um, Dynatrack makes bomb-proof axles, PSC steering, worn winches, obviously. Without them, we wouldn't have even come close. So um, thanks to everybody that helps us. Thanks, Kleins Motorsports. Thanks, family, friends, everybody. Impulse Off-Road, Crossfire Off-Road. Anyone else? You got it all. Thank you, guys. Well, one more round of applause for John and Nate Williams and back up to Emmy and Ian. Thanks, Tiffany. Good to see John come across. That's awesome news. As Tiffany said, that is a, our fourth stock class car to make it across the stage through the finish line here at the 2023 Four Wheel Parts Every Man Challenge. Look at that wide shot. Sun going down in the distance. Beautiful sunset here in Hammertown. Lots of dust lots sitting in those canyons. Lots of dust, man. Yeah, so lots of dust slowing down our drivers, but just beautiful scenic shots from here in Johnson Valley OHV. Thanks everyone who's been tuning in with us all day long. As I said before, we've been racing for just over nine hours today. 150 cars, just over 150 cars left the line. Non-stop action all day long. And as we watch this car make its way down through Emerson Ridge and onto that Emerson dry lake bed, once again, I'd like to thank the sponsors responsible for bringing you this race and therefore allows us to sit here and share it with all of you at home. ARB Airlocker, SRT Off-Road, who was involved in the motos that happened last weekend, or I guess it would be two weekends ago now. Apologies, share my coach. Dana Spicer, Electrified, Axial RC Cars, Action Sports Canopies, and Nacho Lights. Buggy Whip, Baja Vida, Beef Jerky, Pro Eagle Jack, Empy. Ricaro seats Onyx off road and the Terra crew. And we'll jump back up to Jack where we've seen this log jam causing problems for everybody involved. Looks like we got a couple Legends cars in there. We may have a modified car trapped up in there, but I think I'm hearing on the stage still a whole bunch of V8 horsepower. So I think we have one of our modifieds or Legends come up on stage. So we'll jump out to Tiffany to see what's going on. Thank you so much, Ian. So we're talking to Kimberly and Hunter Sparrow, a husband, wife team, and I love seeing this. And you guys are 25th in the Legends class. How did it go for both of you today? Um, it was a really rough day out there. It's a tough course. Uh, we ran into a lot of traffic, and poor Hunter had to get out a bunch of times and winch and help everybody winch through. Um, but it was a ton of fun. We made it through, and I'm just glad to be on the stage again. <laughs> Who would you guys like to thank today? Oh, um, Yokohama, Raceline Wheel, JE Reel, Redline Oil, uh, Renegade Fuel, Be Cool Radiators, um, Warren Winch, Factor 55. We definitely put them to the test today and had zero problems. Uh, didn't have a single flat tire, nothing. So, um, And of course, all of our amazing pit crew and family that comes from all over the country to be here with us and support us and everybody watching us back home. Awesome, nice job. One more round of applause for the 872. And back up to you, Ian and Emmy. Thanks, T-Stone. Thanks for that interview. Always good to see another finisher come across, and even better to see a husband and wife team coming in and ticking off their bucket list of coming in finishing King of the Hammers. Although I got to tell you, uh, you know, I'm not married, but I think about any of the guys that I've dated, and I would not want to share a car with them. I could share a car with uh, with my wife. I don't know if she'd want to, <laughs> but I could. The only problem would be is I think she'd spend a lot of time saying, just go a little bit slower. <laughs> just go a little bit slower. You're, you're, you're going to wreck the car. But, uh, yeah, lots of, uh, lots of action. That's one of the cool things. You know, we just saw father-son team come across the line, saw husband and wife team come across the line. We say it all the time how much Ultra 4 racing is a family event. We see it all the time. I personally was fortunate enough to see the Campbell family literally grow, sorry, grow up in this sport. It was great to see Bailey when she was a, a young girl. She's a, 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 obviously she's a mom now, she's a grown woman. Her and her husband, Brian Crofts, I call him Brian Crofts Campbell because he should hyphenate that last name. Uh, <laughs> Brian Crofts Campbell out there racing. Shannon's still back out there. That whole family is back out here. If you've been following along with Bailey on Instagram, I know she had a little bit of engine problem. 
problem. She had to go back to Arizona to put another engine in the car and hoping she's got that done and get it out here because I think it's high time that Bailey comes in and just wins this thing so we can have a queen of the hammers. Absolutely. That would be amazing to finally have a queen. You know, we thought that that was going to happen with Jesse Combs, who unfortunately left this world a little too early. Bailey is ready to take that place, take that crown, and we'll put it on a female. Yeah, and speaking of a queen, Queen Tiffany Stone has got another driver up there for us. T-Stone, what you got? Thank you so much. Rory, I just came over and told you you got 41st in your class, and you just said that's it. It's been a long day over here. Walk me through the trials and tribulations. It's been a, it's been an interesting mission getting to the, just to this point. Um, tried a few times to finish this race. This is my first time actually finishing, so feels pretty good. Um, just went through a lot to get here, and uh, just want to thank my family and all my friends who came Yay! to support me, <clears throat> and Randy Slauson for building a nice rig. Not bad. <laughs> Well, nice job. I know you've got some people back here. So one more round of applause for the 4813. And back up to you, Emmy and Ian. Thank you so much, Tiffany, man. He looks really tired, but hopefully his pit crew can give him just a little bit of energy. Now, uh, before we continue on with our coverage here at the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge, I hate to say this, but we're going to go to a very quick commercial break. We'll be right back. PCI Race Radio is the leader in off-road communication since 1972. Our equipment was developed for racing in Baja, perfected for enjoying the weekend with family and friends. Stay in touch with our track stereo intercoms, two-way radios, satellite communications, helmets and headsets. Find new adventures with GPS. Breathe clean air with Race Air Fresh Air Systems. PCI has the highest quality communications, navigation, and safety equipment, backed by the best support in the industry. Find us at hundreds of events each year, supporting our equipment on-site and providing the PCI Weatherman Relay. See you in the desert. day race in the world as far as I'm concerned. When you need your winch, that's the only thing that matters. It's about getting to the finish line first. It doesn't matter how you do it. in the 4500 Utah. everybody welcome back to Johnson Valley OHV we are just finishing up our four wheel parts every man challenge race and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call it a night I'm gonna step out of the booth 
And I am going to hand my headset over to Mrs. Pam Hall. Emmy, thank you so much. It's been great calling the back half of this race with you today. I'll let you guys have fun, close this thing out, and bring everybody home. All right. Thank you, Ian. While Pam's getting her headset on, I'm looking at the tracker here. And we've got a while before we're going to get another finisher. Uh, if everything goes to plan, it looks like 224 Brent Dixon in the Legends class is going to be next. But he is all the way up at race mile 125. So it's going to be quite some time before we get to him. Now, we also have a car number 4688, and they are right about in the same place that Sergio Pinillos in the stock class. But unfortunately, he has stopped, and he has been stopped for quite some time. His tracker pinged about four minutes ago, and he is going at zero miles per hour. Hopefully, when that tracker updates again, he'll be moving. Well, Emmy, you have been a busy, busy lady today, and thank you for giving that update on the racing tracks. I've kind of been all over the place, so. Yeah, you've been doing speed sports stuff. You've been, you're just all over the place, which is awesome. Yes. All right. Who is that on screen getting I don't the know. big old cheer? I cannot see that number. All right, that is the number 50 car who has a bunch of fans here. That is Jeremy Brown in the Legends class. He is clocked in at going 65.2 miles per hour just a few minutes ago as he goes across that lake bed and is trying to bring it on home to Hammertown. How exciting it is to finish this race. Finishing it in the dark, almost in the dark, but uh, finishing it is definitely a win in itself, as I say multiple times, which is super cool, but you can see him right there. Uh, we have the 4695 right there on screen, making a little left-hand turn into some tight rocks. You can just see how big the boulders are yeah, going over those. Yeah, you can. I, I got to tell you, um, being out here without uh, any natural sunlight and having to rely on those lights, that just would be really, really frightening to me. You know, I'm always one that tries to read the terrain around you, and when you're just out here at night, all you've got lit lit up is just what is in front of you. So a lot of people like it because then they can just be really concentrated on what they've got to see directly in front of them. But for me, I like to see the whole picture. Yes, I definitely am a, a day driver myself. Uh, it's awesome when you have a great light bar and light company on board with you to light up your night. But look at that view right there. That, that is, is so gorgeous. God, I just, this, the desert is just absolutely beautiful. I do not understand why some people just don't like it out here. I think it's amazing. <laughs> it's beautiful. It has the most beautiful sunrises the most beautiful sunsets and we've seen them all this week <laughs> yes we have yes we have there is a car stopped right there next to the one that uh, was going through yeah that might be car 4688 that is stopped or it also might be 4517 he is also stopped out there on emerson lake bed uh it's tough to see you know we don't get a chance to look at all of their numbers this is the 4695 Whoa, we have just turned the light on in the booth and it is real bright up here. Sorry, my old eyes, I can't see these words <laughs> in the dark. Either. So I'm like, can I please turn this light on? <laughs> oh, oh, baby. Goodness. And then there was the light. So that is the 4695 of Jesse Bennett right there on screen there, making his way through this. It, it, you can't really see all the large rocks out there, but there are some very large rocks there out there. There are, and you know, look at, he. there is no dust around that guy at all. He's looking a little bit like He's racing on his own. And Emmy, can you find him on the tracker so we kind of know where he is? That is 4695? Yes. All right. Yep, so we've got him. Uh, his tracker hasn't pinged for a while, but he is on one of those bypasses in that stock class. Uh, his tracker uh, is down about seven minutes. So he has probably moved a little bit further along than what we're showing on the tracker. Yes, it's amazing that we have those trackers on the vehicles so we can see exactly where they're at on race course. Oh, and we do have somebody right here pulled off to the side. Yeah, they were stopped earlier. Um, the co-driver was out and giving him a little like steering wheel uh, movement. So we're not exactly sure what's going on there. If something is, um, if it's in the steering, if it's in the suspension, but that looks like driver and co-driver are out, helmets off, and that is never a good sign. Definitely not. And if he's messing with the steering wheel, obviously it's probably some kind of steering issue going on. And going through these rocks without power steering, it would I could not be, be I fun. I can't imagine. I cannot imagine. And looks like we've got a live drone shot there. Drone taking off. 
It's awesome to see everybody out here still watching the screen. Yep. Great crowd out here. Yep. The uh, fire pit is going, and there we've got That's a five car, two five. car 525. We did have a little bit of a traffic jam there in Jackhammer, but it looks like he is getting in. He was the last vehicle there, so that traffic is cleared, and we've just got one more to get on through Jack. Yes, and that was the 525 of Michael Hinn. Now, that is a team that came from Israel, correct? I do not I, know I, that I for sure, so. but uh, we definitely have some information on here. We could find that out, but that is pretty cool if they came all that way to here. Yes, they came from Israel, so that might they might be the first furthest competitors to make their way out here to the 2023 four wheel parts every man challenge and i love this class i love the this is three my favorite different class. classes i think it's probably a fan favorite i mean yep. everybody loves the uh you know the 4400 the race of kings of course because they're like you know the big the big guys yeah they're the big guy yeah but this class right here, I mean, it's grassroots racing right there. Yeah. This is where it all started. Yeah, and you know that these guys and gals have been out here, and they've been wrenching on their cars all year long to get them ready. I mean, I know that a lot of these people have sponsors, but a lot of them are just building it on their own. And then to see them come out here and do so many of these trails that are just ridiculously difficult, defying physics with their vehicles. I mean, they, we, we shouldn't be able to drive cars right? out here. Are you kidding me? Uh, yeah, exactly. And yet here we are getting it done. So now that we're back here in the dark, it's getting it's getting getting dark out here, Pam. You gotta have your nacho, nacho lights. lights. <laughs> but they're nacho lights. They're, they're not my lights. Yeah. <laughs> they're nacho lights. My lights. Nacho. I love the name of it. <laughs> I know it's very funny. I'm sorry. I don't know the story behind it being named that, but I, it's got to be something similar to like saying that nacho. Nacho <laughs> lights is my lights. Look um, at the boulders right there that the, the number 177 is going through. That's 1776, man. That is America and freedom signing that Declaration of Independence. See, and there's my eyes not seeing that six on the end. <laughs> <laughs> 1776 is Jeff, Jeff Watson, Watson and yep. Eric McRae of Flagstaff, Arizona. Now, they are in the rookie class. That is awesome. I love seeing these rookies out here. They're super cool, super exciting. They, they're they learning so much. They're learning stuff from, you know, Jason Shear, Lauren Healy. They, you know, drivers like that have been a yeah. part of the classes. They've came out here, I believe it was in November, maybe October. I can't remember exactly when, but the rookies came out here. Dave Cole and all of those guys, they put on an amazing program for them to come out, learn the rocks. Who else would you want to go out and run these rocks with other than Dave, Dave Cole? Right? I know. I would. I, I mean, that just would have been the most amazing thing to be able to be taught by those people. Right. By those guys that have been out here that know absolutely every little rock, every little pebble out here in Johnson Valley, California. And, man, look at how dark it is. Whew, I would be so scared. Dark and then it gets cold. Yeah, yeah. Not cold in those fire suits, though, and the car's all buckled in. But, well, but the you, dark. But you know, you have raced as well as I mm -hmm. have. You know, you spend all day and you're kind of sweating in your suit, and then the sun the sun drops down. And as soon as those guys get onto Emerson Lake and they get their pedal to the metal, you've got to kind of a damp suit yep. and you're going to get that wind on you. Ooh, baby, it's going to be cold. Exactly. And look at the colors of the sky. I love the colors of the sky. People that have never been to a desert, I always tell them, you know, about how beautiful it is out here. Yeah. And if you're watching at home at live and you haven't been here, that's truly what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. You, if you're watching at home and you have the means to come out here and spectate, you know, even if you're able, only able to get out here for a day or a weekend, it really is, um, it really is something special. Yes, and King of the Hammers alone is something special, like bucket list item for a lot of people, and that's just something, again, that I always say, if it's on your list, you better go do it. Yep. You yep. better go because yep. life is short. And every year it gets bigger and bigger. It's crazy. I, I've been staying um, at home in Yucca Valley and coming in every night or every morning, and just you can just kind of come in through Boone Road, and you see Hammertown like appears, and it's just this big city that's happening right here in the middle of the lake bed and you think that shouldn't be happening and yet here we are yeah from day to day it's changed honestly i mean today's friday right yeah i think so yeah 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 today's friday i haven't been off this area in two weeks i haven't <laughs> been to, even to the front gate in two weeks oh i've been gosh. here so Damn. i know that it's packed out there because i can see it like when i've gone up to chocolate thunder uh -huh. but i i don't know what it's even like to be honest with you like, i will tell legit, you there are a lot two of, weeks there's a lot of people out there 
looks like 46.95. Jesse Bennett in stock is going through Emerson Ridge right now. Look at that, man. Dark, yeah. dark, dark. That's all you can see is the lights. Nacho lights. Nacho it's lights. their lights. <laughs> <laughs> You know, oh, once goodness. I brought a class 11 home in the dark and we didn't have any lights. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I, I was co-driving and the driver just drove and I stuck my face in that GPS and I told her, okay, you're on the line, you're on the line, a little left, a little right. And still to this day, the best finish I've ever had. So Pepper Day, if you're out there, that was our finish. Oh, my goodness. That's an interesting story. How yeah, awesome. Yeah, it was dumb. <laughs> that was a real dumb thing. <laughs> well, I mean, you didn't have lights, but at least as long as the GPS was right on, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you could, sometimes you got to rely on a, on a little bit of a technology to get you through. Now, earlier... Well, look, they have re reverse lights. Super yes. bright reverse lights. Yeah, they sure do. That's pretty nice. That's a little zooky, isn't it? Now that we can't it's, see the numbers, I just have to go off of the profile. Now, it, I, I'm sorry, I don't know. Is Amber Turner still moving? The, yes, she is still moving. We have had her on the lot, on the screen here a couple of different times. Uh, she looked like she was having a little bit of trouble getting her uh, uh, four-wheel driving gauge, but she was making it up through Chocolate Thunder, idle issues, and her problem. So she is through that section. Uh, let me see if I can see where she is right now on the tracker. It's tough to tell because I've got all of these little yellow dots all over my tracker, and I really got to zoom in to get all of those details. And what's awesome about Amber Turner and her family, her mom and dad, they come out here and they volunteer out here. They're out there on course working. And uh, with that being said, if you guys see the course workers out here or anybody in the orange or yellow vests or red ones, give them a huge thank you. They're out here working super hard for this race, harder than anybody knows, and it's pretty awesome. And right in front of us, I see Levi Shirley's car with 35 on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I um, we've had a couple of a uh, couple of 4400s come across the booth earlier, um, so I'm not sure what's going on there. But they are moving around here, and man, those 4400s cross in front of the booth, and it is loud. Now this guy right here is pretty smart because he has got a light up number. It's a little tough for me to see there in the dust, but um, oh yeah, the light the light bar on the rear is yeah, it's lighting on up it. his number. That's pretty dope. That's a smart thing. I, you know, I love the shark fin numbers like that too mm -hmm. because like if we're racing in the mud, that shark fin does not get dirty. Yeah. So yeah. like when we race other races, you know, on the east coast where it's always muddy, it seems like. Which Lauren loves the mud. You'll have to ask him about the mud someday. Oh, I'm sure he does. <laughs> Lauren Healy is not a fan of the mud. Um, but anyways, those shark fin numbers are awesome. They really don't get dirty. I wish all of the racers had it like that because it's good to see. But that lighting, lighting it up like that is pretty cool. Making their way through the desert. Not sure exactly because we can't see exactly what that number is. That is obviously one of our camera guys out there with a ginormous as I say zoom lens yeah man those guys spend all day out there in the sun and the wind and they come back and they are just toast yes they I mean our camera guys have to get out to their locations usually like seven o'clock like yeah. if we have eight o'clock start time be at the location by seven. yes because they have to test the cameras make yeah. sure everything's working you know make sure there's not any issues so they get out there super super early out there all day long tomorrow is our long day yeah yeah those guys are going to be up really early and all of you will be as well because we're going to be off the line tomorrow at 8 a.m for the 2023 nitto race of kings powered by optima batteries it is going to be a great day of racing tomorrow all the big names are out here all the big cars are out but you know we also have some utvs that are running in the 4400 class because remember 4400 yes. just means that it's unlimited so you can bring whatever you want. So is this going to be the year when we're going to see a UTV take the overall? I do not know, but we saw some really good UTV racing a couple of days ago out here. Yes, we did. The UTVs, that class is the largest, fastest growing class that we have. Um, and not only in the at King of the Hammers, every racing association, that is the largest that they have. Yeah, well, because, I mean, think about it. They're they're relatively inexpensive to buy. Yes. They're pretty easy to work on. And there's just so many available parts for those right, things. Right, right. You know? I mean, I come from the buggy world. I'm a buggy dork. Jeez, you can't get an air-cooled motor for less than ten grand these days. Right, exactly. And the other thing, too, is there's a lot of companies out there. If you build your race car for you know with them or, you, you know, the stock 
mounting points are still on your car, you can just call them up and say, hey, I need a, you know, a rear trailing arm on the, you know, right rear trailing arm, and they'll send you one. You don't right. have to wait for it to be made. It's not a one-off. Right. Because there are parts right. available, so many parts available. Yeah, that the supply chain on that is is really key for those. Look at that. Look at that dust that he's it. kicking up. It's just so gorgeous. But you can tell not a, a stitch of wind out there. That dust is staying put. And, you know, that whoever that is on there, we can't see the number, kicking up the dust. But there's so much dust that he's getting ready to get. Oh, that looked like it might be McNamara's. That is at the McNamara brothers, Sean and Brian. That is the four-wheel parts Jeep Cherokee. I'm not sure what their number is, but we will find that out in just a second. That is the 4696 of the McNamara brothers. Yep, I have got them on the tracker here. Updated about three minutes ago. Well, three minutes ago, they were moving at 8.7 miles per hour, but obviously going much faster now. Exactly. And you can see right there, we do have two vehicles going. Yep, that should be it. That's the McNamara brothers. And right next to them is 4695B. And uh, if my tracker will open, that is Jesse Bennett in a uh, stock vehicle. Okay. Oh, look at their rear lights are blinking. I thought they were putting their brakes on for a second, but they're, it's like, cons it's yeah, consistent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a consistent. So, you know, you got to make sure that everybody can see you out here. And one thing that's been pretty cool about, because I've been driving in and out of hammers all week, is that um, most people out here, even just on tow rigs, most people have dust lights in the rear, which uh, has been really nice. It's super smart, too. Yeah. I mean, desert racing, you have to have those lights on there. Um, but having those lights on just your driver, you know, your fun vehicles out here is yeah, very it's, smart. It's really smart. Although I have seen some people leaving with maybe they had dust lights in the back, but they did not have their headlights on. And I'd be like, dude, Ooh. you're in a gray truck and it's dusty. I cannot see you turn that your headlights on. That is not good. All right. Who was, who is that, uh, Emmy, if you can kind of look and see maybe who that is coming down Turkey Claw? Let me see here. Let me get my fancy pants tracker going on. Have you been down Turkey Claw? Um, I have been up it last. Oh, up it. Okay. I, been, I went up it last year with um, Hunter Miller in his Can Am, and I thought I was going to die. Okay, so I've never, I've never gone down it like they're doing, but I have gone up it. Jimmy Lewis. Oh, and Jimmy his Lewis. Stock <laughs> Razor. We went up <laughs> it one year, Lewis. and then last year um, I went out doing some fun run with uh, Tom Ways because I hadn't seen some of the trails and he had taken me up it and it's a, it's a fun trail. Yeah, yeah. So I can't see a number but of course That's number 50. Then that is Jeremy Brown with the Jeremy Brown cheering section out here. Give it up for Jeremy here in Hammertown. As soon as I heard them cheering, I, I knew. Was like, you're like, that's Jeremy Brown. <laughs> Now, Jeremy Brown does have number 224 nearby, but according to the tracker, Jeremy is leading. But again, you guys, these trackers don't update. Uh, they're not real time. They do update usually every two minutes or so, but sometimes it can be longer. So we're using this tracker as a guide, not as gospel. And you know what? It's technology. Technology doesn't always work as we wish it would. Nope, it sure doesn't. That's why I carry paper maps. <laughs> Paper maps are good. I like paper maps. Yeah. All, All right. right. And this should be the 224 car coming through Turkey Claw. Brent Dixon <laughs> in the Legends class. Looks like Brent has some fans out here as well. I love seeing the crowd out there, you guys. It's awesome that you're still out here watching this. Yep, that is 224, Brent Dixon. So all he needs to do, there is Hammertown in the background. I'm waving. If you guys can see me, I'm waving from Hammertown. Do you know what that reminds me of? What's up? The last stretch on the way to Vegas. Oh, yes. And when you come you're coming down to Prim. And you see that, and you see the lights, and you're like, oh, I'm almost to Vegas. Woohoo! And, and then it still takes like 30 minutes. And look, you can see all the way across to Chocolate Thunder. We got a lot of lights up there at Chocolate Thunder. I mean, it's just... It is amazing how many people are out here. It is just a giant city. As yes. we all know, it is a redneck burning man. One of my other favorite things about King of the Hammers is at the very end when they have the compiled number of how many spectators oh, yeah. Yeah. came how many in. Do you think? How many do you think this year? Um, I'm going 100,000. I'm going to say, I mean, throughout from beginning of, of Moto's Week to now, because yeah. people have come and gone. Yeah. I w I'm going to guess about 
94, 95,000. All right. I think last year we were at 80,000. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty nuts though. It is very nuts though, and I love it. It's so much fun. I mean, you know what? It beats working. This is our job. Oh, wait, are you getting paid? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I better, I better talk to Tim <laughs> about that. Huh? He said it would just be a great experience for me. <laughs> That's oh. your first year. Yeah. Next year. <laughs> Next year you're on payroll. <laughs> Well, I tell seven you, years. This is my seventh year out I here know, at King of dude, the Hammers. I you know, it. And you know what's great? Because I am a new commentator here, but I love coming in and learning so much from you and Jim and Miles and Ian. Like, just so much knowledge up here. The experts. Yeah. I mean, I'm just a dork that's out here and, like, you know, likes to do little <laughs> nuggets. So getting in the booth here with you guys is pretty cool. It's a different experience for sure. Yeah, for sure. For like, sure. Everybody has their own niche, and, like, you guys go out and get those nuggets and stuff. I've never done that, so I don't even know if I would oh, be good fun. at it. It's but fun. You just but have to be be ready to approach people and make a fool out of yourself, which, which I'm great at. I don't have a problem approaching people. <laughs> people know that. <laughs> you know, Pam, I was talking to my mom uh, this morning, and she was like, I, I was listening to the live feed, and then somebody said, well, we're going to say goodbye to Pam Hollow in the booth, and I thought it was you. Oh, my goodness. So apparently, at least to my mom, we sound alike. Awesome. Well, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> that Emerson Ridge, that vehicle coming down, just getting through the lake bed. Going to put the hammer down across the lake bed. One more rock trail to go. And then it is adult beverage and celebration time for that racer right there. I love that lake bed. It's so much fun getting on there and just yeah. wide open. I mean, of course, when it rains. It's real bad. It's sketchy. Yeah. But, you know, speaking of paper maps, I was out here once on a, a poker run. Or not a poker run, but like a geocache thing. And I was in the off-road Miata. And I completely read the map wrong. And I somehow ended up on Emerson. And I'm like, how did I get this car here? Yeah. And I realized I was way out of my element in that little car. And I had to turn around and go through some really nasty stuff. And I was like, I can't do this. This, this is not for my car. Little Buddy with his, uh, with his tiny little 27-inch tires, he doesn't do so well out Did here. Did you bring Buddy out here today, or do you have your yeah, truck? Yeah, no, buddy's in, the, buddy's in the staff parking lot. I still haven't got to, like, even see Buddy up close and look at it. Yeah, yeah, we're prepping I, that car for the Mint 400. I was going to say, let, maybe we could take it on the short course tomorrow, but there's a race. I know, I know. <laughs> I would love to take Buddy on the short course, but uh, Dave Cole would probably kill me, and I'd never be asked back. Maybe so. you can come back Sunday morning after the race is over, and we can um, ask if we can... Yeah, maybe. But they probably wouldn't let us. No, I don't think so, because then they'd have to let, let everybody. Yeah. Plus, he's going to the fabricator to get his uh, cage installed. Gotcha. Yeah. So, you guys, we want to give another shout-out. We have Rescue 3 out here. They are taking care of all of our medical issues, if anybody has one. They're awesome. They've been here for many, many years. Yep. Um, great crew of people. You guys, let's also give a shout-out to all of our course workers, all of our volunteers, everybody that starts working at 6 o'clock in the morning, roughly, sometimes earlier, yeah. into the night. It's like tomorrow. We don't have a closing time, I think, until 10, I yeah. think. Is yeah, we're going to be here a real long time. So it's going to be a late night. We All of those people work all day long and so like i said if you guys see any of them just give them a thank you yep. give them a high five tell them thank you so much for being out here yep i gave away some little snicker snacks today to some of our gate workers nice. that was very appreciative uh and you know what's awesome though is that we do get fed by the wonderful drew deckman yes uh he's got just a, a great restaurant deckman's uh down in valle de guadalupe in baja california if you guys have not made it down there you should because oh man is his food good it is all locally sourced he has an outdoor kitchen i mean you never know what is going to be roasted in there full pigs on the spit <laughs> uh, it's just oh it's so good but you got to be ready to be a carnivore because man that guy cooks up some meat i haven't been to his restaurant but his food that he makes for us out here. Yeah. Also, when we were on the Ravel Rally, you know, like all that food has always been so amazing. Yep. I, I cannot complain. Yeah, it's just it's just really great. So we're going to have a finisher here in a hot second. Number 224, Brent Dixon in the Legends class is coming down. And also number 50, Jeremy Brown. Now on the tracker, they are swapping positions. So honestly, I do not know which one is going to get here first. We shall see here in just a minute. Just a minute. I am definitely not a singer. Oh, come on. No. No and no. People would be plugging their ears. <laughs> <laughs> Put those headphones on. Put those earplugs in. <laughs> we have Miss Tiffany Stone in here. She's doing the cross the stage interviews. A little dusty, huh? Yeah. 
Look at all this girl power we have up here. Love it. <laughs> All right, so today I know you guys have already gone through it. So Jeremy Jones finished in the number one position overall. Scott Foley second, Dwayne Garrison third, Lauren Healy in fourth, and Brad Lovell in fifth. That is our overall in the EMC or the four wheel parts every man challenge. I almost called it EMC. <laughs> I'm used to saying EMC, <laughs> but yeah, that's a great top five. I mean. All right, so now we have who's coming through here through Means Butte. This could be number 50 or it could be number 224. I cannot read it because of all the dust. Pam, do you see it? I don't see it, but I think it's 224. All right, it looks like 224. Brent Dixon is going to be coming in here. Brent's got his whole fan club here. Ooh, drifted, you buddy. Just have to make drifted. it Drifted. Look and did that. you see how far out he went on that course and taking that Yukon jump? And he is a finisher of the 2023 Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge here at the King of the Hammers race. Just to finish is amazing here. Just to finish is amazing. You know, um, that chair broke on me yesterday, so don't worry. It's not you, it's the chair. I just like. No, it broke, on, it broke on me too. I'm gonna have to and then Jim told me to stop eating Twinkies, and so I smacked him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so number 224 has finished. We're going to get him up on stage here pretty soon. I know his fan club is waiting to see how his day went, what kind of problems he had, what kind of successes he had. And I love hearing all of the friends and family yelling and screaming for their for, for their their racer. Just uh, it's just so awesome. And we have somebody else that'll be in here in just a moment, right there on the on the screen. You can see the lights going up and down that section right now. That the car, I'm not sure who it is because I can't see it on there. It is super rough. There's big yeah. dips. There's rocks. I mean, you. This is definitely not a fast section for any race car, no matter which class you're in. Yeah, and you want to be fast right there because you can see Hammertown practically and you just want to get back yes. and it's like you got to have some patience. You have to have patience and that's when it's like you know you're at the finish. Oh my gosh, am I going to make this last mile? Am I going to finish this race? Because you can't celebrate until you cross the finish line. Yeah, and if you do celebrate early, that's when stuff can go wrong. Exactly. But he is coming around. That means... Did he just turn around? Uh, went to the wrong. He needs to go left and accidentally, accidentally went Accidentally right. went right. Oh, my gosh. Well, the navigator is going to hear about that later tonight. But he is back on track, coming around Means Butte into the short course where he's going to take that checkered flag. What a great feeling it's going to be to take that checkered flag. Right? Yeah. It's like a relief. I know. It's uh, They've been out there now for what well, we were off. First car was off the line at 8 o'clock. What time is it? It's 6.01. Yeah. It's a long time to be in the car. Is that 10 hours? 10 I mean, hours. sure, math, yeah. All right. It sounds like we have Miss Tiffany Stone up on the stage. Tiffany, take it away. Thank you so much, Pam. Jeremy, you think you made it. You made it up here. Nice job on finishing the Four Wheel Parts Every Man Challenge. Uh, talk to me about your day. Your cheering fan down here has been going crazy for the last 10 minutes. So what do you have to say to them? Uh, I could not do it without that crew down there. Like, honestly, we, we spent, I don't know, probably an hour in the pit, in main pit. We broke an axle. Uh, <laughs> the car rolled twice. Roof's good. We didn't even touch the, the, the top of the roof. Mid-air rolling. That's how we do it, I guess, apparently. <laughs> but, no, we are pushing all day. The, uh, the clogs out there, man, just the traffic jam was unreal. Sitting for, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes was unreal. But I knew we had to push. We had to get there. Uh, I mean, I got to say, again, thanks for my friends and family that came, made the trip. This has been a, uh, a long journey. We've, uh, this is our fourth year racing. Uh, took a break for two years, came back, bought an awesome freaking car. I mean, uh, you know, Trip Fab makes an awesome car. Haven't even met Derek or Lisa yet, but I'll tell you, Dave Schneider, he's the man. I mean, he helped tune this car, get it ready for, for you know, this gnarly race, and just killed it. I mean, all the sponsors that helped us out to get here, I mean, just, I can't thank them enough. I mean, Pioneer Feed, uh, Bryant Heating and Air, 
Brown team here, which is me, but. <laughs> well, awesome job. Congratulations to you. One more round of applause for number 50. And back up to you, Emmy and Pam. All right, thank you, Tiffany. I love that he thanked himself as one of his own sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, if it pays the bills and it buys the race cars, you yeah, gotta thank there yourself. there you go. Now, these racers do have 10 hours from their starting time to finish this race. So uh, we should, our last, the last cutoff time should be right around 6.35. And looking at the tracker, you know, it's tough to see how many folks are actually going to make that time cutoff. Again, it's 10 hours from where they started. So, I mean, the next pe person that we have to finish, we've got somebody in Turkey Claw. We've got 804, Matthew Torney has gotten through Turkey Claw as of two minutes ago. But then after him, you guys, this tracker is way backed up. We've got people at race mile 125. That's pretty far back there. That That's is. another, what, 20 miles? Yeah, because it's a 140 mile lap. Yeah. Or laps, 140 mile race. Yeah, hmm. so uh, there, these these folks up here that are coming uh, on the northbound track, coming heading west, they are gonna be hustling for sure, because again, 10 hours after their starting time. Yeah, that's uh, unfortunate if they don't make the cutoff, but you know, that what they do is they still wanna get up here and get a picture. Oh, well, listen, even if I, if I were out there and even if I didn't make the cutoff, I would still keep going. Exactly, I would too. All right, it sounds like uh, Tiffany has another one up there on the stage for us. Tiffany, take it away. Thank you so much, Pam. Brent, you are another one with a large crowd that has been screaming for the last 10 minutes. Unofficially, 49th in the Legends class. Of course, we got to check everything, but you're here. You made it on time. The sunset was probably beautiful. Walk me through your entire day. It's been a long week, actually. Um, we broke the car quite a bit. We had to go into town a whole bunch of times. All this crowd out here, all these people helped me out 100%. I couldn't have done it without them. Uh, especially my co-driver today, he did awesome. Uh, we started off on the first lap. We uh, ended up blowing a tire out and uh, ripped the um, limiting strap mount off. So we, uh, we made it to main pit, got it welded back on, got some new tires. And then um, we actually blew two more tires going through the rocks and stuff. But the car held together pretty good and um, it was great. Well, I can see the emotion coming through you. Who do you want to thank right now for helping you get over here and finishing the Four Wheel Parts Every Man Challenge? Oh my, oh my God, there's so many people, I can't even name them. I mean, my, I got a, my wife, Julie, uh, my kids, Bentley, Mia, my mom and dad. I mean, uh, Josh, Jeff, there's Travis, Mike, there's Mitch, there's K.O., there's Pete, there's Big O, there's Chad, there's Dennis, Josh. Jeff, Dave, I just, there's so many people here, I can't even go. My mom, she's awesome. <laughs> well, nice job. The smile on your uh, face and Travis's face over there says everything. One more round of applause for the 224. And back up to you, Emmy and Pam. Thanks, Tiffany. I love seeing the emotions on their face. It's awesome. Sometimes when people finish, they do come in, and it's such an emotional feeling to finish. We've actually seen tears in their eyes. Oh, we did earlier. Oh, I mean, oh, 100%. I'm surprised Tiffany didn't break out in tears, too. Oh. I almost did here in the booth, and I've got a heart of stone, man. <laughs> it's just great because, you know, they've, they've just spent so much time and so much money and, you know, given so much up to build these cars and get out here to the Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge that when you finally get across the line, I mean, it's just such a relief and such a feeling of accomplishment you know, and so what? You didn't make the podium. That's fine. The most important thing here is that you finished because most people don't even try this and then let alone finish. Right, exactly. Finishing this race, as I always say, and I've said many, many, many times, is a win in itself. Yeah, so uh, Pam, look at that. It is almost full dark here. The fireworks are going off here in Hammertown. The bonfire is lit. The buggy whips tent is all lit up with those cool whips. I have to get one of those for Buddy. I think those are so cool. Oh, you definitely should. Definitely yeah. should. They're awesome. We have them on our uh, play car at home. Um, but look, we have another car coming in to the finish here in just a moment. Yeah, Buddy. Now, this, this guy here is moving pretty darn slow. 
but still moving. But this is the slow section right here. Right, right, right. So we're here getting word in our ear that we think that might be the 804 of Matthew Torney. So we'll see here in just momentarily. You can see right there off to the left that there is somebody that's a off course over there, unless it's a course worker setting off to the side. Oh, yeah, hopefully that is a course worker. I really hope that uh, that is not a racer or, God forbid, a spectator being up there that close to the course. Well, that's all blocked off over there. So there's yeah. a fence line all the way around to where there are not allowed. There's signage up everywhere. Um, that's one thing that we, you know, make sure we do. We have to do. Uh, part of the safety crew does that as well. And it looks like that is going to be 8.04 coming into the bright lights. I mean, this has always got to be cool, right? You get to do the short course section under the lights. That's pretty dope. That is really awesome. The short course here, I've heard nothing but amazing things about it. Yep. People that raced last night, the racers that are out here today, they're like, you know, John Goodby and his whole entire crew with the NorCal Rock Racing, they build an amazing course. Yeah. And I, everybody's bragging about it. I would like them to leave it here for me to use <laughs> later. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. That'll All be right. gone Monday. <laughs> and one more turn here until we get into the finish line, the checkered flag, the Bronco Arch, and that Yukon jump. All righty. I almost said winner, winner, chicken dinner, but finisher, finisher. Uh, chicken finisher. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I failed poetry in high school. <laughs> uh, I'm, yeah. <laughs> and look at, he's probably just so excited to finish. He's like, I don't even know where I'm supposed to go now. Yeah, right there. They're supposed to make a U-turn, go back down the pit road area, come on over here and get their interview up on the stage. But and he's like, nope, I'm just, you know what? I think maybe I'm just going to go. Oh, okay, here we go. Had to back it up. I was going to say, he's probably like, you know what? No, I'm sorry. I'm just going to go back to my pits and have a beer. <laughs> Look at, look at the, I know, look at the tents all lit up right there. Yeah, and those colors, all the different colored lights. I wonder if they're all buggy whips. I know, I love it. I just love it. You know, I was thinking the other day as I, I saw a plane go pass over high, overhead, like uh -huh. a jet, and I'm like, I wonder what we look like from 40,000 feet. I know, right? That, that looks like probably a circus or a, a <laughs> carnival or something. <laughs> we are the off-road, I mean, I'm not saying we are. I was going to say, we are the off-road circus, but we're not, because this is just such an amazing off-road race and yeah. no, so much fun. We're a redneck burning man. That's what we are. <laughs> so, Pam, did you go to the uh, Sublime show last night? Uh, I did, actually. Yes? You would have a smile on your face? I do. I went over to the concerts, and I was like, you know, I'm just going to stick around for a little bit. And then Al, who is the monster stage manager and takes care of all of it, he said, Pam, I want you to bring Sublime out. So no. I actually got to introduce Sublime to the stage. You the, shut up. I swear to God, it was amazing. I, I love Sublime. And to do that, I was, like, shocked that I did that. Like, That's it was pretty so awesome. Surreal. And here's how I explain it. Like, I'm looking at over the stage. And, like, from the stage, because last night it was really dusty here in town, I couldn't see the end of people. <laughs> there were so many people out there at the Sublime concert. That it was, it was definitely, definitely awesome to see so many people out there watching it. But yeah, pretty cool. But it was kind of nerve wracking. Like we're up here and we're talking, and every once in a while we, you know, the camera turns on or whatever. And normal, you know, doing live show for other stuff. It's like I don't know who's watching it on the other side. But last night, I don't know how many people were watching me, and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't talk in front of this many people. <laughs> <laughs> so it was pretty darn cool. Uh, so, Hammertown, uh, we would like you all to say hi to the world because we are going to show a shot of you guys. So, let's give it up. Can we get a big cheer here from Hammertown right now? Let's go. Come on. Crowd yeah. shot. There we Welcome go, everybody. Up, let's get you yelling the and screaming. The world is watching. The world is watching. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. It sounds like we have Tiffany Stone up there ready for another interview. But right now you can see the buggy whips right there in the back that we keep talking about. But uh, Tiffany, take it away. Thank you so much, Matt. Or Pam. Matt, I just asked you how you're feeling. You said you're tired. Talk to me about the difference of starting when it's a little dark, going through the day, finishing when it's a little dark, and the mental things that you have to do to be able to finish Four Wheel Parts Every Man Challenge. It is absolutely exhausting. We got in this car when it was dark. I've only got out a couple times. 
I ate a smoothie and a quick drink before I got in the car at 5 o'clock this morning or 6 this morning, and we've been going nonstop. Absolutely devastating course out there. Excellent job, King of the Hammers Ultra 4, putting on the, the hardest off-road race in existence. This is just absolutely brutal. So I uh, couldn't be more happy to be here. Such a mixed e emotion. I'm purely exhausted. The adrenaline just... Uh, drained out of me and uh, it's also exhilarating four times here three during classes and we're finally on the stage so absolutely awesome um, yeah well I know you got to thank a few people including your co-driver right over there for getting you across the stage finishing in time and like you said getting to this point and uh, checking off that bucket list absolutely couldn't do it without my son Greg Torney best co-driver in the entire planet uh, absolutely incredible and, uh, of course, thank everybody else out there, my sponsors, I'll get to it in a second, but all the guys that make it happen, the guys out in the pit, my brother Ben out there hanging out, or sorry, my son Ben hanging out there in pit too all day, John Coffey, Caitlin, Bobby, Rusty Nail, all you guys, you guys are freaking awesome. If it wasn't for you guys, we'd still be recovering stuff off of, uh, we'd still be recovering stuff off Thor's Hammer from the other day. And then, of course, my sponsor, Sedona Tire, I can't run them on this, they don't make them big enough. But those guys are awesome. So don't attire. If you guys got UTVs, they're the best ones out there. Love those guys. PRP and Warren Winch. If it wasn't for Warren Winch, we absolutely would not be up here. We've used that thing, and it was 100% solid as always. I wouldn't even attempt something like this at my Warren Winch. So. <laughs> Awesome. Nice job over here, Matt Torney in the 804. Congratulations. One more big round of applause. And back up to you, Pam and Emmy. All righty. It looks like we have somebody that is coming into the finish. We didn't see the number. Yeah, we think, we think it's Daniel Gutenberg. We'll see here in just a moment. But another finisher coming through. I love it. I love it. I love it. And you know what I love? I love seeing a father-son team up there on the po up, not on the podium, but coming across the stage for a finish here at King of the Hammers. Yeah, I mean, this this sport is all about family. Of any sport that's out there, this is where you see the kids following in the footsteps mm -hmm. of their parents, their brothers, their uncles, their aunts, and really, it's a way that you can just. You can come out and you can have a great time with your kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you race, exactly. your husband race, your kid races. Mm -hmm. It's the family that races together, stays together, right? Yep, exactly. That is 100% true on racing families. Abs <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, and you know, it's like you have your racing family, or you have your blood racing family, but then you have your off-road racing family or your racing family that you meet in conjunction while you're racing, all the pit support that you get from your racing family. This is just one big happy, happy family. It looks like we have the 4819 that it has came in for the finish. Yep, 4819, that is Jesse Lee. And I'm just uh, looking here to see if we've got his, uh, have his unofficial spot. And that great shot right there of Hammertown. There's iconic spots that uh, you can see on here. So you have where we are in the short course. You have, you know, all of these other areas. You have where the tree, the iconic tree yep. up there. Yep. That everybody knows. <laughs> so Jesse Lee has just come in. He is in the Legends class. All right. We can hear the fans of Jesse Lee out there. He's getting himself all ready for an interview here in just a moment. Oh, oh he came in with a flat tire. Coming in with a flat. Good for wow. you, Jesse Lee. I love it. That's like, you know what? I don't care. We're just going to keep going. We're just exactly. going to keep going. You know what? If you get a flat and you're super close to Hammertown. No, just go. Just go. Like, it's going to take you more time to get out and change yeah. the flat than yeah, it is. Just go. And it's the end of the race. I mean, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. You'll just pull to one side. It's fine. You'll be fine. Everything's fine. I wonder how fine. long they had that flat. I don't know. Hopefully, Tiffany will get the skinny on that for us. All right, Tiffany, what do you got? Jesse, talk to me a little bit about this front left flat. Uh, exactly where did it happen? You're smiling, but I don't think that uh, it was a happy moment when that happened. You know, I don't know where. Probably <laughs> somewhere right over here. No fault of the Nittos. I mean, they worked phenomenal every flat i got unfortunately was my fault 100 percent. so <sighs> you, you want to take this you want to interview now i will give this to you you just ran a great race today sir talk to me about who you'd like to thank uh first i'd like to thank my wife um without her support encouragement um 
I'm sure there's a lot of other words to describe it, but without her, you couldn't do this. So thank you, babe. Um, all my friends, family, I mean, everybody here who's out here supporting me, we, couldn't, we could not do this without you. Um, probably the man of the hour here in the right seat, my co-driver, Dan English. Um, put him through some work today with the winch, so um, maybe give him a beer. I think he's a Coors drinker. Um, got one? So. Here you go, Jesse. There you go. One for each of you. <laughs> I'd like to thank my unofficial sponsor, Coors Light. Um, just kidding, I'm a Miller like guy, but beggars can't be choosers, right? Oh, it was a, it wasn't the race we wanted, but it's a finish. Um, I'd like to thank my, my sponsors, ADS, um, the MRB internal bypass shocks were phenomenal out there. We passed a lot of cars. Unfortunately, we couldn't put it all together to come in in the daylight, but um, got us across the finish line, kept us safe. The Nitto tires held up, held up great, uh, despite what you see here. That's actually a, a fluke, 100% um, on me. Uh, who else? Uh, Yukon gear and axle, the axle's still running strong. We found the limits of what a 14 bolt can do, so might be hitting you up for something else. Um, I'm sure there's a ton of other people, but you know, again, thank you to all my wife, my co-driver, my friends, my family. We could not do this without you. Awesome, nice job. One more round of applause for the 4819 of Jesse Lee. You guys enjoy, have a wonderful evening, and back up to you, Pam and Emmy. Uh, all righty, thank you so much, Tiffany. Emmy, great day. Great day of racing. Great day of racing. So I think we are going to get the tracker in here in a minute. It's really cool having this racingtracks.com, being able to keep, keep track of all of your friends, your favorite racers, your loved ones. And here we have the tracker. Now look at all of those yellow dots still out there in the rocks. But it looks like coming through, who is that? 4696, that is Sean and Brian at McNamara. They're in a stock class vehicle, and if they make it across the line, they will be fifth in stock class, which is pretty darn good. So based on their starting time, they have to finish at 6.33. It is now 6.20 p.m. That might be close in a stock vehicle, Pam. Very much so. I'm so, not sure. <laughs> yeah. Jesse Bennett has got to finish by 636 and uh, the 1776 vehicle that is Jeff Watson he's got to finish by 618 and so he did not make it which is a real bummer to just miss it by just a few minutes but I can tell you what he is not going to give up and he is going to come through and get that finish even if it might be an unofficial finish he's still going to cross that line but as you can see you guys a lot of vehicles still out there. A lot of vehicles with that little red dot at their at the bottom of the number, which means that they are not moving. And that is something we don't like to see no, on those trackers. We do not. So while we are waiting here for the next person to come on through, I believe we've got some highlights of racing that happened today. So let's show them what we got out here from the 2023 Can-Am, sorry, not Can-Am, four-wheel parts, <laughs> Every Every Man Challenge. <laughs>
it's decided. We'll park even deeper into parking spaces so people think they're open. Surprise! <laughs> Can't hear you, Jerry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, can we get a system where when someone's bike is in the shop, then we could borrow someone else's? No. no. Or you can get a quote with America's number one motorcycle insurer and maybe save some money while you're at it. All in favor of that. There's a lot of buttons and knobs in here. Introducing Nitto's all-new Nomad Grappler crossover terrain. Built for the adventurous types. On-road, or off. Nomad Grappler brings with it legendary Nitto toughness, while providing a smooth, forgiving ride for the path less traveled. And stand strong when the pavement ends. Chase, number 23, it's 2023, this championship's yours. Let's show these guys what's up. Easy, boys, it's not over yet. Big dog still gotta eat. <laughs> Whatever you say, big dog. <laughs> Seriously? These fools think I'm pride? They know the deal. years of off-road racing dominance. Proprietary patented race technology. Proudly made in the USA. Unparalleled customer service and support. The choice of champions. King Shocks. The leader in off-road shock technology. some exciting racing here with the 4696 car Sean and Brian McNamara in the stock class they have to be in in what time Emmy to actually get an official finish 633 oh. which is three minutes from now oh, right my and goodness. the tracker now the tracker has not updated in four minutes oh the tracker just updated at six at 628 and it has them not moving Oh no, they are right here so close oh, to Hammertown. No. Now if they if they're able to pull this off in the next three minutes, they're gonna be fifth place in the stock class, which I'm sorry, getting a stock car through here is I mean, just to finish is a win, but to be up there in the top five, I mean this is gonna be heartbreaking for them. I wanna see that tracker move. Come on. I wish we could see their lights because right now they're so close that we should be able to see their lights and we do not right now. Yeah, I mean according to, to the tracker, they're they're still behind. Oh look in the distance. I wonder if maybe, that's maybe um, or maybe, I'm not sure, but could be could just be dust on our computer screen. Yeah. But they are just coming up north from Turkey Claw, according to the tracker here. But as of 628 and 14 seconds, they are just moving at 0.6 miles per hour. So we want this tracker here to update. I mean, and that's an airplane in the sky. <laughs> You're a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, look right here at the bottom though. Oh, that's blinking lights. Yeah, no, that's not, I don't think I'm getting excited. I want I know, them to come in. I know you do, I know you do. So 
You know, that's the thing, right? They've got 10 hours to finish, and you always got to go off of whatever time you left the line. And, you know, some drivers, they keep it, they have a timer in their car. They know exactly where they're at, and some of them don't because well, they just want to finish. Exactly. And they don't care about what time. Exactly. And then they might have radio communication still with their, you know, their pit crew or whatever, telling them this is how long you have. You need to pick it up, pick it up. Right. But then right. if you don't finish, let's say, let's say they get in here and it's literally like, a two minute difference from getting an official finish. Do you think they're going to go through their brain and go, where could we have gone two minutes faster? Yo, yeah, absolutely. You I mean, can't not do yeah. that. Uh, but the problem is that, <clears throat> you know, you you would be just finding a second here, a second there. Right, exactly. Right? You know, I mean, because you know they were as fast as they possibly could go through any of those lake bed areas. You know that they're going as fast as they can go through some of those whoops. It's really a matter of, like, did we wait too long to winch? Should we have winched first as opposed to waiting, like, trying it first exactly. without winching? Or should I pick it up a little bit faster on the lake right. bed? Or, you know, something small, yeah. similar. Yeah, I mean, sometimes that. taking the time to winch slow can be fast. So again, they have not updated now for uh, about four minutes, and they've got to get in here in 30 seconds. Oh, no. Uh, we do not see them on the live feed, so I do not think that Sean and Brian McNamara in the 4696 stock vehicle, I'm not sure they're going to make it, Pam. That is such a bummer because they are so close, but yet so, so far So very, away. very far. Oh, this is just heartbreaking. <laughs> Yeah, I am so bummed for them, but Brian and Sean McNamara are so close, but yes, they do have that red dot now. Yeah, so Pam, it has been an awesome day of racing. I have had such a good time. We know that tomorrow is our big, big day. We're going to have our pre-show starting at 7.30 in the morning. Okay, I just got some news that the 4696 of Sean and Brian actually flopped over got it back on their wheels they're gonna get back going this way but unfortunately time oh, cut off is time cut off yeah that is that is that's just heartbreaking i mean the section they were in right now is definitely a super rough section yeah. so that's such a bummer yeah and they must have been just hustling trying to get here for the finish for the 2023 em uh four-wheel parts every man challenge tomorrow of course is the big day it is the nitto race of kings and we know that tomorrow we're going to start with the pre-show at 7 30 they're going to be off the line at eight anything else we got going on tomorrow pam yes tomorrow night we have more live music we'll have mama foxy and the whiskey gypsies we'll have matt ferris with jared blake and then the famous Chase Beckham will be live on the Monster Energy stage tomorrow night. And that is tomorrow night at 10.30. But for right now, again, my name is Emmy Hall, and I'm here with my friend. Mrs. Pam Hall. Thank you so much for sticking with us through the night. We're going to play you out with a couple of highlights from today's race, the 2023 Four Wheel Parts Everyman Challenge. Thanks so much. We'll see you tomorrow.